just casually rescued a cute and silly beauty. I was forced to live with her for 10 years. Not only did he offer several million to keep me as a mistress, climbed onto my bed while I was sleeping. Bayu Yuyi heard that he could be closer to Yes Wang. The gem-like eyes instantly brightened a few degrees. First, start with the ritual of sleeping. I tell you, your problem is very big. Tang Keka leaned close to Bayu Yuyi's ear and murmured a long string of words. The girl's brain is now working after thinking. It took a good while to fully digest the information. She understood. At this moment, inside the medical room, I glanced at the time on my phone. Take off the work clothes and walk towards the classroom where Bayu is teaching. When passing by the corridor, several shouts caught my attention. I saw several classmates happily playing ball. However, upon careful consideration, Yuyo seems to not have any particular hobbies that he, she likes. Otherwise, should we enroll that girl in an interest class? Would she feel resentful? Do you think I'm being too controlling? Oh, forget it. At this moment, Yu Yo, who was packing her bag, noticed Ye Xuan outside the classroom. Suddenly, he threw the bag to Tang Kekel and rushed out. Yi Xuan hugs. I couldn't help but laugh when I saw the other person's hurried appearance. Fool, why are you in such a hurry? Tang Kekel, who was standing aside, showed an envious expression. Brother, why did you come so early? I won't cook tonight. Come over earlier to pick up Yu Yo and go out to play. Would you like to join us for dinner outside? Tang Kik looked happy and nodded, holding my arm and jumping around. Good yeah good yeah. I chose to leave the car at the school, and then the three of us walked out of the school gate on foot, but Bai Yu Yo on the side still tightly hugged her own arms, like a clingy little cat. By the way, Coco, I just heard people from your school talking about something related to the school anniversary. Tang Keko walked and laughed at the same time. Yes, in half a month, it will be the 70th anniversary celebration of our Inchon College. There will be a one-week campus event. We'll also set off a corresponding number of fireworks according to the age of the birthday. Our class A dressed up as a haunted house last year, and the effect was pretty good. After listening, I turned to the girl next to me and asked, Was last year's school anniversary fun? Bayou tilted her head upon hearing the strange words. Not fun. A bit cold and getting hit. Tang Keek seeing the situation, muttered softly. It seems that you you played the role of a ghost last year. Some students with less courage will use props to hit her. Still using the toes. I reached out and gently touched the girl's head. How can we let others take control? Bayou slightly lifted her pretty face. The people in the class also do this. They are used to it. It seems like they are all bad memories. There won't be such a thing in the future. You have me to rely on. Understand? Bayou nodded slightly. The arms held tighter. Just then, the phone rang. Pick it up and take a look. It's a call from Wang Fugue. Wealth and prosperity. Have you returned to your home country? Little Shuang Shuang. The matter of those few guys has been resolved. Oh, manure pit race. Almost couldn't swim and choked a few times. Thanks for the wealth and prosperity. I'll treat you to a meal when I have time. No problem. I also like that child. How can we let her be bullied? Okay, I have something to do. So I'll hang up now. After hanging up the phone, looking at the person beside, Bayou smiled softly. Your Aunt Wang called. Bayou reminisces about the gentle older sister-in-law in her memories. Is Aunt Wang the one who cuts hair? Yes. Let's go together and visit your Aunt Wang when we have time. Yi Shuang glanced at Bai Yuyo and then looked away. Actually, he has one more thing he wants to ask the other person today. That is the plan to move. However, before this matter, I would like to ask for Bai Yuyo's opinion. Although I am aware that Yu's previous years were not good, but we must also respect the other person's thoughts. A few people wandered outside for a while then returned to the residential area after having a meal of frog hot pot outside. Just as I was entering the building unit, a stranger stood in front of their own door, holding a key and tilting the door. I looked at the middle-aged woman in front of me. Her expression strange. The woman in front of me is dressed in professional attire, with a slightly angry expression. Is that Yuyo's mother? Perhaps sensing the movement coming from behind. At this moment, the middle-aged woman also turned around. At first glance, my gaze stopped on by Yuyo's body. Hey. Bai Yu Yu, did you change the lock on the door? Why can't I open it? Who is the person next to you? I just wanted to speak, but you quietly said a sentence in my language. Aunt, after hearing this title, realizing that the other person may not be Bai Yu Yu's mother, but its relatives like an aunt, then he took out the key and opened the door. Come in first, then we'll talk. After Bai Miling entered the house, I was instantly shocked by the warm decoration of the room, but soon she understood that all of this was done by this man. At this moment, her expression suddenly changed, rushed directly into Bai Yuyo's bedroom. Where is the money? Where did all the money in the house go? I said a neutral comment without much emotion when I saw the situation. 
all stored in the bank for safekeeping. By Miling immediately took out her phone after seeing the money disappear. I want to call the police. You illegally entered someone's residence and stole money. I stood shoulder to shoulder with Bai Yuyo. As if watching a movie, there is no ripple. Bai Miling saw Bai Yuyo in front of her, dumbfounded, and scolded him. Are you a fool, Bai Yu? What are you doing standing next to him? The girl whispered a few words in response. I'm not going. Get closer to Yi Shuang after finishing speaking. You little girl. Bai Meijin's face immediately turned ugly when she heard the words. A look of wanting to speak but hesitating. Finally, as if resigning myself, I put down the phone. At this moment, I held Bai Yuyo's hand and walked towards the sofa. Are you Yuyo's aunt? I have something to ask you. Bai Miling's tone is very unnatural. I am that girl's aunt. But who are you? Why did it appear here? You can understand that I am currently taking care of Yuyu. No, I disagree. Seeing the other person's excited appearance, I just smiled lightly as well. I'm just telling you. Later, I will take this girl to have a blood collection record. Enter her information into the database. Bai Miling fell silent upon seeing the situation. Just at this moment, Bai Yuyu came out of the kitchen with two cups of water. One cup placed in front of Yi Shuang. One cup placed in front of Bai Miling. Aunt drinks water. Perhaps the girl's behavior touched by Miling. At this moment, her expression appeared even more exhausted. It's really a sin. I'm not in a hurry. Just slowly wasting time. Anyway, from by Miling's recent performance, there is already about 70 to 80% certainty in my speculation. Yuyo was abducted. The behavior of the couple borrowing money again. That large sum of cash is obviously not theirs. It is possible that they are the biological parents of Yuyo. It is also possible that it was obtained from elsewhere. Just that the source of this money is not legitimate. They dare not deposit in the bank. Can only secretly use cash privately. Bai Miling is Bai Laochi's younger sister. She doesn't know much. But what can be determined is. Bai Yuyu was indeed suddenly brought back by Bai Laochi one day. That money too. However, according to her, Bai Laki seemed to regret it very soon. Every day, anxiously guarding the money. And as Bai Yuyo grows day by day, Bai Laochi's wife is even more afraid that she remembers what happened when she was a child. Locking people up directly in the name of mental illness. And after Bai Laochi went in for causing trouble, his wife is worried that Bai Laochi will let slip, directly choose to change the house. In the later stage, money and Bai Yuyo were abandoned, and the person directly adopted an alias, and the character played by Bai Miling, just came over to take a look at Bai Yuyo, just confirm her situation and the status of that money. After roughly understanding the situation, I looked at the other person and asked, Where is Bai Laochi's wife now? Bai Miling shook her head. She really doesn't know about messing with her own sister-in-law. However, that girl is being taken care of quite well by you. I said without becoming indifferent when I heard the words. Is it? But she should have been better. Slightly dim room. My words appear even colder. It's getting late. Let's go back. Bai Miling hesitated for a moment but couldn't help but speak up. You shouldn't be here. What exactly is your relationship with that girl? Just at this moment, Bai Yu gently whispered something in my ear. Husband and wife. Bai Meijin paused for a moment. You don't need to worry about this. And soon we will move. Leaving this place. This is not her home. It is a prison. Closed the cage that held her for over a decade. Bai Miling lowered her head upon hearing the words. Jipping squeezed out a faint sound from his throat. Sorry. After sending off Bai Miling, I then took the girl to the police station. In order to combat trafficking, the staff drew blood from Bai Yuyo. Take the materials for sorting again. After such a fuss, I finally came out of the office in the middle of the night. Walking under the streetlights at this moment, I held by Yuyo's hand and walked towards home. The girl beside me has been silent since she came out. I also noticed the other party's emotions. Perhaps such a massive amount of information is difficult to digest at once. Although I don't want by Yuyo to be hurt again. But she has the right to know these. Yuyo, don't worry. I will help you find your biological parents. At this moment, by Yuyo suddenly asked in a low voice. Yi Shuang, once you find them, will you leave me? Under the dim streetlight, the girl's inquiry is as if she already knows certain answers. Her beautiful eyes, hidden by the shadow of her bangs, reveal no emotions. I really want to tell the other person no as usual, but when it comes to my mouth, I can no longer speak it out. I cannot be with you all the time. Why? Many reasons. In case your biological parents are from another place, or maybe they don't like me. I continued speaking softly, but don't worry, we may just not be able to live together. In the future, it is possible. The conversation is not finished yet. Bayou's rare interruption startled me. I don't want. I don't want you Shuang to leave. If they don't like you. I don't like them either. I don't want my biological parents anymore. I just want you. Yi Shuang. 
In Yi Shuang's stunned gaze, Bean Sai's teardrop slid down the young girl's face and dripped down her chin onto the floor. She tightly grasped Yi Shuang's palm. We are husband and wife. Husband and wife should be together forever. Me and Yi Shuang. Don't separate. It was the first time for Yi Shuang to see Bai Yu Yi being able to say so many words in one breath, and as soon as she cried so much, Yi Shuang felt that everything in this world was unimportant, as if the whole world had done wrong. There was no way out. Yi Shuang had to reach out and take the young girl into his arms, and under the streetlight, the shadows of the two gradually overlapped together, tightly embracing each other's body. Yi Shuang placed his chin on her head, but a trace of bitterness flooded his heart. What an asshole himself! Actually made her cry. Obviously she didn't even cry when she was bullied. Bai Yu Yue was hugged by Yi Shuang and instantly quieted down. She rubbed her moist face against the other party's chest, seemingly coveting the temperature on it. Yi Shuang secretly sighed. What to do? It seems to be falling deeper and deeper. One could be selfish and really keep her by his side, but she didn't understand anything at all. Could he really do that? Yi Shuang felt the warmth in his arms, and for a while, he was also a bit confused. Originally decided to wait for her to be independent and then leave. Gradually also began to be unswerving. Under the street light, the two of them snuggled for a long time. In the next few days, Yi Shuang also received the news that Bai Yenyu did not find any information on the pair's blood type in the abduction database and the paternity test on Bai Laochi's side also came out, confirming that the two were not biological father and daughter. However, because time is too far away, although Bai Laochi explains some of the process, but want to find Bai Yenyu parents is still a problem, but Yi Shuang didn't seem to be in a hurry. He chose to stay by Bai Yuyue's side for the time being, and then the two of them lived a good life. Growing up seems to be a false proposition, but Yi Shuang is willing to accompany her. Even, I would like to slow down the time a little bit more. Another weekend, Yi Shuang brought Bai Yuyi to move, because they asked Chen Hai to help them find a house. They rented a set in a pretty good apartment, where the transportation was quite good, and because they were not afraid of being pitched because it was the Chen family's property, they didn't have to pay the utility bills. It was said to be rented but it was actually given. This will be our new home from now on. Yi Shuang used the room card to open the door. What met his eyes was a cozy to the core house, with log-style floors glowing in the sunlight from the large floor-to-ceiling unobstructed bay window, and white linen-colored sofas that matched the all-over snow-white curtains. A small, simple kitchen and bathroom, both in white and log-style. Because it was a high-ceiling department, the bedroom space was placed upstairs, and a small rotating staircase led up to the beds. There were two beds in compartments on either side. Like it? Yi Shuang looked at the young girl beside him and inquired with a smile. By Yu Yue's gaze at this moment, however, fell on the item hanging from the window in the distance, which was a shell wind chime that was gently swaying. Underneath the shell wind chime, is tilting the small head of 10,000. The sunlight was warm and sprinkled, as if it also lit up the young girl's heart. Like, even husband and wife, occasionally sleep in separate rooms oh. Isn't there a saying that when a middle-aged couple kisses, the nightmares can be good for a few nights. At night, Yi Shuang who had just finished taking a bath, at this moment sitting on the bed with his legs crossed, explaining to the young girl in front of him who was hugging a pillow, after all, he couldn't sleep together every day. Maybe that day will really turn out to be a birth. Bai Yu Yue had also just finished her bath not long ago, and she was sitting on the bed in a duck sitting position, with a pair of thighs that were white and piercing. We, are young. Bai Yen Yu put her face on the pillow and whispered, We, will dream well. Yi Shuang still had a strong attitude and said, No, starting today, one day a week you have to sleep separately. After all, how can this be independent? Bai Yu Yue saw Yi Shuang's stern face, but also had to slowly stand up. The two people's beds are separated by an aisle of five or six meters, and when she hugged the pillow to go back, she would still look back every two steps, as if asking, Will you yell for me to come back? But Yi Shuang was resolute. After the lights went out, Yi Shuang looked at the neon lights outside the window, so she pulled the curtains closed, this apartment was on the 21st floor, so the view was not bad, and she was able to see quite a lot of the city's night scenery, but Yi Shuang preferred the scenery outside the window of the old neighborhood, although it was not much to look at, but the atmosphere of life was rich, I don't know how long, Yi Shuang closed his eyes and prepared to fall asleep, when he suddenly heard a subtle footsteps, although the sound was not loud, but in the dim and quiet environment it seemed particularly abrupt, only to see that the footsteps gradually approached, and finally burrowed into his own comforter. The young girl skillfully plopped down beside Yi Shuang's body, and a slender leg pressed up. You you eh, uh, you are disobedient again, Yi Shuang said, but Bai Yin Yu's face was buried in Yi Shuang's shoulder, as if she had fallen asleep and didn't move a muscle. If Yi Shuang didn't know that she had just laid down, she would definitely have been fooled. Just at this time, 
Bai Yu Yi suddenly buried her head and handed over a small card. Yi Shuang squinted her eyes, and under the faint night light lamp, she saw the words on it clearly. Omega Dash, it's 12 o'clock. A new day has arrived. On the reverse side of the card, Omega, Yu Yu Ai is already asleep. You just need to hold her to fall asleep. Yi Shuang. He silently taps the current cell phone time. Midnight. Good guy. Card bug. Pa. Yi Shuang slapped the young girl's butt. Don't usually see you so smart. A night without words. The next day. At dawn. Yi Shuang got up. After wrapping octopus whispering Yui into a sushi roll with the quilt. He walked down the stairs to the kitchen on the first floor. Meow. 10,000 walked over and rubbed against his ankle in the past. When 10,000 hadn't gotten up at this time of the day. It was mainly because creatures like cats recognized their environment. And this place was relatively unfamiliar to it. So it didn't sleep soundly. Cats recognize things. Dogs recognize people. It means that cats are only familiar with the smells they have smelled and are sensitive to changes in the environment. While dogs only recognize their masters and are indifferent to changes in the environment. Yi Shuang picked up 10. 000 and placed it on his shoulder. This guy was getting fatter and fatter. Afterwards, Yi Shuang began to prepare breakfast. Simply warming up the milk, Yi Shuang beat an egg for the pan and started frying it. Instead, the sound of the oil splash scared 10,000, causing this guy to scurry off Yi Shuang's shoulder in a flash, and finally burrowed into the bottom of the sofa. This guy, it's time to cut his claws. Just now, 10, 000's movements were too big, subconsciously stretching his claws and stabbing Yi Shuang's shoulder a bit. Yi Shuang then opened the oven again and took out the half finished bread embryo of the pineapple bun and started baking it. After finishing, Yi Shuang skillfully cut it with a knife and stuffed a piece of butter inside each pineapple bun so the classic pineapple butter breakfast was finished. Quiet morning. Only the kitchen and the distant sound of the wind chime swaying. Yi Shuang felt his heart sink, brewing herself a cup of coffee. Yi Shuang quietly enjoyed the moment. After about a short while, a knock came from the door of the room not far away. Yi Shuang got up from the sofa and opened the door to a small, excited Tang Koko. Good morning, brother. Good morning. Come over for breakfast together. Yi Shuang said with a smile. Incidentally, this apartment was in the commercial plaza, closer to Tang Koko's house. As Tang Koko's house was the community that accompanied this commercial plaza, in a sense. This was considered a neighbor, right? Probably. Wow. Nice looking nice. As soon as Tang Koko came in, she wandered around the house, seeming to like the log-style furniture. Tang Koko's eyes were close to glowing at the end. I'm going to buy an apartment in the future when I'm rich. Apartments are only suitable for renting not for buying. Yi Shuang sipped her coffee and said with a smile. Why? Let's see. Yi Shuang thought about it, then explained. There are fewer years of ownership, and there's also the fact that water and electricity are charged according to commercial standards. There's also the fact that most apartments don't have gas. After all, the units are small and don't meet the regulations. Tang Ku Ku, however, noticed the gas stove on the side. Brother, why do you have it here? I said it's most of them. In fact, there's still some that have it. After all, our city has introduced relevant regulations. It's just that maybe the older apartments can enjoy it. Tang Koko seemed to understand, smiled and said, In the future, when you have money, it's better to buy a villa. It seems like over a million dollars over at Zhongshan can be bought. It's not impossible. Yi Shuang also smiled. Zhongshan City and Haizhou City are next to each other. And the urban area where Yi Shuang and their family live happens to be very close to Zhongshan, compared to the high price of housing in Haizhou City. Many people from this district choose to buy a house in the next city, which is just a road apart anyway. Here, eat pineapple oil. Yi Shuang said, taking a pair of disposable gloves for Tang Koko, while it's hot. He he he. Tang Koko said thank you before being polite. Yi Shuang considered letting Bai Yu Yu sleep a little longer. So he didn't rush to call her to get up either, but walked over to the balcony. The balcony was closed. Or perhaps it was said that apartments generally didn't have open balconies. They basically had floor to ceiling windows. And for drying clothes, the washer and dryer were used instead. Brother you're very skillful at doing housework eh? What did you do before? Tang Koko's face bulged as she ate pineapple oil, looking at Yi Shuang's back as he took the clothes from the dryer. For the first time she asked what she was curious about. Being a boss, hundreds of millions and hundreds of millions to earn big money. Yi Shuang said, lying to me, if you become a boss, where would you still do this kind of housework? Tang Koko had a tone of are you having fun teasing little kids? And. My dad used to run a company too, and he doesn't come home almost every day. Yi Shuang sniffed and couldn't help but laugh. Well, I did lie to you about not being able to earn a few hundred million dollars. Coco, help me shout at Yu Yu to get up. All right, leave it to me now. 35 floors of the office building, 
The view is transparent. Almost the face of the city can be taken in. Chen Qin stood in front of the floor to ceiling windows, looking at the distant bay that was flooded with luster. Sip the coffee in his hand do not know what to think about. Knock knock. Come in. The door of the office was pushed open. The assistant walked in and said, Mr. Chen, just now the planning department has finalized the meeting plan. Please take a look at it. Chen Qin's expression was calm. She returned to her seat, and after carefully looking over the program, she signed her name. Just follow this program to get it, and inform Lisa to tally up the accounts of the last investment loss. I want to see it. Okay, Mr. Chen. The assistant paused and added, regarding the development of the Dragon Lake side, there may still be a need to make up a sum of about 100 million or so. Hmm, I know. Go down. Yes. Watching the assistant prepare to leave, Chen Qin suddenly called out to her. Slow down. Any other orders? Mr. Chen, what are the arrangements for this afternoon? Mr. Chen, there are no other arrangements this afternoon. But, Mr. Yang would like to make an appointment for you to have a meal. The assistant smiled and said, it's not bad to have a meal with Mr. Yang to relax and unwind. Chen Qin just lightly swept her a glance. You've even arranged for my break time? The assistant realized that she had said the wrong thing and immediately lowered her head. Hold. Sorry, General Manager Chun. Go out. Yes. After the assistant closed the door, Chen Qin sat down on the office chair, looking at the scenic wallpaper in the computer. She tapped the shortcut key, and the wallpaper instantly switched to a photo of a guy. I wonder what that guy is doing right now. Looking at the photo, Chen Xin revealed a light smile as she held her coffee and gently turned around to the left and right of her office chair in a little girl's gesture. Chen Xin thought about it and looked at the cell phone on the side but hesitated a little. Will he think I'm sticky and annoying? Finally Chen Xin sat up straight, picked up the cell phone and not. Chen Xin, 3 o'clock a few. Out for tea hey. Chen Xin, pill girl giggle. JPG. Dumbly looked at the chat box for a while, but there is no reply that the other party is typing. Chen Qin's slender onion white fingers tapped his chin, but also had to put the phone aside first. Ding. The cell phone immediately popped up a notification tone. Chen Qin immediately reached out and took it over. Insufficient power. 20% remaining. Chen Qin. She expressionlessly threw the phone onto the wireless charger. And just at this time, the phone rang again. Chen Qin immediately picked it up. Yi Shuang, you don't have to go to work? Chen Qin couldn't help but smile. I'm off today. I'm so bored at home. Come and take this lady out to play. The reason why she didn't want to tell the other party that she was still in the company, mainly because she didn't want to give Yi Xuan too much pressure. Chen Xin didn't want to give the other party a kind of, I'm coming to you in my rare free time, because she was afraid that Yi Xuang would be too annoyed with her. Yi Xuang, I'm at work. Next time for sure. Chen Xin's face bulged. Chen Xin, take a vacation. I'll post your salary. Yi Xuan, thanks for being a boss. No professional ethics. Chen Xin, nuisance. I'll find another man. Yi Xuan, okay. Chen Qin, I'm really going. Yi Xuan, aha. Chen Qin, you don't give me wow. Come out. Chen Qin, Confucius rolls up his sleeves and shows his muscles. JPG. Yi Xuan. Yi Xuan, just come to my house for dinner tonight. I've still got a few girls left here and I've only just plugged them in. Chen Qin, but hey ah. Yi Xuan, thermometer ah. You think? Chen Qin, okay. Okay. Go to your house for dinner at night. Give me sex to eat. Garlic scallops, make a nice soup. Yes, but also a san ginger chicken. Yi Xuan, you are really not polite. Line blah. Chen Qin, humph. After putting down the cell phone, Chen Qin suddenly felt that the tip of his nose was a little itchy. Harjo, ha chu. At this time, Yi Xuan in the school nurse's room sneezed. He stretched out his hand and rubbed the bridge of his nose. He felt that the air conditioner should have been turned down a bit. After all, the summer vacation was almost here and the weather was pouring hotter and hotter. School doctor I'm so hot. School doctor. Do I have a fever ah? Uh? School doctor. School doctor I'm not feeling well here. There were three female students sitting on the chair in front of him. Their voices were whispering. Although Yi Shuang did not know the temperature of the thermometer yet. But their fever was felt. He secretly sighed in his heart. And the smell of hormones in the school nurse's office was even stronger. Soon. The temperature results also came out. Just as Yi Shuang looked in the window. There was no problem at all. After carrying the three girls and throwing them out of the school nurse's room, Yi Shuang returned to his seat and sat down. The school nurse's job was easier than he thought. The students who came here in the past few days basically didn't have any problems. More like that kind of feverish students. Finished eating. After touching his pocket, Yi Shuang noticed that there was no gum. He got up and planned to make a trip to the kiosk, but he still couldn't eat too much of this stuff, or else he would easily turn into a square face. Quitting smoking is a long process. 
not only the physical aspect, but also the addiction in the heart. After coming to the kiosk, Yi Shuang bought a box of sour plum lozenges and went to the playground, intending to take a little stroll. There seemed to be a class in the distance. Yi Shuang stood under a tree and squinted, but he couldn't quite see if it was Yi Yu in her class. Pervert uncle, what are you running out for? A sudden voice rang out. Yi Shuang froze for a moment, then looked around, but did not find the figure. Above. At this time, Yi Shuang raised his head, only to realize that on the big tree beside him, there was a short haired girl sitting on a branch, hanging on her two legs. Yi Shuang, why are you up there? Because I'm tired and looking for a place to sit. And Shi Yu lowered her head, her eyes under her flat bang staring at Yi Shuang. At the moment, although she was wearing a pleated skirt, she didn't care at all about Yi Shuang who was raising her head, and she didn't forget to mention lazily that, pervert uncle don't look, I'm wearing safety pants. The corner of Yi Shuang's mouth twitched, I didn't look, and why did my name change from pervert uncle to pervert uncle, and where does a normal person climb to a tree branch to sit and rest, and sure you just bristled, cricket a perverted uncle who touches girls asses, what a lot of control, then her body fell back, hanging upside down on the tree branch in Yi Shuang's shocked gaze, her cheek was almost face to face with Yi Shuang, hiding in all sorts of places, but a ninja's basic ability. Yi Shuang froze as he looked at the other party's legs that were tightly hooked to the tree branch, and then looked at the small face that was upside down in front of him, and only felt a burst of bullishness. However, as his eyes moved down, he suddenly opened his mouth and said, Your hairline is still quite back, a sentence that instantly made in Shuri Yu's body tremble and her whole body fell down. Yi Shuang was startled and subconsciously reached out to hold her. Although Yi Shuang caught in Shi Yu, the posture of the two people at this moment was a bit awkward. After all, the young girls just hung upside down on the tree branch, naturally fell down head first and Yi Xuan hugged the other person's body, so much so that the line of sight at this moment was a bit subtle. How long are you going to hold me like this? Underneath his body, a ghostly voice came from this moment. Eh, sorry. Yi Xuan had just finished speaking, but in Shi Yu closed her legs and clasped his head hard, before Yi Xuan could react, and Shi Yu's entire body actually braced itself straight up, and with extremely terrifying core strength and flexibility, she reached out her hand and grabbed the tree trunk next to her, and finally directly changed her posture and rode on Yi Shuang's neck and sat down. Well, the young girl grabbed Yi Shuang's hair with one hand, and with the other hand she touched the bangs in front of her forehead, muttering, where after? Nonsense. At this moment, Yi Shuang was still a bit bewildered, and didn't even know how unsure you had just done that action. Aren't you this guy a little bit bug? If it wasn't for the temperature coming from the back of his neck and the weight on his shoulders, Yi Shuang even thought that in Shi Yu's whole body had fallen down. How did you just do that? Oh, just Shu. Boom. Just did it. And Shi Yu lazily said, and did not have the slightest intention to come down from Yi Shuang's shoulders. Yi Shuang, you have this ability to not participate in the Olympics to make a name for yourself and Nestle here as a student? TSK. Sounds troublesome. Yi Shuang was completely helpless, but at this moment, because of the action on this side, there were already quite a few students looking over in this direction. That one, do you want to come down first? No, you don't have to come down. You just take me back to the school doctor's office like this. And Shi Yu put her elbow on Yi Shuang's head and propped up her face. It was obvious that she was unhappy. After all, no matter what, a girl still dislikes being talked about her hairline. Perhaps sensing Yi Shuang's embarrassment, and Shi Yu's eyes curved into a crescent moon, rare came a hint of interest and pleasure. Of course, it's okay for you to get me down. Look at your skills. Yi Shuang directly stretched out his hand and scraped on and Shi Yu's stocking leg. The young girl's body seemed to be electrocuted. Like a smooth loach, she directly jumped down from Yi Shuang's body. Underestimated you, perverted uncle. And Shi Yu revealed a disgusted expression and took a step back. Damn. Actually using this taboo move. It's not because you are not willing to come down. Yi Shuang said, glancing at the vending machine next to him. Please have a drink. And Shi Yu sniffed and immediately said, a cup of milk green. I want coconut face becomes so fast. Yi Shuang sighed. The vending machine doesn't have this stuff, right? Take out. The school doesn't give takeout orders. It doesn't matter. You let the takeout boy hand it over from the railing. Why are you so skillful? But in the end, Yi Shuang still ordered a cup of milk tea for this young girl, and the afternoon passed in the blink of an eye. After packing up all the things, Yi Shuang was just about to go and find Bai Yu Yue when he received a message from Chun Qin on his cell phone. Chen Qin, I'll wait for you at the school entrance. Chen Qin, selfie. Chen Qin in the screen was wearing sunglasses and was currently sitting in the car, showing a sweet smile towards the camera. Isn't it evening? Why did you run over in the afternoon? Yi Shuang thought about it, and then glanced at the time on the screen of his cell phone. 
and found that the other party was still sending it at the cardinal point, and was obviously aware of his time off work. Yi Shuang, I'll go pick up those two first. Shen Qin, bleh, two, Yi Shuang, one is a friend of Yu Yue. Shen Qin, oh. After putting down his cell phone, Yi Shuang went back to the classroom to look for Bai Yu Yue, but found the classroom empty, not a single student there. The curtains on the far windowsill were slightly blown, blowing in the afternoon sunlight. Yi Shuang's line of sight rested on Bai Yu Yue's seat, clean and dry, very different from before. The chair wouldn't be missing a leg, and the desk had no one to draw on. The desks were bathed in sunlight, as if they had been revitalized. Physical education class? Yi Shuang quickly retracted his sight. He took out his cell phone and sent a message to Bai Yenyu before going to the school entrance first. There weren't many students out of the school. After all, in the whole school, the students who didn't join the clubs and went straight home after school were the minority. After arriving at the school entrance, Yi Shuang scanned the surrounding vehicles and in the end did not find where Chen Qin was. At the point of time when classes were over, there were actually quite a lot of cars coming over to pick up the children, and if it wasn't for the better traffic planning on this side, it would have been jammed up earlier. Drop. The horn of a vehicle sounded. Yi Shuang turned his head and saw a Maybach with double flashing lights. He walked over and after realizing that it was indeed Chen Qin, he pulled open the passenger side and sat in. Hey, this can't even see this lady. Chen Qin took off her sunglasses and said with a smile, it doesn't feel like a car you would drive. Yi Shuang actually just saw it, just didn't think it was Chen Qin on it. I took the company car over after I scratched that one to get it repaired. Yi Shuang nodded and smelled a faint perfume in the car. You sprayed perfume? Does it smell good? Aha. Uh -huh. You smell it closer. It smells better. Chen Qin smiled wistfully, as long as Yi Shuang came a little closer. She pressed the other party's head on her chest. It's already enough. Yi Shuang said. Seeing that her plan fell through, Chen Qin gave a resigned oh. What about those two little girls? Gym class. So I messaged them. Yi Shuang said. Chen Qin looked ahead, then looked at Yi Shuang beside her, and suddenly asked. Yi Shuang, do you really intend to stay by that child's side all the time? For the time being, she relies on me a bit more than I thought. Yi Shuang continued. She has already suffered a lot of injuries. It would be bad to leave now instead. I also depend on you eh. You don't need me to take care of you. Yi Shuang said. Chen Qin originally wanted to retort his mouth, but after thinking about it, he smiled and changed the topic. Yi Shuang, come over to our house for dinner on the weekend. Uncle Chen asked. Yi Shuang froze for a moment. No, it's Aunt Xian who is coming out. Yi Shuang thought about this unfamiliar name. After all, she did not think of a reason. Which one? The one who sings. We even heard her concert when we were young. Yi Shuang donned. Finally knew who the Aunt Xian that Chen Qin was talking about was. That was a relatively well-known singer and actress in the Hong Kong area. Just that she was not active now. He did meet her when he was a child. In his impression, the other party spoke softly and was a very pretty aunt. Is she returning to the mainland for something? Settling down on the mainland? I don't know oh. It seems like there's something big going on. So my father asked you to go over there. Let me? Yi Xuan was a bit strange. Let's go UUA. Let's go take a shower and change clothes. The gym class ended. Tang Koko intimately holding by Yu Yue's arm said with a smile, such a move between girls is normal. Even hand-in-hand -hand shopping will not make anyone feel strange, but replaced with two men, the situation is not quite the same. Although there is no difference between the two in essence, but people are biased and blind. It seems that as long as you hide yourself in the majority, as if you can find a sense of security in general, do you have good stamina? Why does it seem like you're not sweating? Tang Koku touched by Yu Yue's arm and found it to be ice cold, not even sweating at all which made her curious. However, she had also heard that some people had less developed sweat glands. At this time, by Yu Yue sniffed, she looked at her arm, and pulled up a little bit of her clothes, revealing her small belly. The stomach, has sweat. No, no way. Tang Kuku immediately stopped by Yu Yue. By Yu Yue came back to her senses, as if she remembered something gently nodded her chin. Right, can only show Yi Shuang. Tang Kuku was puzzled. Is that what brother said? Bai Yu Yue blinked her beautiful eyes for a moment, seemingly thinking, and in the end she nodded her head as if she had gotten an answer. Aha, Tang Kuku scratched her head, but it didn't seem impossible. Let's go, let's go. First go take a shower and change clothes to go home. Tang Kuku said, her eyes falling on those boys. Look at the boys in our class. It seems like they just go straight home from school or join clubs like this. They aren't afraid to smoke others. Smoke. Well, the smell of sweat will smoke others oh. It will annoy people, Tang Kuku said. Bai Yu Yue sniffed and then drifted off, saying it was a bath. 
It was actually a simple rinsing of the body, hot water was provided in the women's locker room, and the door panels of each compartment would only cover the center, and along with the misting of the water, Tang Kuka poked her head out above the door panels and asked with a smile, saying, Yu Yu eh, does brother know we're in gym class? Bai Yu Yu eh was covered in bubbles at the moment, and was trying to squint her eyes as she said, Cell phone, there's a message, oh oh, but Yu Yu eh, I'm over here oh. Tang Kuka saw Bai Yu Yu eh's back to herself and the other side of the door panel to talk, so she had to say helplessly, after taking a shower, there was a large dryer in the corner of the locker room and all one needed to do was stand up and there would be hot air blowing against their heads, but most students would basically only blow a half dry. After all, it was only just after four in the afternoon. Let's go. Good. Bai Yu Yu e went back to the classroom with Tang Koko, but in the end, while packing up her things, the young girl found two letters in the drawer. Obviously love letters again. It's this thing again. Seeing this, Tang Koko on the side, perhaps remembering the love letter incident from some time ago, subconsciously glanced at the young girl's forehead, at this time it was covered by her bangs, so she couldn't see the recovery of the wound, but no matter what, it was too much to have this kind of thing happen, now that the school is regulated, similar things shouldn't happen easily, it's just that Tanka's scary love letter will touch by Yu Yue's psychological trauma, but obviously, by Yu Yue was stronger than Tanka showed, or simply didn't care about what happened last time, after all, Getting beaten was just the most insignificant little thing amongst the events by Yu Yue had experienced. In the young girl's memories, she had been punched and kicked by the drunken by Lauchi at a very young age, which was why she had acted so blandly towards it. Adaptability and habit. It was a terrifying thing, even if the things experienced are twisted. Once you get used to it you will become no longer care. This, deal, by Yu Yue asked as she held the envelope. You decide for yourself, but are you okay? Tang Koko asked carefully. Bai Yu Yue shook her head. Firing them is exactly cheap. Tang Kuku waved her fists as if she was fighting, but they didn't know that those guys were subsequently thrown into the shitter to give birth by Li Fugue. I also want to write for Yi Shuang. Bai Yen Yu whispered. Tang Kuku's eyes lit up. Leave it to me. I'll teach you. Koko, you will? Then you're underestimating me as a love master. Cricket a love letter is just a love letter. I'll teach you to tease your brother to death. Tang Koko was on fire. The two seemed to have forgotten all of a sudden that Yi Shuang and the others were still waiting outside. Seems a bit slow. It's 4.30 oh. Chen Qin was sitting in the car. She glanced at the limited edition watch on her wrist that was encrusted with gemstones, and twisted her head to Yi Shuang's side. Or else we'll go by the ingredients first? Yi Shuang didn't look very anxious. After gym class, girls will go to take a shower. It's normal to spend some time. After saying that, he stretched his waist. The investigation is really clear. Chen Qin suddenly said a little sourly. Eh? Yi Xuan laughed awkwardly. It's not normal. And really, if we want to talk about understanding, I understand your situation better. Okay? Chen Qin sniffed. Her body slightly leaned forward a bit. Her eyes flickered. Then you say it. Say what? Well, just say something that other people don't know. What others don't know. Soon, Yi Xuan's expression began to look strange, and he asked as if confirming. Are you sure? Say. Chen Qin slapped Yi Shuang's shoulder. Hurry up, mother-in-law. Aha. Yi Shuang's voice paused and spoke. There is a mole on your chest. The air was deathly quiet. Chen Qin's face instantly reddened. As if she was confirming something she lowered her head to look at her outfit today. How do you? You know? I remembered it when I took a bath together as a child. Yi Shuang said. Wasn't it only five or six years old at that time? Maybe. My memory is better. Yi Shuang gave a perfunctory sentence. Chen Qin's face grew redder and redder, and in the end, he actually directly slapped over. Forget it for me. You still do it? Give me forget. You're a salty egg. Chen Qin actually did not really exert herself, just because she was too shy that she did not know what expression to use to face Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang also knew that after receiving so many light slaps, a symbolic resistance would pass. You remembered wrongly. No. Chen Qin started talking nonsense. Remembered wrongly and you still hit me? Yi Shuang was speechless. Chen Qin chose not to look away from him. In fact, her face was as red as Hello's ass. At this time, Yi Shuang also noticed Bai Yen Yu and Tang Koko who were walking out of the school gate. So she took out her cell phone and directly made a call. Behind you guys, the car with the double flashers on. Bai Yu Yu and the girls also walked over and got in the car after confirming it again. Brother, he he we're here, Tang Koko said with a smile, but actually had a bit of a heartache in her heart, because they had just written a love letter for a while and actually forgot that Yi Xuan was waiting outside. Bai Yu Yue's eyes were also fluttering. Yi Xuan did not notice this, and touched Chen Qin beside her with his elbow. Missy, 
Drive. I, I know law. Chen Qin responded, without any good humor. Where to buy? The food market. Better go to Sam's. I want to buy a durian cake. Chen Qin said, whatever, you decide. After returning from purchasing a batch of ingredients, the four of them returned to the apartment. The apartment was not large. In fact, it was just right for two people. But the four people were starting to look a bit crowded especially when Yi Xuan was dealing with the ingredients. And he noticed by Yu Yue and Chen Qin standing on either side of him watching, crowding the already small kitchen. Missy, what are you doing watching here? Can you do it? Yi Xuan asked after skillfully cutting the ingredients with a slicing knife. Chen Qin, however, muttered, I can learn. Then help me pick these sweet potato leaves. Yi Xuan handed over a basket of sweet potato leaves and told her to sit there on the sofa to get them. After Chen Qin received the basket, she walked over to the sofa and sat down, but faced with the branches and leaves in front of her. She was also a bit embarrassed to open her mouth. She glanced at Tang Koko, who was teasing her kitten at the stairway, and then at Bai Yu Yue, who stood beside Yi Shuang, skillfully helping to cut the ingredients. Picking leaves. Chen Qin seems to have seen how the ants in the house get it, just bearing it and picking it off. Oh, seems to understand. Thinking of this, Chen Qin picked off all the leaves, and the stalks were all stuffed into the trash can. After doing so, only a quarter of the sweet potato leaves were left in her hands. Yi Shuang. I'm done. Chen Qin returned to Yi Shuang with a basket full of smiles. At this moment, Yi Shuang looked at the basket full of leaves and suddenly fell silent. You have never eaten sweet potato leaves? Yi Shuang asked. Then of course I have eaten them. In your memory, are sweet potato leaves only leaves? Yi Shuang continued to ask. Only at this time did Chen Qin slowly react. She softly awed and felt a little guilty. I messed up. Finished. Originally wanted to show herself in front of Yi Shuang. Didn't think that she would still make such a low-level mistake. She was not even as good as that girl. Thinking of this, Chen Qin's heart was incomparably lost. However, at this time, Chen Qin noticed a small white hand reaching over, with a head of garlic quietly placed on it. Slightly raising her head, she met a pair of calm eyes. Bai Yu Yue looked at the depressed Chen Qin, then said softly, Not afraid, not afraid, not afraid at first will not. Come slowly. I won't. At the very beginning, either. Chen Qin subconsciously took the garlic handed over by Bai Yu Yue and tentatively looked to the side of the Yi Shuang. At this time he was wearing an apron, but also out of the voice of a smile to comfort. Will not ask. Take your time. Everyone is the same at the beginning. Why should people be so hard on themselves? The words of the two were like a gentle wind, blowing away a trace of haze in Chen Qin's heart. She looked down at the garlic in her hands and said, Then, give me a little something more. You'd better sit there on the sofa. It doesn't need that much manpower in the first place. Yi Shuang said. Chen Qin didn't need to cook at all. A little princess like this who grew up with a golden spoon in her mouth. Sitting and waiting for dinner to start was a perfectly normal thing. No way. All right, then you help me peel the garlic. Saying that, Yi Shuang turned around and shouted. Coco, teach your sister Chen to peel garlic. Hearing Yi Shuang's voice, Tang Coco, who was holding Tan, 000 at this time, turned around. That kitten was still stepping on the milk. With a look of enjoyment. Oh oh. Coming. Peeling garlic don't need to be taught. Chen Qin felt that Yi Xuan was treating herself as an idiot. Yi Xuan also just laughed. During the mealtime, as soon as he sat down, Yi Xuan noticed the cell phone ringing, and it was also a call from Chen mother. Hey, Aunt Chen. Xuan ah, uh, have you eaten yet? On the other end of the phone, Mother Chen asked. Well, eating, Chen Qin is also here. Yi Xuan said. Glancing at Chen Qin, after hearing that Chen Qin was on Yi Shuang's side, Chen mother asked again, then you should know about your aunt Xian's matter, right? Did Qin girl tell you about it? Said, did something happen? Yi Shuang inquired. He really couldn't think of what that aunt Xian was looking for herself and had to go over the weekend. It's not clear at once. Mother Chen said, how is Bai now? Seeing that mother Chen suddenly asked about Bai Yu Yue, Yi Shuang seemed to be a bit strange, but still said, well, it's good. Can you send me a picture of Bai? The photo of Yu Yue. Is it? Well, it's best to take a clearer picture. Mother Chen said. Yi Shuang sniffed in his sight looked at Bai Yu Yue beside him. The young girl perhaps heard her name and was looking over with an innocent face. Well, Yi Shuang stood up and left the table, then walked over to the balcony. Looking at the night scene outside the floor to ceiling windows, he also spoke. Aunt Chen, if there is anything you want to tell me directly, is little white by your side? I'm on the balcony by myself. The person on the other end of the phone hesitated for a moment, and finally looked like he sighed. Actually, I think Xiaobai is a bit like your aunt Xian. Your aunt Xian once had a daughter. It disappeared behind. 
Yi Shuang froze for a moment, then narrowed his eyes. He touched his pocket and finally took out a plum lozenge and threw it into his mouth. Auntie Chen, in fact, Yu Yu is indeed not biological with her parents, and we learned about this matter some time ago. You're telling the truth? The person on the other end of the phone seemed to be agitated for a few moments. Well, indeed, God has eyes. Mother Chen said, I will tell Ah Sien about this. Yi Shuang, however, said, there's no need to be so anxious first, because it doesn't mean that Yu Yue is really Aunt Sien's real daughter. After all, the greater the hope, the greater the disappointment. I know, if, I mean if, Yu Yue is really Aunt Sien's daughter. Yi Shuang took a deep breath. What would Aunt Sien do? What to do? Well, bring it back to the harbor area? That's for sure. Ah Sien only has that one daughter. She definitely needs to bring it back to recognize her ancestors. Mother Chen said without hesitation. For some reason, Yi Shuang felt that the lancet in his mouth had soured quite a bit, even so much that it was sour to the point that it started to take on a bitter taste. He held the phone in silence for a while, until after Mother Chen asked suspiciously about the feed, he smiled and opened his mouth. What if, Yu Yue wishes to live on the mainland side? This way ah. Chen mother thought about it and seemed to understand what Yi Shuang meant, but she still said in a serious tone, Shuang Zai, letting her go back to her biological parents is the best choice, and the harbor area is not far from Haiju. There are more opportunities to meet if you want to in the future. That child needs a home, right? Yi Shuang, however, was a bit silent. Of course he knew this. He even started to bite hard on the lentil, making a clicking sound, perhaps remembering those words of the young girl under the street lamp. Yi Shuang's expression suddenly started to be serious. And, Auntie Chen, I think that in this matter, we need to respect Yu Yue's opinion. She's an independent individual, and can't take it on the chin gently to decide her future life. At the dining table, Bai Yu Yue took small bites of rice, but her gaze stayed on Yi Shuang's back in the distance. The other party's figure was so tall, like a big mountain, as if it could shield her from the wind and rain. This is not urgent first, wait for Aunt Sien to come out, we will slowly discuss. Mother Chen said, good. After hanging up the phone, Yi Shuang slightly took a deep breath. At this time, his nasal cavity was filled with the cool air after the air conditioner conditioning, slightly pungent. After gathering his mood, he slowly walked back to the dining table and sat down before feeling much reprieved. Who's calling? Chen Qin peeled the shrimp at this time, and then put them all into Yi Shuang's bowl. Yi Shuang looked at the shrimp in the bowl that looked like a small mountain, so he chucked a few pieces to buy Yu Yue and Tang Coco. Aunt Chen, told me about the weekend dinner. Yes? Aha. Uh -huh. At this time, Yi Shuang, however, noticed some warmth coming from his palm. He looked up and realized that Bai Yu was stretching out a hand to hold his palm. She asked in a small voice. Yi Shuang, is not happy? No oh. Yi Shuang smiled, but in his heart, he thought that this girl's intuition is so powerful? Obviously he did not say anything. At this time, Chen Qin, however, had one hand propped up on her face? It seemed that because of Bai Yu Yue's words, she also noticed a hint of something wrong with Yi Shuang, but Chen Qin did not open her mouth, but just continued to peel the shrimp for Yi Shuang. No need to peel it for me. You eat it yourself. When Yi Shuang saw this, she mentioned a mouthful. Then you peel one for me. It's okay. Yi Shuang was actually not very hungry, so he wiped his palms with a wet paper towel and then peeled the shrimp for the three girls, but Chen Qin ate a little and then stopped eating. Yi Shuang noticed and asked, Why don't you eat? Recently, my stomach and intestines are not feeling well, so I'm eating less. Chen Qin said with a smile, then added, You can also lose weight. Yi Shuang swept a glance at her waist and said, It's already thin, eat more. Chen Qin's body was originally very good plus often have in the gym exercise body, so not fat at all, really say where there is meat, that is estimated to be the butt, before Yi Shuang see her wear that kind of black tight yoga pants, completely in line with that kind of so-called peach, well if I can eat your cooking every day, I'll eat a little more, Chen Qin's beautiful eyes were half narrowed, revealing a mouthful of snow white teeth, as if she meant to say something, Yi Shuang just said a little helplessly, it's not like I won't let you come to my house, just come and say hello if you want to, that's what you said, Aha, uh -huh. then why don't I move in here too? Chen Qin asked tentatively. Yi Shuang sniffed and just glanced at Chen Qin. If I remember correctly, this place is quite far from your company, right? Not afraid of being late for work? Being a boss and still afraid of being late? Chen Qin said unconcernedly. At most, I'm worried about the time of the meeting. Then you decide for yourself. I'm fine with both. To Yi Shuang, there was no difference between taking care of one and taking care of two. However, now, Yui gradually started to become independent, which made Yi Shuang feel relieved. Just kidding. 
Chen Xin saw that Yi Shuang agreed so readily, but she laughed even more happily. It's just two beds, can't I sleep with you? Bai Yu Yu's sniffed, and at this time, she did speak out. No, relationship, I usually sleep with Yi Shuang, enough to sleep. The atmosphere suddenly quieted down, and even began to be weird. The young girl's thoughtless sentence, but it was like igniting something. At this time, when Tang Koko saw this, she immediately shrunk her head and ate shrimp, pretending that she didn't hear anything. Boy, wasn't Yui still a bit of a natural black? You guys still sleep together? Chen Qin's sight at this moment looked towards Yi Shuang, as if she was confirming the truth. Yi Shuang nodded. Aha! Chen Qin's eyes floated with watery mist as she stood up, her diamond earrings shaking violently. Did you guys still do it? Why? Obviously I didn't do it. Yi Shuang's calm sentence immediately let Chen Qin stay in place. She subconsciously oh, and slowly sat down again. Do what? By Yu Yu eh? Who was on the side? Asked. It's a samurai duel. You'll understand later. Yi Shuang said. Bai Yen Yu seemed to be remembering the peeling of onions from before, so she nodded gently with her chopsticks in her mouth. It's not as complicated as you think. Yi Shuang also said to Chen Qin at this time, because of what happened before. Many things about Yen Yu are still stuck in the perceptions she had when she was 8 years old. You don't need to react that much. Chen Qin sniffed, tastelessly skimmed her mouth. What's that? No matter how to say. She is also a healthy 18-year-old girl, pretty in white, who knows you one day wolfishly. Yi Shuang sighed, my three views do not allow me to do this, if I really want to be born early when, I don't listen. Although Chun Qin was more comfortable in her heart, she still grunted and looked away. Why couldn't she have a share? Chen Qin thought about it, but her heart started to feel bad again. Then her eyes reddened again. As the Chen family's eldest young lady, Chen Qin had never shed a tear because of aggression. But now, for some reason, she only felt that her nose was particularly sour. Yi Shuang sighed in his heart. He didn't want Chen Qin to know before just because this would happen. But Chen Qin was such a character. Knowing that he was a hedgehog, she still still reached out her hand, even if she was afraid of pain. Give, peel me three shrimps, and, just forgive you. Chen Qin sniffled and choked. After saying that, she also forcefully wiped her eyes with a tissue. And those who didn't know thought that Yi Shuang had done something wrong to her. Okay, Miss Chen. Yi Shuang continued to peel the shrimp for her. In his heart, he was thinking about how he always made girls cry these days, but it wasn't that he hadn't persuaded Chen Qin to turn back, just that this niece had a look of unless I die before saying anything. Yi Shuang is not without thought with Chen Qin's future. On the contrary, he has seriously considered. Just Yi Shuang now the mind is too modeled, when not to take all the feelings to treat others, with Chen Qin together is just the other side of the irresponsible. He would not be able to match each other dazzling as the sun's love. After the episode, it was almost time for Tang Kuku to go home, because Tang Kuku's neighborhood was at the back of the apartment, so she didn't need to be sent away, and she ran away after saying hello, so Yi Shuang went down to the underground garage with Chen Qin, look, the makeup is all blown out, in the elevator, looking at Chen Qin with a red nose, Yi Shuang smiled, not for you to see, Chen Qin muttered and looked away, she would not put on makeup in the company, after all, her own plain face is good enough to look good, just before meeting Yi Shuang, she would dress up carefully. Naturally, she did not want to be seen by the other party with her makeup spent. After arriving at the negative third floor, Yi Shuang just stopped his steps, intending to see Chen Qin get on the car, only to see that she suddenly followed and stopped. What's wrong? The jewel in my earring seems to have fallen off. Chen Qin said, Take a look. Jewel, drop the diamond? Yi Shuang walked over, just when he wanted to see which diamond was missing from her earring. Suddenly, a fragrant wind came. Chen Qin suddenly turned around and kissed him, feeling the jelly-like sensation. Yi Shuang just froze for a moment, and by the time he reacted the other party had already drawn back two steps. Humph! Nuisance! Chen Qin's face was covered with redness at this moment. She playfully spat out her tongue before getting into the car. Looking at the fading taillights of the car, Yi Shuang stood still for a while, and touched his lips. Looking at the lipstick stains on his fingertips, he couldn't help but think to himself, perhaps this is his final destination? His own age is not small, almost also should be married. If there is no accident, the last should be married with Chun Qin. After all, we know the roots of the two families in so good relations, as well as Chen Qin's actions and determination. There seems to be no better choice of marriage than her. Just two people from childhood similar to the general affection of childhood sweetheart feelings. Yi Shuang a time is also difficult to step over that hurdle, also cannot take the courage to face her love. In a trance, Yi Shuang thought of Bai Yugi for some reason. Why would he think of her? Yi Shuang is actually more clear that Yu Yue is not suitable for himself. Accurately speaking, he is not suitable for Yu Yue. Only, 
It seems that compared to before, Yi Shuang's thoughts at this time but began to be a little unfaltering up, and even produce a kind of, age does not seem to be a problem, thoughts, but when you think about it, in the end, it is also very ridiculous, and perhaps things would be different again when she truly understood the meaning of love. Go back, smiling as if laughing at herself, Yi Shuang turned around and walked into the elevator. After returning to the apartment, Yi Shuang found Bai Yan Yu sitting on the sofa holding 10, 000. After seeing him return, the young girl walked over holding the kitten. Yi Shuang, back, aha, Yi Shuang asked, why don't you take a bath yet? Want to join Yi Shuang? No way. Why? No reason, Yi Shuang said, and took the 10,000 in Bai Yan Yu's arms, then put it on the ground. Bai Yan Yu said, Yi Shuang, phone said that couples are allowed to bathe together. We are not yet. Yi Shuang pinched the other party a small face and said with a smile. The young girl suddenly tilted her head. Then when can we? When you grow up. Yi Shuang said ambiguously. Wait for me to be. The same as Chen Qin's sister. Bai Yan Yu said. Is that right? Yi Shuang. Aha. Then is Yi Shuang and sister Chen Qin husband and wife? Bai Yan Yu continued to ask again. No. Why? Yi Shuang was a bit surprised why Bai Yu Alu asked so much. But still said. Because there will be a lot of factors. How to say it? You will understand later. Bai Yu Yu's sniffed and suddenly asked, Will Yi Shuang and Sister Chen Qin be husband and wife in the future? Yi Shuang suddenly fell silent. Looking at the young girl beside him, he walked over to the sofa and sat down. Did Coco teach you? Bai Yu Yu eh? however, shook her head. Yi Shuang looked deeply at her and suddenly asked, If Chen Qin and I are a couple, what do you think? How do you think? The young girl just said very calmly, Then when I grow up, I will also be a couple. Dang. Yi Shuang stretched out his hand and knocked her head with a bit of crying and laughing, idiot, so you can't really understand the meaning of it, there is only one pair of husband and wife, you know, Bai Yu Yu's seemed to understand something, there is only one pair, whom, why, there is no why, Bai Yu Yu's thought about it again and seemed to be a bit confused, I don't understand, so that means you'll understand later, Yi Shuang also knew that with Bai Yu Yu's head is very difficult to think clearly about the problems, he patted the other party's head, Intending to go get the clothes, Yi Shuang, eh? If Yi Shuang and Sister Chen Xin are husband and wife, then what about us? Bai Yu Yu's words caused Yi Shuang's footsteps to lurch. He turned back and looked at the young girl's inquiring gaze, and after all, he couldn't come up with an answer. In the future, we probably won't be husband and wife. After considering for a long time, Yi Shuang finally said, Bai Yu Yu's looked like she had lost it all of a sudden, even her eyes darkened. Yi Shuang didn't have a reason to feel his heart being gripped. He resat beside Bai Yu Yue, looked at her expression that was permeated with gray, and had to say, it's all said that it's possible. Possible? Well, because who knows what will happen in the future. Oh, Yu Yu eh? so do you really know what a couple is? Bai Yu Yue thought for a moment, a couple is someone who can be together all the time. Well, but a couple is far more than that. Bai Yu Yu eh? however, whispered, I don't understand any of this, I just want to be together with you all the time. As long as Yi Shuang can, Yi Shuang realized at this time that what Bai Yu Yue cared about was not at all what a couple is or isn't, because she didn't know what a couple stands for. She just simply thought that a couple is an existence where you can be together all the time, and she wanted to be together with herself all the time. Yi Shuang, you said you would wait for me. Bai Yu Yue said, perhaps remembering the memories of that day after the rain, when the young girl looked at the snail and inquired about herself. Yi Shuang said, "Well, I will wait for you." So can we take a bath together? Yi Shuang, you asked me a whole lot of questions just for this? Yi Shuang froze for a moment. Bai Yu Yue blinked expressionlessly and cocked her head. Whom? Yi Shuang sighed. Facing her peculiar brain circuit suddenly had a feeling of having no place to use her strength. Let's go. Let's go take a bath together. Good. Bai Yu Yue was instantly energized. The bathroom of the apartment was not quite the same as the old neighborhood side. There was a relatively good bathtub and it was still fully thermostatic, Yi Shuang rarely saw a bathtub, and still wanted to take a bath to relax. After putting in the water, Yi Shuang briefly rinsed her body, and then lay down in the bathtub and stretched her limbs, surrounded by warm water, as if every cell was making a cheering sound. At this time, Bai Yu Yue also came in, but because of Yi Shuang's request, she put on a white split swimsuit bought by Yi Shuang, and Yi Shuang herself wore a pair of shorts. Yi Shuang, it's tight here. Bai Yan Yu tugged on the swimsuit in front of her. It's fine. The size should fit. Yi Shuang said, although he felt that he did buy a little smaller, leaving that slime all bunched up. After Bai Yu Yue also stepped into the bathtub, she directly sat in front of Yi Shuang's body and then leaned in. At this moment, 
Yi Shuang also did not have any distractions, treating it as if he had taken Bai Yuyi to a hot spring. He placed his chin on the young girl's head, placed both hands on the edge of the bathtub, and began to relax with his eyes closed. Bai Yu Yu eh? on the other hand, felt that the bow strap behind her was a bit of a hindrance. She first glanced at Yi Shuang, and after realizing that the other party was squinting, she reached out her hand to undo it herself, along with the swimsuit floating in the warm water. At this moment, Yi Xuan opened her eyes as if she sensed something was wrong, and, eh, at night, the color of the moon was like silver. Beside her, Bai Yu Yu eh had already fallen asleep. Her sleeping posture nowadays was no longer curled up, but very relaxed and snuggled aside, appearing even more exquisite under the caress of the moonlight. However, at this moment, Yi Shuang had one hand under his head, quietly looking at the ceiling. He naturally did not have a trace of tiredness. After all, he was thinking about the matter of Yu Yue and Chen Qin, and the matter of Yu Yue's real parents. At this time, some movement came from the young girl on the side. After she murmured, she rubbed her face against Yi Shuang's neck, and got a few more points closer. Her warm spit could even touch him at his neck. Seeing this, Yi Shuang pulled the light quilt and covered her exposed shoulders, slightly turning sideways. Yi Shuang looked at the face that was close at hand, gently ruffling the other party's hair with his fingers. His eyes were as deep as ink, not knowing what he was thinking. Just at this time, the young girl but suddenly came closer. Boo! Yi Shuang froze for a moment, only to see the other party murmur. Cricket, must be taken. Looking at the almost unconscious behavior of Yu Yu, Yi Shuang instantly cried and laughed a little. What the hell? But while laughing, he remembered about her after all. Before, even kissing had to be applied for and don't even think about going deeper. Now Yi Shuang also kind of understood that he was nothing more than unwilling. Just how many years have one wasted? Yi Shuang thought to himself, obviously before, he could be precise to the number of days, as if since he was picked up home by Yu Yue, he no longer remembers any of these things. There was some paranoia that seemed like it could really be put down in an instant. Recalling all the things of the past, smelling the faint floral scent as well as the soft and of the young girl beside him. Unconsciously, he also fell into a deep sleep. The night was silent. Early morning, after sending Yu Yue and Tang Koko to school, Yi Shuang washed the kitchenware, then sat down at the computer table and opened the computer every day to code words has almost become his habit. Unconsciously, along with the accumulation of the number of words, the number of readers has become more, and even the rating has also come to 9. 0. Yi Shuang first pressed the mouse to screen and shield the low star bad review display before starting to look at the recent comments. It's already past the recommendation. No matter what, the exposure of the 7-day recommendation period is still too little. I really hope those precious readers can help me push the book drought and spread the word. Yi Shuang muttered, but also as promised before, he directly updated three chapters today, and he also left a sentence at the end of the chapter for every zero. One rating increase plus one more. It's almost time to go to work. Glancing at the time, three chapters passed also to the point of going to work. He came to the underground garage and then drove the sports car to the school. Really slow. Yi Shuang had just put on his white coat, and then after turning on the air conditioner, a voice came from behind him. Eh? He was slightly stunned, but then he reacted that it was this insure you fellow. How did you get in when the school nurse's office was not open? Uncle, of course I have the key here. And Shi Yu was lying on the hospital bed at this time. She looked like she was reading a book, one leg lazily folded up, and even lifted her skirt quite a bit. The panties are showing. Yi Shuang reminded. It doesn't matter. Go ahead uncle feel free to use it, and Shi Yu seemed to really not care, continued to look at the book in her hand, the quiet school nurse room only had the sound of the pages, Yi Shuang draws the corners of his mouth, then returned to his seat and sat down, still saying I'm perverted, you're only perverted in this little life, right, what a rude, and Shi Yu said painlessly, my great grandfather is one of the few anti-war heroes buried in this side of the mausoleum as a foreigner, and I'm a native Chinese born and raised here, well, indeed I was rude, Yi Shuang apologized seriously, and Shi Yu didn't care much about it, and after explaining, she continued to read the book in her hand, until Yi Shuang asked, so you still read books, it's just a novel, called something like Tokyo Landlord, the author updates really slowly, and Shi Yu looked at it for a while and didn't seem to have much interest in it, why is it that pretty girls always surround the protagonist, even if you say so, Yi Shuang pointed to himself, actually, I also write novels, oh, What's the name of your novel? And she used sprawled body twisted her head around. Only the PIs under those flat bangs still had a spiritless look. Here, Yi Shuang suddenly got interested and tapped his cell phone, tapping the novel to and she you. After and she you took it, she just glanced at the number of words and put the phone down. Few words don't read. Yi Shuang, 
After resisting the urge to spank the other party again, Yi Xuan could only take his phone back, yell at me when there are more words, and Shi Yu then literally rolled over like a salted fish and started yawning. However, a few seconds later, the young girl suddenly sat up. Is it hard to write a novel? She asked. It shouldn't be hard, right? Yi Shuang said that it was just difficult to have grades. If it was just published, it should still be easy. How long does it take to write a chapter? Two hours if you start out? And Shi Yu counted the number of chapters of a one million word novel before lying down with an expressionless face. Good night. Don't give up so quickly, Aoi. Ah, Noisy uncle. Yi Shuang also had no choice but to return to his seat and sit down. It so happened that a student came in at this time. School nurse. Yi Shuang quickly switched to a professional smile. What's wrong student? Where are you uncomfortable? But the corner of his eye also looked to in Shi Yu's side and realized that the other party did not know when to pull the curtain. Really fast. I hurt my knee. I just fell. That student pointed to his skinned knee, which was still covered with some sand. Yi Shuang then brought peroxide or something and started to sterilize her. After skillfully bandaging it, Yi Shuang also asked the other party how it felt to move around, and that student blushed when she was taken care of so carefully by Yi Shuang. No, it's fine. School doctor you bandaged it very well. It doesn't affect the movement at all. That's good. Your wound is very shallow. Generally speaking you don't need to change the medicine. Just don't touch the water. Yi Shuang was squatting in front of that girl at this moment, speaking while adjusting the other party's tie. Thanks. You're welcome. Go back to class. Good after that girl answered. She suddenly asked again. Brother school doctor. Can you give me your contact information? I often wrestle. If you wrestle, just come directly over. Yi Shuang immediately said. Okay. After sending that student away, Yi Shuang just wanted to sit down, but realized that ensure you had sat in her seat at an unknown time. She crossed her legs. I think, I seem to understand. Yi Shuang, question mark. Understand what? Understand what? In the face of Yi Shuang's doubt at the moment. And Shi Yu also just waved her hand. The protagonist in a novel who is surrounded by beautiful women must be handsome. That's not of course. And also scrappy enough. Just be gentle enough. And Shi Yu said. Pointing her finger at Yi Shuang. I think you fit the bill. Yi Shuang sniffed. For a moment he did not know whether this guy was praising himself or undermining himself. His sight looked at the young girl and found that she did not know when she pulled out a piece of red and blue game console. The young girl flicked the joystick. The hair pulled behind the compact ear drooping down on the screen also did not care. Perhaps sensing Yi Shuang's line of sight. And Shi Yu suddenly beckoned. Uncle. Don't just look at your panties. Play the game together. What looking at panties? I don't know this. Men who can't even play games are doomed to a life of failure. Itchy ass again? And Shi Yu didn't know like she thought of something. Her ears reddened all of a sudden. She glanced at Yi Shuang. Then with a nimble roll, she directly shrunk into the quilt. Yi Shuang didn't care, and just continued reading up. And soon the time for lunch break arrived. Eat? Yi Shuang put the book away, then got up with the intention of going to the dining hall, perhaps feeling that he did not have much appetite. He pondered for a while. It's better to eat lighter today. I like a heavier flavor, the voice beside him said. Yi Shuang saw the insure fish that had suddenly appeared beside him without a sound, and he returned with a strange voice. Oh, I didn't bring any money. And, shouldn't you treat me to a meal? An Shifu pointed to herself. Even as the sleeves of her jacket were so long that the cuffs showed only one finger. And, I'm that cute. Yi Shuang also just casually replied back. Then you'll be hungry at noon today. Bad-hearted perverted pervert pervert uncle. Oh, I'm going to stir up the matter of you touching my butt. Yi Shuang, that's not groping. So is shooting. And Shi Yu was just carrying her pockets at this point, with an old-fashioned look. Just looking at Yi Shuang like that. Okay, a meal. Yi Shuang admitted that at that time he was indeed on top, looking at the other party's eyes that seemed to be smiling, inexplicably feeling a little weak. Bringing in Shi Yu to the nearby student canteen, there were quite a lot of people lining up now, and the air was filled with a nice smell of rice, which couldn't help but whet one's appetite. The categories in the student cafeteria were quite a bit more than the choices in the teacher's cafeteria. Yi Shuang noticed that in Shi Yu kept looking left and right, so he asked, Looking for so long, are you not thinking of what to eat? No, I'm looking at which guy is good at bullying. Let's cut into his queue then. Dang. Yi Shuang unceremoniously gave her a handful of knives. Give me an honest line. And Shi Yu covered her head. You curmudgeonly colorful uncle. How did the name change again? Immoral things like jumping the queue. It's better not to do it in the future. This you don't understand. Queue jumping others are also willing. For example, Yi Shuang had a look of disgust. May I ask how to make others willing? Seeing Yi Shuang's disbelief, and Shi Yu walked with a six-parent pace, shaking with her pockets in her pockets, to the side of a guy with glasses. 
The boy with glasses froze for a moment when he saw An Shiyu walking over. I'm sorry senior, can you cut me in line? Only to see An Shiyu suddenly put her hands together and let out a soft voice as if she was being cute. Even her expression was cute. A sudden change in the painting style? That boy was instantly dumbfounded and vacated his seat. Can, can, then you won't be unwilling. Willing, willingly, the other party nodded his head like a chicken pecking at rice, and Shiyu's expression changed back to its original form in an instant. She returned to Yi Shuang in front of the boy's dumbfounded gaze. Nah, willingly, Yi Shuang, that person just now, who is it? This kind doesn't count, you're playing with a teenager's feelings, Yi Shuang said, and Shiyu sniffed and her eyes swept another cue before walking straight over. At this time, a girl saw An Shiyu walking over, and before she could say anything, she saw An Shiyu's hand spread out, and five extra red bills appeared. Five hundred. Make room. Ah, you're not willing? Very willing. Then An Shiyu didn't give the other party any money either, and just lazily walked back again. Here, see, very willing. Yi Shuang, you this is also two crumbs right? No, don't you have money? Yi Shuang asks, and Shiyu reveals her bean eyes. Oh, you might have read it wrong. That's just massage coupons. So it's this. There's a ghost if you look at it wrong. Yi Shuang first smiled apologetically towards the man and woman who were being toyed with. Then carried in Shiyu and ran to the other side of the window to line up. Why are you running? Just give me an honest cue. After queuing up for two meals, Yi Shuang and ensure you finally found a place to sit down. Here. Yi Shuang also didn't forget to take a bottle of soy milk for in Shiyu. Soy milk? Isn't it what you said? You can't eat without drinking something while eating. Yi Shuang said, and Shiyu looked at the soy milk for a few seconds and tilted her head slightly. There is such a thing? Yi Shuang, don't drink it for me. No way. And Shiyu, however, snatched the soy milk back. At this time, the young girl sat beside Yi Shuang. She just wanted to put her leg on Yi Shuang's thigh, but as if she thought of something, she just put it down. And Shiyu picked up her chopsticks and pinched all the tomatoes from the scrambled eggs with tomatoes in her dinner plate into Yi Shuang's dinner plate. What are you doing? Our family has a family motto. Ninjas can't eat tomatoes. Then why are you ordering scrambled eggs with tomatoes? And whose family motto would have such strange content? TCH, I can't believe I was recognized. Yi Xuan looked at Shiyu with a very speechless look, but he originally had scrambled eggs with tomatoes on his dinner plate as well. And looking at the several extra pieces of tomatoes on his plate for no reason, he could only accept it. Just at this time, at the other entrance of the dining hall, a long-haired young girl and a girl with a big book bag walked in together. It smells so good. Kind of want to eat spicy hot pot. Tang Coco said, shaking her heavy school bag a bit. What do you want to eat? Yu Yu Ah? At this time, by Yu Yu Ah but stopped. She looked around as if she had discovered something. There. Is the odor of Yi Xuan? Odor? Brother must be at home ah. Are you hungry? Well, let's go. Go with me to eat spicy hot pot. Recently the new tomato flavor. Tang Koka smiled and pulled the young girl. Then the two of them walked towards the depths of the dining hall. Brother? A voice came from behind him. Yi Shuang who was currently eating rice froze for a moment. And after turning around, he found Tang Koko standing right behind him with Bai Yu Yue. Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang didn't expect it to be that coincidental. After all, Silver Mountain College has so many cafeterias. And each of them has two floors. Not only that, this is the first time Yi Shuang has come to the student cafeteria. And he would actually bump into it. Come and sit, Yi Shuang said. Bai Yenyu and Tang Koko looked and realized that the seat beside Yi Xuan was already occupied. And at this time, after An Shiyu noticed Tang Koko's line of sight, she also greeted, Yo, big boobs, again, it's you again. Bai Yu Yu sat opposite Yi Shuang, although she wanted to sit beside Yi Shuang, but someone else was already there. Yi Shuang, is here? Bai Yenyu seemed a bit strange as to why Yi Shuang was here. Yi Shuang had actually never told them that he was working as a school doctor. In fact, it was to avoid that after Yu Yue, this niece, knew about it, she would run to the school doctor's office all day long to look for herself. Last time, when Bai Yu Yue was injured, they didn't know that Yi Xuan was the school nurse, and thought that they had received the notification and rushed to the school nurse's office in time. Not only Bai Yu Yue thought so, even Tang Ku Ku was no exception. He wasn't willing to let Yin Yu keep all of her after school time to herself, but since he found out, Yi Xuan instead confessed straight away that, actually, I applied for a job as this school school nurse. Oh, that school nurse who said he was very handsome and gentle as brother? Tang Koku immediately reacted. Yi Xuan sniffed. There's such a rumor? Yeah oh, brother is quite famous in our grade. Yi Xuan. No wonder there are fevers every day. At this time, Bai Yu Yu's eyes also brightened up. In. School. In that case, one could look for Yi Xuan even at school. 
Yan Yu, it's not allowed to come over during class time. Yi Xuan quickly recognized by Yu Yu's thoughts and reminded. Unlike in Shi Yu, and Shi Yu was able to come because this was in itself a deal for him to join the school nurse. While not allowing Yuan Yue to come over was to avoid the other party from relying on herself too much and losing her independence. Otherwise he would have already told Yuan Yue. The dull hairs on by Yu Yu's head drooped all of a sudden, while the young girl gently held the bean sprouts in the bowl with her chopsticks, as if she had lost her soul, and her whole body was covered with low air pressure. Lost than imagined awe. Yi Xuan looked on, like he was a bit intolerant. He thought about it and finally had to say, I'll accompany you on your lunch break. Bai Yu Yu sniffed and immediately raised her head. Good. It seemed to have come to life all of a sudden. When Coco on the side saw this, she couldn't help but sigh a sigh of love's magic awe. But brother, why are you eating with classmate in Shiyu? Hearing Tang Coco's inquiry, at this moment Bai Yen Yu also looked over, curiously tilting her head slightly. It's a long story. And Shiyu simply returned from the sidelines. We're struck friends. What was that? Tang Koku and Bai Yu Yu didn't understand the meaning and only Yi Shuang twitched the corners of her mouth, wanting nothing more than to sew in Shifu's mouth shut. In the next second, and Shi Yu lazily pressed her legs on Yi Shuang's thighs, then moved closer on one side of her body with a little bad smile. Uncle, you explain? Yi Shuang saw how reckless in Shi Yu was, he just wanted to make a move, but noticed that by Yen Yu and Tang Koko's eyes were on him, so he didn't put his hand under the table. This sentence means that we have the fellowship of playing drums together. Playing drums. Tang Koku and Bai Yui naturally couldn't discover the movement under the table. Right. Yi Shuang could only answer that way. On the side. And Shi Yu propped her face up with one hand and smiled. Right. 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 Saying that, her stocking leg even deliberately pressed Yi Shuang's thigh. Yi Shuang looked at this playful look of an Shi Yu. Naturally he would not let her be so arrogant. Koko. Which entrance did you guys come in from? Upon hearing this, Tang Koko then twisted her head to point at the entrance to the dining hall behind her side over there oh. Along with that, Bai Yu Yu's line of sight also turned over. Yi Shuang immediately stretched out her hand after seeing this only and Shi Yu moved even faster, like a smooth loach, and stood up in a flash, still carrying her own dinner plate, and, I'm full, I'll slip away first. After saying that, and Shi Yu left with her dinner plate. Yi Shuang, the beating was light. Last time, there should have been a few more slaps, it should have been used as an answerine. Tang Koku and the girls didn't feel anything strange. And after seeing Ensure You Leave, they started asking about the school nurse's office. Brother, we can go to school together. But this was quickly rejected by Yi Shuang. After all, he had originally left the time for school to be dismissed between their peers. After seeing that the food was almost done, Yi Shuang then also planned to go back to the school doctor's office. Only when he left the dining hall he realized that Bai Yen Yu actually followed him. Why don't you go back to the classroom with Coco? Yi Shuang turned around and asked. Bai Yu Yi's small hand. However, Pulled on Yi Shuang's white coat, her voice seemed to be able to hide in the wind. Lunch break, can be together. Yi Shuang only remembered at this time that he was talking about lunch break. Not lunch, but his intention should be that lunch can be eaten together is right. Said the wrong thing, but at this moment, the young girl pulled his sleeve, as if she had gained the whole world. Yi Shuang quietly looked at him for a while, and suddenly sighed in his heart, realizing that he was getting softer and softer. Let's go. Follow me back to the school doctor's office. Good. After bringing Bai Yu Yue back to the school doctor's room, Yi Shuang sat down on his seat, while Bai Yu Yue reached out and directly jumped into his arms. It will give others a misunderstanding. Holding the soft young girl in his arms, Yi Shuang said, Classes, sleepy, Bai Yu Yi's face, however, lay on Yi Shuang's shoulder and murmured in a small voice. Yi Shuang looked, then also had to pat the back of the head of the young girl by her. After hugging for a while, Bai Yu Yi reluctantly got up. She coveted the warmth just now so much so that she still looked like she wanted to be hugged. You can only hug for one minute every day during lunch break. Yi Shuang set the rules. Bai Yu Yu's expressionless little face rarely appeared to struggle together. She counted, and finally stretched out two fingers. And, two minutes, if you behave well, you can consider it. Yi Shuang thought about it and finally said, although he did feel like rewarding himself. Bai Yu Yu agreed. She nodded her head gently. I'm good. It was at this time that the young girl's attention left Yi Shuang's body and she surveyed the third school doctor's room, the tip of her nose filled with the smell of disinfectant. The small table on one side was what Yi Shuang used for her office, simply cleaned up. Some small ornaments were still somewhat cozy. What's wrong? Yi Shuang. Why? School nurse? Bai Yen Yu inquired curiously. Yi Shuang sniffed and smiled faintly. Friday. Wow dash. After pulling open the curtain and pushing the window, at this time, 
the wind blowing on his face was sultry. After all, it was almost the end of the school year, the temperature was pouring upwards. Yi Shuang slightly moved his tightened shoulders, and then stretched his waist. After glancing at the time, he withdrew his gaze and got up to go to Class A to pick up by Yu Yue. Today was Friday, and it was almost time to meet with Aunt Xian at the weekend. Yesterday, he sent Yu Yue's hair to Mother Chen, and for the time being, there were no results coming back, but Yi Shuang didn't call to inquire about it. And in the end, it was just that he didn't want to know the answer so early. People are always contradictory. He both hoped by Yu Yue to find her real parents, but also worried that the child because of the resistance to be hurt. With the growing relationship with Yu Yue, Yi Shuang does not want her to be hurt again. That's why. People are always contradictory. Yi Shuang secretly sighed in his heart. He touched his pocket, skillfully opened the box and took out a candy out. The movement is no less skillful than pulling out cigarettes for himself to take a lighter. Just like Chen Qin that, although it was clear that his final marriage partner would be her, but because it was too familiar, so much so that Yi Shuang had an inexplicable sense of unnaturalness and contradiction when he thought about the possibility of personally undressing the other party in the future. Yi Shuang put his own white coat away, then his eyes fell on a corner and looked at an Shi Yu who was sleeping and lazing on the hospital bed, so he didn't lock the door as well, but just slightly brought the room door of the third school doctor's room with him, and reversed the door plate to, school doctor not in, Haizhou City, as a southern city, often appears to wear short sleeves over the spring festival, so even the robins appear slightly earlier in the month than in other provinces, and just after leaving the school nurse's room, Yi Shuang heard the hissing from the robins as if they were telling everything about the arrival of summer. Yi Shuang's footsteps were not in a hurry, and he just walked directly towards class A. Go ah, eat melon, eat what melon? The minister of the soccer department seems to be confessing to a girl, class 3A, seems to be called something like by Yu Yu A, the kind that is so pretty, class 3A, isn't it just a big school bag? I don't know, won't it be clear if we go over and take a look? A few passing students chatted, not forgetting to speed up the rhythm of their own footsteps. The sound of their discussion attracted Yi Shuang's attention, he glanced at those few students, and then he also directly followed them. At this moment, at the entrance of Class A's classroom, there were almost quite a number of students standing. They were whispering, their gazes looking towards the doorway, a tall boy with a smile on his face, handsome in appearance, and standing in front of him was naturally by Yu Yue as well as Tang Koko, and in the face of so many students crowding around. At this moment, Bai Yu Yue was still calm. It was just that Tang Koko beside her was looking to her left and right, a bit at a loss for words. Incidentally, Silver Mountain Academy is not against love. As the school director said, youthful love is the best, only slightly less than the pantyhose after exercise. Although it read with a hint of perversion, it was unexpectedly popular with the students. By Yui San, can you give a contact? Looking at the young girl, the boy smiled and spoke. I've liked you for a long time. As soon as he opened his mouth, the surrounding students immediately began to clamor, then cheered, together, 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 together. Yi Shuang stood in the crowd, but chose to observe all this. People always like exciting new things, just as what happened in front of them. No one knows whether that boy and Bai Yu recognize each other or not, just simply want to see what they want to see. They subconsciously forced each other with verbal kidnapping. What should Bai Yu do? After all, learning to refuse is also a kind of growth. But, what if she didn't refuse? After Yi Shuang thought about it, he did not continue to think about it. He stood in an inconspicuous corner and eyed what was going to happen next. We don't know each other. Looking at the boys who stopped themselves, Bai Yu Yue spoke softly, and that clear and cold look in turn caused many boys' hearts to thump. Holy shit, when did Class A have a girl that pretty? After hearing Bai Yu Yue say that, the boy wasn't in the slightest bit of a hurry. He revealed what he thought was a sunny and handsome smile, then spoke, Classmate Yu Yue, can you extend your hand? Bai Yu Yue didn't quite understand, but she still extended her hand. In the next second, she only saw that boy flip his hand and magically produced an extra rose. Now, do we know each other? Wow, seeing this scene, the surroundings were in an uproar. Bai Yu Yue looked at the rose in her hand and quietly observed for a few seconds. But what the young girl thought in her heart was, Yi Shuang, likes flowers? The boy is also smiling at this moment. He relies on such a means has not known how many girls to take. Like this look at the high and cold girl. In fact, better strategy. You, extend your hand. Bai Yu Yue suddenly said. The boy froze for a moment, and immediately understood. It seems that the other party is going to hand over his hand. Then the two people's small hands were pulled, and it was directly done. Surveying the other party's beautiful face, the boy also felt his breath blazing quite a bit at this moment. He stretched out his hand. Okay, I'm ready. 
The boy then noticed an extra bill in the palm of his hand. Ha! Huh? The boy froze for a moment, not reacting for a while, while by UUS said a thank you after giving the money. Thank you. Contact. Refused. Afterwards, she didn't pay attention to the petrified boy, and just walked through the crowd shoulder to shoulder with Tang Coco. Eh? The boy looked at the banknotes in his hand, and was still a bit confused for a while. However, at this time, he noticed by UUS footsteps stopped, then turned around. The whole person seemed to be refreshed. There was play. The boy reacted. So it turned out that she was playing a game of lust. He then opened his arms, but in the next second, by UUF fell headfirst into the arms of a man in the crowd, and even handed over her roses to the other party. Now, it was the crowd's turn to start being petrified. What happened? And at this moment, seeing by Yu Yi who jumped into his arms, Yi Shuang subconsciously wrapped his arms around the other party's waist, and looking at the surrounding people with that dumbfounded general sight, he smiled gently and said, All disperse, this is my family's child. At this time, it seemed that some people also recognized Yi Shuang as the parent who came over for the last disturbance, and some people also recognized that he seemed to be the school doctor of the third school medical room. However, Yi Shuang didn't say anything more and left with the young girl in Tang Coco. At this time that boy who opened his hands to welcome the wind and sunrise, could still hear the other side's voice coming from far away. Next time you buy roses you don't need to give a hundred, just give a five. Oh, brother, what's for dinner tonight? Let me think. The sky was covered with a layer of heavy clouds, non-black and non-white. As far as the eye could see it was an endless gray color, with a little depressing. Just looking at it would give a kind of discomfort from the bottom of the heart. Yi Shuang stood in front of the floor-to-ceiling window. His line of sight passed through the skyscrapers and rested on the sky that gradually dimmed down. It's going to rain, right? Yi Shuang muttered. As soon as his words fell, the sound of tapping came from the windowsill. Sporadic rainwater drifted down, drawing an exquisite scratch line on the floor-to-ceiling window, and then the sound of tapping began to become louder and more intense. Yi Shuang turned around, and at that moment the young girl beside the sofa was sitting on her knees, playing with 10, 000 with a small teasing stick. Yu Yu Ai. Yi Xuan opened his mouth. Eh? The young girl turned her head, and the movements in her hands stopped, and ten thousands finally pounced on her, even biting on her finger by mistake. When Bai Yin Yu saw this scene, her other hand gently touched the ten, zero zero zeros, and the latter immediately loosened up, and even tenderly licked the other's fingers. We're going to Chen Qin's house today, it's almost time to leave oh. Yi Xuan said, after all, today is the day agreed with Aunt Xian, from the message sent from Chen Qin's side. The other party seems to have arrived long ago. It seemed like if it wasn't for what Mother Chen said, Aunt Xian was planning to come over directly. Yi Shuang, it's raining, it's fine, we'll take the elevator to the basement and drive, we won't get caught in the rain. Good. Leading the young girl, Yi Shuang rode with her in the elevator to the basement level. Bai Yen Yu didn't know what would happen next. After she fastened her own seatbelt, she also reached out her hand to help Yi Shuang pull the seatbelt. No need. Sit obediently. Good. Yi Shuang drove the car out of the basement, and almost instantly, the sight in front of her eyes was covered by rain, and a cloudy patch was impossible to see. After turning on the windshield wipers, Yi Shuang drove the car towards the Chen family. Yu Yu eh, if I find news of your real parents. Yi Shuang hesitated, ultimately planning to give Bai Yu Yu a precaution first. You will recognize each other, right? Bai Yen Yu heard this, her good-looking eyes first looked at Yi Shuang for a moment. Then, she suddenly opened her mouth and said, Yi Shuang, you don't want me anymore? One sentence, as if it instantly destroyed Yi Shuang's mental construction, his face revealed bitterness. Stupid, how could I not want you? I'm not going anywhere, I only want Yi Shuang. After Bai Yin Yu finished speaking, she lowered her head and stopped speaking. Such a reply was exactly what Yi Shuang could have expected, and he didn't know whether he should be happy or sad to hear this. The rain dripped down on the car window, also making Yi Shuang's heart like that rain, his thoughts were dense and unorganized. This trip seems to be very long, very long, traveling as deep as the mud swamp general difficulties, also do not know how long, Yi Shuang they came to the Chen family, after parking the car in the garage, just after opening the door, Yi Shuang met Chen Qin who was dressed in a simple long dress, as well as the golden haired salty egg who came flying, it's raining so hard, we could have left later, Chen Qin said angrily, after all, it was raining so heavily outside, in her heart, she was still worried that Yi Shuang would encounter any danger when he left the car. What about An Chun? Yi Shuang also just smiled and then asked. Coming over, Chen Qin said, not far away. Four people walked over, besides Chen father and Chen mother. There was also a middle-aged couple, they were all dressed very simply, 
just that those two faces that would often appear in the TV made it impossible to go and ignore them. Xuan Chan, the middle-aged woman greeted Yi Shuang, haven't seen you for so many years, you've grown so handsome. Aunt Xian, Uncle Zhou, Yi Shuang also greeted politely. That's right, these two people were the two people who could possibly be Yu Yu's biological parents, Su Hui Xian as well as Zhou Feng. However, their line of sight at this moment was attracted by the young girl that appeared on the passenger side. The moment Bai Yu Yue appeared, that couple immediately walked over quickly. Sister Ro, Zhou mother even directly embraced Bai Yu Yue and began to cry, while Zhou father was also red-eyed, staring blankly at Bai Yu Yue. The paternity test came out. It is indeed Aunt Xian's daughter. Chen Xin lowered her voice to speak to Yi Shuang from the side, her bangs rubbing Yi Shuang's cheeks a little bit itchy. Sure enough, Yi Shuang looked at this scene, but in his heart, he thought that this world is really small. Aunt Xian's daughter is called Zhou Yuro. Yu Yue and Yuro are actually quite similar, Chen Xin said. Yi Shuang, however, did not listen, but gazed at the distance only to see the hugged by Yu Yue reacted and violently pushed away Mother Zhou, then ran to hide behind Yi Shuang. The young girl was lying on Yi Shuang's back, her fingers grasping his clothes with force, and a trace of fear seemed to have resurfaced on her pretty face. Sister Zhua, Mother Zhou spoke out, and as a result, Bai Yu Yue seemed to resist even more. The other party's body was pressed against his back, and Yi Shuang was able to clearly feel Yen Yue's trembling body. Come here, Yi Shuang said, pulling Bai Yu Yue to his side. He held the other party's cold little hand, then softly soothed. Don't be afraid. I'm here. I'm Bai Yu Yue. However, directly stretched out her hand and hugged Yi Shuang's neck hard like a wombat, saying nothing. There was no way. Yi Shuang also had no choice but to put one arm around the young girl and then said to father and mother Zhou, Aunt Xian, Uncle Zhou, let's go in and talk first. At this time, father Zhou and mother Zhou reacted, while mother Chen also spoke out. Come in first, they have all cooked, eat and eat before speaking. Afterward, everyone walked into the house and sat down at the dining table. Bai Yu Yue was still unwilling to let go, causing her slender body to sit directly on Yi Shuang's lap, and then buried her face without moving. This scene caused everyone present to have a somewhat subtle expression especially the two pairs of elders who had sized up Yi Shuang, looking at the girl sitting on Yi Shuang's lap with a look of wanting to speak. Yu Yu A has suffered a lot of injuries, so, is a little more dependent on me. Yi Shuang had no choice but to explain to the elders while calming the young girl. Chen Xin was the most calm one, to ask why. They all slept together at night, so she didn't care about this stuff. Aunt Xian. At this time, Yi Shuang spoke. Hey, you speak. So Yu Yu A is your biological daughter. A thousand times over? Yes, this is the paternity test. We got the report and put off all arrangements to come to the mainland in the first place, Mother Zhou said, and then looked at Bai Yu Yue, but there was no response. Yi Shuang glanced at the paternity test. He slowly exhaled, then gently patted the young girl's back. Yu Yu Yue, why don't you listen? Come down first. Good boy. Yi Shuang lowered his voice and said in the young girl's ear, otherwise you won't sleep together in the future. Bai Yu Yue seemed to remember that she had to be obedient. She hesitated for a moment, but finally slowly turned around. Those jewel-like eyes carried a thin layer of water mist as they stared at the couple. Rose sister, Mother Jo had a heartbroken look on her face, seeing her daughter resisting herself so much. Her heart naturally ached like a knife cut. No one knew that during the years of losing her daughter she is how to come over. Almost no day to sleep solid sleep. Whenever she closes her eyes, ears always have her daughter's call. Mom, I'm cold. Mom. I'm hungry. She was worried that her daughter was not warm enough to eat, and from the words of Chen's father and mother, she concluded that her daughter was indeed having a very bad time, and had even been locked up and raised as livestock. When she thought of this, Zhou mother felt that her breath hurt, and the self-reproach inside her was strangling her heart fiercely every moment. Good girl, go home with mom. Okay, we live in a big villa. Eat a big meal. Mom take you to travel. Go shopping every day. We forget those unhappy. Okay, Joe mother said with a trembling voice. Father Joe didn't seem to be very good at words, but his eyes were also red. But after Bai Yu Yue heard the word home, the resistance became even more intense, as if every pore in her body was in denial. Her small hands tightly grasped the clothes in front of Yi Shuang, and her body began to tremble. Good girl you speak, want what mom can satisfy you, as long as you are willing to go home with me. No, don't. The young girl raised her volume of voice in a rare way. As if a sharp sword pierced Zhou Mother's heart fiercely, Mother Zhou immediately lost her voice and cried. Yi Shuang also realized that Aunt Xian's words were bouncing around in the minefield of language Yui. Looking at the young girl sitting in his arms, he first gently patted her back, and then said to Mother Zhou, Aunt Xian, 
seeing the other party as if he was emotionally out of control. Yi Shuang secretly sighed in his heart. Just how many families does this kind of goddamn traffickers have to destroy before they can give up? Obviously Yu Yue can grow up healthy like a little princess. Instead of being in the gloomy attic, guarding the tiny window and gawking. Chen Qin. Yi Shuang looked at Chen Qin beside her at this moment. You first help me bring Yu Yue to the living room to sit over there for a while. I have something I want to say to Aunt Xian and the others alone. Chen Qin stood up when he heard this, but Bai Yu Yue was not willing to come down from Yi Shuang's arms, until he calmed her down a few more times. Bai Yu Yue was taken by Chen Qin's hand and brought to the living room sofa to sit down. After the two of them separated a little bit, Yi Shuang saw that Mother Zhou's mood was also gradually settling down, so he opened his mouth and said, Aunt Xian, Yu Yue's current situation. Although it's just my personal opinion, but her current situation, for the time being, is not very suitable to return to the harbor area with you. Why? Because she was probably abducted at the age of two or three, and that part of her memory is just too vague and, even to the point of not being able to remember it at all. In other words, the current you guys are about the same as strangers to Yu Yue. Yi Xuan's sentence left Father Zhou and Mother Zhou speechless for a moment. As you all can see, she relies on me. A lot. Yi Xuan continued. But some time ago, the situation wasn't like that at all. Yu Yue lived by herself. She was locked up in an attic for eight years at the age of seven or eight years old. When she came out at sixteen, she entered school under the arrangement of the community. Let's not even talk about the fact that she was beaten by that old white seven every day until she was eight years old. And she didn't even always get enough to eat. And she would be abused quite a bit. When she lived on her own later, no one taught her how to live on her own and how to live in school in a modernized society. She didn't have a cell phone couldn't recharge her meal card, and was disliked and bullied by her classmates because she couldn't do laundry and always wore her clothes that weren't dried out. Even if she had money on her, she would only buy instant noodles to eat, and may even have never had a bite of hot food in all those years. And because of being locked up for a long time, her language ability is also almost lost. Won't communicate with others, in the eyes of others, she is a freak, a fool, a mental illness, and an existence to be spurned. And as a result, she used to be locked in the restroom all night without being able to call for help. She would have her hair burned with a lighter. She would suddenly be kicked to the ground while walking, and her seat in class would be messed up and even piled with garbage. Even if they were falsely accused, they had no ability to defend themselves and could only subconsciously apologize and say they were sorry. She should have been able to hate the world for all the injustices it had done to her, but she didn't. Yi Shuang continued, and when I was at my lowest and saddest, it was this child that, because she thought I might be hungry, and also knew how hard it was to be hungry. She handed over the instant noodles she had just bought. She's really a very kind child. The world kissed her in pain, but she sang in return. Because Father Chen and Mother Chen couldn't bear to tell Father Zhou and Mother Zhou too many things. When they knew that Bai Yu Yue had gone through all these things, Father Zhou and Mother Zhou finally couldn't keep their emotions in check, and they couldn't say anything for a while. Then, then why? Won't you let me take her back? Mother Zhou choked and said, Yi Shuang, however, didn't answer but continued, I was also brought back to her house that rainy night, and I'm a bit ashamed to say that the relationship between Yu Yue and I was more like keeping each other warm, I had nowhere else to go at the time, and she simply felt sorry for me, so she didn't want me to leave, and even shoved all the money over, I started taking care of her in return after realizing she was incapable of taking care of herself, at the same time, I began to teach her how to clean and wash her clothes, and how to give herself a bath, and blow dry her hair, teaching her how to cook, of course, I also went to the academy she attended and secretly helped her with some minor school problems. Yi Shuang said one by one and smiled. Now, she's making new friends now, and shopping and eating desserts with her friends like a normal girl, and speaking out her refusal in the face of things she doesn't want to do. Her academic performance has also improved, and gradually she can talk to others. By the way, we also picked up a kitten, named 10, 000 because the medical expenses cost 10, 000. We will even receive love letters and be confessed to in public instead of the smelly girl we once were. Yi Shuang read in pieces. He realized that the things between himself and Yu Yue seemed as if he could never finish talking about them. In the end he continued with a smile and said, I originally planned to let Yu Yue leave after she succeeded in becoming independent. But, that day when she came out from the police station, after she said that I don't want my parents but only Yi Shuang, it's like I realized that her dependence on me is more powerful than imagined. I also think clearly now. So, Yi Shuang stood up at this time, solemnly bent down and said, Aunt Xian, Uncle Zhou, if it's possible, before she becomes independent, please leave Yu Yue's current life alone for now. After all, she is also my treasure. Ah, 
the air was deathly silent. Everyone's eyes were cast on Yi Xuang's body. Man was a contradictory animal. He both hoped that the young girl could return to her biological parents, and he also hoped that she could stay by his side when the two clashed together. Yi Xuang ultimately chose to listen to his most direct heartfelt feelings with Yu Yu. Four elders are standing here. Yi Xuang this sentence out. The pressure to be endured can be imagined. He was filial piety and respect elders. This is his few positive confrontation of the meaning of the elders. The only two times. R for Bai Yu Yi. Quiet atmosphere. At this moment no one opened their mouths. Until Mother Zhou said. No. My daughter can't stay with you. Anymore. Alone man and woman living together. No. Zhou mother's attitude. However. Began to be resolute. We thank you for taking care of Zhou Mei. But no matter what. You are not related to her. I can't let her stay with you all the time. We. As her biological parents. Have blanked out for so many years. Now it's all the more important to bring her back and take good care of her. Make up for all those years. Aunt Xian. Yi Xuan just opened his mouth. And the other party said directly. No. What if you've knocked her up? Xuan Chan. Don't blame Aunt Xian for speaking harshly. But no parent is willing to leave their daughter with a man. And at almost the same age. It's a man's nature to have something happen at the drop of a hat. Besides. You're in no position to talk that we're intruding on our own daughter's life. We are her biological parents. Who are you? These words were said rather heavily, so much so that Father Chen and Mother Chen both started to frown, especially the protective Father Chen who spoke directly. Ah, Xian, are you questioning my family Xiao Shuang's character? I'm telling you, if it wasn't for Xiao Shuang, your daughter would still be eating instant noodles and picking up garbage on the streets. If she really wanted to get pregnant, she could have given birth to three by now, to her. You guys are strangers, no salt, no flour, you guys are now gaga jumping to the devil's use, will not respect the other girl's idea? Subsequently, Father Chen also looked at Yi Shuang, deliberately educating with a stern face, Xiao Shuang, you just spoke harshly too, how can you say that they are disturbing that sister boy's life, no matter what, they are also the other party's biological parents, I know you're in a hurry, life although I won't prepare a speech for you in advance, but next time you should pay attention to your words, yes, Uncle Chen, Yi Xuan sniffed, and also knew that he just got a little bit unable to collect his emotions, but obviously, at this moment, Chen father was giving himself a step down after his parents passed away. Uncle Chen was really treating him as half a son, and although Yi Xuang had been out of the society for a few years, he still wasn't smooth enough in a lot of things, especially when it came to his feelings. Of course, Chen's father is also clear that Yi Xuang is a child who was easily swayed by his feelings. Otherwise he wouldn't have been clutched by that Zhao Mangyao for so many years. At this moment, Yi Xuan gathered her emotions and adjusted her mind before calmly saying, Aunt Xian, Uncle Zhou, I just said the wrong thing. I'm sorry, but Yu Yu's life is getting better now. So I hope Yu Yue can continue to stay here and not go back for now. Forget it, it doesn't matter. Mother Zhou and Father Zhou also sighed and were torn for a moment. The atmosphere was once again quiet. At this time, Chen Qin also brought by Yu Yue over. After all, the conflict between the two sides just now was naturally clear to them as they sat in the living room. Bai Yu Yue returned to Yi Xuan's side as soon as she appeared, just like a sticky bug, and at this time, Chen Qin's face was a bit complicated. After all, Yi Xuan's expression just now, it was as if she saw the shadow of Zhao Mengya once. When will Yi Xuan be able to be like this for himself for once? He is a hero, but it seems that he is not my hero. Alas, where exactly is the difference? Yu Yue, seeing Bai Yu Yue sitting beside herself, Yi Xuang smiled faintly. They are your real parents. Don't be afraid. Say hello first. Bai Yu Yue at this time, however, is full of hostility to Father Zhou and Mother Zhou. She is not willing to anyone to take herself away from Yi Xuang, but the young girl is kind. Even if she holds hostility, the most vicious thoughts in her heart are just the thought of the other side to go home quickly. Quickly go home. Uncle. Aunt. Bai Yu Yue opened his mouth. Zhou father and mother of Zhou did not know what to do for a moment, and even do not know whether to should this name. And Mother Zhou just smiled bitterly and said, A daughter, call me mom, okay? Bai Yu Yu eh? However, hid her face behind Yi Shuang and whispered, I'll shout if you, don't bully Yi Shuang. Mother Zhou immediately said to Yi Shuang, Shuang Chan, just now Auntie spoke heavier, I apologize to you. No, Aunt Xian, it's me who spoke too harshly. Yi Shuang responded in a hurry. After both sides punished themselves with three cups, Bai Yu Yue first looked at Yi Shuang and then at father and mother Zhou across the table before whispering, Dad, Mom, although it was very stiff to say this sentence, but the good thing is that it was still said smoothly, the two old men sitting across the table were instantly happy, but they were afraid that their actions would again cause Bai Yu Yue to react violently, I, 
Want to stay by Yi Shuang's side? Bai Yu Yue continued. Father Zhou and Mother Zhou looked at each other. Zhou's sister, is there really no discussion? It's not that I can't trust Shuang. It's really. Mother Zhou was full of kinks. She was a traditional type at heart. And it was really hard to accept a lone man and woman living together. Bai Yu Yue, however, said. Yi Shuang, I want to take a bath with him. What if he doesn't want to? Only occasionally. The expression of Father Zhou and Mother Zhou was suddenly strange, and even Yi Shuang dryly coughed. Don't mention this ah, really want to treat me as a pervert. In that case, you guys should get engaged first. At this time, Father Zhou also said, No way, no way. The three members of the Chen family immediately opened their mouths. Especially Father Chen said, No way. Xiao Shuang is from our family. He's going to marry Qin Mei in the future. He and my daughter are living together. Who knows if anything has happened. In that case it would be better to get engaged first. Father Zhou frowned and said, You, put, fart. Father Chen instantly became anxious and almost jumped up. Absolutely nothing happened. Seeing the way Father Chen and Father Zhou were about to quarrel, Yi Shuang immediately opened her mouth to change the topic. That, that, this is not the time to talk about this, right? The two elders spoke at the same time. Shut up, Yi Shuang. At this time, Chen Qin, however, opened his mouth. Uncle Zhou. I know a Ye's character. I grew up with him. I think the key now is to figure out how to make Yu Yue accept you guys. Father Zhou sniffed and also quieted down. Yi Shuang also gave a secret thumbs up in admiration after seeing Chen Qin control the situation. Chen Qin slightly raised her eyebrows and made a six pose with her hand. Aunt Xian, Uncle Zhou, why don't you guys try to integrate into Yu Yue's life first? Instead of letting Yu Yue integrate into your life. Yi Shuang spoke. How about it? Father Zhou and Mother Zhou sniffed, thought carefully, and did not speak for a while. Daughter have found back. All face do what? First eat. Chen father at this time was greeted. And by Yu Yue in fact has long been hungry. Not to mention her that amazing amount of food. In the Yi Shuang to her clip some food. Then small mouth like a cute hamster general eat up. At this time, Zhou's father and mother also looked at their own daughters. Perhaps because the other party to eat the appearance of too much healing. So that the atmosphere at this moment had eased up. The rain outside the window gradually became smaller. The salty egg standing in front of the house suddenly called out, then spat out his tongue and twisted his head to trot back. Ah Nui, eat some of this grouper. This is delicious. Mother Zhou rose slightly and experimentally used a spoon to scoop a piece of fish for Bai Yu The young girl didn't refuse when she saw it, and ate it together with the rice. The fish was mixed with shredded green onions as well as the sweetness of the soy sauce, and with the rice, it was sweet and fresh. Thank you. Yu Yue also didn't forget to say thank you. Mother Zhou was instantly happy, and she exchanged a glance with Father Zhou before the two of them took turns pinching dishes for Bai Yu Yue. In the blink of an eye, the young girl's bowl was a small mountain high. Bai Yu Yue took it all as it was and ate it all. Ai ai ai. You guys don't keep pinching the food. Those who don't know would think that people don't have hands. Seeing that the two of them had a great tendency to continue, Chen father mentioned a sentence at this time, and only then did Zhou's parents react putting down their chopsticks a bit awkwardly. This meal was finally over. Although Yi Shuang had just clashed with Zhou's parents, it was not a serious conflict. In the following time, Yi Shuang let Bai Yan Yu and Zhou's father and mother stay alone for a while, and the young girl was not as resistant as she was just now after the meal. It was just less than half an hour before Yu Yue returned to Yi Shuang's side. What did they ask you? When Bai Yu Yue sniffed, she said softly, asked me what I usually do. If I'm willing to go back, I'm not willing. Yi Shuang smiled. And, the young girl thought for a moment. A question mark surfaced on her expressionless delicate little face. There's no more. Then she seemed to think of something. There is. More. What? Ask us how to bathe. Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang pulled the corner of her mouth and asked a little helplessly. What did you say? Bai Yu Yue paused. Yi Shuang asked me to wear a swimsuit. Or else we can't wash together. After hearing this, Yi Shuang was finally relieved. At the very least this sounds a little bit more normal and won't be treated as a pervert by Aunt Xian and the others. Then by Yu Yui added. In the past when I didn't wear a swimsuit. Yi Shuang helped me rub the bubbles. Yi Shuang. Forget it. Destroy it. Say it wrong? Bai Yan Yu asked with a crooked head when she saw this look of Yi Shuang that seemed to have lost its color. It's fine. Yi Shuang just pinched the other party's small face. However, it was good that Father Zhou and Mother Zhou did not look for Yi Shuang. The two pairs of elders chatted for a long time there in the living room again and told Yi Shuang that they should go back to their rooms to rest and sleep first, and that they would talk about anything tomorrow. There was no way. It seemed that they couldn't go back to the apartment tonight. So Yi Shuang went back to his room to take a bath first. Why did I lose my temper tonight? Obviously I didn't think that way at first. Bathroom? 
water mist filled the room. Yi Shuang felt the sensation of the hot water from the shower dripping onto his body, and couldn't help but close his eyes and think about it after a full few minutes had passed. He reached out his hand and flicked his hair back, and then briefly rinsed his body. Looking at himself in the bathroom mirror, Yi Shuang wiped his hair with a towel while thinking about Bai Yuyue. After simply wrapping a towel around his body, he walked out of the bathroom. Let me help you blow dry your hair, a voice came from the side. Yi Shuang was a bit stunned. He turned around only to find a figure wearing a black lace nightgown sitting on the bed, her back leaning against the bed, slightly crossing her legs, and holding a book in her hand and looking at it. Chen Xin seemed to have finished her bath earlier than Yi Shuang. She had her hair hanging down, and her face was even more innocent and playful after removing her makeup. Under the hem of her skirt, her long straight legs had a reddish color, and she didn't care about Yi Shuang's line of sight. Then Chen Xin slowly raised his head and noticed Yi Shuang, who only enclosed the lower half of his body. Muscles are good, why don't you wear pajamas out? Chen Xin lowered her head and continued to read like she didn't care, but in fact her face had already started to burn. Yi Shuang looked at his 99% abs, a little bit of force, but can recover a 78% of the prototype. What's so strange about boys being like this after a shower? Yi Shuang went back to the bathroom and put on his clothes, then he also sat on the edge of the bed. Chen Qin was not polite, and directly put his legs on Yi Shuang's thighs. Help me squeeze my legs, tonight it's this lady who helped you out. Yi Shuang then stretched out his hand to hold the other party's leg and pinched it slightly. How is the force? Miss Chen? Hiss. Pain pain pain. Although Chen Qin said so, she didn't take her leg back, she just slapped Yi Shuang's shoulder. Smaller force. Pain means the massage is in place. Yi Shuang eased his strength a little bit. Then he said, I seem to have messed things up tonight. Yeah. It seems like I'm getting high on myself, Chen Qin said and added, exactly the same as when you confessed to Zhao Mengyao. Yi Shuang gave a dry laugh. Speaking of that, I just listened to daddy and the others chatting. It seems like they are discussing about the engagement, Chen Qin said. Aunt Xian is so traditional, and you are so close to Yu Yue, they definitely want you to get engaged. After all, it's about their daughter's reputation. Then Chen Qin continued, but well, daddy, they are definitely not willing. After all, they have always hoped that we can get married. Ah, Yi, what do you think yourself? Chen Qin's eyes lingered on Yi Shuang's body. Think what? Yi Shuang pretended not to understand. If you can only choose between the two, who do you choose? Chen Qin asked bluntly. Yi Shuang thought about it and just opened his mouth. But as a result, Chen Qin suddenly sat up straight. Stop. I won't listen first. Ha? Huh? No. I don't want your answer now. Chen Qin suddenly stretched out her hand with force and pushed Yi Shuang. Then after pressing on him, she bent her head down, pinched a few strands of hair and tickled Yi Shuang's cheek, smiling sweetly, I don't want your answer now. To me, the answer doesn't seem to be that important, I just need your person. Quickly, tell me that you like this lady and want to get married with this lady. The thin pajamas can't isolate any temperature and softness. Yi Shuang looked at the pretty face close at hand, the corner of his mouth pulled, and directly slapped her on the buttocks. Splat, crisp and loud, the elasticity far exceeded the previous two slaps. Yi Shuang sat up again, moved her shoulders and said, overplayed my hand, M.S. Chun. As a result, just as the words fell, Yi Shuang noticed Chun Qin's eyes reddened, and almost instantly, Bean Sai's teardrop slid down. People just favor you. Where exactly am I inferior to others? Bastard. Obviously I liked you first. After Yi Shuang saw Chen Qin actually crying again, he was a bit at a loss for words for a while, and had to patiently coax the other party. It hurts. Loser. Then you hit back. I'm the one who doesn't want to give up ah, you think I'm you. Chen Qin raised his head, but found that Yi Shuang's careful face was very close. I don't know why. Seeing the other's face Chen Qin suddenly wanted to laugh again, and suddenly cried and laughed as he stretched out his hand and continuously slapped Yi Shuang's shoulder. Bad guy. Bad guy. Saying again that you don't want to give up. And now you're hitting so hard. Yi Shuang instead let Chen Qin hit his shoulder like this and spat out. It's not the same. Okay. It's not the same but Yi Shuang also knew that Chen Qin had been coaxed. To be honest this guy had been very good at coaxing. Sometimes when he was angry and pissed off he started giggling inexplicably. Knock knock. At this moment, a sound came from the door of the room on the side. Yi Shuang got up and went to open the door, while Chen Qin also quickly sat on the edge of the bed and wiped the teardrops on his face with a tissue. After opening the door, at this time, there was a familiar figure standing outside. The long-haired girl was wearing a cute light yellow nightgown and holding a pillow in her hand. She tilted her pretty face. Yi Shuang. Sleep together. Who helped you blow your hair? Bai Yu Yu's hair came with a very nice shampoo scent. So Yi Shuang opened his mouth and asked. Hey, sister. Sister? 
Yi Shuang brought Yu Yue in first, then looked at Chun Xin suspiciously. You helped her blow dry? How could it be? It was the resident ant who blew it. Chen Qin waved her hand instead. Then she said sister, the live-in ant is just a profession. There is a new one. Seems to have just graduated from college. Or a 211. Chen Qin saw the knock on the door was by Yu Yue, then greeted her and let her sit over. Although she didn't like Yi Shuang to be too close to her. But for Yu Yue herself Chen Qin still quite like. Just graduated from college? Right oh. Our family to live in the ants open 30,000 labor. Are higher than many of my company employees? That girl said to do until retirement it. That's not surprising. Yi Shuang didn't feel strange at all after thinking about his salary as a school nurse. At this time, Bai Yu Yue put her own smaller pillow at the head of the bed, then leaned next to Yi Shuang's pillow. After doing this, she pulled the corner of Yi Shuang's coat. Sleep? Yi Shuang glanced at the time and realized that it was still quite early. Yu Yu A, uh, put on a mask before you sleep. Chen Qin was smiling at this time, but she said with a smile, Mask? Right. Chen Qin opened the nightstand on the side, then took a few face masks out. Come on, lie down. Bai Yu Yue didn't quite understand, but she still lay down. At this time Chen Qin tore open the package, then skillfully spread the mask to the young girl to put on after doing this. She put on another mask for herself and then asked Yi Shuang, You also put one on. I won't need to. Yi Shuang said, And Yu Yue is still so young. She doesn't need to put on a mask, right? Youth is the best cosmetic. Bai Yu Yue was born beautiful and had good skin. Yi Shuang personally felt that she did not need to put on a mask to replenish water. You think I'm old? Under Chen Qin's white mask, a pair of big eyes stared at Yi Shuang slyly. Yi Shuang drew the corners of his mouth. It's not like I meant that. Lie down. Oh. Yi Shuang also had no choice but to lie down and let Chen Qin toss himself. Not long after, the three of them were topped with face masks, which looked a bit funny. Yi Shuang asked Bai Yin Yu beside her. What does it feel like to put on a face mask? Cool. Chen Qin instead took out her cell phone, then took a selfie of the three people together, preserving this moment permanently. Yi Shuang, is weird. Bai Yu Yue looked at Yi Shuang topping a face mask and whispered, putting on a mask isn't always like this. Oh, after applying the mask, Chen Qin sat beside Bai Yu Yue again, gave her a lot of knowledge about skin care, and then chatted about some school things, during which Yi Shuang could not interject, and chose to play with his cell phone on the side. The night gradually got deeper and deeper. Bai Yu Yue seemed to be sleepy as well, so she pulled the corner of Yi Shuang's coat and wanted to sleep. You guys have to sleep together in my house too, Chen Qin said from the side, although she knew it would be like this after she just saw Bai Yu Yue. Her expression was a bit complicated at the moment. Yi Shuang, on the other hand, said, I won't do anything rash. Who knows? Humph, then you come together to supervise? Yi Shuang said jokingly, who knew that Chen Qin raised an eyebrow, then thought for a moment. Right oh, good. Yi Shuang. As a result, Chen Qin really did lie down, then patted the center position, said with a smile, not a laugh. Yi Shuang, you sit. Yi Shuang immediately felt his scalp numb, and dryly laughed and said, Speaking of laughter, I'd better go sleep in the other room. He didn't even dare to think about this image. As a result, in the next second, he was pulled by both girls at the same time. Bai Yu Yue slowly sat up. Yi Shuang, I will go too. Chen Qin. On the other hand, directly yanked Yi Shuang down, then rolled over and pressed one foot against his body with a vicious look. What? Just sleep with her, but not with me? It's not like you don't know the reason. No, you give this young lady a good lie down. At this time, Bai Yu Yue also pasted over and hugged his arm closing her eyes to sleep. Chen Xin instead used one hand to prop up his face, looking at the other party's difficult expression. He couldn't help but laugh. Blah ah, afraid I'll eat you ah? Yi Shuang. However, had a feeling of being on pins and needles, especially if this matter was known by Chen's father and the others, they would definitely be immersed in a piggy bank, this is not a novel, this is reality, really no kidding, sleep, Yi Shuang said with a stern face at this time, he had already thought about it, he would just run away directly later, anyway, there were many rooms, Chen Xin also knew what Yi Shuang was thinking, directly took out his cell phone, clicked and took another picture for the three people, she lazily shook the cell phone in her hand and said, Ah uh, ye, you also don't want this matter to be known by my daddy and the others, right? M.S. Chen, please be calm. I'm calm ah. Uh. Anyway, you can accompany Yu Yue to sleep. What's wrong with accompanying me to sleep? Chen Xin said, suddenly smiled and whispered. Instantly, sleep low. Yi Shuang took a deep breath and also had to lie down. Chen Xin turned off the light, directly learned by Yu Yue's model drilled into Yi Shuang's arms. Feel each other's temperature. Chen Xin reddened her cheeks where no one could see. 
For the first time she felt that this is also not bad, at least she is considered to take the initiative. Even if the strong melon is not sweet, she still want to pick it. Anyway, she recognized Yi Shuang in her life. By Yu Yue went to sleep early. Her face was pressed next to Yi Shuang's shoulder, and she was emitting fine sweet breathing sounds. And in the dimly lit room, Yi Shuang just looked at the ceiling with his eyes open. Being held by his left and right, he smelled the mixed body fragrance coming from the tip of his nose. At this moment, sleepiness was all gone. Early morning, daybreak, weak sunlight through the snow white window veil, exuding a hazy halo at this moment on the bed. Bai Yu Yue slowly opened her eyes and noticed the familiar side face that was sleeping, but obviously, the other party did not sleep soundly, from time to time as if she was dreaming of something, frowning gently. On the other side, Chen Qin was sleeping close to Yi Shuang, her shoulder strap slipping slightly and her shoulders rounded. Bai Yan Yu had a dull hair sticking out of her head as she slowly sat up and rubbed her eyes with her hand. Yi Shuang, is having a hard time? Bai Yan Yu saw that Yi Shuang's face wasn't exactly a good look and those eyes that were as quiet as well water with no ripples looked from side to side, and finally noticed his often injured place. The wound is swollen again. The young girl reached out her small hand to help caress Yi Shuang's injured place, only to realize that Yi Shuang's face was getting worse and worse. By Yu Yue's head tilted, she suddenly remembered that it seemed like her teacher had said that saliva could be sterilized. Try, but in the next second, Yi Shuang directly opened his eyes. Looking at the faintly lit ceiling, he quickly sat up then rolled over to look for his cell phone under his pillow, and when he noticed that it was just after 6 o'clock now, he was slightly relieved. Ha, huh? it was only at this time that Yi Shuang noticed that Bai Yu Yue was also sitting beside him and was quietly looking at himself. Yi Shuang lowered his voice, Yen Yu, today, you must not tell others about the three of us sleeping together, got it? Bai Yu Yue nodded her head obediently, good, I'll wash up first. Yi Shuang glanced at Chun Xin, who was still asleep, and then got up and got out of bed to wash up. However, he also quickly noticed the changes in his body, so he thought about it and washed his face with cold water to force calmness. After Yi Shuang finished washing and rinsing and came out, Bai Yu Yue still had a semi-dazed and unconscious look, so he had no choice but to pull the young girl over to the bathroom and then let her wash while he himself took a comb and helped her with her hair. Bai Yu Yue's hair quality was very good. Yi Shuang could completely comb it to the end and because of the recent change in food, not only her hair, but even her face was quite rosy, fading away a lot of the pale color. Seeing the young girl in the mirror being raised by herself getting better day by day. At this time Yi Xuan was also full of fulfillment. Later, you will play with your cell phone in your room. I will go down to say hello to the elders first. If Chun Qin gets up, you will come down with her. Yi Xuan instructed. Bai Yu Yue sniffed and muttered unappealingly with her toothbrush in her mouth. Yi, together, obey. Yi Xuan naturally understood what the other party was saying. Oh, after Yi Xuan went downstairs, Father Chen, Mother Chen, they got up early and were eating breakfast. Little Shuang, come over to eat breakfast. After seeing Yi Shuang go downstairs, Father Chen said, while Father and Mother Zhou also cast their eyes over, then asked, Has Sister Zhu gotten up yet? It should be soon. Yi Shuang returned. The Chen family's breakfast was relatively simple, just a very common morning tea configuration. What barbecued pork buns, phoenix claws, braised sausage, beef peeper and other foods, a dozen or so were common. Shuang Zai. Come over to Aunt Xian's side and sit, Mother Zhou said. Yi Shuang also knew that the other party had something to say to herself, so she sat over. It's so, us, we've been thinking about it all night, Mother Zhou said. We still hope that Sister Zoe will come back to the harbor area with us first, to recognize her ancestors, then live for a period of time first, if she is really reluctant, then it's not too late to come back la yes well. Yi Shuang gave himself some beef river. When he heard Zhou Mother's proposal, he thought about it, just smiled and said, Aunt Xian, we all argued about this yesterday. I think, Yu Yue has already grown up. It's better to respect her personal wishes. She definitely doesn't want to go back with us. And she gone favors you. Why don't you help us talk things down? Father Zhou also said, Right, just going back to recognize her ancestors. At the very least, she should know where her own house is. Right? That makes sense. Yi Xuang thought for a moment, but said, Why don't I follow her there as well? If he went over, Bai Yu Yue would definitely agree. However, when they heard Yi Shuang say this, father and mother Zhou were secretly in a difficult situation, because they actually would basically not let Yu Yue leave their side anymore if they brought her back. It's better to ask the child's opinion. Father Chen himself was a man of character and naturally knew what father and mother Zhou were playing at. It so happened that at this time, Bai Yu Yue and Chen Qin also came down. Morning, Daddy and Mommy, Uncle Zhou and Aunt Xian. Chen Qin greeted and then took Bai Yu Yue to sit down. Female ah, uh, did
Did you sleep well last night? Father and Mother Joe immediately smiled and inquired about Bai Yuyue. Bai Yuyue sniffed and nodded her head gently. It's like this. I just talked to Shuang Zai. Can you go back to the Hong Kong area with your mom to live there for a little while and recognize your ancestors? Okay? Think of it as recognizing where home is. And knowing the way if you want to come back in the future ah. Mother Joe smiled and continued. Bai Yuyue heard Mother Joe say this. And almost without hesitation. She shook her head and said. Wherever Yi Shuang is. Home is. As soon as this sentence came out, Yi Shuang instantly felt that father and mother Zhou's gaze on himself had changed once again. Perhaps even Yi Shuang himself didn't realize that Bai Yuyue's reliance on him would reach such a level. Come, eat the bun. Yi Shuang casually took a walnut bun and gave it to Bai Yuyue, and the young girl ate it in small bites. The atmosphere was weird again, so it's better to let them get engaged. Father Zhou looked to Father Chen, only to have Father Chen immediately wave his hand. No deal. Alas old Chen. Qin Mei is so outstanding. There are plenty of young men to pick from. That's not the same. You don't know I Qin because of the Zhao family that sister boy eyes almost threw the water. It's not easy to have this opportunity. Chen father had not finished. Chen Qin red-faced shouted. Don't talk about it, daddy ah. As if I have no choice other than i.e. Chen Qin said. When Chen father heard this, he asked. Who else do you favor? No, don't listen ah. Anyway, your female first is not that cheap. Chen Xin suddenly huffed and puffed, not forgetting to stretch out his foot under the table to kick Yi Shuang. At this time, Yi Shuang who didn't dare to say anything at all was burying his head and eating the ox river. Being kicked twice by Chen Xin like this, he suddenly had a helpless face. Can you blame me for this? Stop. Let's not talk about this for now. After finishing his speech, Chen father looked at Zhou mother. Ah, Xian, since your biological daughter has been retrieved, during this period of time, you guys should contact her more and cultivate a good relationship before bringing her back to Hong Kong, can't you? Right now she doesn't know you guys at all. You're going to take her away like this. She definitely won't agree. Bai Yuyue was too young when she was abducted. She couldn't remember what her real parents looked like. The young girl only remembered that in the cold and cluttered house, it was Yi Shuang's beam of light that struck in and lit up her world. For the young girl, since she remembers, there has been no biological parents. She naturally cannot be compared with the Yi Shuang who has been with her all day long. Zhou's father and mother were not unwilling to let Bai Yuyue continue to live here, but the problem was that their daughter was too close to Yi Shuang, and if she got pregnant accidentally and Yi Shuang married Chun Qin, what would the two couples do? What would they do if they let their daughter become an unwed mother? But when Bai Yuyue got engaged to Yi Shuang, the Chen family didn't agree, and when they wanted to take their daughter back, she didn't agree. Is it possible to go and believe that Yi Shuang is a true gentleman? A lot of times it was simply out of control. And this was where Father Joe and Mother Joe got tangled up. It seemed like they could be given quite a few choices, but in reality there were very few choices. All three parties had their own positions, and it appeared to look like none of the three parties were wrong. Old Joe, if you're really that worried, why don't you just let my daughter live along with you? Chen's father said with a smile. Then you're really not afraid of Qin Mei hitching a ride. Father Joe squinted his eyes. What am I afraid of? I still want to hold my grandchildren early. Father Chen was happy. Qin's sister's BB with Xiao Xuan will definitely be excellent in the future. And you know, that's for sure. I've watched them grow up. Father Chen sked. Looks like you guys don't know how well they matched when they were young. I don't know. It's fine. I'll show you some. Chen father said, looking at the ant standing at the side. Help me turn on the projector. Okay, Mr. Chen. Subsequently, on one side of the dining room. A four meter wide curtain slowly landed down, this thing was usually installed when Father Chen occasionally watched a ball game and had to eat again, and Father Chen clicked on a folder called, Good Girl, which contained 26 files arranged by serial number. From one year old to 26 years old, each folder was labeled with a good year. Daddy, this is. It seemed that Chen Xin was also seeing this for the first time, and looked at Chen's father in a bit of disbelief. Chen father just smiled mysteriously, then opened the folder named 18 years old in which a whole bunch of videos were placed, one of which was a scene similar to a party in general. Yi Shuang instantly recognized that it was the stage of the school graduation party. The clarity of the video was very high, it looked like it was taken by a professional camera, only to see the student in charge of hosting say, Below, please welcome the performance brought by the third year class one, Yi Shuang and Chen Qin, applause and welcome. Subsequently, two figures walked onto the stage together. The boy was dressed in formal attire with a thick, Slanted bangs, the girl was long and straight, wearing a black evening gown and holding a violin in her hand. Both of them politely greeted their classmates on the stage before walking to their respective positions. Yi Shuang, above. At this moment, 
Bai Yan Yu saw the boy in the video and couldn't help but pull Yi Shuang beside her. At that time, I was still very thin. Yi Shuang saw himself like a bamboo pole in the video, and couldn't help but feel a little nostalgic, as if he had gained a lot of weight after graduating from college, only to see the students in the video cheered, but soon quieted down again. Yi Shuang was sitting in front of a piano at the moment, along with the first note being struck. The warm and melodious sound of the piano slowly rang out, gradually enveloping the entire scene. Each note seemed to have magic power, allowing people's hearts to quiet down. Wow! Awesome! Accompanied by that refreshing sound of the zither amidst the sound of the piano. From time to time, there were also some shouts from the students. Just at this time, Chen Qin who stood next to Yi Xuan played the violin in his hand, and the moment the sound of the violin appeared, it was like the finishing touch, blending in with the piano sound played by Yi Xuan in an appropriate way, leading to another burst of cheers from the students under the stage, accompanied by the two spotlights, as well as the silver veil thrown down by the moonlight. The melodious double zither that entered the water seemed to be able to wash the mind and play the soul in a beautiful way. The two figures, at this time like a match made in heaven. At this time all the people present in the heart only such a thought. Match. After the song was finished, the whole audience resounded with warm applause. The two stood in front of the stage, elegantly bowed, then shoulder to shoulder together off the stage. At this time, the video also happened to end. Dot kind. A few good matches. Having a BB will be even better in the future. Chen's father said cheerfully at this time, he had never missed any of his own daughter's important occasions, and in these occasions, Yi Xuan was also often present. In Father Chen's eyes, they would have been the most compatible pair. Daddy, how did you take the picture? He he he. Seeing his own daughter's touched face, Father Chen's expression became even more smug. Then he looked at Father Zhou. How is it? Isn't it nice? It's a good match. Yes, a good match. What does it have to do with my daughter? Father Zhou was speechless. You're just showing off your own daughter, right? If Bai Yu Yu A hadn't been abducted, she would have been even better in the future, and it would have been a simple matter of cultivating her and arranging for her to perform at a foreign opera house. Well, at this time, Mother Zhou however felt that Father Chen had a point. She then pulled Father Zhou. Ah Feng Ah, I think old Chen has a point. If Qin daughter lives together, the three of them actually really have no problem. Father Zhou thought but did not say anything. But it was better than having two lonely men and two women living together. At the very least, with three people, it was so easy to get down and dirty, right? Father Zhou sighed and finally looked at Yi Shuang, mentally as if saying, how come you're not a girl? Afterwards, Mother Zhou also looked at Chun Qin. Qin daughter, can you live with them? Usually, you'll help us take care of Sister Zhou together. That's no problem. Leave it to me. Chen Qin said with a smile, not forgetting to stretch out her own foot and step on Yi Shuang's knee under the table. In reality, Chen Qin was very busy at work, and it most occasionally lived with Yi Shuang and the others, so Yi Shuang's life with Bai Yu Yue should remain unchanged, and she could still cope with father and mother Zhou, which was considered to be the best method at the moment. Then let's settle it like this. Although father and mother Zhou felt that it wasn't the best way, they could reluctantly accept it. After their daughter accepted them, she would directly bring it back to the harbor area and not come back. Right now, cultivating feelings was rather the most important thing. Daughter Ah. After breakfast, mom will take you out for a walk, okay? Mother Zhou smiled and inquired. Bai Yu Yu sniffed and looked at Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang, together. No problem, together. We're just going for a walk together to see the scenery. Mother Zhou didn't mind Yi Shuang following her over. She was just afraid that Bai Yu Yu e wouldn't be willing. Old Chen, is there any place nearby where we can take a walk? Nearby. Father Chen thought for a moment, then said, there's a museum and an art gallery five kilometers nearby. So if you take a walk, you guys can go there to take a look. Good. Yi Xuan looked at Chen Qin at this time. Are you going back to the company? There's nothing scheduled for this morning. It's fine if I don't go to the company in the afternoon. Chen Qin thought about it, but asked with a smile. No, it's whether you want me to take a vacation or not. Although to go to the museum, but both Yi Xuan's Bull Demon King or Chen Qin's 911 is unlikely to be able to carry five people. But the good thing is that there are quite a few cars in the garage. Yi Xuan and Chen Qin. They are directly on the father of the Zhou's car. Yi Shuang. Roof. Weird. Bai Yen Yu sat down and looked at those dense points of light on the roof of the car and blinked her beautiful eyes. Is it not like it? Yi Shuang reached out his hand to touch the button, then slightly adjusted the bright light of the starry roof slightly lower. The young girl just shook her head slightly. She just felt some curiosity, and she preferred to sit in Yi Shuang's car. There was only the two of them in the small car, and there was an indescribable sense of security. Good girl. Come a little closer. At this time, 
Mother Jo sitting in the co-pilot also took out her cell phone to take a picture of Bai Yuyue. Obviously, there were still quite a lot of similarities between the mother and daughter looks under the same frame, it was just that in comparison, Bai Yuyue's appearance would be more refined, with a unique cool temperament. The distance of 5 kilometers wasn't too far, and perhaps sensing her daughter's resistance, Joe's father and mother didn't talk about returning to the Hong Kong area in the car, but instead listened to Chen's father's words and talked about some of the two couple's own pasts, especially since Joe's mother would take out the songs she sang for Bai Yin Yu to listen to, Bai Yu Yu quietly listened to the songs, although she couldn't understand the lyrics, they were indeed good, no matter what, mother Joe was on the right track, using this method in turn made it easier for Bai Yu Yu to accept them. Yu Yu A, uh, interested in music? Yi Shuang had instead remembered the matter of cultivating a hobby for the young girl, and seeing her listening to a song, she asked with a smile. The young girl sniffed, but whispered, just, video. Bai Yu Yu a few words Yi Shuang then understood her meaning. It is clear that she seems to have an interest in the video put by Chen's father. So she continued to ask, is it interested in your Chun Qin sister's violin? Violin? Chen Qin also looked back at this time and said with a smile, yes, I can. I'll hire a good teacher for you, but Bai Yu Yue shook her head, Yi Xuan's, piano, it sounds good, after seeing that Bai Yu Yi seemed to have some interest in the piano, Yi Xuan pondered for a while, thinking about where a piano could be stuffed in that not so large space of the apartment, the floor to ceiling window side should be fine, right, he might have to ask 10,000 to make a place for the cat's nest, it's okay, if 10,000 doesn't say anything by then, it means it's acquiesced, the piano is not bad, let Yi Xuan teach you, Chen Qin said, one hand propped up his pretty face, with a little lazy smile, so long no play, should not be rusty, right? Saying that, the other finger also poked Yi Shuang's cheek, today's Chen Qin, is no longer that young girl who obviously liked it, but pretended to keep a distance and then secretly poked and prodded to like the other party, she now likes Yi Shuang almost to the point of overflowing, slightly becoming rusty for sure, Yi Shuang said, not forgetting to press Chen Qin's restless little paw, whether it was intellectual or physical strength, Yi Shuang felt that the self in high school who wore thick slanted bangs and said, was the pinnacle. Soon, the museum arrived. Although today is a weekend, the people coming to the museum are not too many. Knowing that like those attractions on the beach, there is no place to find a parking place, and the parking fee is still dead expensive. I'll go buy the ticket first, Yi Shuang said and walked to the ticket window. After slightly lining up a few people, Yi Shuang spoke. Five adult tickets. One hundred. Scan the code. A lazy voice came from the other side of the window. Yi Shuang froze for a moment and looked up in confusion. In the window, a familiar young girl with a bobbed head was sitting there. She had her head on her side, and next to her was a flat screen with a TV series on it. In Shiyu? Oh, uncle, you're a stalker, right? After seeing Yi Shuang, and Shiyu said with a calm expression before her gaze continued to look at the tablet on the side, I should be the one to say such words. Why are you always doing strange things? Yi Shuang had the expression of a subway old man looking at his cell phone. I was delivering takeout yesterday. The young girl waved her hand. A jussie quickly pay. Don't block the next person. After Yi Shuang scanned the code and gave the money, and Shi Yu also shoved five tickets over. She also didn't forget to add. Coming to the museum on a big weekend to see the rags. Uncle your life is really boring. Yi Shuang, isn't what you do even more boring? Well, indeed. And Shifu revealed her bean eyes, but she didn't deny it at all but whether things are boring or not, you still have to experience it for yourself to know. Other people's advice is not useful at all. Saying that, and Shi Yu put away her tablet, then just walked out in the ticket window. Yo, it's good to get off work. Uncle play with me. You're not selling tickets? Yi Shuang froze for a moment, then pointed to the few people lined up behind him, and Shi Yu tucked her pockets into her side head. Her knife cut neat bangs slightly spread out, with a very speechless expression. It doesn't matter. Anyway, you can buy electronic tickets to enter, and there are also automatic ticket machines. This kind of ticketing position is used to raise assholes, do things with a beginning and an end, as well as apologize to the ticket sellers around the world. Ah, Yi Shuang picked up the young girl and shoved her straight back. Ah, Yi, what are you doing there? Not far away. Chen Xin's voice came over. Coming. Yi Shuang took the ticket and hurriedly turned back inside the window, and Shi Yu propped up her small face with her hand and looked at Yi Shuang's departing back. Then her gaze fell on the next customer in line. And, what for? Eh, two, two tickets. The museum is closed. Please return. Ha, huh? what were you just doing over at the window? Chen Qin asked. She saw Yi Shuang from afar not knowing what she was grinding on. The ticket seller happened to be an acquaintance and conversed for a few moments. Yi Shuang said, shaking the ticket in her hand. Let's go. 
Let's go in first. After checking the ticket and entering the museum, Yi Shuang led by Yu Yue to look at those historical artifacts. The city's museum actually doesn't have any particularly valuable artifacts. Basically it's those more common porcelains, paintings and calligraphy, and some of the city's history explained. Cultural relics. At this time the young girl stood in front of the glass cabinet, looking at the snow white porcelain inside as well as the introduction of the year. Many years. Aha. Yi Shuang also stared at the porcelain. Unconsciously window or floating out. Item, white porcelain. A porcelain. It was a pity that the system did not have a treasure appreciation function. Otherwise he could have become an expert in identifying cultural relics. Walked around two more times. Yi Shuang found that Bai Yan Yu also seemed to be quite focused on the appearance. After all, through the cultural relics can feel the heavy sense of history. The more you understand a certain period of history, the more you can put yourself in that era. Suddenly, the young girl pulled the corner of Yi Shuang's coat. Yi Shuang, what's wrong? Why does it say that polygamy in ancient times is gone now? Bai Yu Yu I asked, pointing to the explanatory sign on the side. Because it was abolished in the 50s, and if you get more than one marriage license, you're committing bigamy. Yi Shuang smiled and said, but it was slightly later on the Hong Kong side, so maybe your grandfather has a few wives. Grandpa, after hearing the unfamiliar word, Bai Yu Yu I looked at Zhou's father on the side. At this time, Zhou's father suddenly coughed dryly. Well normally, there are indeed. Why do you want to abolish? Bai Yu Yu I asked curiously. Now, it doesn't work? Well, it's mainly to protect men. Yi Shuang explained. Just like in ancient times, even a maid or a female born at the bottom of the hierarchy, actually thinks about marrying a rich lord. Even if it's just as a concubine ranked 30-something, rather than becoming the main wife of a commoner male. If it's not abolished, maybe quite a few more males will not be able to marry now and abolishing it would also improve women's social status, so it would be a beneficial thing for both men and women. Bai Yu Yu listened ignorantly, oh, there's no more now, it's not really no longer there, it's just a different word, what with bagging a few breasts and all, Yi Shuang said, of course now cannot be put in the open, and will not be recognized by the public, that's why history is very fascinating, because of the different national policies, so the social patterns are different, Bai Yu Yu nodded gently and suddenly asked, Yi Shuang, I'm a few milks? Yi Xuan, question mark. Knock. He knocked by Yu Yu's head. Stupid. Yi Xuan told the young girl quite a bit more, so that she finally had a basic concept of monogamy. But the young girl who listened to all of this, her gaze landed on Chun Xin's body when no one was looking, and then retracted. The museum wasn't big and was soon finished, and a few people went to the art gallery next to it to do a little more shopping. By Yu Yu seemed to be interested in art as well causing Yi Shuang to think about where she could set up an easel at home to cultivate her hobby. Forget about it. Just give in to the 10. 000 and make room for her litter box. I'm sure she won't squeak. Zhou's father and mother also got what they wanted, and were able to communicate a lot of things with Bai Yu Yue. When they returned to the Chen family, it was already 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We should almost go back as well. After returning to the Chen family, Yi Shuang spoke. After all, Yen Yu still had classes tomorrow. And tonight, he planned to take Yen Yu to the piano store to check out the piano. Back in the afternoon, Father Zhou and Mother Zhou, on the other hand, looked a little dissatisfied, so that the time they spent with their daughter was too short, even though they didn't have much time left. What's the rush? It's not like your daughter is going to run away. Father Chen on the other hand said, wouldn't it be better to take time to spend more time with her? Father Zhou and Mother Zhou looked at each other, and finally sighed helplessly. It seems that it can only be like this. Wait for the relationship to get better before bringing her back to the harbor area. I believe she wouldn't be so resistant at that time. Sister Qin, help me take care of her more. Father Zhou also said to Chen Qin, they were actually quite busy. Not only did Mother Zhou have a couple of concerts in the mainland, even Father Zhou himself had company things to get done. Zhou father and mother intend to take some time out later in the day, and then go to the police station to the white old seven things to do. After all, having abducted their own daughter, they definitely want to pay the heaviest price for each other. And right now, they could only rely on Chen Qin to help watch over Yi Shuang and Bai Yu Yue. Chen Qin, on the other hand, smiled sweetly. Don't worry, I'll live with them. Saying that, but in reality, Chen Qin didn't have much time. As for father and mother Zhou, this weekend's meeting was indeed rushed. Nothing was done. And their daughter's behavior of relying on Yi Shuang so much brought them quite a lot of headaches because they had actually told the family to bring the child back to the harbor area for a reunion, and now it looked like it was going to fall through. Good girl, there's five million dollars in this card. It's a bit of a rush. Ama didn't prepare anything for you. Mother Joe slipped by Yu Yu a card. 
Bai Yuyue held the card and looked at Yi Shuang again. Take it. Yi Shuang just signaled Bai Yuyue to take it. After all, Ancien always felt that she owed too much to her daughter, and this five million dollars was considered a heart comfort. Bai Yuyue then nodded. Thank you. Seeing her daughter thanking herself, Zhou Mother suddenly reddened her eyes and stretched out her hand to hug her, but was subconsciously dodged by Bai Yenyu, perhaps realizing that she shouldn't have dodged. The young girl stretched out her hand again, gently hugged Zhou Mother, and tenderly stroked each other's backs. Zhou Mother sobbed louder. It seems that this single matter is not so easy to solve. Chen Xin stood next door to Yi Shuang and whispered, Just leave the rest to time. Yi Shuang then replied, Although I personally feel that it is better for Aunt Xian and the others not to disturb Yu Yu's life for the time being, but ultimately, we still need to make a trip to the Hong Kong area. After all, blood is thicker than water, and Yu Yu was abducted not abandoned by Yu Yu and Zhou Yu Yu's father and mother. It was as if several threads of fate had suddenly become entangled together, and to make sense of it certainly couldn't be something that could be done in a few days. Moreover, by Yu Yu changing her name back to Zhou Yuro actually wasn't that quick, just the matter of Bai Lao Chi alone. The court session would also take some time. In that case, let's go to the harbor area together. I haven't been there for a long time anyway, Chen Xin said. There's a boat kanji that's good. I'll take you there to try it. Let's talk about it. Well, I should go back too. Hey, add me. The car won't fit. Okay, next week I'll take you to buy a new four-seater car. Chen Xin smiled. But my pocket money is almost used up, so I'll buy a cheaper one. A few hundred thousand dollars will do. The way you say that, Chen Hai might want to cry when he hears it. He has a wife to love. So you'll be loved by me. Chen Qin blinked. Chen Hai's wife loves him? Yi Shuang just wanted to say something. But as a result, Chen Qin suddenly pecked him on the cheek. The sudden scene made him froze slightly. While Chen Qin, although blushing, still smiled sweetly and, Shut up. I'm not listening. She adorably wrinkled her nose. If you dare to speak badly, I'll punch you twice ooh. This scene was not seen by anyone else except for the golden-haired salty egg that was spitting out its tongue by its feet. Yi Shuang looked at the girl in front of him, and finally, as if he had figured something out, he smiled faintly, you are determined to marry me, or else, it's not what you said, it's not like I'm the only one who has a choice. Chen Qin stretched out a finger, the words of a female child should be listened to in reverse, do you know? Mother Hen, begging for a beating. On the other side, Bai Yuyi, who was holding Mother Zhou, slowly opened her beautiful eyes and her sight fell on the two Yi Shuang and Chen Qin, who were fighting not far away, and her eyes looked quietly, as if they did not have much color. Car, traveling, driving on the highway, the scenery on both sides was flying backwards. Yu Yu eh, uh, what are you thinking about? Yi Shuang gripped the steering wheel, out of the corner of his eye. He noticed that the young girl had been kneading the corner of her coat, hanging her head and didn't know what she was thinking about, so he voiced out a question and asked, thinking about Aunt Xian and their things? The other party gently shook her head. Is that so? Yi Shuang saw by Yu Yue did not answer himself. Could not help but think that this child also began to have things on his mind ah, but think about it is also normal. After all, is also a grown-up girl, always a little reluctant to tell other people's secrets. He felt that this is also considered a kind of growth. The air conditioning in the car was turned down a bit, making his skin a bit cold. Yi Shuang reached out his hand to adjust the temperature, but he found a cold little hand reached over and then placed it on the back of his hand. Yi Shuang froze for a moment, and then realized that Bai Yenyu slightly sidestepped her body and just wrapped her arms around one of his arms. The warm and soft body and the coldness of his hand seemed to form a sharp contrast. Yi Shuang just wanted to say something, but noticed the other party's eyes under the bangs. She was looking at the distance, motionless, but did not know what she was thinking about. Yi Shuang did not choose to open his mouth. He slowed the car down, letting the young girl hold his arm like this. What's bothering you? You can give me a word. Yi Shuang said gently. Bai Yenyu rubbed her face against Yi Shuang's arm, and suddenly opened her mouth in a small voice. I don't like. Monogamy. Yi Shuang. He revealed a black question mark face. Eh? What the hell? Are you? This ninny. Still thinking about what happened in the museum in the morning? Yi Shuang really couldn't understand this child's brain circuit. It was always so new. But he did smile. Why don't you like it? Don't like. Really? Yi Shuang drove the car. But still said. It's like what I said. Now rich people will actually pack a few milk or something. To put it bluntly, it's still a matter of fame. Fame? Yes. I a girl can't marry without a name. Right? Although in ancient times, concubines didn't have this in the first place. But this era is different. Girls still care about name points. Yi Shuang taught by Yu Yue all this, and didn't know if she understood the significance of a name to a woman or not. But with this child's head, 
it still wasn't that easy to understand. It wasn't clear if she had solved any doubts, but Yu Yue looked a lot more energized. Yi Shuang, hmm, I only need Yi Shuang is good, other, it doesn't matter. What silly words are you saying? Yi Shuang didn't know why he jumped from the discussion on the system to here again, but he vaguely felt that something was wrong. After returning to the apartment, Yi Shuang had just opened the door when he realized that 10,000 had rushed over, meow and ei, then rolled around the feet of the two to show his belly and pamper himself. Is it because you didn't come back for a night and you're not used to it? Yi Shuang laughed and stretched out his own socked feet to lightly step on 10,000's belly, only to be rewarded with a bite. Cheap bastard. Showing the belly is not equal to you can touch it. After Yi Shuang put down what he was holding, he walked straight to the floor to ceiling window, and he surveyed it for a while, contemplating the space to place the piano. Meow and ei. At this time, 10, 000 came over again. It was about to rub against Yi Shuang's thigh, but the next second, it realized that the other party stretched out his foot and directly kicked its cat's nest to the side. 10, 000's cat's nest was a corrugated paper round cat's nest, flat as a pancake, and when Yi Shuang kicked it, the cat's nest instantly rolled all the way to the wall, and then bam, 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 backfired down. 10,000 dumbfounded looking at their own cat's nest, so, Yi Shuang, do what? By Yu Yu stood aside, seemingly unsure of what Yi Shuang was up to. Yu Yu help me bring the electronic ruler over. I'll measure this side, Yi Shuang said and pointed to the cabinet on the side. And after the young girl opened it, she brought an electronic ruler. When she moved before, Bai Yen Yu had seen Yi Shuang use it, so she knew how useful it was. Well, putting a grand piano should be enough. Yi Shuang nodded. Then he asked 10,000. Who was at the side? No problem. Right. 10,000? 10,000, meow. Okay, if you don't say anything take it as you agree. Seeing that the young girl beside him doesn't really understand, he instead explains and says, it's best to have something like a piano in one step, and then basically not change it. The grand piano has a larger resonance box than the upright piano. The strings are also longer. The rebound is better. And the tone is stronger in all aspects than the upright piano. It's just that the floor space is a bit larger than it is. And if you really want to learn, you still need to buy a grand piano. Yi Shuang did not want to perfunctorily teach Yui, since the other party is interested in the piano. Then he intends to teach this niece well, and so on a little introductory and then go to hire a teacher. Oh, although Bai Yu Yua couldn't understand, she still nodded her head obediently. After measuring the size, you can set off to buy a piano. This thing is better to go to the physical store to touch the hands, piano this thing price fluctuates a lot. From the hundreds of electronic piano online to the price of tens of millions of dollars, Yi Shuang intends to buy a real steel. Pure tone is more conducive to the learning of this child. Driving the car carrying the language Yu Yue, the two came to the piano store near their home. This area are selling musical instruments. There are also some high-end brands of specialty stores. There's no rush. Let's stroll around first. Yi Shuang led by Yu Yue inside, while the young girl reached out her hand and directly wrapped it around Yi Shuang's arm. Although she was no longer uncomfortable with crowds of people, she still liked to stick to Yi Shuang's body and shop. That's a guitar. Yi Shuang saw a guitar specialty store and said with a smile, the cost of learning the guitar is not as high as the piano, but it is also a more popular choice. Sister Chen Chin's. That Chen Chin guy's is a violin. And although you'd think the two are a bit alike, it's not the same thing. Bai Yu Yu eh? However, whispered, want to try it. Seeing that the young girl had come to be interested, Yi Shuang instead smiled slightly and led her into the guitar line she walked into. Hello, what do you need? The guide was a girl. And after seeing Yi Shuang and Bai Yu Yue, she walked over with a smile. Can you give a test guitar? Okay. The guide handed over a guitar. And after Yi Shuang took it, he sat on a side chair and then explained to Bai Yu Yue. The young girl looked at the guitar in Yi Shuang's hands and seemed to feel curiosity. Yi Shuang, can play? Will a little. Yi Shuang touched the guitar in his hands. A little bit of emotion. He had still touched the guitar slightly in the past to please her, and learning the guitar was quite a bit easier than learning the piano. So Yi Shuang was able to play quite a few tunes even if he hadn't studied for a long time. Want to hear? Bai Yin Yu said. Want to hear? Yi Shuang thought about it and coughed dryly. It's a bit rusty. I'll play one for you. The clock that shuttles the picture of time starts moving from the opposite direction. Yi Shuang played Jie's clock in the opposite direction. He sang as he played, and the sound quickly attracted the other guests in the guitar line. Who looked over, some light scattered on Yi Shuang's body, covering him with a layer of haziness, and Yi Shuang sang, like a protagonist becoming the center point of the sight. The sound also attracted a figure that had just entered the guitar line. It was a tall woman wearing an expensive long dress. 
She wore sunglasses and her thin lips were smeared with bright red. Zhao Mengyao was in a bad mood today, not only because of the company side of a pile of mess, but also feel that the management are all useless waste, one or two or PPT god of war, bragging one more than one powerful, really officer when one cannot, and even almost because of the public relations crisis to bring the company into the ditch, La she still so believed that a few swore to pack the boats of the management, as soon as she thought of this, she felt incomparably annoyed, the whole night is difficult to sleep, Zhao Mengyao even a little strange when Yi Shuang in the end how to bring this group of strawworm to do the company better and better, why he can their own cannot, she originally thought that her own management of the company is also very easy, after all, under the people are very strong, and Yi Shuang management of the company is just the icing on the cake, and even do not know why the father so valued Yi Shuang, but also said that he would personally door to redeem each other, now, when they are on their own, they realize how much of a waste the ones under them are, and some of them don't even know the most basic processes, and are purely just muddling through, Zhao Mengyao suddenly remembered what Yi Shuang said to herself one day, Mengyao, I think the management of, the company and some of the systems need to be reformed slightly, the other party's expression was a bit hesitant, but he still said it, Yi Shuang you're here again, the management are all our own family members, each and every one of them is a foreign returnee capable talent, it's hard not to think that our own family members will still harm our own family, don't find something to do every time you have nothing to do, okay, is it that hard to let you look after the company, if you're really that idle, help me take those bags to maintenance, day after day of doing nothing but thinking of messy ideas, annoying, ultimately sighing, the other party smiled faintly, okay, thoughts back to the present, Zhao Mengyao at this time strolling the piano store, a thought of Yi Shuang things, the more she thought of the more a little annoyed up, forget it, do not think of these broken things, all the past, first casually to the nephew to buy a piano as a birthday gift, or day after day to be noisy dead, a broken piano has what good to play, back to the time and space of loving you, beside her, a familiar voice caused Zhao Mengyao's high heels to give a lurch, her line of sight plunged into the guitar row on the side, and without knowing why, she subconsciously walked in, the line of sight was cast not far away, a man was holding a guitar, he strummed the strings and hummed with a smile, his gentle voice wasn't high, but it could be clearly heard throughout the guitar row, not to say how good it sounded, but it was as if it could be sung into the heart, like an elf like a beautiful and delicate girl stood beside him listening, the two occasionally look at each other, as if there is an endless story in general, it's quite nice, who sang it, when Zhao Mengyao carefully observed the person playing the guitar, she was stunned, why was he here, why was he singing this for someone else? Seeing Yi Shuang actually singing to other girls like this, Zhao Mengyao immediately had an uncomfortable feeling in her heart. What the heck? Even after breaking up it looks like you're having a good time. Besides Chin Qin, there are other pretty girls. He he, you are really happy. The more Zhao Mengyao looked at her, the more upset she felt, especially when she noticed by Yin Yu's expression that was focused on looking at Yi Shuang. There was a kind of vestigial feeling of something she didn't want being coveted by someone else. At this time, after the song was finished, Many people, including the guide, applauded. A little rusty, Yi Shuang said. The guide on the side did smile and said, Guest, you sang very well. Yi Shuang, on the other hand, continued to talk to Bai Yuyue beside her. What about the guitar? It still needs to be accompanied by some singing. If you play it purely on the guitar, it's not that easy to impress people. However, Yi Shuang thought that this guitar was not very suitable for Bai Yuyue. First of all, she was unlikely to open her mouth to sing. And secondly, she was also unlikely to form a band with others to play together. However, Bai Yuyue reached out her hand and pulled on the corner of Yi Shuang's coat, raising that expressionless little face. One more. Song. The dull hairs on her head wiggled, her eyes slightly bright, obviously mesmerized. Ah, uh, is for you to buy a musical instrument ah, uh, like it? Yi Shuang said with a smile, but felt that the young girl was too exaggerated. After all, when he used to play the guitar, Zhao Mengyao always said that it was not good. In fact, he had never had much confidence. By you, you, eh? However, her chin tapped, like, also want to listen to. Yi Xuan sniffed, thought about it and then looked to the side of the guide. The other party fell immediately said, Guest, you can play a few more songs. Need a higher order guitar? No need. This one is fine. Generally speaking, the guitar line will have some guitars specially for the living room to try out. There are cheap burning sticks. There are also slightly more expensive ones. Of course, more expensive ones can't be touched casually, most of them are placed in the cabinet to look at, and the guide saw Yi Shuang singing so well, he thought it takes some good guitars for him to sing a song, if you want to sing another song, then let's sing a Cantonese song, 
Yi Shuang thought about it and planned to sing a song called Enough Bells by Hao, which was also his very favorite song as well as the singer. Except that the singer might not be very popular in the provinces, but over here he was one of the best. After a slight smile towards the young girl, he strummed the strings and started humming the words, like me, like this, achievement or too far-fetched, clearly you have not implied me, it is my fantasy. Yi Shuang's voice condition was completely released in this song, accompanied by his soft playing and singing, as if telling a story. Without realizing it, Yi Shuang's voice brought all the people around him in, and with an unintentional glance up, Yi Shuang also saw a familiar figure among the few guests. Although she was wearing sunglasses, Yi Shuang noticed her at a glance. When Zhao Mengyao noticed Yi Shuang's eyes, her expression changed slightly, but she still pretended to be calm and stood still. However, at this moment, Yi Shuang's heart no longer had much fluctuation. He released a slight smile in general. His sight returned to the young girl beside him, and uttered the chorus. Enough bells to die heart. The words came out as if saying goodbye to the past or perhaps to the woman not far away, pouring out his emotions and those unwillingness he once had. Well, thanks. Yi Shuang returned the guitar in his hand to the guide at the side, and then said to the young girl beside him, How is it? Singing. By Yu Yu E. Eh? However, reached out her hand and pulled the corner of Yi Shuang's clothes. A pair of eyes looked straight at him. Yi Shuang. Is sad. Yi Shuang froze for a moment at the words, and after faintly smiling, he stretched out his hand and rubbed her skull. Stupid. It's just a song. Where am I in sadness? Oh. Bai Yu Yu thought about it and suddenly said. Want to learn. This. Not learning the piano? Yi Shuang asked. After all. The young girl still has to be busy with her homework. It's impossible for the piano and guitar to come together. This. Bai Yu Yu nodded her head. Want to give Yi Shuang. Singing. Yi Shuang was instantly happy. The thought of this little nerd in front of him stuttering and not being able to speak well and singing to himself, felt very interesting, but he still asked again, and when he got an affirmative answer, he said, good, then pick a guitar you like here, after all, interest was the most important thing, and if Bai Yu Yue really had an interest in the guitar, then Yi Shuang didn't say that he had to let her learn the piano, the 10,000 cats nest moved back, we have guitars of whatever price over here, please take your time to pick, the guide on the side said with a smile and Bai Yu Yue looked at the wide array of guitars, and finally rested her eyes on the log-colored one in the middle. Many times musical instruments just seem to possess some kind of magic, and under the reflection of the light, it goes to attract the person who suits it the most. That's a limited edition guitar from the Gibson series. The material is spruce mahogany core. It might be a bit more expensive. Upon noticing the young girl's sight, the guide reminded. Expensive. Bai Yu Yue didn't have any concept of whether it was expensive or not. After all, she now had over $10 million added up on her body, so much so that the young girl didn't have a clear cognition of the concept of money. In the face of the guide's inquiry, Bai Yu Yue then turned her head to look at Yi Shuang. At this time, Yi Shuang, however, glanced at the price, 39999 whom, at least it was a guitar of nearly $40,000, it was inevitable that the guide would inquire. After all, he had just seen that this guitar house also sold burning sticks of a few hundred dollars, but Yi Shuang did not have any problem taking down a guitar of a few tens of thousands of dollars at the moment. After all, it was by Yu Yue's money. This is the one. Help us take it down. Yi Shuang said with a smile. The guide froze for a moment, perhaps not expecting Yi Shuang to be so decisive. She glanced at Bai Yen Yu with a bit of envy, then nodded. Okay, do you want the case? No need. Just pack it with the original guitar. Yi Shuang said and soon the guide put that hanging guitar into the bag. After paying the money, Yi Shuang handed the guitar bag to the young girl. Come on, carry it up and I'll take a look. Bai Yu Yue was unsure, but still carried the guitar bag on her back. The guitar was a bit heavy, so much so that the young girl wasn't used to it when she first carried it up, and the moment she did, the length of the guitar almost took up most of her body. Ooh, guitar girl, nice. Yi Shuang couldn't help but stick out his thumb when he saw the scene, and at this moment, Bai Yu Yue grabbed the strap of the guitar bag with one hand, carrying the GI. Her face was expressionless as she cocked her head, not quite understanding what Yi Xuan was excited about. After leaving the guitar line, Yi Xuan was originally still thinking about whether to go and look at the piano again. But in the end, he noticed a familiar figure standing at the door. She was holding her arms at this time, and some of the dusk afterglow fell on the woman's cheeks, and it was not possible to distinguish her expression. After seeing Zhao Mengyao standing in the doorway, Yi Shuang didn't care and held by Yen Yu's small hand and was about to leave. Yi Shuang, stop, Zhao Mengyao's voice came over, but Yi Shuang treated it as a whisper and continued to walk forward by Yen Yu beside her. However, 
slowly turned back and realized that the woman who shouted at Yi Shuang actually overlapped with that photo from the Oceanarium. It was Yi Shuang's ex-girlfriend, Yi Shuang, by Yen Yu softly voiced out. Don't bother with her. Yi Shuang said calmly instead. The sound of sharp high heels rang out. Zhao Mengyao directly blocked in front of Yi Shuang with quick steps. She seemed to be a bit aggrieved and unhappy. Why are you ignoring me? Yi Shuang looked at the woman who was blocking in front of her and just pulled up a mocking smile. What do you think? Why can you, a betrayer, rightfully stand in front of me? Based on your big face? I, I didn't betray, Zhao Mengyao, however, said, I told you, I've always liked him. Yi Shuang just gave her a faint look. Then you took it for granted to accept all my goodness, and then directly leave me behind at the engagement banquet to find that man? Just, even if I like you being nice to me, it doesn't mean I have to give you my heart, right? Zhao Mengyao said, but she became even more aggravated, and he was sick and needed someone to take care of him at that time. I'm the one who was hurt, ah, don't make things difficult for me, okay? Yi Shuang just snorted, he shook his head, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter even if you say that there is a sun in the night, our story is long over. M.S. Zhao, please don't get in our way. Moreover, who are you to say that about me? Aren't you, yourself happy after the breakup? Zhao Mengyao, however, was unconvinced and generally pointed at by Yuyue. And who is she? By Yuyue sniffed. But at this moment, she said, we're husband and wife. Ha, Zhao Mengyao, however, laughed coldly. Yi Shuang didn't want to bother with the other party anymore. And after squeezing by Yenyo's palm, she went around her and prepared to leave. As a result, Zhao Mengyao, however, didn't know what kind of nerve she seemed to have, but actually directly chased after her, even blocking in front of Bai Yuyue and said, you probably don't know, Bai Yuyue, question mark, Zhao Mengyao, don't force me to slap you, Yi Shuang's voice went cold, Zhao Mengyao, however, laughed, miss, your husband has other women, that Chen family's eldest Miss Chun Qin, you probably don't know, right, maybe you're just a mistress too, cluck 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 cluck, after saying that, Zhao Mengyao laughed even more happily, as if she had gotten away with something, transmitting some paranoia. But soon, she stopped laughing because Bai Yenyo's expression remained the same, not even frowning a bit. A few seconds later, Bai Yuyi suddenly turned her head and asked Yi Shuang, What, is it junior? Zhao Mengyao, this child is stupid, right? Or just too simple? A junior is someone who destroys the relationship between two people. Yi Shuang explained to Bai Yuyue. Bai Yuyue sniffed and nodded gently as if she understood. Oh, her pair of ancient wall like eyes once again looked at Zhao Mengyao and explained very seriously, it's okay, me and Chen Qin's sister, Yi Shuang sleep and sleep together at night, the relationship is very good, not to destroy the, Zhao Mengyao, question mark, play so big, without caring about Zhao Mengyao who froze in place, Yi Shuang shook his head and then said towards the young girl beside him, let's go, Bai Yu Yu stopped looking at the other party after hearing this, and just left holding Yi Shuang's hand, the two people's bodies were slightly next to each other, as if they were in stark contrast to Zhao Mengyao, who was standing alone in the same spot. Zhao Mengyao had a feeling of her fist hitting cotton. She looked at the backs of the two people leaving, and seemed to be a bit unwilling. Why was she getting worse and worse, while the other party was getting better and better? It was clearly not her fault alone, perhaps not in the mood to continue shopping. Yi Shuang led the young girl back to the parking lot. After getting into the car, Yi Shuang fastened his seatbelt. At this time, he felt that the dusk in the distance was a bit blinding, so he put down the sun visor. The evening sunlight was cut by the glass of the building, scattered sprinkled on the car window, but could only shine on Yi Shuang's chin. Yi Shuang's eyes at the moment were covered by the shadow of the sun visor. He lowered his eyes and held the steering wheel, seemed to be thinking about something and forgot to start the vehicle. It wasn't until the gentle pull of the young girl beside him that Yi Shuang slowly came back to his senses and started the vehicle. Yi Shuang, whom, before you guys, what was it like? Bai Yen Yu opened her mouth to ask, but she didn't have any extra thoughts. She simply wanted to know about the other party's past. But it was just a glimpse when I was young. Yi Shuang revealed a hint of a smile, as if laughing at herself. It's all in the past. After all, it was impolite to keep knocking on a door that wasn't open to you. She never cared about me. Even if I went over the mountains it was meaningless. Yi Shuang looked at Bai Yu Yue beside her and smiled. So when she left me behind to find that so-called white moonlight, I was relieved. A lot of truths indeed have to be experienced firsthand to know. Both growing up and waking up need to pay some price. Saying that, Yi Shuang's smile became more and more bitter. It was just that this price was so heavy for him that he couldn't stop his stomach from spasming whenever he thought about it. Bai Yu Yu sensed the other party's emotions and immediately said, Yi Shuang, isn't sad, it's fine. Yi Shuang stretched out his hand, 
pinched by Yui's small face and said, but things aren't bad in the end, and thanks to her, let me meet you, although by Yu Yue didn't understand very well, she still tried to lift her chin and let Yi Shuang pinch her face, I, will care about Yi Shuang, what Yi Shuang did, I will remember, Yi Shuang's hand lurched, then turned into caressing the other party's sheepish face, and said in a gentle tone, saying, thank you, may all the giving in this world be rewarded, after returning to the apartment, Yi Shuang first moved 10, 000's cat's nest back, then rubbed the kitten's head, live well, and moved the nest the next time something comes up, meow, 10,000 saw his backed up cat's nest change back to its original state, and instead rolled around and laid down in it cheerfully, of course, happy times are always short lived, this saying was equally applicable to cats, the sky gradually darkened, as if ink had been splashed, and if one did not pay attention at all times, the change in color of the sky was almost a matter of a blink of an eye, Yi Shuang sipped a cup of lemonade, his gaze calmly looking out the window at the lights that gradually lit up, come to think of it, tomorrow also has to continue to work, and there is also the 70th anniversary of Silver Mountain Colleges coming up, I don't know what theme will be organized by Yin Yu's class then, Yi Shuang remembered that some students said that the school celebration days are free to wear costumes, that is to say, all kinds of strange clothes can be worn, so the Silver Mountain School Celebration is also known as playing Terrier Celebration, probably is that you can play the role of the Terrier, what backpack pants warrior, 2, 5 GG Gu, Guinness World Record holder for lipstick, talking watermelon, and so on, the upper limit of the whole thing depends on the imagination, the upper limit of the whole endeavor depends on the upper limit of the imagination, get some interesting clothes for that girl as well, what with the Pocky Sauce battlesuit, carrying a guitar should be quite appropriate as well, while thinking about it, Yi Shuang also realized that it was almost time to cook, Yu Yu eh, what do you want to eat tonight, after opening the refrigerator, he took a look at the ingredients inside, almost very few, but the good thing was that outside was the commercial plaza, there was an Aeon supermarket on the negative floor, and the underground garage of the apartment and the commercial plaza were connected, so buying groceries was just as convenient compared to the old neighborhood before, you don't even have to climb the stairs, of course, it's the price that's another story, soup, okay, make a soup, Yi Shuang was about to go downstairs to buy some ingredients to make soup when his cell phone rang, he glanced at it and found that it was Chen Xin calling, hello, miss me, it's only been a few hours since you left, longer, Chen Xin on the other end of the phone smiled cheekily, you could see how happy she was even through the phone, and, guess where I'm going later, Yi Shuang was washing her hands on speakerphone and casually replied back, where to, of course it's to your heart, the earthy love language that came to his face, made Yi Shuang immediately have a feeling of being spicy eyes, he pulled the corner of his mouth, when are you so low, what the heck, I just learned it, Chen Qin replied in a bad mood, then said, I'll be there later, what are we going to eat tonight, ha, huh? you'll be here later, yes, didn't I tell you, we're staying together, Chen Qin sighed there is still the sound of the road horn, seems to be driving, not to deal with Auntie Xian and the others, Aunt Xian is not that stupid to say she wants to take pictures, you don't think elders are easy to fool, right, Chen Qin said and added, but it's also true that I don't have the time to run to your place every day, at most I'll just go there once or twice a week, how about moving house, she suggested, I still have two suites sitting idle there, no, this small apartment is very comfortable, and you don't have to go to school with Yui, well, tonight let's have a carp soup, under some wolfberry o, carp, Yi Shuang thought about it, but first agreed, after hanging up the phone, glanced at the young girl who was holding the guitar and was studying it, Yi Shuang walked to the door to change shoes, you you I, be good and stay home, I'll go and buy some vegetables and come back, together, no need, walking the garage is fast, Yi Shuang said, opened the door and left, accompanied by the slowly closing room door, Bai Yu Yue sat on the sofa and looked at that room door for several seconds before slowly withdrawing her gaze, meow, at the moment, 10,000 was using its two front paws to step on Bai Yu Yue's thighs to prop up half of its body, and when it saw such a large chunk of something new in the house, it naturally wanted to take a good look at it, it stretched out its claws and touched the strings of the piano, accompanied by a crisp sound, scared 10, 000 even rolled and crawled to the second floor, when Yi Shuang returned home after shopping for groceries, he found that Chun Qin had already arrived, the two teenage girls were nestled on the sofa watching TV, while 10,000 was sleeping on by Yu Yue's lap, while its orange fluffy tail moved from time to time, rubbing against the teenage girl's snow white calf, having cubs may not be a blessing, the TV is coming from the voice, returned, Chen Xin looked over and said with a smile, Yi Shuang, Yi hands are holding a large bag in his hands, after seeing them a slight smile, 
the feeling of someone at home waiting for them to come home is very good, even if he just went out to buy a trip to buy vegetables. Aeon didn't see any carps for sale. I bought a crow chicken. Make a soup with cordyceps flowers. Yi Shuang said. Chicken ah. Superstore side or frozen la. Vegetable market side just killed first beautiful oh. You don't have to drink it. You're so picky. Yi Shuang said. Chen Qin immediately he he laughed. Who said I don't drink it? I like your cooking the most. Bai Yu Yue also got up at this time to help Yi Shuang, but she didn't know much, basically helping to wash the side dishes as well as dealing with the ginger and garlic and other auxiliary materials. Yi Shuang copied the chopper to chop the pieces for the black chicken at this time. Every time the knife fell, the loud sound it made made Chen Qin who was watching subconsciously blink. It looked a bit funny. Miss Chen, do you want to learn how to cook? Yi Shuang asked. I'm afraid it's a bit difficult oh. Try? Yi Shuang handed over the kitchen knife in his hand. Chen Qin looked at the greasy kitchen knife in Yi Shuang's hands. And after thinking for a while she finally did not put her paw over it. After all, she was a young lady who had grown up without touching her fingers. And it wasn't that easy to get over it for a while. Yi Shuang didn't care when she saw it. And continued chopping the chicken pieces. Saying, Aunt Chen can even make a nice soup. Give it to me. You're really coming? Seeing Chen Qin's look of being motivated to fight by herself. Yi Shuang smiled. No problem. Chen Qin received the kitchen knife in Yi Shuang's hands, looked at the remaining uncut crow chicken, pressed down with one hand, and raised the kitchen knife high with the other hand all of a sudden, then as if giving himself a boost. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yi Shuang saw the scene, scared to death. This angle is obviously going in the direction of chopping his own hand off. Peel the garlic with Yu Yue. Oh. Yi Shuang's action was quick. After getting a tomato scrambled eggs, fried cowboy bone, silk gourd fried meat, shrimp sauce macaroni, it was all served on the table. All are home-cooked dishes. Don't expect the ones you eat at home. I won't. Yi Shuang took out chopsticks from the sterilizer, then handed them to Chen Qin beside her. My family flip-flops all eat those too. The chef doesn't even get anything fresh. Chen Qin said instead. You say that. There are more than 20 dishes every day. And I don't usually see you eating a few bites, right? Eat more later. I've been having gastrointestinal discomfort lately, but it's fine for me to have more soup. Chen Qin stretched out a finger and said. Yi Shuang sniffed and just said, If you are not feeling well, you should go to the hospital. Don't let a small illness become a big illness. I'll just find some medicine to eat by myself. Chen Qin felt that going to the hospital was too troublesome, and she didn't have that time for herself at all. After hearing Chen Qin being so irresponsible about her body, Yi Shuang thought about it and carefully observed the other party's face. Character, Chen Qin. Super 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 like your childhood friend. In the middle of a stomach ulcer. You might want to take her to the hospital. Being stared at by Yi Shuang, Chen Qin lifted her sideburns to the back of her ear, a bit shyly averted her eyes, and pouted. Blah, is there something on my face? Yi Shuang retracted his sight and just faintly said, Tomorrow I will take you to the hospital to have a look. Ha, huh? I'm not going. You have to go even if you don't go. Yi Shuang said forcefully. Chen Qin saw that Yi Shuang was so forceful, and immediately became meek like a little sheep. Okay, you talk. In her heart, she was also a little happy. If Yi Shuang accompanied himself to the words, it seems that it is not impossible, was he just caring about himself ah, so strong ah, she liked it so much. After dinner was over, Yi Shuang went to take a bath. As a result, the moment Yi Shuang went in, Bai Yuyi also took off her jacket outside the door. After seeing this scene, Chen Qin froze for a moment on the side. What are you doing? Yu Yi, Bai Yu Yue was only wearing underwear at the moment, and facing Chen Qin's inquiry, she said, washing with Yi Shuang, together. No way, hurry up and put your clothes on. Don't. As a result, Chen Qin took the clothes and chased that expressionless Bai Yu Yue around the table. At this time, in the bathroom, Yi Shuang was rinsing his hair with the shower. When he heard the noise of the commotion outside, he couldn't help but open one eye. What are they doing? After taking a shower, Yi Shuang wiped his hair with a towel. Perhaps he noticed the commotion. His gaze was cast to the sofa, only to realize that Chen Qin was pressing the naked by Yu Yue, and after seeing this scene, Yi Shuang's expression was a bit strange at the moment. And, Chen Qin, you, not ah. Chen Qin loosened her hand. Bai Yu Lu immediately ran behind Yi Shuang in a flash. She was just about to follow into the bathroom too. Yi Shuang subconsciously glanced at Bai Yu Yi who was hugging her waist. At the moment she was not wearing any clothes. She had already thrown her clothes all over the place. It was obvious that she had experienced a tug of war with Chen Qin. Don't catch a cold. Quickly go take a shower. Yi Shuang said to Bai Yu Yue. Oh, after seeing the young girl go into the bathroom, Yi Shuang picked up all those clothes on the ground and stuffed them into the washing machine. 
Chen Xin sat on the sofa and propped her face with her hands and said, Ah Yi, she won't be like this every day, right? Pretty much, Yi Shuang said without looking back, she doesn't understand those, just treat her as a little kid. Yi Shuang is not without the relevant knowledge, but in the end, it will be by Yu Yue around to the topic that it's okay between husband and wife, he is considered to be defeated. That figure, how to treat as a child ah, Yi Shuang also can't refute. After all, Yu Yue's figure is indeed very good, and her skin is also white. If not he doesn't want to be born, it may really become born. Although in his heart, but Yi Shuang's mouth still said, I will be a child. If you have time, you can give her some knowledge of science. Can ah. Chen Xin's eyes brightened up instead. After Bai Yu Yue came out of the shower, it was Chen Xin's turn since Chen Xin didn't bring a change of clothes. Yi Shuang inquired, Do you want to go back to sleep tonight? Ah, don't want to drive. I'll give you a ride as well. Yi Shuang had just finished speaking when she saw Chen Xin's face bulge. Blah ah, think I'm in the way. Don't you have a dryer? Help me dry my clothes. I'll sleep in your clothes tonight. Chen Xin said, Wear mine, can't I? Chen Xin said. His eyes fell on Bai Yu Yue who was on the side but froze, because Bai Yu Yue was exposing her thighs and wearing a white t-shirt. That shirt. Yi Shuang's? In the end, Chen Xin also wore Yi Shuang's t-shirt after showering, but wore an extra pair of shorts, and even pulled Bai Yan Yu to put a pair of pants on her as well. When Yi Shuang saw them like this, he didn't say anything more. Didn't buy a piano? Chen Xin looked at the guitar in Bai Yu Yue's hand, but was a bit curious to inquire. After all, it seemed like she was going to buy a piano in the beginning. Could it be that it hadn't arrived yet? Bai Yu Yue was looking at the teaching video in her cell phone at this time. When she heard Chen Xin's inquiry, she spoke out to explain. I want to learn. This, so I didn't buy it. How much money to buy? A few tens of thousands. Yi Shuang said. Chen Xin sniffed, but asked. Why didn't you buy a better one? You only barbecued cat. It's not good enough. The guitar I bought in college was only a thousand dollars. Yi Shuang said breathlessly. Also Chen Xin this guy does not take the money as money. His piano from elementary school is only a hundred thousand or so. If you don't know Chen Xin is the real sense of the rich woman. Or really think she is in Versailles. Chen Qin, however, said, it's different. I think a musical instrument is something that can accompany a lifetime, and it's best to have it in place at once. Yu Yu eh? I'll get you a beautiful guitar next time I go abroad. Bai Yu Yu eh sniffed, slightly hugging the guitar in her arms tightly. This is just fine. Don't you mess with those. The most important thing is to like it. Yi Shuang also sat down beside Bai Yu Yu eh, and after receiving the guitar in the other party's arms, he played it slightly and then started to help with the tuning during which he was explaining some of the more basic things to the young girl, and although it was a bit boring to learn at the beginning, the moment he really got on with it, basically the more he played it, the more he liked it. Bai Yu Yue followed Yi Shuang's instructions and tried to play a small section of the tune, and although it was slow and raw and even mispronounced, her eyes lit up slightly. I feel like I can buy both the guitar and the piano. Chen Xin sat on the sofa, her gaze looking toward the floor-to-ceiling window not far away. The location over there is quite good. Putting a piano is aesthetically pleasing and practical. Just change the location of that cat's nest, the cat surely doesn't mind anyway. At the moment turned into a cat cake sleeping in the nest of 10. 000 raised his head, meow and ei, I also planned to check out the piano at first, but, Yi Shuang said, perhaps thinking of something, paused for a moment and eventually did not say anything. He smiled, guitar is also good, how can I have that much energy to learn two instruments? Chen Xin was aware of Yi Shuang's mood fluctuations, although she is usually more savage, but in fact belongs to the type of careful and understanding, although a little puzzled, but Si Yi Shuang did not want to say it also did not choose to follow up on the question, on the contrary, Bai Yan Yu, who was touching the guitar, said softly, I didn't go when I met, my ex-girlfriend, ah Yi, you met Zhao Mengyao? Chen Xin tentatively went to look at Yi Shuang's expression, but found that his face didn't have many fluctuations, just hmmed, yes, is everything alright, what could be wrong? Yi Shuang smiled and asked back, It's good to be fine, it's good to be fine, Chen Xin said, but seemed to be observing Yi Shuang's expression, but did not notice anything wrong. Yi Shuang said, You don't need to look at me like that. This Zhao Mangyao fellow was already getting more and more excessive. Next time this young lady will help you beat her up. Chen Xin waved her small fist. Yi Shuang just shook her head. I'm just a little bit sorry. Chen Xin's heart instantly tightened, blinking her eyes at Yi Shuang. What pity. If I had recognized it earlier, maybe mom and dad would still be around. Yi Shuang just smiled faintly, his eyes carrying a hint of gray. The white moonlight is certainly important, but for the already filial Yi Shuang, 
the departure of his parents is the biggest blow to him, that brings inner torment and self-blame, torturing him all the time, far beyond the pain caused by the loss of love, it's okay, Uncle Yi and the others won't blame you, although Chun Qin also knew that his words were useless, he still got up and sat beside Yi Shuang, reaching out and placing his hand on the back of his hand to comfort him, Bai Yu Yue also stretched out her hand at this moment, following Chun Qin's example and placed it on the back of Yi Shuang's other hand, two warm and soft little hands, causing Yi Shuang to not know whether he should cry or laugh, okay, I'm fine, people have to look forward after all, or Zhao Mengyao outlawed death, Chen Qin exasperatedly said, savage girl, what an uneducated fellow, Yi Shuang also thought that Zhao Mengyao's character development might have something to do with himself, after all, her previous character was not that self-centered, although she was arrogant but more or less understanding, but he helped Zhao Mengyao with everything, no matter what he did, he didn't have to worry about anything, even if she was thirsty, as soon as she lifted her hand he himself would hand over the glass of water, never refuting the other party's ideas and requests, except for the stars in the sky, Yi Shuang could almost fulfill all the requests, perhaps it was this overindulgence that also allowed Zhao Mengyao to gradually develop the other party's arrogant, unseen and too self-centered character, in the end, it's still a sentence, lick dog biss, Yi Shuang also in from time to time and asking himself, he did wrong, in the process of love to pay all the good, pay all the heart but cannot receive a good result, but now he is also the same to buy Yu Yu a good time, the young girl but every now and then hung up on what he did, Yi Shuang slowly also found, people are different from each other, not everyone felt that others treating them well was something they deserved, if you are good to some people, she will feel that you are not good enough, but like by Yu Yu a or Chen Qin, if you are good to her, they are willing to give double the amount of thought back to you, and will also remember your goodness, ultimately, it's about using the right place, the roses you spend 998 on may not please the goddess and may even end up in the trash, but a single rose can make your mother happy for a whole day. Therefore, when you intend to pay all of yourself, but also to know whether the other party in the heart of you, do not feed the true heart of the dog, the night, gradually deepened. Yi Shuang updated today's novel, and so on the second floor intends to sleep, but found that tonight three people do not know how to arrange the sleeping position. I, want to sleep with Yi Shuang. Bai Yu Yue said without hesitation as she wrapped one hand around the small pillow and grabbed the bedpan. No, you're so big. You need to learn to share a bed. Chen Qin tugged at the small, expressionless Bai Yu Yue, but to no avail. Don't. Chen Qin, however, said in a serious tone, You know, men and women are different. Only after marriage can they sleep together. We are husband and wife. You are not. Yes. Back and forth. Even in the end. Bai Yu Yue directly jumped onto Yi Shuang's bed and used the quilt to directly wrap herself into a nori roll. Next to her head, there was a piece of paper. Omega, I've got the disease that I'll die if I don't sleep with Yi Shuang. Are you going to murder? Where is this disease? A faint whiteness, almost sweeping away the night's gloom, shone through the window on the side of the bed. Yi Shuang opened his eyes and realized that he was being confined by one left and one right. The two girls were sleeping at the moment, their smooth breathing carrying some sweetness and the glimmer of morning light fell on their bodies as if they were hit with a layer of high-gloss light, blindingly white, luckily it's not in Chun Qin's home, Yi Shuang murmured, last night Bai Yu Yue was really reluctant to leave Yi Shuang's bed, and in the end Chen Qin joined in under the name of supervision, so much so that it changed back to its original appearance, however, the good thing is that because it is in the apartment, so Yi Shuang did not sleep with fear and trembling, the thought of this previous appearance may be discovered by the four elders, he almost almost a dawn before he could not hold on to sleep, last night is also considered to be a peaceful sleep, so much so that he himself slept with his arms around his neck all the time and the face wash did not find out, Yi Shuang yawned and sat down to let the inflammation in his swollen wounds subside a bit before climbing out of bed to prepare breakfast, meow and ei, 10,000 heard Yi Shuang's movement downstairs, its paws stretched out, its body pressed down to make a slouch and yawn before its limbs, as if they weren't its own, fell over in an eastward direction as if it had been altered with a game key, eat more, after Yi Shuang poured some cat food for 10, 000, this guy clunked and dazzled, now that this orange had reached the awkward stage, its body began to elongate and also looked a bit thin, cats are all like this, first pulling the length before pulling the width, especially like 10, 000, 000 such orange cats, almost one day a look, the cat was growing up day by day, and so was Yu Yue, Yi Shuang looked at the 10, 000, 000 that was drying its rice, and couldn't help but have a light smile at the corner of his mouth. After opening the refrigerator, Yi Shuang took out a carton of eggs and came out, and simply while frying the poached eggs, the apartment door on the side also resounded with a slight knocking sound. It was undoubtedly Tang Coco. Good morning, 
Brother, Tang Koko was holding her carry bag in both hands, a cute smile on her face, seemingly in a good mood. Good morning, did something good happen? Seeing the other party's happy look, Yi Shuang smiled and asked. It couldn't be that she was happy because she was going to school, right? Tang Koko shouldn't be that good at school either. Otherwise the ranking wouldn't be at the bottom, right? Oh, I went to the amusement park yesterday. It's a rare vacation for mom and dad, Tang Koko said, fumbling in her satchel for a few seconds, taking out an exquisite little packing box. And, brother, this is for you. This is a small gift from the amusement park. Since it's a Pokemon co-brand, I bought a few back, Tang Koko said, pointing to the small box in Yi Shuang's hands. Pikachus, it's cute. Yi Shuang sniffed, then opened the box, a Pikachu refrigerator sticker. It looked quite exquisite. Looking at the big head sticker of himself and by Yugi on the refrigerator on the side, Yi Shuang put that Pikachu on it as well. Next to the young girl's face it emphasized a few cute points. The original bare refrigerator door was gradually filled with some things. Yi Shuang looked surprisingly have a kind of indescribable satisfaction. As if every place can think of some little picture, there was no need to demand too much of oneself. Sometimes a little something could bring joy as well as happiness. Thanks, Coco. Hey, hey. It's embarrassing to keep dawdling. Tang Coco's eyes curved. The bottle of wine you gave me earlier was so expensive. This breakfast of mine wouldn't be enough even if I did it for a year. Yi Shuang said. No oh. My mom and dad still think it's not enough. But also let me take some more pork store over. Bought the day before yesterday in Omen. Very delicious. Tang Koko said and took out another bag of dried pork from her bag. Probably one or two pounds. And just put it on a side table. Too polite. No. 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 Brother and you you uh, keep it to eat. Delicious things should be shared. Tang Koko is very good at being a good person. Coupled with a good talker who is also cute. The school bag is also big. In fact, Yi Shuang still quite like this child. This time the young girl also asked. Brother, have you ever brought Yu Yue to the amusement park to play? That's not true, but past the aquarium. Yi Shuang said. Nah, I have two extra amusement park tickets here. They can be used for two months. So why don't you take Yu Yue there when you have time? Looking at the amusement park tickets Tang Koko handed over. Yi Shuang raised her eyes and suddenly asked with a smile. Are you sure it's an extra? Right oh. Tang Koko tried to taunt her expression and said. Beat her to death. She wouldn't admit that she had bought it specifically. With her years of experience in teenage manga, letting Yui take her brother. It was useless to just rely on getting along on a daily basis right now. There also needed to be some events that could heat up the relationship, so that both internal and external aspects could be taken care of. To take cricket so a brother. After all, the appearance of a big boss like Sister Chun Chin had also created a sense of crisis for Tang Koko, the military master. I'll transfer the money to you. Yi Shuang looked at the tickets in his hand and smiled. No, 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 no need. Brother has treated me to so many delicious meals. Tang Koko's head shook like a rattle. Yi Shuang didn't dwell on it and took it after saying thank you. He thought about it. This week he could take Yuyi over to the amusement park to have some fun. He just didn't know if that girl liked the facilities of the amusement park. Maybe it was because of the thought of playing the roller coaster or something like that he might be able to see by Yuyi's different expression. Yi Shuang had a point of anticipation. While chatting with Tang Koko, Bai Yu Yue also got up. Chen Qin seemed to still be sleeping. After all, it was still very early. Yi Shuang didn't intend to wake her up, but prepared breakfast for the other two. Tang Koko had given Bai Yu Yue a small gift, and in contrast to Yi Shuang's refrigerator stickers, hers was a delicate Pikachu keychain as well as an elf ball brooch. The keychain was strung with the apartment's room card, while the brooch was mounted on Bai Yu Yue's usual school satchel. The young girl sat at the dining table. Her jeweled eyes looking at the keychain shaking slightly in her hand as she whispered a thank you towards Tang Kuku. It looked as if she seemed to be very happy to receive the gift. After breakfast, they went to school. But before leaving, Bai Yuyi still lying in Yi Shuang's arms a bit refused to leave. After replenishing the so-called Yi Shuang's energy for several minutes, this niece was taken away by Tang Kuku's little hand. Almost there, Yi Shuang saw the two walk into the elevator, then also closed the door of the room. He cleaned up the table for a while, then looked at the time. It was still early. He had also made a doctor's appointment for Chen Qin last night. So let's wait until she woke up. The system window said that Chen Qin had a stomach ulcer. But the actual severity of the situation had to be known at the hospital. If it wasn't for his rather forceful request yesterday, perhaps Chen Qin wouldn't have taken it seriously. Uh, on the bed, Chen Qin slowly opened her eyes at this time. She stretched out her hand to scratch and rub her long, slightly curly hair, stretching her body to let out a vague and unclear sound. Her godless eyes then casually looked around before she finally murmured. Grind me a cup of coffee. 
Hmm, it was only after a few seconds that Chen Xin came back to her senses, realizing that this was Yi Shuang's apartment, and she glanced at the bed before remembering that she had slept with Yi Shuang last night. Where's my Yi Shuang? Chen Xin climbed out of bed with a confused voice, and walked to the glass railing before she saw the man who was cleaning up the dishes downstairs accompanied by the sound of a slow faucet. He was scrubbing the dishes at the moment, and at the man's feet, there was an orange kitten tilting its head. Chen Xin was lying on her back at the railing, one hand propping up her innocent face to reveal a smile, perhaps because she hadn't fully woken up yet. Her expression was still a bit naive. Hey, hey, it's so nice to see Ai Yi early in the morning. Yi Shuang, who was scrubbing the dishes at this time, perhaps sensed the line of sight. He looked up and opened his mouth to ask. Up, Chen Qin still has a lazy look. The nightgown she is wearing at the moment slips out of her snow-white fragrant shoulders and hemisphere, but still says in a soft voice, sleep comfortably, stay with me every night in the future. Thinking too much, and don't sleep with three people in the future. Yi Shuang said, what's wrong? Afraid that you can't help it? Chen Qin played with her long hair, her beautiful eyes half narrowed. Anyway, I don't care about it oh, it's just that you can't lay your hands on Yu Yue, she can't understand anything, Yi Shuang didn't answer, just raised his eyes and said, come down and wash up first, then we'll go to the hospital, good, after Chen Xin washed up and came out it was already half an hour later, looking at the other party's moist and watery face, Yi Shuang could probably guess what had been done, however, he didn't say anything more, women, it's normal to go out and dilly dally, Chen Qin organized his clothes, Turned his head to Yi Shuang and asked, Yi Shuang, what hospital did you make an appointment for? Zhong Fifth Hospital. Yi Shuang said, There are not many hospitals in Haizhou City. Apart from the People's Hospital, the one that is close to home and has a good standard is Zhong Wu Hospital. Oh, Chen Qin was originally thinking about making an appointment with a specialist she knew, but after thinking about it, it doesn't matter. Just think of it as spending time with the two of you with Yi Shuang. Anyway, it will not be a big disease. At the very least, Chen Qin did not feel were very uncomfortable. At most, is the occasional gastrointestinal problems loss of appetite, and almost every year the family will have a regular physical examination, so Chen Qin is not very worried about their own health problems. After finishing breakfast, Chen Qin changed into drying clothes and then followed Yi Shuang out the door. Do you still need to wear makeup to see the doctor? As Yi Shuang drove the car, he asked Chen Qin, who was beside him, with his afterglow, if he went to see a doctor, he didn't really need to put on makeup. Did he? Chen Qin at this time to the visor mirror painted lipstick. In the face of Yi Shuang's inquiry, she also just pursed lipstick and laughed. This you do not understand it. I dress up beautifully. You take out is not also have face? You like it is good. Yi Shuang fell no longer say anything more to concentrate on driving. Ten minutes later, Yi Shuang also came to Zhong Fifth Hospital. The full name should be called Zhongshan University Affiliated Fifth Hospital. At this time, the cars lined up to enter the parking lot were very many. So much so that Yi Shuang drove the car to the negative third floor. Sayli, so many people. Chen Qin glanced at the rearview mirror and realized that the front and back were stuffed with cars, even though this was the negative third floor. Isn't today Monday ba? Don't you have to work? Being sick doesn't depend on the date. Yi Shuang then said, but he also happened to spot a vehicle that was about to leave. So he squeezed right in. Let's go. Oh, after riding the elevator to the outpatient clinic. Yi Shuang got their registration slips and just sat on the chairs in the waiting room and waited for the number to be called. Please ask patient A017, Chen Qin, to consulting room 5. The radio also sounded at this time. Yi Shuang glanced at it and said to Chen Qin beside him, Let's go. Don't fret. Don't be nervous. I'm fine. After entering the clinic, the doctor inquired about the situation and then arranged for Chen Qin to go for a gastroscopy, hearing that he had to be intubated for a gastroscopy. Chen Qin was not very willing to do so. After all, no one likes such a long tube being shoved all the way down the throat and into the stomach. Ah ye, can I not do a gastroscopy ah? Just prescribe some medicine. Chen Qin put her hands together and swayed her palms from side to side in a cute manner, completely lacking the strong look she had in the company. And, okay, painless gastroscopy, don't worry if you don't feel anything. Yi Shuang grasped Chen Qin expressionlessly and went to pay. I'd rather eat grains of lard and sugar than do a gastroscopy. Shut up, tossed a morning. The results of the gastroscopy also came out. Yi Shuang looked at the report in his hand. It does say what gastric ulcer what duodenal bulbous ulcer A1, but he does not quite understand this, or need to take it to the doctor. Do you want to see? Yi Shuang held the report and asked Chen Qin beside him. No, it looks a bit disgusting. Yi Shuang, isn't that your body? After re-entering the consultation room, the doctor looked at Chen Qin's report, but his eyebrows were slightly locked. I also looked at the scene just now. 
the ulcer is not big. Zero, two asterisk zero, five in size. Yi Shuang asked, Doctor, there shouldn't be any major problems, right? Well, it doesn't seem to be a big problem, it's better to prescribe some medication bar to eat, and be sure to come over for a follow-up after a while. The doctor continued, if this ulcer doesn't get better, you need to do a biopsy. Biopsy. Yi Shuang frowned slightly, then glanced at Chen Xin beside her. Good. After prescribing the medicine, Yi Shuang brought Chen Xin to the first floor to get the medicine. At this time, Chen Xin stood by the side with a smile. The doctor said there is nothing wrong. See, you are too worried. Don't be too happy. Yi Shuang thought of the biopsy that the doctor said, and carefully checked Chen Xin's system page. And after determining that what was written on it was not gastric cancer but gastric ulcer, he withdrew his sight. His heart was also quite solid. This wasn't some dog-blooded novel, and Yi Shuang had more or less read about medicine, so he was still very attentive to Chen Xin's illness. Take the medicine on time, Yi Shuang said, the nails of her fingers tapping the pillbox. Oh, I'll remind you regularly. I know you're busy at work, but if you forget to take your medicine, you'll be dead hard if you boil a stomach cancer out. Wow, you're too much cursing me with cancer, although Chen Qin's mouth was saying so, but hearing Yi Shuang so concerned about herself, her heart was still beautiful, let's go, I'll send you back to the company, Yi Shuang said, really, take a taxi if you don't want to, I you do blah, ah. after sending Chen Qin to the front door of the company, Yi Shuang opened his mouth and said, here we are, remember to take your medicine on time, I'll eat it if you supervise, sandbag big fist eat or not, after Chen Qin punched Yi Shuang's shoulder, she also got off the car directly, and her appearance naturally attracted a large amount of attention. After all, this is the company's boss. So much so that the employees who were a little bit closer started to call out to Mr. Chen in the morning. Morning. After Chen Qin answered, she winked towards Yi Shuang in the sports car and also turned to leave. After Yi Shuang saw Chen Qin walk into the building, she left as well. Good morning, Mr. Chen. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Chen. Morning. After Chen Qin left Yi Shuang, her face was no longer as playful as it was just now, and she entered the working state with a calm face and even with a few serious looks. While waiting for the elevator, Chen Qin noticed that there was a man standing beside him. He was wearing a suit with a big back hair and a golden glasses. Mr. Chen, I thought you were early. The man smiled and said, Would you like to have dinner together tonight? I've gotten my hands on a bottle of 88 Conti. It's good for sipping. It's only morning and you're already thinking about what to eat tonight, Mr. Yang. It seems like you've been quite idle lately. Chen Xin glanced at him and then said with a smile. It's just that her smile at this moment is more like a fake smile compared to the one she had when she was spending time with Yi Shuang. After all, you have to combine work and rest. If I wasn't busy, I would still want to have a lunch date with you. No need to be polite, Mr. Yang. Then you should get busy first. After all, now that the company has a lot of business lately, we all need to work hard to make it work. Eh? After Chen Qin returned to her office, she instructed the assistant at the site to pour herself a cup of coffee, and then just sat on her office chair. After thinking about it, she took out her cell phone. Chen Qin, what's for dinner tonight? The other party is in the process of typing. Yi Xuan, you're idle? You're asking what's for dinner this early in the morning. Chen Qin, I am very idle. Why don't I get you a position? Just sit next to me at work, and touch the fish together. Yi Xuan, work well. I'm going to turn green. Chen Qin also had to put the cell phone on one side, calm down and began to work up. After all, she did not have time tonight, but also to go to the field to sign a contract. On the other side, Yi Shuang also came to the school. Good morning, Mr. Bai. Good morning. Running into a few teachers who knew each other, they still greeted Yi Shuang as teacher Bai. After all, there were so many teachers in Silver Mountain Academy. No one knew exactly what your situation was, especially if it wasn't a grade level. After Yi Shuang returned to the school nurse's room, he opened the door but froze, only to see a young girl sitting by the window, almost half of her body hanging in the air. A wisp if any breeze blew up the tips of her hair with some thin coolness. You, Yi Shuang had not yet opened his mouth. The young girl also looked back, neatly without a trace of messy bangs, that eyes were flooded with a bit of tears. Tear droplets fell along the chin on her skirt, without any ripples. Unsure Fu, why are you crying? Yi Shuang only felt a trace of incredulity and absurdity after seeing this scene, and even thought if the other party was pretending, who could make her cry? At this moment, after and Yu saw Yi Shuang who appeared in the school doctor's room, she wiped away the tears at the corner of her eyes with her jacket and then just jumped straight down. Don't! Yi Shuang immediately ran to the window. He looked towards the downstairs, but found that and Yu didn't plop on the ground as he imagined. But instead, 
She landed on the ground and disappeared with a tumbling trot. Yi Shuang, is this a ninja? You have to know that this is the second floor. Yi Shuang thought about it and still planned to turn around to find and sure you. But just as he turned around, he realized that the young girl was standing behind him with her pockets in her pockets and blowing gum in her mouth. Ha, huh? a Jussie, what's all the fuss about? And sure you lazily said, are you a human or a ghost? Yi Shuang sized up the young girl in front of him and pointed to the window on the side. Didn't you just jump off? And Shi Yu sniffed, swept her eyes at that window, and said faintly, Awesome, right? Is this a question of awesome or not? It's just a magic trick. Uncle you really look like you've never seen the world. After and Shi Yu finished speaking, she sat on her but on the hospital bed next to her and played the game. Yi Shuang only felt that there was an indescribable sense of incongruity somewhere. But in the end, he did not dwell on it, and just took it as some kind of ninja blindfold because he came to school rather late. The time swung to the noontime. Yi Shuang promised Yu Yue to spend the lunch break together. So after he put his books away, he directly got up with the intention to go to the dining hall. Together, before leaving, Yi Shuang also asked in Shiyu who was lying on the bed not far away. But the other party just lazily rolled over. Not going. Yi Shuang then did not say anything more. And after covering the door of the school doctor's office, he walked towards the dining hall. At this moment, the hospital bed suddenly moved and Shi Yu sat up again. She hugged her knees, her gaze cast to the side window. After a few seconds, her lips moved. And, idiot, because of the appointment, Yi Shuang waited for Bai Yen Yu as well as Tang Koko at the entrance of the dining hall. Brother, Yi Shuang, you can't be like this in school in the future. What's for lunch? Seeing Bai Yu Yue jumping into her arms like this without any scruples, Yi Shuang pinched the other party's cheeks and then asked, We just planned to eat on the rooftop. Tang Koko said, Pack a lunchbox. Rooftop? Aha! Uh -huh. For students who didn't like to eat in crowded places, or even bring their own food over, they would actually choose to eat in a classroom or rooftop or something like that. And Yi Shuang didn't say much after hearing that Bai Yenyu and the girls had such an interest. After Yi Shuang casually packed a barbecue pork rice, the two teenage girls also packed their favorite food separately, only in contrast to the three or four layer lunchbox in Bai Yenyu's hand. Tang Koko was a palm sized small box lunch. Eating so little? Yi Shuang asked. Losing weight. Tang Kuka smiled with a slightly embarrassed red face. You're not fat. Yi Shuang said. There's no problem with your kind of body. Why do you need to lose weight? Although Tang Kuka's face was a little baby fat, it had absolutely nothing to do with being fat. Just that her bag of books was slightly larger than her peers by a billion points. Don't say fat. It doesn't even match with micro fat. The clothes I bought half a year ago are starting to not fit. Whoops. Tang Kuku, however, looked dejected. Definitely gained a lot of weight. Yi Shuang, could it be that some parts of you are too prominent? Just at this time, Yi Shuang felt his coat corner being pulled. He turned his head, only to see the expressionless young girl ask once, Yi Shuang, am I fat? Not fat. Yi Shuang after seeing Bai Yu Yue also joined the conversation, reached out his hand and rubbed her head and said with a smile, on the contrary Bai Yu Yue's figure is quite standard. There is meat where there should be meat. The belly is also flat without a trace of flab. Even Yi Shuang hopes that Yu Yue can be a little fatter so that it will look healthier. Perhaps when a person really care about each other, the hope is not to raise each other's bones as thin as firewood, in order to so-called white young skinny deformed aesthetic, but to be able to white fat, healthy and healthy. Yi Shuang originally wanted to say that Yu Yue could not eat more, but considering the other party's original amount of food, as if there is no point in saying it, this girl's amount of food is originally quite terrible. From her hand carrying a lunchbox to no, change to passersby to see thought that Bai Yu Yu is to help give several people to eat. But these are just the normal amount of meals Bai Yu Yue has. Yi Shuang also used the system to check Bai Yu Yue's situation. There is no problem in terms of physical health. After coming to the rooftop, there were some concrete bumps that could be used as tables and chairs. Yi Shuang had just sat down and realized that there was a warmth and weight coming from his thighs. Bai Yu Lu actually sat directly across his thighs, and her shoulders were also directly attached to his chest. And when Yi Shuang's side looked over, the young girl's delicate face still revealed a trace of innocence and doubt. Whispering Yui. Hmm, why are you sitting on my lap? Yi Shuang asked. Because, there is no chair here. The young girl replied with an expressionless face. Actually, you can sit here. Yi Shuang pointed to the empty space next to her, as if Coco had sat down directly, and was looking her gaze over, even with a strange smile. Bai Yu Yu eh, however, shook her head, like this. This is not convenient to eat. Yi Shuang said. How could he eat with his thighs being seated like this? Bai Yen Yu looked left and right and finally reached out his palm and touched his abdomen, not knowing what he was doing, as if he was studying it. What's wrong? 
Bai Yuyue paused for a few seconds and finally whispered, I'm not fat, it's not that you being fat will affect my eating, it's that this posture of yours is blocking me from eating well. Stupid. Yi Xuang cried and laughed as he stretched out his hand and gently knocked Bai Yuyue's head and said, Bai Yuyue I understood. She slowly got up and then changed her direction, changed to a face-to-face -face position with Yi Xuang and sat on his lap. Yi Xuang, isn't this posture even worse? And it's all rubbing against the wound. Yi Xuang had to reach out and put his hand around her waist to avoid falling backward. Then asked, is there a possibility that this posture is even more inedible? Oh, after the three people stepped down and sat down, they began to eat. Isn't the school festival coming soon? What theme is your class planning to organize during this time? Yi Xuang asked. Tang Kuku said, I haven't thought about it yet, but some students in the class are talking about opening a movie theater. A movie theater? Right oh. Just take the projector that's usually used in class and get it. Set up more chairs and show the movie. Tang Kuku gestured, but from the scene she described it was clear that there wasn't much appeal. Eh? Yi Xuan thought about it. Isn't this a complete waste of activity time? And it doesn't have the movie theater viewing experience? Yeah, so it was rejected. Tang Ku Ku continued. Some boys in the class said to get some kind of maid cafe, so that the girls in the class could go play maids or something. Maid. Yi Shuang thought for a moment. His gaze turned to Bai Yan Yu on the side, and finally asked, Did it say who they'd let be? Not for the time being, but the class teacher seems to have plans to let Yu Yu be it. After all, she's very popular in her grade now, so she can solicit guests when the time comes. Yi Xuan sniffed, but her tone was light. There is no such good thing. In the past when they bullied Yen Yue, they let her be a ghost, and now that she is pretty, she will be a maid to solicit guests. What do they take her for? A useful tool? Obviously. They ignored Bai Yu Yue's punches and kicks, but now that she's more popular, they think they can arrange her as they please? With this in mind, Yi Xuan said to Bai Wai, who was concentrating on her meal beside her. Yu Yu eh? You don't want to participate in this year's class theme. Wait until after the fourth grade is divided into classes. After the fourth grade is the grade of specialization. By then, in addition to the students of this school, there will be a group of students who will be admitted into the school. By then subdivided study majors. The original with the language you with the same class of those students must not be much. Really want to put into the class activities. Or to help their classmates. At the very least, those guys before is not at all. The homeroom teacher. By Yu Yu tilted her head. It's fine. If he really wants to force you, I'll fix it. Yi Shuang smiled. Didn't I say, you can look for me when you encounter any difficulties. The young girl nodded her head obediently. I'll listen to everything Yi Shuang. A few seconds later, she suddenly asked, Yi Shuang, whom, I've encountered a difficulty. What? It's the difficulty of, wanting to take a bath together at night. Bai Yan Yu's beautiful eyes stared at Yi Shuang and said seriously, just short of writing on her face that I really encountered a difficulty. This accepted. Yi Shuang boarded his face. Oh, after eating their fill, a few people sunbathed a little, today's weather was good. Even in the late afternoon time it would not be much sunshine. The rays of sunlight fell on the body, as if giving a sparkle to this calm day that could not be blown up and wrinkled. Yi Shuang and the two young girls are sitting with their backs against the wall, looking at the clouds in the sky slowly moving their bodies, as if time has been slowed down in general. The sky was good, the clouds were good, and even the wind blowing over was good but it also brought a bit of lethargy and weariness, so much so that after Bai Yan Yu looked at it for a while, she couldn't help but lean on Yi Shuang's shoulder and close her eyes. People always like to relax in the most secure place, just like the young girl at the moment. When the fatigue of the morning study sessions swarmed over her, she chose to take a nap beside Yi Shuang, that is, in the place where she felt secure. Tang Kuku also fell asleep not long after, as she leaned on Bai Yan Yu's shoulder for a morning nap. Yi Shuang twisted his head to look at the two young girls with their eyes closed but he felt some amusement. Although nothing had happened today, the calm days in turn made today's self enjoy it even more. He used to think that only days where he was challenged every day were called living a life. Sitting here looking at the sky like this was in turn a waste of time. But nowadays Yi Shuang didn't think so. Instead he felt that such peace was rare and precious. Every ordinary day we spend may be a miracle that happens continuously. At this moment, Yi Shuang sniffed the mixed scent coming from the tip of his nose and also closed his eyes slightly. Just like this, it was good to rest. Afternoon, brother school doctor. Here, people are not feeling well here. Aya, you directly reach in. This angle can't be checked. Yi Shuang in the school doctor's office as usual to the burnt goods to check the body. Listening to their mouth a sweet school doctor brother. Yi Shuang always have a kind of feeling to be divided and swallowed accurately speaking. It should be the Tang monk mistakenly into the daughter country. Although exaggerated, but Yi Shuang is so feel. 
But what makes Yi Shuang surprised is that Yu is not in the school medical room. In the past at this time, the last bed in the school medical room will definitely have her touching the fish. But it seems that in addition to seeing her jumping in the morning, she did not see it after the lunch break. That guy, it can't be that he broke his foot. After all, he jumped from the second floor. Yi Shuang thought to himself, but also could not figure out how she appeared behind himself in a flash. And it is not a superpower or something, it can't be Doryman's arbitrary door. This is also too unscientific. But after careful consideration, Yi Shuang was not qualified to say such words as too unscientific. After sending those students away, Yi Shuang hadn't even sat down when he realized that his school doctor's office actually started to have teachers coming over. Anyone? Ha! Huh? Strange. Mister. Why why are you wearing the school nurse's clothes? This is the class teacher of class C. M.S. Shin. Her age is not that big compared to the other teachers. She is a master who is about 25 or 26 years old, wearing a pair of glasses bundled with a ponytail. Her appearance is relatively pure. She saw that Yi Xuan was actually in the school nurse's room. She was a bit puzzled and asked, Oh, I think it's quite hard to be a teacher. So I changed my profession to be a school nurse, and it just so happens that there is a shortage of people. Yi Xuan smiled and said casually, Indeed hard la, but fortunately, our college is not like other schools as much as the face project. I heard that there is an elementary school over in the Bay Area. Even the wedding leave is not approved. Complained about the higher-ups also do not care. But also three days and two days to invite the leadership over. In order to face the pressure all to the teacher. You say how hard. Indeed. Yi Shuang also did not continue to chat. After all, he is not much interested in these strange things. Just asked. Mr. Shin where are you uncomfortable? Oops. How can I say it? Teacher Shin seemed to be a bit embarrassed, especially facing Yi Shuang's sight. Seeing this, Yi Shuang checked her information as well. Person, Shin Jiaojia, Silver Mountain Academy 3rd grade class C teacher, recently seems to have started to have uterine cold and blood flow. Oh, I see. No wonder she was embarrassed to open her mouth. Maybe MS. Shin thought that the school nurse here was a stranger, but in the spirit of her professional ethics, Yi Shuang still smiled and said, It's okay, just think of me as a doctor. No need to be shy. Shin Jiaojia thought carefully. It seems to make sense. So she covered her stomach and said, I've been especially uncomfortable here recently. And, that's the one that's coming especially hard. Give me a pulse. You can take a pulse? Shin Jiaojia was actually just painfully uncomfortable. If it wasn't difficult for the homeroom teacher to take a leave of absence, she probably would have run to the hospital by now. A little. Yi Shuang where will take the pulse. To put it bluntly, it's just a pretense. He put his finger on the other party's pulse, pretended to close his eyes to feel for a while, then remembered the description of uterine cold in the medical book he recently studied. He inquired, do you like to wear revealing clothes, or do you like to eat cold food during your period? Yes. Shin Jiaojia was a bit surprised that Yi Shuang would say it so accurately. Taking the pulse is so powerful ah, right, magical oriental power. Yi Shuang said, in your case, it's uterine cold, I'll get you some medicine to eat. But conditioning is more important. Yi Shuang stood up, and after taking some medicine to replenish blood and warm the uterus from the cabinet on the side, she also didn't forget to exhort, don't eat cold food at special times in the future, especially ice cream, and also pay attention to keeping warm to keep warm. In your case, if it's serious, you will be infertile. Yi Shuang's sentence immediately made Shen Jiajiao's face look unsightly. So exaggerated ah, uh, I don't have a boyfriend yet. Right, that's why it's important to take good care of your body. Yi Shuang said with a smile. Well, got it. Shin Jiajio said and glanced at Yi Shuang again. I've long heard from my classmates that the school doctor in the third school medical office is very powerful. It seems like it is indeed the case. Why don't you go to a big hospital to become a doctor? Mister. Bye. I prefer a career with a little more leisure. Yi Shuang laughed. If it was a year ago, adhering to the concept of wasting time is wasting life concept. He was definitely not someone who would say such words. Moreover, he wasn't even a listed doctor. He was completely stuffed in for an Shiyu to muddle through. It seemed that he was slowly gaining popularity, and seemed to be a reliable school doctor in the eyes of many students, and was also responsible for the mental health of some students. Thanks, Shin Jiajiu said after loading those medicines. Well, you're welcome. Right, mister. Bye. Hmm, Shin Jiajiu seemed a bit shy, but still asked, Do you have time to eat dinner together? I know a very good restaurant. The man in front of her was handsome and gentle, and his age was also similar. There was no doubt that Shin Jiaojio had evoked the thoughts of a woman who had been a maternal solo for more than 20 years, and this was one of the rare times that she had summoned up the courage to do so. Yi Xuan sniffed, his deep as ink eyes did not change much. He smiled slightly. Yes well, unfortunately, 
I already have an appointment. I also have to accompany the object for dinner in the evening. Sorry about it. True. True pity. Then I go first. Xin Jiaojiao again stupid also understand that the other party has rejected himself, then smiled and no longer asked. Uh, okay. After seeing Xin Jiaojiao leave the school doctor's office, Yi Shuang resumed his seat. Just after stretching, the cell phone placed on the desktop rang. He glanced at it and found that it was from Fugue. Fugue, you out for tea tonight? Combustible oolong tea, plus 98% water of life. Yi Shuang saw this message and realized that it was still a message from the group. And at this time, a new message appeared in the group. Fugue, I you are not from Sichuan and Shu. We can still be a rake ear for the people of the southern barbarians? Chen Hai, bullshit. The old man this is a pain in the wife. Really to what time? Pinch is not easy. Yi Shuang knocked the button at this time. Yi Shuang, screenshots have been taken. Will be sent to your wife. Chen Hai, brother, brother I was wrong. Fu Gue at Yi Shuang, bring your family's kids out. Let me see if they've been raised white and fat. Yi Shuang, that's definitely chubby. Although not much, at least the color is good. Yi Shuang, tonight? Fu Gue, hate the previous row did not say after a while. Not tonight is when? Yi Shuang thought about it. It seems like it is indeed possible. But if you really drink, you still can't drive there. Taking a taxi would be good. College corridor. Drinking? No. 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 My family would definitely beat me to death if they knew. When Tang Coco heard by you say this, she instantly waved her small hand in a hurry and refused. The head that looked like a rattle drum even made the big book bag shake its head from side to side. At the very least, it'll be after fourth grade. At that time I'll be considered a college student. So mom and dad will be a little looser in their control. Tang Coco also heard that Yi Xuan was going to take by UUF for a drink and incidentally asked Tang Koko if she was going to go or not. But in the message Yi Shuang sent, he also just expressed that he was going to go for a drink and then take Yu Yue to eat something, and didn't actually say that Yu Yue was going to follow and drink. And to be really honest alcohol is something Yi Shuang wouldn't have let by Yu Yue touch outside. Good. After hearing that Tang Koko didn't go, the young girl nodded her head. The two walked side by side in the corridor. The wind this afternoon was very comfortable, and one could even vaguely hear the cries of robins. After all, the summer vacation was almost here, especially in a southern sea-facing city like Haizhou. The temperature was gradually rising every day. At this moment, Tang Koko beside her looked at the scenery outside the corridor and spoke. I heard that the corridors of the schools over in the north are all closed. Will I miss out on a lot of scenery this way? Silver Mountain Academy covered a large area. The classrooms from fourth grade onwards even had to take the campus bus to get there from the entrance. And from Tang Koko's perspective looking out, in addition to the playground one could also see the lakes as well as the mountains. So she was also curious as to what the perspective of the schools in the north was like. Bai Yuyue heard Tang Koko ask this question. Tilted her head and couldn't imagine what a closed corridor would look like. The two of them just chatted without a word. Probably almost to the classroom. But Tang Koko suddenly had a footstep and stared wide-eyed. Ah, my hair is in the air. She said. Ah, I forgot my hairpin in the big classroom. Wait for me. Saying that. Tang Koko turned around and ran away, muttering as she ran. So annoying, I can barely control my center of gravity when I run, and I'm still growing meat. The young girl behind her, question mark. After seeing Tang Koko disappeared around the corner, Bai Yuyue stood obediently in place and waited. The position she stood in was in the corridor where there was more foot traffic, and Silver Mountain College already had some courses that were to go to specific classrooms, so as she stood there, her overly perfect appearance attracted other people's eyes constantly. There were also some students who directly took out their cell phones to click and steal a few pictures, and then asked their friends which class was that girl. However, the young girl's temperament was too cool, so some students didn't dare to get close, or even just stole a few glances, but there were also bold ones who saw by UUS standing there quietly and directly greeted her with a smile. Classmate, are you waiting for someone? By UUS sniffed and just glanced at them, nodding her head gently. I'm from the fourth year materials 2 class. Can you add a WeChat to chat? It just so happens that our department is having a fellowship. Let's get together. Perhaps seeing by Yu Yue nod her head, those few boys seemed to have gotten encouragement and immediately asked with a smile. Bai Yu Yue didn't understand what is called fellowship, but she still said, No. Well, can you add a Weibo then? Just chatting. You see we are all classmates. How nice to exchange things about studying. Bai Yu Yue still shook her head, but that boy looked at such a beautiful girl but still a little don't want to give up the appearance, to know that in their materials chemistry major, but there is not a girl that can look past, not to mention this kind of SSS level beauty in front of them, hey you guys, blocking the road, suddenly a voice came from the side, 
A few boys turned their heads at the sound only to find a shoulder-length short-haired girl standing on the side. She was carrying her pockets, wearing purple headphones in the shape of cat ears, and was looking at the few in front of her with a rather disgusted look. Isn't this road pretty wide? The boys froze for a moment, then got upset. However, they also noticed that this short-haired girl seemed to be quite cute as well, and instead eased their tone. What is it that you're up to, classmate? Nothing much, it's just that you guys please don't pester my friend. She's already divorced with two kids, please move over. And she you said, after using her elbow to push away the man blocking the way, she directly pulled up by Yuyua's hand. Let's go. Beanbag. Beanbag? By Yuyua blinked her beautiful eyes, but still allowed in Shiyu to pull herself away. And the few boys looked at each other in disbelief. Divorced with two children? At this moment, after in Shiyu led by Yuyua down the stairs, she still didn't forget to give her a look. Don't you know that most of the aisles over there are fourth years and above? A bunch of people posting some kind of confession wall all day long. And there are some majors that don't even have girls. And you're just like a piece of fat standing there with this face. Bai Yuyua heard and Shiyu say this and seemed to be digesting what the other party said. After a few seconds, she asked. Fat meat? Is it good? Un Shiyu. Where did the foodie come from? It should be considered tasty. You may be silly, but it's better than being good looking. And Shiyu reveals a bad smile. The corner of her mouth raised. How many times have you been done by that uncle? Do? Just sleeping. Bai Yuyua sniffed and spoke sleeping every day. That's not surprising. With such a beautiful sister, it's day to day. And Shiyu lazily said, then waved her hand. Forget it, I'll slip away first. I have to go out later. Oh, seeing in Shiyu's back as she staggered away, Bai Yinyu retracted her line of sight and happened to look at Tang Koko's figure as well. Koko, the school doctor's office, because there weren't any patients in the afternoon. Yi Shuang felt a little sleepy after reading medical books for a while. Sleepy, it's just a pity that I can't take a nap. Yi Shuang touched his tightening neck and then just tilted his neck back only to have a softness come from the back of his head in the next second. He froze for a moment before opening his eyes and meeting a pair of eyes that were looking down. The back of his own head was pressing against the other party's abdomen. Yi Shuang instantly sat up straight before realizing that there was a short-haired girl standing behind him at an unknown time. The corner of his mouth tugged. I say, you really do walk without a sound. And Shi Yu sniffed and just chewed her gum and said casually, older. Bad ears are normal. Yi Shuang was speechless. Isn't it a bit too much for you to say such words? Won't yo. Yi Shuang stood up and asked after stretching slightly. What did you go do this afternoon? Why? Are you curious? And Shi Yu asked with a wry smile. Not curious. Anyway, he could run into this guy anywhere. Hell knows what this quirky girl would want to do next. Or where to appear he is not curious now. Yi Shuang was still a little sleepy. After he touched his pocket he intended to pull out the gum to eat. But he realized that the box was empty. Then Yi Shuang looked up at the young girl in front of him that had been chewing on her little mouth. Then he asked, Is there still gum? There is. Give me one. Then you open your mouth. I'll spit it to you. Thanks. No thanks. Uncle. Hmm. Do you have any stumbling wine here? After hearing and Shi Yu ask this, Yi Shuang subconsciously looked at her legs, perhaps because the other party was wearing stockings, so that it was not quite clear. He asked, Did you jump from a building in the morning? Well, and sure you did not answer positively but instead responded perfunctorily. Even if you are a ninja, you can't just jump from the second floor, right? Yi Shuang sighed. That move in the morning really scared him, even forgetting for a moment that the school nurse's office was on the second floor. However, he didn't ask why. After all, the other party didn't want to say, and he asked himself. Not to mention that it was a guy like in Shiyu who had such a self-contained personality. Afterwards, Yi Shuang thought about it and tried to use the system to check the other party's condition. After all, if the bone was cracked or something like that, it would be troublesome. Character, in Shiyu, congenital heart disease patient. You might be able to care more about the other party. Her foot is a bit broken right now. Hmm. Yi Xuan looked at the window in front of him and suddenly made a puzzled voice. Although the system's display is different every time, there are some key information that won't disappear. And in Shiyu saw the other party staring at herself like this all the time. She also half squinted her eyes. Perverted perverted uncle of colorful wolf? Your sight is a little bit rude right now. Sorry, I'll take it to you. Yi Shuang pressed back the doubts in his heart, but still got up and took out the medicinal wine from the cabinet. I'll rub it for you? Well, I don't like having this odor on my hands. And Shi Yu finished and sat down on a side chair. After all, the odor of the stumbling wine and such is still rather heavy. You are wearing pantyhose how can I help you wipe it? Yi Shuang pointed to the other party's stocking leg that was sticking out and said, Take it off. How troublesome. The young girl revealed her P.I.s. The one who said it's troublesome should be me. 
The corner of Yi Shuang's mouth tugged. It can't be that I can help you peel it off, right? Accompanied by a tearing sound, and Shi Yu actually directly tore the stockings on her ankles, revealing the snow white skin. Yi Shuang froze and looked at it for a few seconds before he couldn't help but say, You this, not expensive, forget it. Yi Shuang chose not to dwell on it, he held on to the other's calf with one hand, because of the stockings he was wearing, it resulted in a slippery palm that couldn't be fixed either, there was no other way, Yi Shuang had to reach out and hold, and Shi Yu's calf is not thick, just a palm can hold. Yi Shuang took out the medicinal oil and rubbed the other party's slightly swollen place, but also did not forget to urge. Next time do not do this kind of dangerous things. I know your physical quality is very good, but you can't do this kind of dangerous things. If one is not careful to land on the ground, then it's the gods can't save. Good physical quality? And Shi Yu looked at Yi Shuang who was bending down to help herself rubbing the medicinal oil. Her expression was smiling with a hint of playfulness. Yi Shuang's hand suddenly stopped, then asked, intentionally or unintentionally, in addition to hyperamnesia, do you have other diseases? There is, and Shi Yu's expression instantly became a bit unnatural, even the gum in her mouth wasn't chewed anymore. She asked back, why? Why does uncle ask that? Your medical skills have reached the point where you can take a pulse just by touching your leg? Just a casual question. After all, your grandfather's heart is not good, and some of these heart type diseases will have a genetic probability. If you have time, you still need to go to the hospital for a checkup. Yi Shuang continued to speak, and the movements of his hands no longer stopped. Oh, listening to me is right. Seeing the young girl in front of her with a careless look, Yi Shuang's rubbing of the medicinal oil suddenly increased in intensity. Anyone else should have started to wail, but in Shi Yu laughed disdainfully, as if this point of pain was inconsequential. After applying it, the young girl put her legs back, and then just turned around to lie down on the bed with a wobble. Yi Shuang glanced at the time at this moment, realizing that it was almost time for school to end and as if he thought of something, he once again couldn't help but cast his line of sight to the young girl's side. Character, ensure you, congenital heart disease patient, lying on her back like this you might be able to give her ass a slap. A jussy, if you want to look at it, just look at it in a big way. Sneaking around like this makes me uncomfortable. At this time lying on her back ensure you tugged at her skirt, that sideways gaze over like she was looking at some kind of abandoned trash. I'm not looking at that. TSK, the level of perversion has escalated. Not at all. Yi Shuang withdrew his line of sight, then also had to say, I'll go back first, remember to unlock the school nurse's room when you're leaving. And Sher Fu didn't return her head, her voice was lazy as she pulled out her game console and said back, got it. Covering the door of the school doctor's room, Yi Shuang stood in the doorway and pondered for a while before turning to leave as well. After arriving at class A, Yi Shuang also happened to see by Yu Yi and Tang Koko who were walking out, and the moment the lines of sight met, his couldn't help but smile at the sight of those two young girls who were walking quickly towards him. Brother, Yi Shuang, Coco, are you really not going to eat together at night? While Yi Shuang pressed down on a certain young girl who pounced over, he also inquired about the smiling Tang Coco next to her. I don't know how to drink, Tang Koko said. Yi Shuang sniffed, glanced at by Yu Yue who was squeezing into her arms, and also seemed to understand something. It seems that this niece misunderstood her meaning. It's fine if you girls don't drink. You're just going over to have a meal and chat. Tang Koku but still shook her head. I don't know any of my brother's friends. It's not good to go there. Well, okay. Yi Shuang of course wouldn't force this child in front of him to go drinking. Purely asking and forgetting if he didn't want to. However, because the distance from the time agreed with Li Fugue and the others was still relatively long. Yi Shuang pinched the young girl's little face in her arms. So she let her stay with Tang Koko for a little longer. Then I'll go home first. And you'll walk back together with Koko? Girls would always go and do something after school together, and Silver Mountain Academy got off earlier than normal studies, so Yi Shuang didn't want a crowd by Yu Yu's socializing time, by Yu Yu's eyes, however, flashed a hint of struggle, she was naturally comfortable staying with Tang Koko, but having not seen Yi Shuang for half a day, the young girl wanted to stick to his side even more, after Tang Koko saw the scene, she also smiled knowingly and said to Yi Shuang, brother, it seems that Yu Yu wants to be with you, I happen to be going to the store to help my mom to buy something, you guys can join together. Well, that's fine too, bye. After Tang Koko left, Yi Shuang looked at the other party's distant back, but in his heart, he thought that this was indeed a good boy, perhaps lingering on the gaze for a longer period of time. At this time, a tugging sensation came from the sleeve. Bai Yen Yu wrapped one hand around Yi Shuang's arm, and pulled with the other hand. Yi Shuang, don't keep looking. Hmm, it's not good to keep looking. Oi. Here, here. The hustle and bustle of the late night snack street. Yi Shuang brought by Yu Yue appeared in a large stall. 
worn out small wooden tables and a few plastic chairs, although simply set up a few tables, but they were all filled with people, the smell of fireworks, a few people had long been seated at the tables and waved when they saw Yi Xuan's appearance, naturally, it was Chen Hai Fugue and the others, even Chen Hai's family came out, in addition to Chen Hai's wife, there was also his six or seven year old daughter Chen Xiaoxiao, keeping a princess cut, looking fleshy and quite cute, Uncle Yi, Chen Xiaoxiao immediately jumped down from the plastic chair, then trotted over and hugged his thigh, good boy, Yi Shuang rubbed her head, then picked Chen Xiaoxiao up, by Yu Yu E, who was standing at the side, blinked her beautiful eyes when she looked at the girl Yi Shuang was holding, is it in elementary school, Xiao Xiao, Yi Shuang asked the little girl, the other party immediately nodded her head like a chicken pecking at rice, well, first grade, Yi Shuang saw Chen Xiaoxiao who was growing up day by day, and couldn't help but sigh that this guy Chen Hai had been married for seven years, and he still didn't have an object, to be precise. Originally this year, without any accidents, the probability was that he was also married. I thought that this year is the end of the long distance running, but I didn't know that I was running in the wrong direction at the beginning. There is no end and no starting point. After holding the little girl into the seat, Yi Shuang let her sit on his lap. Small children is the character of good movement, but by Yi Shuang so put is quiet and looks like also quite like Yi Shuang, after all, small children face control more direct, come on, good boy sit next to aunt, aunt Li on the side at this time let Bai Yu Yu e sit beside herself, this position happens to be on the right side is also Yi Shuang, Bai Yu Yu e then directly sat down, after a pause, the young girl added, aunt Li, she and aunt Li had actually only met once, and this freak in the eyes of many people was a very good person in Bai Yu Yu e's eyes, because the young girl never evaluates a person's good or bad because of their appearance, or else she wouldn't have given a packet of instant noodles to the drunken-looking Yi Shuang in front of the convenience store in the first place. Lol, 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 lol. Auntie Li looked happy as he wore a gold hip-hugging skirt full of sequins, pursed his purple lipstick, and then looked up and down at Bai Yu Yu's appearance. A few moments later, he nodded. Well, quite a bit more spirited. Yo, little Shuang Shuang did a good job. That's not of course. Yi Shuang sniffed from the side quite a bit of pride of an old father. At this time, Chen Hai threw a cigarette case over. Here, taste it, I've all quit. Yi Xuan laughed. You really quit all of them? Chen Hai was a bit surprised. This guy smoked so fiercely, but actually really didn't touch it at all? Aha. Uh -huh. Yi Shuang just nodded his head and then glanced at the young girl beside him. Although at first it was because he felt that Bai Yu Yu e couldn't stand the smell of smoke. But when he thought about it, quitting smoking was good for his body. Chen Hai did not say anything more. He wanted to light one for himself. Instead, the wife beside him directly kicked him, smoking. When your lungs go on strike I'll go over there with someone else. Drive your car and live in your room, and beat your good boy. Mom I don't want to be beaten. The little girl sitting on Yi Shuang's lap shouted, instantly making a few people unable to stop laughing. Chen Hai coughed dryly and finally threw the cigarette case to Aunt Li. Stinky don't. Aunt Li was even drier, pinching her nose in disgust. What's there to smoke? Now. It was Chen Hai who became the sinner instead, and he had to mutter which of the previous three didn't smoke, then hurriedly asked the boss to serve the food. Ji La, not far away standing behind the barbecue grill boss shirtless, holding a cigarette skillfully flipping grilled meat skewers on the shelf, in his thick full of muscles on the arm, but also tattooed a Hello Kitty. Son, does anyone else dare to bully you at school? During the wait for the barbecue to be served, Aunt Lee took Bai Yu Yu's hand and inquired. Bai Yu Yu thought for a moment and gently shook her head. No, if there are words with aunt, your aunt I'm the best at teaching bad boys, each one is obedient and flat. Good, thanks. Bai Yu Yuan nodded. At this time, Chen Hai also asked Yi Shuang, what about you? When are you getting married? Don't know. Yi Shuang said, not thinking about this for now. Do you have a better choice besides Chen Xin? Chen Hai asked. You don't want that girl to get married until she's 30, do you? Chen Hai's wife also said at this time, look Xiao Xiao is such a big girl. You should get married too. Yi Shuang. I want to drink Uncle Yi's wedding wine. Chen Xiaoqiao stretched out her little hand. Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile. He looked at Chen Xiaoqiao in front of him and stretched out his hand to pinch the other party's fleshy cheeks. Xiaoqiao, do you know what wedding wine means? It means getting married and having a baby. Chen Xiaoqiao spoke. I really like little auntie and Uncle Yi. How about you guys get married and have a baby? The little girl even started to pout. Uncle Yi. See, little kids understand. Chen Hai grinned, compared to the hustle and bustle over there. At this moment, Bai Yu Yue on the side with her eyes hanging down, was quietly listening to all this, she still had a look of little expression. Like an exquisite doll, this scene was caught in Auntie Li's eyes. He thought for a moment, and suddenly opened his mouth, 
And, baby you you eh, go with Aunt Lee and buy a fried noodle over here, the ones here aren't that good, and by the way, bring some of the drinks you've been drinking, by you you eh sniffed and stood up after not thinking much, where to buy fried noodles, Chen Hai asked, the fried noodles here are okay too, right, why are you asking so much, Auntie Lee blankly glanced at Chen Hai without any good humor, and then took by you you eh away, after seeing the young girl being taken away, Chen Hai thought about it and suddenly came a little closer to ask Yi Shuang, I say you guys, what on earth are you thinking, are you really not interested in Chun Qin at all, skin white beautiful long legs, and will not be more aggrieved you, or are you still thinking about that what a good match or not, Yi Shuang sniffed and just replied, I should be marrying Chun Qin, holy shit, you don't should ah, Chen Hai immediately slammed his fist over, as if marrying Chun Qin is so forced, if you really don't want to, I'll help you talk to her, anymore I don't want either of you to be unhappy, it's not condescending to me, it's condescending to her, Yi Shuang finished and smiled, and I refused a long time ago, my current state is not suitable for a relationship, Yi Shuang was hurt too deeply, he could no longer take all his heart to fall in love with a person, he had told Chen Qin long ago, only the other party was simply unwilling to listen, or maybe she understood and pretended not to understand, Chen Hai's wife, on the other hand, opened her mouth, Yi Shuang, that girl child just now, in the end, is, boss people want a fried noodle, Antley smiled and spoke to a bald man, pack it up oh, the boss who was stir frying the rice noodles seemed to receive a bad chill, but finally said, okay, what's spicy, aha, uh -huh, you think, ah, uh, may, beautiful you wanted mildly spicy, good, the boss gulped, then looked up at Antley and by you you eh, the two stood in front of him as if they were demons and angels forming quite a strong contrast, come, child sit down, Antley led by you you eh to sit in front of a table, Looking at the young girl's pretty little face with little expression, he said with a hmm, little Shuang Shuang is also almost at the age to get married, by Yu Yu S sniffed, she raised her beautiful eyes and gave a hmm, didn't you say, that you are husband and wife, Aunt Lee covered her mouth and smiled, by Yu Yu I immediately nodded, we are husband and wife, Yi Shuang said that, the young girl, however, was suddenly unsure, she whispered, but there is only one husband and wife, sister Chun Qin likes Yi Shuang, I also like Yi Shuang, I don't understand this, but I want to be with Yi Shuang all the time, I only want Yi Shuang, Antley cupped his face with one hand as he looked at Bai Yu Yu A, suddenly remembering that several years ago, there was also that girl who drank wine and muttered the words I only want Yi Shuang with a red face, ah uh, ah uh, annoyed to death, that Zhao Meng Yao what good, why Yi Shuang should be so to her, high fever but also to go to pick up her, obviously not a princess but also got the princess disease, if I were, I wouldn't want to bully him like this, Oh oh I wouldn't want my baby to be stomped on by someone else. What feelings not feelings. Obviously I'm more beautiful and excellent ah. Even if those don't can. I just want Yi Shuang. If give me a chance. I certainly will not let go. Aunt Li looked at the young girl in front of him. Suddenly it seems like he understands some of Yi Shuang's thoughts. He opened his mouth and said. You you a baby. Do you know. To get married this kind of thing. Does not rely on the word like alone. It also contains love. Responsibility. Loyalty and so on. Antley stretched out her own slender fingers coated in purple nail polish and continued, you don't understand anything right now, and when the time comes for little Shuang Shuang to really make a choice, you won't even be able to rank alongside Chin Qin, by Yu Yu I didn't quite understand, responsibility, right, also because of the responsibility, when you don't understand anything, Xia Shuang Shuang is not able to make a choice nor choose you, Antley stretched out her hand, pinched by Yu Yu I's little face smiled and said, because you don't know anything, he does, good boy, listen to your aunt, you must grow up quickly and learn to love quickly, or else little Yi Xuan will end up leaving, hearing that Yi Xuan will leave, Bai Yan Yu immediately said, I, don't want Yi Xuan to leave, beauty, the fried noodles are ready, a total of 30, said the boss on the side, Aunt Li sniffed, stood up and swept the coat and then winked towards Bai Yan Yu, let's go baby Yin Yu, good, looking at Aunt Li who was stepping on stocking heels in front of her, Bai Yu Yu had digested the words he had just said, why so slow, Chen Hai couldn't help but ask when he saw Aunt Li return. Aunt Li sat down and put the fried noodles on the table. Nasty, don't eat it then. Hi. At this time, the fierce boss with a Hello Kitty tattoo also brought out the kebabs and didn't forget to say, there's a dozen oysters. Good. Chen Hai also poured a cup of tea for Yi Shuang at this time. Come on, come on, have a cup of tea first to cushion your stomach before drinking. Tonight officially starts. Yi Shuang took the cup handed over by Chen Hai and then took a sip. A few seconds later. He put down the cup and expressionlessly picked up the lighter on the desktop, and with a boom, the whole cup of wine burst into flames. 
What kind of combustible tea? Yi Shuang immediately spat. Ha 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 ha. Eating the kebabs. A few people shook the sieve cup and casually chatted about things that happened in the past. Along with the drunkenness, Yi Shuang also told quite a lot of things, however. When it came to Zhao Mengyao, he kept his mouth shut and chose to skip this matter. Chen Hai and the others understood in their hearts, and skipped it by tacit agreement. Chen Hai understood that Zhao Mengyao had changed from Yi Shuang's white moonlight to a black moonlight, and had become a taboo, something he didn't want to talk about. Yi Shuang couldn't walk out, just complaining about why he didn't recognize earlier, didn't leave Zhao Mengyao earlier, so that he wouldn't cause his parents to leave. He was always this kind of man, likes to take the fault on himself, likes to go looking for the reasons on himself. If time is reversed, Yi Shuang might not have chosen to pursue Zhao Mengyao, but there is no if. Not only is there no antidote for regret in this world, there is no regret either. Perhaps the only solution is to prepare for the worst when making up one's mind, and to be blameless. After three rounds of wine, Yi Shuang's face has started to redden. At this time Chen Hai is also a little drunk, yelling for water. Is there any plain water? Here. Yi Shuang handed over a transparent cup. Chen Hai drank a large mouthful. Immediately by the spicy features wrinkled together, he took out the lighter. Boom. Like white water like liquid also lit up flames. Holy shit aren't you the water of life? Ha 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 ha. Seeing the retaliation back, Yi Shuang immediately laughed freely. Among the few people present, it seemed that only Chen Hai's wife as well as Aunt Li did not have a drunken look. They were not less drunk, but purely good at drinking, especially Chen Hai's wife. Looking at a skinny and small person, she was in fact still a very able to drink god of wine. Once there was the record of drinking a table down, the night gradually deepened. This side of the stall is still lively. A variety of noisy sounds mixed in charcoal smoke, as if the night sky does not seem so dark. Almost time to go home. Aunt Li chose to take a taxi, while Chen Hai called a chauffeur and sent Yi Shuang home with them, even because he was afraid that the road would be unsafe. Chen Hai even sent Yi Shuang and the others all the way to the underground garage of the apartment, a few steps away from the elevator. Sister Bai, hold on to Yi Shuang, don't let him fall. Good. After getting off the car, because Yi Shuang's walking was a bit unsteady, Bai Yu Yua held one of his arms to assist him. She didn't understand what it was like to be drunk, but only knew that Yi Shuang now needed to take care of himself. After returning to the apartment, Bai Yen Yu helped Yi Shuang to the sofa, the latter fell back and didn't move, just whispered, I'm sorry, Bai Yu Yue did not know to whom this sorry was addressed, she also climbed onto the sofa after lying in Yi Shuang's arms, recalling the words spoken by Aunt Li, smelling the smell of alcohol coming from the tip of her nose, she muttered, to learn to love, that's why we're not a couple, recognize that it was not love, and then only then can you recognize love again, recognize being loved, Understand that the two are not husband and wife. Understand that the feelings that seem like affection are not the love between husband and wife. Understand that this is a kind of growth for the ignorant by Yu Yue. Auntie Li is precisely because she understands this point, only to privately go to remind the young girl as for the rest, can only rely on by Yu Yue herself. At 3 o'clock in the morning, even the lights outside the floor to ceiling windows had gone out, and a full moon hung high in the sky, bright and dark under the cover of thin clouds. The sofa inside the apartment, the long-haired girl was stuck in the man's arms. Her head was pillowed on his shoulder. She digested everything Aunt Lee said to herself. The inner haze seemed to have been rubbed out of a corner by a silken cloth. And just at this moment, Yi Shuang let out a slurred voice. Thirsty, Bai Yu Yu sniffed, slowly stood up to receive water. Yi Shuang, water. Yi Shuang stretched out her hand in a daze, but after touching the water glass, her palm did not hold it hard enough along with the crisp sound of glass. The glass bloomed on the ground with water splashes and the splattered glass fragments were all over the ground. Perhaps it was the loud sound that made Yi Shuang's originally cloudy eyes clear for a few moments, and he slowly sat up holding his forehead. And, sorry, I'm cleaning now. Yi Shuang, I'll, come, Bai Yen Yu, however, reached out her hand and pressed Yi Shuang back. The young girl stood up and brought a mop and broom from the side, although she was not skillful, and even said that she was still a bit clumsy, but she still cleaned carefully. At this time, Yi Shuang looked at the other party's back, couldn't help but smile, and then after closing and opening her eyes, at this time, Bai Yu Yue had already cleaned up and brought a cup of water over. Looking at the other party's concerned gaze, Yi Shuang laughed as if he was laughing at himself. I'm sorry, I still let you take care of it. After a cup of water went down, Yi Shuang was in a much better state. What's wrong? Keep looking at me like that? Yi Shuang inquired when he noticed that the young girl's gaze kept resting on herself. Bai Yu Yue, however, said, Yi Shuang, whom, am I stupid? Bai Yu Yue's sudden inquiry made Yi Shuang a bit uncertain, but he still said, you're not stupid, you're just lacking a bit of time, 
the young girl lowered her eyes, but, Yi Shuang, my time, it seems like it's not enough, fool, you are so young, the days are still long, what silly words, Yi Shuang reached out his hand and gently knocked the young girl's skull, I am very slow and slow, but Yi Shuang promised, to wait for me, Yi Shuang froze for a moment, seemingly recalling the words he had said, he just pinched the young girl's little face, well, I will wait for you, then, when I grow up, we will get married, because, we are not husband and wife, the young girl's sentence caused Yi Shuang to pause for a few seconds as he inquired, did Coco teach you again, Bai Yu Yue shook her head, who taught you, the young girl shook her head again, her calm tone but seemed to contain some kind of power, I want to be with Yi Shuang forever, I'm very slow, but, I want to be with Yi Shuang forever, want to always, always be together, even if we're not a couple, I'll try, hard, learn what love is, Yi Shuang sniffed, but she was sure that someone had told her something, who was it, Chen Hai and the others, or Fu Gue, Yu Yu Wei, Yi Shuang reached out her hand and gently caressed the other party's hair that was as soft as satin, whom, the young girl raised her eyes, fool, in fact, the words you just said to me, that is love oh, Yi Shuang continued to smile, although it's not necessarily love, but that love is like you in general dash, pure white, flawless, not containing a single impurity, the most beautiful thing in this world, thank you for your thoughts, Yi Shuang said gently, there is no need to rush, before you really grow up, I will wait for you, even if, you are very, very slow, it doesn't matter, there were no words in the night, Yi Shuang woke up and realized that he was sleeping on the sofa while the faint scent of oil and smoke came from the tip of his nose, he rubbed his eyes and actually found a familiar figure standing in the kitchen, her originally waist-length generally long hair was tied into a ponytail, and she was staring at the pan in front of her with a spatula in her hand, Yu Yu Ai, after seeing Bai Yu Yu Ai actually cooking breakfast, Yi Shuang had just sat up when a stabbing pain came to her brain, last night's drinking was really exaggerated, Yi Shuang rubbed his aching head, there was nothing harder than a hangover, he only remembered that after he got drunk, he seemed to have been helped back home by Yu Yu Ai, and then he even said some words, he thought about it and also remembered some of the content, that child, no, it was Yu Yi Yu Yu Ai who recognized the relationship between them, not a husband and wife, grown up ah, Yi Shuang heart cannot help but sigh with emotion, as the young girl's thoughts become more and more mature, he looked at the other party's gaze as also more and more not like a child, perhaps thinking about the future between the two. Yi Shuang smiled like a self-deprecating smile and shook his head. Stood up. Yi Shuang, why did you get up today to make breakfast? Yi Shuang asked. Bai Yan Yu used a pan to flip the poached eggs and whispered, I'm going to get married in the future, to learn how to cook. Then, the young girl's gaze swept over. After all, we will be husband and wife in the future. Yi Shuang. It seems like nothing has changed ah? No. Then what is our relationship now? Yi Shuang asked. Bai Yan Yu sniffed. Thought for a moment and then said seriously. The cell phone says that you're a little white boy. But what does little white boy mean? Yi Shuang. You might as well say adopted. Or husband and wife also sounds better than this. Forget it. Yi Shuang released a general smile. As if he was a little lighter inside. Whatever. Finally. There was a girl's mold. It so happened that at this time. The doorbell on the side rang. Yi Shuan walked over to open the door, and Tang Koko outside the door immediately greeted. Yo ho, morning ah brother, morning. After Yi Shuang finished speaking, Tang Koko also noticed by Yu Yu Ai who was cooking in the kitchen. She seemed to feel a hint of freshness. Wow, what happened today? How did Yu Yu Ai make her own breakfast? I was rather drunk last night, so I got up late and let Yu Yu Ai make breakfast. Yi Shuang said, come on in, hola. After Tang Koko walked into the apartment, she first went to hug little Tan. 000 who had gained a round of weight, watched the other party gurgle and stomp on the milk, and sat down on the sofa with a smile, fattened up a little bit again oh, 10, 000, meow, Tang Kuka looked over to the kitchen side, only to see Yi Shuang hugging his arms and leaning his back against the wall, looking sideways with favored eyes at the young girl standing in front of the stove wearing an apron, while Bai Yu Yue gazed earnestly, holding a spatula in strict anticipation, obviously a very everyday scene but it made Tang Kuku couldn't help but look a few more times, and she was a bit puzzled, the atmosphere between the two people didn't seem quite the same anymore, after breakfast, Bai Yan Yu went to school with Tang Ku, Yi Shuang had a rare morning soak because he didn't take a bath last night, and while enjoying the hot water wrapping his whole body, he took out his cell phone and casually browsed through the recent news, whom, a familiar group name did attract his attention, Yi Shuang glanced at it and realized that it was actually Chen Qin's group, the group seems to be because of a certain HR's attitude problem, 
but the result was secretly recorded and transmitted to the short video platform quickly fermented and spread, so that many netizens directly rushed into the group's account to form a tirade. The stock market last night closed down by 3% on the day, thus making Chun Chin's family's group's market value directly evaporated more than a dozen of small targets. PR crisis? After Yi Xuan thought about it, he directly gave Chun Chin a call. Warning, ah Yi. Chen Qin on the other end of the phone looked energized, with some smiles, a day do not see hang up on me ah, thinking about your company, Yi Shuang said and asked, I heard that your group encountered something, what HR attitude, Blay, Chen Qin's side returned, oh, you said that HR ah, aha, it's all about the previous row, I don't know where you turned it out, I know a lot of people who are engaged in WAMedia media don't have anything to say about it, so they turn out the previous things, net bad ghosts come, Yi Shuang sniffed, after hearing Chen Qin said it was just the past, he said, well that's fine, I'm hanging up, hey, at this time on the other side of the office, Chen Qin looked at the cell phone was hung up after the call, suddenly puffed up and stretched out his finger to poke the other party's avatar, however, on second thought, Yi Xuan called over early in the morning to care about the company's affairs, representing that he has me in his heart, thinking like this, the woman's heart instantly turned from cloudy to sunny, Chen Qin's strength has always been so, able to coax himself, on the other side, Yi Shuang, who came out of the shower, wiped his hair with a towel, and then sat down on the sofa with a butt, he brewed himself a cup of coffee, and after resting for a little while, he sat down in front of the computer to start today's work, how come the readers are all gone, Yi Shuang glanced at the data in the background, originally he was the Urban Daily New Book Ranking 1, but at the moment the label read Urban Brainstorming New Book Ranking 12, eh? Yi Shuang asked the editor in the background and finally learned that it was being adjusted in classification from Urban Daily to Urban Brain Hole. I stayed at list 1 fine. How can I be changed in classification? Yi Shuang took another look at his novel's classification and couldn't help but spit out. Or is it that the plot I wrote is too sci-fi, making the reviewers think that this isn't a daily routine for me but a brain hole? But it's clearly indeed my daily routine. Yi Shuang sighed and had to finish updating today's novel. The negative feedback from the drop in data made Yi Shuang's word processing unmotivated. If only there were readers to help push the book drought and spread the word on the short video platform. But it seems unlikely. After all, he is just a new author with no fame, and there are no readers who like his work very much who are willing to help. Thinking of this, Yi Shuang scratched his head. Forget it. Let's go with the flow. After updating today's novel, Yi Shuang drove to the school. As usual, he put on his white coat and sat on a chair waiting for the burners to come to his door but this morning was unusually quiet, so much so that after an hour or two Yi Shuang wondered if it was the weekend, that guy didn't come either, Yi Shuang glanced at the hospital bed behind him, and there was no sign of a certain ninja either, however, he was happy to be free, making a cup of tea and just spending his time learning, you are quite diligent, just as Yi Shuang was mesmerized by what he was reading, a voice came from behind him, Yi Shuang froze for a moment, turning his head to meet a pale but spirited face, he immediately had a jolt, Nima how come there is no voice too? It's because you're too focused, Unshi Ichiro said faintly. After coming back to his senses, Yi Shuang looked at Unshi Ichiro who was standing aside and had to say, trouble next time knock on the door when you come in. Humph, where do I need to knock in this academy? Unshi Ichiro instantly grunted in an old-fashioned manner. When Yi Shuang sniffed, he said expressionlessly, women's locker room, please. Unshi Ichiro's face stiffened, but he still stiffened his mouth. Same. Yi Shuang held up his cell phone and gave a thumbs up with his other hand. Okay, I've recorded it. Tai Bai you stinking brat. Unshi Ichiro seemed to feel that Yi Shuang's exasperated mouth was practically the same as his own little fish. But he still curbed his temper, looked around and asked, Where is my little fish? Don't know. Not at your place? Why would you think it's at my place? Yi Shuang but asked, Ever since there is this school doctor's office, she has been running to you every day. Don't think I don't know. Yasushi Ichiro said, Yi Shuang thought about it. It seemed like that was indeed the case, at the very least two out of three days would be here, but with that guy's personality, it wasn't strange to show up anywhere, why don't you ask on your cell phone, Yi Shuang said instead, she blacklisted me, then you are a real failure as a grandfather, nonsense, it's just that she's reached her rebellious stage, Unshi Ichiro said, you don't know, when she was a child, how she clung to me and how cute she was, following around every day with a mouthful of sweet grandpa, Yi Shuang pulled the corner of his mouth, he always felt that these were all this old man's fantasies, with ensure fish's poisonous look, he really couldn't think of how cute she was as a child, it was possible to follow behind with a mouthful of old mongrel fish, seemingly thinking of something, Yi Shuang suddenly opened his mouth seriously, old master, you also know that my medical skills are not bad, 
right? Seeing the serious expression on Yi Shuang's face, and Shi Aikiru fell back and let out a hum. I have a feeling that Ensure Yu also has a heart condition, you'd better bring her to the hospital for a detailed checkup. Yi Shuang recalled the congenital heart disease he saw last time and still reminded Ensure Ichiro, but to Yi Shuang's surprise, it was Ensure Long who did not have any surprised expression, just tightened his brows and gave him a deep look. Master, she's not sick, Umshi Ichiro suddenly said seriously, you don't have to worry about this. Yi Shuang froze for a moment. He felt strange at Ensure Long's reaction. Could it be that Ensure Long knew this already? But why did he say that Unshi Fish was not sick? This kind of thing could still have a stiff upper lip and say that it wasn't sick? I think. Well, Unshi Ichiro waved his hand. Since little fish isn't with you, I'm going back. After saying that, Unshi Ichiro left directly without looking back, leaving behind a bewildered Yi Shuang. Let NA be the value of Avogadro's constant. Use the reaction 8N. To detect if chlorine gas is leaking, the chemistry teacher on the stage explained the topic in the projector. Suddenly, his eyes seemed to sweep something, and he threw out a piece of chalk after pushing the glasses on the bridge of his nose. Like a bullet, it landed on a young girl's forehead with unrivaled precision. Wow, Tang Coco, is my class boring? Making you so sleepy. The teacher re-picked up a piece of chalk and did it the blackboard on the side. Tang Coco rubbed her forehead and stood up, scratching her head with an embarrassed face. What's the choice for this question? Eh? Then find someone to help you answer it. Or stand for a class if you can't. The teacher continued. Even though it's far easier to get into Silver Mountain Academy helicopter than those high school entrance exams out there. It's no excuse for you to slack off. Really underestimate the fourth year promotion exam. Don't be careful of being discouraged by the academy. Tang Koku was told off completely not daring to talk back. So she could only shrink her head. At this time, the teacher noticed Bai Yuyi beside Tang Koko slowly raising her hand. And he asked, Bai Yuyi, you're going to help her answer the question? The young girl nodded her head gently. Which answer to choose? Stand together if you're wrong. Bai Yuyu's mouth moved. It's too low to hear. Bai Yuyu's sniffed. She lowered her eyes, reached out her hand and fumbled in the drawer. A few seconds later, in everyone's shocked gaze, the young girl pulled out a megaphone. And, pick B. Beep. The sound was accompanied by the electric noise of the loudspeaker, instantly making the teacher not far away whole speechless. He first looked at the expressionless by Yu Yu Ad who was still trying to speak with the microphone, and then looked at Tang Koko, who was covering her head. Okay, sit down. If you're sleeping again, you'll go to the corridor to sleep. Good. Tang Koko sat down and looked at Bai Yu Yu beside her and said excitedly, Yu Yu, thank you. Bai Yu Yi, however, thought about it and whispered, it's okay not to save. Ah, why? Because. She hadn't said anything yet. When the bell rang at this time, Tang Koko froze for a moment. And when she saw by Yu Yue, who hadn't said anything, it was as if she understood. After the teacher left the classroom, there were quite a few students who immediately plopped down on their desks to catch up on their sleep. In fact, it wasn't just Tang Kaku. There were quite a few students who were drowsy, with a great feeling of collapsing at any time. Despite this, but this was also the age where most people slept the fastest and most peacefully. And many people, as adults, would instead fall into a predicament at night where they wanted to sleep but couldn't. It's as if time has never been their own. A little hungry, Yu Yu eh, let's go to the kiosk and buy some food. Okay, Tang Ku Ku asked. Bai Yu Yu eh, however, looked at Tang Koko's school bag. She thought for a moment and suddenly reached out and squeezed it. You, what are you doing? Tang Koko froze, holding herself and twisting around, her face full of incredulity. Bai Yen Yu, however, still had a calm demeanor, her gaze falling on her palm as she asked in a small voice. Scary. Don't take the liberty of pinching and then still say it's scary, okay? Tang Ku Ku instantly spat. Bai Yu, however, said, Yi Shuang, likes big school bags, how do you know that? Bai Yu Yu eh, however, didn't answer, except that she would occasionally find Yi Shuang's eyes would fall on Tang Ku Ku's book bag. Brother is a man, it's also normal law. Tang Ku Ku's sight slowly went down. She said, you're not flat, and it's not small, so what are you worried about? Bai Yu Yu eh, however, whispered, he doesn't touch, brother isn't a hooligan, of course he won't just touch it, Tang Koku was speechless, but she looked at her school bag and asked again, brother likes big school bags, aha, alright, alright, accompany me to buy some food, I'm starving, Tang Koku pulled by Yu Yu A up, and the two of them just walked side by side towards the kiosk, after passing through the corridor, one of the aisles but placed a warning sign, cleaning in progress, slippery ground please detour, detour, by Yen Yu pointed, Tang Ku Ku, however, said, it's fine, let's just be careful not to fall, 
but before she could finish, a mopping ant came out with a bucket. Don't go here. It's slippery. Okay. Tang Kook can only take back her feet feet feet. The kiosk was next door to the dining hall. If one walked directly to the first floor and then walked over, one would have to make a slight detour, in other words, one wouldn't even necessarily be able to make it back before the class bell rang, whereas going directly over to the upstairs aisle side, where there were a few aerial walkways would be very much faster. Go through that air walkway upstairs, Don Coco could only say. Good. The air walkway upstairs was a slightly longer distance, but it was better than going directly to the first floor and making a detour. However, when the two headed up to the first floor and heard the movement in the classroom on the side, they stopped in their tracks. Tang Kuka's eyes widened as she pointed to the classroom next to her. You you eh? Uh, someone is. By you you eh? Uh, however, didn't know what was going on and just blinked her beautiful eyes to look at the classroom next to her. Eh? Uh, come over here. Tang Koo Koo. However, had a gossipy look on her face as she catwalked and led by you you eh uh, to the back door of the classroom, and then quietly pushed open a crack to look inside. Know what this is? A moment later, Tang Koo Koo lowered her voice. By Yen Yu looked at it, and said as if she was unsure. Samurai dueling. Female. Almost killed. Stupid. Tang Koko just wanted to say something. Perhaps the doorway that was pushed out was noticed by someone else, and a panicked voice suddenly came from inside. Who? Run. Tang Koo visible after being discovered, pulled by Yu Yu At and immediately ran. Only after going downstairs did the two stop. Why? Are you running? Bai Yen Yu asked in a small voice. Aya. Uh, bumping into this kind of thing, anyone would be embarrassed. Tang Kuka had the tone of a person who had been there before. Privacy. Understand privacy. Bai Yu Yu At tilted her head. Well, it seems like I have to give you some additional knowledge, or else I won't be able to give birth to a baby in the future. Tang Kuka could see the clueless Bai Yu Yu At. She patted the young girl's shoulder. But before that, you first treat me to a snack. Good. The time for the lunch break arrived. In the school doctor's room, Yi Shuang put down the medical books in her hand as usual, then stretched her back and went to the dining hall to meet up with Yu Yue and the girls. The school doctor's job was very easy, and he was even able to take care of by Yu Yue. Yi Shuang was very satisfied so far, and only hoped that those burnt goods could be reduced a little bit. After waiting at the entrance for a little while, Yi Shuang soon saw Tang Koko and by Yu Yue walking towards him. Both of them were able to attract a large amount of gazes from their appearance, although they were not of the same type. They were indeed eye-catching. Brother, Yi Shuang. After seeing the two, Yi Shuang smiled faintly. Let's go. Let's eat. But at this time, Bai Yen Yu reached out her hand and pinched the corner of Yi Shuang's coat. Yi Shuang. Eh? Yi Shuang turned back. What's wrong? Let's go have a baby first. The young girl said. Yi Shuang. Ha? Night. Clattering dash Yi Shuang stood in front of the shower. He scrubbed his hair. After ruffling up his bangs, Yi Shuang went to feel for his towel but there was a softness in his hand. After suspiciously wiping the water droplets on his face, Yi Shuang reopened his eyes, and his moist eyes gradually became clear, Bai Yen Yu, who was wearing a snow-white swimsuit, stood beside him, still holding her towel in her arms, and was looking over with an observant expression, permeated with a bit of naturalness. She opened her mouth and said, Yi Shuang, is having a baby. Yi Shuang, pulling over the towel in the other's arms, Yi Shuang put a circle around her ass. No, Yi Shuang said. Not knowing what Tang Kuka had instilled in by Yu Yue this morning, causing her to keep pestering him like this when she got home from school. Although he was happy that the young girl knew something about this, and was even a bit relieved, there was no way he could agree to the other party. Do you really understand what it means to have a baby? After Yi Shuang asked, Bai Yu Yue nodded her head. That's only for couples. Yi Shuang said. Bai Yu Yue sniffed and thought for a moment. We're not a couple now. Right. So we can't have a baby now. Bai Yu Yue. However said, they're not a couple, but they've also given birth. Yi Shuang, who are they? What in the world did this Coco guy show Yu Yue? Take a cell phone in class and put peeling onions? Yi Shuang only felt a little dizzy, even a black eye. Looking at the young girl standing in front of him, he suddenly asked, are you cold? Bai Yen Yu cocked her head. Be good. Sit down and I'll wash your hair. Yi Shuang chose to change the topic, and this trick worked very well for Bai Yen Yue, and she was unsurprisingly well behaved and sat down on the chair. Yi Shuang took a look at the swimsuit she was wearing, so he squeezed the shampoo on the side and washed Ye Yu's hair. Bai Yu Yu's hair is very long, so after sitting on the chair those hair tails are hanging down to the bathroom floor. That black and silky long hair flooded with light, incomparably smooth, and snow white skin to form a sharp in contrast. Aunt Sien Young is also once a year beauty contest Miss Hong Kong, a veritable great beauty. Can only say that Bai Yu Yu perfectly inherited her parents' face value genes, completely as God reward food. 
After rinsing the bubbles clean with the shower, Yi Shuang said, Okay, later you take off your swimsuit and take a bath, I'll get you a change of clothes. Oh, after Yi Shuang told Bai Yan Yu to take a good bath, she pulled a towel for her hair and walked out. After changing his own clothes and getting clothes for Bai Yu Yi by the way, he himself sat on the sofa and thought, Well, why don't we get that kid some romantic dramas to watch? Yi Shuang always felt that Bai Yu Yu A in this state still lacked some necessary knowledge. And a lot of things didn't have to be experienced firsthand to be known. However, Yi Xuan was a bit afraid that watching relationship dramas would turn Bai Yan Yu into a relationship brain. Of course, men would also have a love brain, just like himself, for example. But no matter who it is, a man's love brain only comes once, the kind where he gives his whole heart and is willing to jump into even the sea of fire. Once they've been hurt, they start to turn inward. Forget it, try it first. Well, Yi Shuang took out his cell phone and tried to search for any fresh relationship dramas in the posting bar. At least not the pure sugar or industrial saccharin sweet kind. Yi Shuang himself, Yi Shuang herself does not watch relationship dramas, so she knows very little about this area. So she can only turn to netizens for help. Soon, along with the post he made, there were replies from enthusiastic netizens. There is ah, the day in the school. Lead the charge level of love god drama. Fresh and offbeat. When Yi Shuang saw it, he searched for the general plot. A lot of years ago, right, the picture quality is a bit old, but since it's recommended so much, there must be something over the top. The male lead likes a girl who rides the same tram to and from school every day, and even uses the other person as his cell phone wallpaper. Boom. Then the wallpaper was discovered by the second female, but the second female also helped the male lead to approach the girl. Yi Shuang couldn't help but nod his head. It's a relatively normal crush plot unfolding, but according to the urbane nature of relationship dramas, I guess this female second will also like the male lead, so it's not strange to do an either slash or or something at that time. Yi Shuang skipped the middle of the plot and went straight to the last part. The female lead killed the second female lead and held the only remaining head of the male lead as she floated away in a boat. Yi Shuang, the air was quiet for a few seconds. Ha, huh? no, what kind of hyper expansion is this? Is that what leading a charge means? Really lead the charge? Yi Shuang pinched his brows. If he showed this to Bai Yu Yue, he might raise a sickly girl. After silently pulling the black out of the netizen whose name was face code bar hopping together, Yi Shuang began to carefully sift through the messages. If Bai Yu Yue saw that kind of weird stuff, the cabbage that he had so hard to raise was going to be tainted. Stupid girl, a story about a stupid girl growing up with a male lead. Super healing, hmm, this one should be good. Yi Shuang glanced at it. The name of this Toma drama was called Dumb Dumb Girl. It should be more or less the same as what he imagined the plot to be. Presumably it was about the male lead helping this dumb dumb girl right? And to say that this stupid girl, it might even be a bit similar to Bai Yu Yue. However, for the sake of caution, Yi Shuang himself watched a part of the explanation first, and then watched some more clips. A few minutes later, he held blue arrow gum in one finger and stuffed it into his mouth like he was smoking and pursed it. Who? This session of netizens have no one that can be trusted. When I first started surfing the net, the big brothers on the net can be very enthusiastic and helpful. How come the netizens are starting to be so abstract now? After thinking about it, Yi Shuang had to give up on asking for help from others on the internet, and roughly searched for word-of-mouth romantic fandoms on short video platforms on her own, and then sifted through them again based on their names. When the young girl came out after taking a bath, Yi Shuang was already about ready. Eh, how come it's my clothes again? After seeing that the young girl had gotten her own t-shirt from somewhere, Yi Shuang opened his mouth and asked, Where are the pajamas I got for you? Bai Yu Yue had a little bit of weakness and moved her eyes away and said, I took it myself. Yi Shuang's clothes are comfortable. Next time don't give it, Yi Shuang said. But Bai Yan Yu lifted up the clothes and just grabbed them in her arms. Then her head shook. Don, T, stupid, don't just lift up your clothes. And, where are your panties? Forgot. Put them on. Help me. Yi Shuang, Bai Yan Yu but stretched out the palm of her hand, a piece of fabric lying quietly on it. No way. Put on the clothes Bai Yu Alu and Yi Shuang nestled on the sofa Yi Shuang drinking a cup of coffee. The other is holding a flat screen to watch science videos. This is also one of his hobbies. Obviously well aware of the insignificance of mankind, but always cannot help but watch some videos about the universe and so on. And then every time you watch it, you will exclaim that the universe is really scary. In contrast to Yi Shuang's sitting posture, Bai Yu Yi was on the sofa with her entire body, her back leaning against the armrest of the sofa, the pair of long slender snow white legs under her white t-shirt just resting on Yi Shuang's thighs, her soft hair falling down, the young girl was holding the guitar and seriously studying it. From time to time playing notes and not far away from the wind chime shaking issued by the crisp sound complement each other, but with a few points of lethargy and cozy. Yi Shuang. A moment later, 
Bai Yenyu looked up. What's wrong? The young girl brought her small hand over. It hurts here, because the hand has to press the strings. It is inevitable to feel pain in the hand, and it is also a problem that beginners can often run into. At this time, after Yi Shuang saw that Bai Yu Yu's fingers had started to turn red, he said, Yu Yu A, eh, come closer. When Bai Yu Yu A heard this, she took back her legs that were resting on Yi Shuang's thighs, she climbed over, her whole body was almost a stick to Yi Shuang's body, and that cool and lovely face was placed on his shoulder like this, isn't it too close? Like this, stupid, how can I teach you like this? After letting Bai Yu Yu A move a little distance away, Yi Shuang took the guitar in her hand and said, when beginners just start practicing, their fingers will definitely hurt, but there is a way to get through this period quickly. After saying that, Yi Shuang paused. What method do you think to use? Bai Yu Yu S sniffed and moved as if she was thinking. After a few seconds she came to a conclusion. Sleep. Getting through this period didn't let you sleep through this period. Yi Shuang reached out his hand and knocked the young girl's skull before supporting the guitar in his arms. And, relax your fingers a bit, then try to play each note as full as possible. The words fell. The guitar played the notes. Yi Shuang continued. After the speed is slowed down, if you play for a while and still feel pain in your fingers, you have to rest immediately. When your hands don't hurt you can continue. In about a week or so, you'll be able to get used to it. Bai Yen Yu seemed to understand. After nodding her head, she leaned beside Yi Shuang and practiced. After playing the timbre more full, her fingers didn't hurt so much instead. Yi Shuang took a sip of coffee, seeing that serious practicing side face, but could not help but smile slightly. Clang. A guitar wrong sound sounded. Bai Yu Yu A looked at her fingers, but her eyes fell beside her thighs at this moment. The screen of her cell phone lit up. It was a message that someone had sent over. And listening to the sound, it seems to be still audio phone. Hmm, Yi Shuang glanced at it and realized that the other person's avatar looked a bit familiar. Then reacted. It's Aunt Xian calling? Bai Yu Yu A put down her guitar and picked up her cell phone. She grasped it with both hands but twisted her head to look at Yi Shuang, as if asking if she wanted to pick up the call. The young girl did not have any good feelings towards her own biological parents. After all, they were going to take her away from Yi Shuang. Just as Yi Shuang said, Bai Yu Yu A was still too young when she was abducted. Not only did she have no memories, plus she was closed off for a long period of time as well as being bullied. So naturally, it was impossible for her to have any thoughts about this belated parent. A little bit of substitution will make it clear that the darkest period of the young girl would have been spent with Yi Shuang's help, and it was not easy to catch a ray of sunshine and could stay with Yi Shuang, whom she liked, but she had to be spoiled by someone to destroy this ray of goodness, if not Yi Shuang let her shout mom and dad, I'm afraid by Yu Yu S still shouted or uncle and aunt, catch it, it's fine, Yi Shuang said, by Yu Yu S sniffed and looked at her cell phone, so she picked it up, the screen shook a little, Aunt Xian's face appeared in the phone screen, not only her, there were actually several people on the other end of the video, it looked like they were all uncles and aunts generation, AI AI AI, my Zo daughter is connected. Come over quickly, quickly. Aunt Xian saw by Yu Yu A connecting, seemed very happy. Wow, pretty enough. Good genetics. There was a bit of noise on the other end of the phone, and there were little kids coming over to look at it. All crammed into such a small screen, by Yu Yu A wasn't used to this feeling of being ogled by a group of people. So much so that her little face popped up too hard, and she gave everyone a look as if she was about to get angry. All right, you guys go away first. Aunt Xian seemed to have sensed by Yu Yu's situation and immediately told those uncles and uncles to move away. Just took a shower? She asked. Bai Yu Yu nodded her head gently. Look, so many uncles and uncles want to see you. See how popular you are? Aunt Xian smiled and said. I'll take you back to the harbor area this weekend to meet them? Your grandpa even wants to meet you. Bai Yu Yu eh? However, shook her head decisively. Is Xuan Zai next to you? Seeing that Bai Yu Yu eh didn't really want to talk, Aunt Xian then asked. Bai Yu Yu eh then handed her cell phone to Yi Shuang. Aunt Xian. Yi Shuang did not expect Bai Yu Yi to hand over her cell phone, so he had no choice but to take it and greet Aunt Xian on the other side of the video. Shuang, this Sunday, come over to play in the harbor area. You and Zoe together. After Yi Shuang heard this, he thought about it and thought it would be okay. Going together? Will it trouble Aunt Xian you guys? No, of course not. Anyway, the Hong Kong Juhai Ohio Bridge is so convenient. You guys can come and return on the same day. On the other end of the phone, Aunt Xian said with a smile, but Yi Shuang felt that something was not quite right, could it be that Aunt Xian had figured it out? After a while, Yi Shuang returned the phone to Bai Yenyu, the young girl chatted with Aunt Xian for a while longer, and finally hung up the phone, going to the harbor area on Sunday, are you willing? Yi Shuang didn't agree to it just now, 
but she still had to ask by Yuelio's real opinion if she didn't want to go. She would just send another message to Aunt Xian herself. By Yu Yu Er, eh? however, pulled on Yi Shuang's sleeve. Yi Shuang go. I'll go. Then it's better to reconsider first. Yi Shuang, however, felt that things were not that simple. Or was he thinking too complicated? However, if Bai Yu Yue was allowed to go home and recognize her ancestors, it wouldn't be a bad thing. After all, it couldn't always follow the human trafficker's surname, could it? Let's see if Chen Qin is free. It's more reliable for her to follow along. Yi Xuan thought about it, took out his cell phone and planned to give Chen Qin a call. After all, if the Zhou family really had any careful thoughts to leave Bai Yu Yue directly, with the relationship between Chen father and Zhou father, with Chen Qin on the scene certainly would not tear their faces off. Moreover, Chen Qin is also very familiar with the Hong Kong side, so it's not bad to have a guide. With this thought in mind, Yi Xuan dialed the phone number. Blay, are you free next Sunday? After the call was connected, Yi Xuan asked Chen Qin, definitely have it. Chen Qin on the other end of the phone smiled. Yi Xuan, however, talked about Aunt Xian's call to buy Yu Yue, especially after hearing Yi Xuan's own concerns. Chen Qin, however, let out a long drawn out hum sound. Chen Qin, who was sitting in the office at this moment, still busy with the company's affairs. After hearing Yi Xuan's concern, her greenish white fingertips turned the signing pen in her hand. I understand. You are afraid that Yu Yue will be eaten. Neither. Yi Xuang smiled faintly. Going back was definitely necessary. It just depended on whether the timing was right or not. For the time being, if the Zhou family really forced by Yu Yue to stay there, it might cause that girl to be rebellious. And by then it would backfire and make everyone unhappy. I think so. Chen Qin said. Just do it. Just politely refuse An Xian. You yourself said it's not the right time. On Saturday, we'll have dinner together. If you want to go, just call me. I'll go with you. Chen Qin said. I'll take you to eat kanji and have a cup of iced milk tea. Yi Shuang smiled faintly. Okay. Hanging up the phone, after talking with Chen Qin instead, Yi Shuang was not so entangled. Since things would become troublesome, it would be better not to do it first. Well, just say you're not available. Yi Shuang picked up by Yu Yue's cell phone and sent a message to Aunt Xian. The general meaning is that there are other arrangements on Sunday. Next time for sure. Not long after, Aunt Xian sent an emoticon over. Seemingly sad but didn't say much. Is it hard to believe that I'm overthinking this? Looking at the emoticon sent over by the elders, Yi Xuan thought about it, but in the end, he did not think further. It's better not to go this week, it's not the right time yet. Yi Xuan told Bai Yenyu. Bai Yenyu nodded her head obediently. With such a small episode, the two people continued to do their own things. Yi Xuan watched a science video for a while and then watched some slightly lighter videos, perhaps feeling that the sound from his cell phone was too cluttered. He raised his head and his sight landed on Bai Yuyi. At this moment, Bai Yuyi returned to the position she had at the beginning, her back leaning on the handle of the sofa practicing her guitar, and her legs stretched out. Perhaps noticing Yi Shuang's line of sight, the young girl tilted her head a little. It's fine, keep practicing, Yi Shuang said. Bai Yuyi Wei continued to play with her head down. Yi Shuang also stopped watching the video and chose to quietly listen to the notes played by the young girl that was practicing seriously, although it couldn't be said to be much better but it was rare to make one's mood calm. The night gradually deepened. Go brush your teeth. Yi Shuang glanced at the time. It was almost time to go to bed. Yi Shuang, give birth to the baby. The young girl pulled the corner of his coat. Yi Shuang, no talking about this now. Brush your teeth. Yi Shuang said expressionlessly. Bai Yu Yu obediently closed her mouth, then got up and went to brush her teeth. But when she came back, she slipped a note back. Omega Dash. Yi Shuang, have a baby. Yi Shuang. It's not over, is it? Yi Shuang now not only wanted to slap this teenage girl's ass in front of her, she also wanted to slap Coco who messed up teaching her knowledge as well. A night without words, the next day, in the morning, Yi Shuang who had finished updating his novel came to the school doctor's office, and only just sat down his cell phone rang. Hello? Mr. Bai, are you busy right now? The one who called was a teacher in the academy. Yi Shuang was still a bit strange after hearing the other's voice. Not busy. How do you have my cell phone number? I just asked the group if there is a teacher. Mr. Bai can you help a class lead a math class? Personnel? Yi Xuan was a bit surprised, but he was obviously just a school nurse right, and the personnel side was clear only. How could he send his cell phone number to this teacher? Which personnel? Yi Xuan asked. It seems to be new. I don't know. The group nickname is Small Fish. White teacher you know? Yi Xuan. What does the avatar look like? Yi Xuan asked. Let's see. It's a black and white pattern of a ninja shuriken. Yi Xuan was silent again. Mr. Bai, 
Do you have time? The phone caller asked. In fact, Yi Shuang had only talked to him for a few sentences, and Yi Shuang was still all for the sake of setting up what kind of situation Bai Yufu was in the school at that time. Generally speaking, if you want to transfer a class, it is impossible to decide so hastily, and to report a day in advance and other approvals. It's just that the teacher suddenly had an emergency or something. It's like that teacher Chun from last time. I don't know if she's broken her bones any better. Class A, Grade A? Yi Shuang asked. Of course it's third grade, M.S. Bye. You really love to joke. That would be Yin Yu's class. After confirming it, Yi Shuang came to be a little interested. He directly agreed. Then you give me the class materials and lesson plans. Good. Actually, that lesson is about a role. It's not troublesome. Well, that's fine too. After hanging up the phone, Yi pressed his fingers together and found Ninja Shuriken's avatar at the contacts, while the note nickname on it read the three words in Shuryu. Sure enough, it's this guy. Still really idle ah. Actually working as a personnel in the academy. Yi Shuang suddenly didn't know where it would be better to start spitting, and in Shurfu was totally a fun-loving person, presumably because she felt that it would be fun to do so. It's not bad to go over and see the state of their classes. Yi Shuang didn't mind too much. Soon the teacher who contacted him also sent over the papers and such, and the papers themselves had standardized template answers. Yi Shuang took the pen and simply projected them, smoothing them out so that there wouldn't be any problems in lecturing. It's almost time for class. Go over and take a look. Glancing at the time on his cell phone, Yi Shuang picked up the lesson plan and headed towards class A. When the time came, he would be asked by the group of students. He was just a passing school nurse, and it was normal for a school nurse to substitute for a class, right? Class A. What? It didn't work? Between classes, Tang Koko idly asked about what happened last night, and after realizing that Yi Shuang was indifferent, she suddenly looked like she didn't quite understand. This face, she pointed at by Yu Yu's small face. This figure, another pointed at the young girl slime. Is brother's fixation this strong? Tang Koko didn't understand, but she was greatly shocked. In the end, she came to a conclusion. Yu Yu eh, do you think brother will? Saying this, the young girl bent her index finger. By Yu Yu eh, however, slowly looked up and said, Yi Shuang, right, I'm talking about brother. Tang Koko had just finished speaking, but she realized that by Yu Yu's line of sight was a bit strange. Tilting her head without knowing what she was looking at, Tanko followed the young girl's line of sight and turned to look back, but noticed Yi Shuang standing behind herself. Tang Ku Ku, Owo. Oh, okay, everyone quiet down. Yi Shuang walked behind the podium and pushed the flat gold glasses on the bridge of his own nose, perhaps because of the familiar face, which instantly caused the students under the stage to whisper. Isn't that the school doctor from the third school medical office? What's going on? Why would he come to class A to lead the math class? It seems like it's also the parent of the stinky. Bai Yufu. Mother Heno. I heard that the math teacher's sister is going to have a baby and he's going to go back to take care of. Though I don't know why. Wow. Do you guys feel that this school doctor is so handsome ah? It is simply a replica of Kim Sung Woo ah. No wonder the old girl said that there is a handsome uncle school doctor in the third school medical room. Yi Shuang tapped the blackboard with the edge of the blackboard eraser. And the loud sound it made instantly silenced the class. Your math teacher is in a bit of a hurry so I'm coming over to take a class. Everyone take out your papers first, and we'll continue with the papers today. Yi Shuang had once been a teacher for a while during his social practice at the university, so he acted like a lightweight, completely like a teacher. Let's look at question 12. It is known that the function y equals f, x, is an increasing function defined on r. The function y equals f, x1. Yi Shuang spoke about the questions on the paper before his eyes swept to a certain young girl. Tang Koko student, what is the range of values? Tang Ku Ku, who had a bag on her head, stood up and stammered out the answer. Yi Shuang just silently glanced at her, then continued to ask, Come to the podium and write the process of the answer on the blackboard. Tang Ku Ku, this is retaliation. It's definitely revenge. Brother put small shoes on me. Tang Ku Ku cried her little face. Originally her head had been knocked a big bag out by Yi Shuang, but as a result, she still had to be put in small shoes in class. Brother has no teacher's morals. Tang Koko looked to Bai Yin Yu beside her. Bai Yu Yu's sniffed and thought for a moment. Yi Shuang. Seems like he wasn't a teacher in the first place. Tang Koko. When Yi Shuang saw Tang Koko's look, he felt a few moments of amusement. The corners of his mouth slightly raised a little arc. Let this guy always teach Yu Yu something or nothing, but Yi Shuang didn't make things difficult for Tang Koko after all. After all, it wasn't as if he hadn't tutored the other party's homework, and he was still very clear about Tang Koko's level. Afterward. Yi Shuang turned around and figured out the range of values on the blackboard, and continued to start lecturing. Moreover, 
considering that both Bai Yuyi and Tang Koko's basics weren't too good, so Yi Shuang's lectures were even very detailed, and there was absolutely no bending over to pick up the pen, then looking up and not being able to keep up with the pace, some of the students who originally couldn't keep up heard Yi Shuang lecture that way, and also suddenly realized that they could understand, and for a while they also got serious, maybe it's not bad to be a teacher yourself? Yi Shuang used chalk to write questions on the blackboard, but nowadays, the line of teaching was really too tiring, and he just thought about it, if he really wanted to achieve a career, Yi Shuang could have agreed to Chen's father's arrangement and then joined a company to start from the top, but Yi Shuang liked the slower pace of life nowadays, accompanying that young girl's growth, and that was enough, it's hard for people to be truly free, and the one who locks them up is often themselves, people always unknowingly, either as a slave of feelings, or a servant of the cause, after looking away, Yi Shuang didn't care so much, the time of one lesson passed quickly, many students still looked like they had not finished, originally at the beginning, many students still felt that it was a bit strange for the school nurse to teach math, even if it was just about papers, but Yi Shuang conquered everyone present with one lesson, and there were quite a number of students strangely found out that Yi Shuang could actually call out the names of all the students in the class, alright, if you guys are interested, continue the discussion after class, class dismissed, after Yi Shuang finished speaking, he took the lesson plan and the paper and fell back and left directly. When Tang Kuka saw Yi Xuan leave, she immediately stretched out her hands, and her whole body lay down on the table. Finally the class is over. I feel as if my brother is going to call my name at any time. Beside her, Bai Yu Yui asked, Why? There's no reason. I'll take a nap first. Tang Kuka suddenly said, Yu Yu eh? Your thighs give me a pillow. The table is too hard. Oh, don't grab my book bag ah? Yi Shuang also returned to the school nurse's room at this time. After he took off his glasses, he pinched his brow and then put his rolls on the table. Eh? At this time, he noticed that there was a new item beside his table and it was also a laptop. Yi Shuang showed some doubts. The door of the school medical room was obviously closed. Did someone take the key and enter? It seems that the third school doctor's office has a key. In addition to himself is that guy in Shiyu. This thing, and Shurfu's, right? Right oh. A voice came from behind him. Yi Shuang turned around, only to realize that Enshir Fu was actually sitting on the hospital bed wearing headphones and playing a game. And just now when Yi Shuang came in, his sight was blocked by the curtain, and he happened not to see Enshir Fu. Why do you want a laptop on my table? Yi Shuang asked after sitting down. Bought it for you. And sure you said. Question mark. Yi Shuang froze for a moment, not quite understanding what Enshir Yu meant, and Shi Yu did not raise her head. The light from the game console shone on her face, still with the same careless tone. It's better that the school nurse's office still needs a computer, right? It'll make it easier for you to get to work. No need to be too grateful. Hearing this, Yi Xuan was expressionless. What's the truth? I bought a lot of games recently. I need to play games. Yi Xuan always felt that the school medical room was about to turn into an Xiyu's entertainment room. At the very least, on the last hospital bed, there was an additional Pikachu pillow obviously brought by an Xiyu. Which person would make the school medical room a private space? Ah, hello. However, Yi Shuang didn't need to say anything more. After all, and Shurfu's purpose from the beginning was this, wanting to have a place to touch the fish to escape from class. At this time, and Shurfu also got down from the bed. She took a six-parent shaky step, then sat on her but next to Yi Shuang. Play the game with me. Not playing. TSK, guy without a man's soul. Don't need your approval. Yi Shuang said. His sight swept to her calf and asked, Is the leg better? And Shiyu looked at the machine while her eyes looked over. What leg? It's the place where you were given medicine. Yi Shuang said. Oh, nothing more. And Shi Yu stretched her leg and continued to open her laptop. Yi Shuang, however, froze for a moment, then pointed to an Shi Yu's other leg. That's the one I gave you medicine on. Fast body recovery is a necessary skill for ninjas. And Shi Yu retracted her leg and spoke in a still lazy tone. Of course, it's not impossible for you to still want to touch my leg. Yi Shuang, time flashed by and it was already almost time for school to end in the afternoon. Bai Yuyue and Luo Che together pushed a cart filled with equipment towards the equipment room. This was arranged by the physical education teacher, probably just randomly drawing a boy and a girl, which also happened to be Luo Che and Bai Yuyue. Luo Che looked at Bai Yuyi out of the corner of his eye. Clean and tidy sports short tee and shorts, bundled ponytail revealing a snow-white neck. No matter where you look, you can't pick out any dead ends of the beautiful girl. Luo Che didn't know why. Bai Yuyi seemed to be getting more and more beautiful, completely different from what she looked like at the beginning. Moreover, it seems to be getting more and more difficult to get in touch with, and that cool look exudes an unapproachable air all the time. Luo Che's throat involuntarily rolled a bit, and his heartbeat was also very fast, 
but he still pretended to be calm and looked ahead, also with a very high and cold look. Adolescent boys always want to act like a maverick to attract the girls they are interested in. Luo Che was the same way. He purposely acted as if he was very cold, but in his heart, he fantasized that Bai Yu Yue would be able to take the initiative to talk to him, or that he would notice his difference from the other boys. But he was disappointed, because Bai Yu Yi didn't say anything the entire time, her waist length ponytail swaying gently as she kept holding the handle of the cart towards the equipment room. Bye, Bai Yu Yi student. Finally, Luo Che still couldn't help but speak. That, Bai Yu Yue's beautiful eyes swept over, but she didn't say anything either only slightly tilting her head sideways as if she was wondering what the other party wanted to say. Luo Che instantly coughed dryly, and when he met the eyes that were as good-looking as Obsidian, the words he originally wanted to say suddenly got stuck. Even his brain went blank, and he stammered out, That, do you know where the equipment room is? Bai Yu Yu sniffed and nodded her head. Oh, the atmosphere was reduced to calm, but it made Luo Che feel like there were ants crawling on his body. After all, it was a rare opportunity to be alone with Bai Yu Yu, he thought about it and then asked, By the way, is the couple you said, is your boyfriend? Bai Yu Yu A heard it, but shook her head, not a couple. The young girl's voice is ethereal and nice. Luo Che scratches his head, but his heart seems to have a stone to put down, and he also opens the box of words in general. By the way Bai Yu Yu A student, do you live close to Tang Koko's house? Always see you guys go home together. Aha, uh -huh. where do you live? Maybe I also live close to you guys, so we can go to school together in the future. Luo Che smiled and asked as if he was joking. A O U An. Oh, there ah. I also often go shopping over there. Actually, we don't live too far away. Bai Yu Yue glanced at him, but didn't say anything. Yi Shuang had said that you can't just talk too much to strange men. At most, three words would be enough. Luo Che, however, froze, seeing Bai Yu Yi who suddenly didn't speak. But in his heart, he wondered if he was wrong with that sentence. But after he took stock of it, he didn't feel that there was a problem anywhere. Could it be that he was too enthusiastic? When Luo Che was thinking like this, he only saw that the equipment room and the distance had also arrived. Places like the equipment room were generally more remote. Luo Che is a boy who was familiar with reading romance comics. He actually knew that the equipment room was a very classic love story, similar to what a pair of men and women who walked into the equipment room and then couldn't get out of the room when the door was accidentally closed by someone else, and then ended up getting along in the dimly lit environment until their feelings warmed up and so on. Just when Luo Che was thinking about it, the teacher sitting at the door of the equipment room opened his mouth and said, Register here, is there anything missing? Nope, Bai Yu Yu said softly, taking a pen and signing her name there in class A. Well, you can go now. Luo Che thought a little too much. The equipment room of Silver Mountain Academy was watched over by a teacher. Looking at the figure that walked further and further away, it seemed that this time, Luo Che would never have the courage to approach this young girl again. Perhaps in the future he had also thought that if he had helped the other party a little earlier, the situation might have been different. He hated himself for being dumb. After Bai Yu Yu finished showering in the locker room and blow drying her hair, she accelerated her own steps towards the school nurse's office, wanted to see Yi Shuang. But when she passed a certain hallway classroom, the young girl's steps stopped as she heard a familiar sound, a musical instrument, which still seemed to be a guitar. Perhaps remembering what Tang Koko had done. Bai Yu Yu tentatively pushed open a crack to look inside, only to find a long-haired girl inside sweeping the guitar, her gaze focused, a ray of sunlight falling on the girl's shoulders as if wearing a golden veil. The other party skillfully strummed the strings, smooth and cheerful music rang out, gradually attracting Bai Yu Yu's eyes. Your, at this moment, a touching sensation came from her shoulder. Bai Yu Yu slowly turned her head back, only to find a petite girl standing behind her, with her hands behind her back her ponytail tied with a cute cherry hairband, and a smile on her face. Bai Yu Yu didn't say anything after seeing this girl, but only silently took a step back. What's wrong classmate? Are you looking for someone from our light voice club? The girl continued to speak and asked, a very warm smile on her face. Bai Yu Yu whispered, the guitar, sounds good. Oh, you were attracted by the sound of the guitar ah, hey, we've recently been preparing a performance for the academy's 70th school festival. As the girl said that, her eyes fell on the badge of the other party's school uniform, the school badge of Silver Mountain Academy had a certain jewel pattern in the badge pattern of different colors depending on the grade. You're a third year student, aren't you? Are you interested in music? The girl retracted her gaze, revealing her snow white teeth. Actually, our light music club is very welcoming of others to visit. Do you have a club? Bai Yu Yu shook her head. The girl's eyes instantly lit up. No clubs ah. Then are you interested in the guitar? Do you want to join the light tone club to play? 
perhaps sensing the other party's enthusiasm, Bai Yuyue suddenly lowered her eyes, and then ran away around the girl hurriedly with small broken steps. Wait, wait, classmate. The girl reached out her hand to call out to Bai Yuyue, but the other party disappeared at the end of the stairs in the blink of an eye, walked away. At this time, the door of the classroom on the side was also pushed open, and the young girl who had just played the guitar walked out. She first followed the other party's line of sight towards the side of the stairway, and then asked, Zixia, who are you talking to? There was a very pretty girl just now. She seemed like she was interested in guitar. So I asked her if she wanted to join our club. Zixia smiled and shrugged, then ran away. Really? How pretty? Like a doll. Eh, is it that much of an exaggeration? But if she's really interested in this, maybe we can meet up later. Well, that too. Bai Yuyue stood in front of the door to the school nurse's office and looked at the hidden door. So she directly reached out her hand and pushed it open. Introduced to the eyes is the fluttering curtains and a tall back wearing a white coat standing in front of the windowsill, while to the side, there is a shoulder-length hair young girl who is only bending her stocking legs and holding the handle to play, and in front of her laptop there are a few zombies pouncing and biting, emitting the horrifying sound of actually opened the door for me to kill, really underestimated me as a great disciple of the wind spirit moon shadow sect, the young girl pressed the handle, and several rocket shells flew over, blowing all the zombies into powder. And, weak eh, can this thing really rule Raccoon City? And Shiyu glanced at the door that was pushed open, and after seeing that it was by Yin Yu coming, she didn't say much and turned back to continue playing her game. At this time, Yi Shuang also heard the sound and turned back, after seeing Bai Yu Yu standing in the doorway, he smiled, it's slower than I thought, is the equipment room far away? Bai Yu Yu shook her head, not far. The young girl walked up to Yi Shuang before she realized what Yi Shuang was doing. At this time, in front of the window sill, there were actually two white pigeons standing. Coo coo. The pigeons turned their heads and were not afraid of life after seeing Bai Yin Yu, making cooing noises. Yi Shuang smiled. The environment of this school is good enough and big enough. There are actually quite a few animals. What with cats and dogs being seniors in this school? Bai Yu Yu looked at the pigeon that turned its head in front of her, and after a few seconds, asked and said, Chicken? Coo? One person and one pigeon looked at each other. Chickens shouldn't be here. This is a pigeon. He pinched a few corn kernels in his hands, and after sprinkling them on the window fence, the two pigeons pecked at them. After feeding the corn kernels in his hand, Yi Shuang then also drove those two pigeons away. He patted the crumbs on his palm, and the tip of his nose detected a nice fragrance. Yi Shuang looked at Bai Yuyi in front of him, and smiled. Why don't you blow dry your hair a little bit after you've just washed it? Bai Yuyue's hair wasn't completely dry, so it was quite obvious looking at it. I want to see Yi Shuang. Earlier? The young girl replied, Really? Yi Shuang reached out his hand, smiled and rubbed Bai Yuyi's head before he also took off his own white coat and hung it on a shelf to the side. Let's go. Let's go home. Where's Coco? Coco, made up the school uniform to go. Make up the school uniform? Yi Shuang froze for a moment, seemed a bit not quite understand, while Bai Yuyi saw Yi Shuang doubt but explained, Coco bent over to pick up something. Then when she got up, the button flew out. Yi Shuang sniffed and imagined that image through what Bai Yuyue described. Yi Shuang, isn't it slightly bullish? After cleaning up a bit more, it was almost time to go home. Before leaving, Yi Shuang was still playing games with Enshiyu. Yi Shuang asked, Enshiyu, we're leaving. Oh Enshiyu answered casually, but her fingers were pressing on the handle. After Yi Shuang helped close the door of the school doctor's office, he left side by side with Bai Yenyu. The sound of footsteps gradually disappeared and the entire school medical room only had the noisy sound of zombies, and Shiyu played for a little while longer, perhaps feeling some boredom, one of her stocking-clad legs lifted out, and with a bark, she directly covered the laptop down, whom, find something to do, she stood up and staggered out of the school nurse's office with her pockets in her pocket as well, Yi Shuang led by Yu Yue to the underground garage of the academy, and after getting into the car, Yi Shuang drove out of the academy in this Toyota Bull Demon King, what do you want to eat tonight? Yi Shuang asked. Recently the weather became hot. Yi Shuang also wanted to cook a green bean soup for Bai Yu Yue to drink to cool down the heat, and put it into a thermos cup that could also be brought to the school to drink. Bai Yu Yue, however, as if she didn't hear Yi Shuang's voice, she kept staring at the road in front of her, and directly fell into some kind of a state of distraction after seeing this scene. Yi Shuang retracted his sight, and didn't make a sound to disturb Bai Yu Yue's thinking, he slowed down the speed of the car and then drove towards the vegetable market, until she got out of the car, Bai Yuelu still looked like she hadn't returned to her senses, so much so that Yi Shuang couldn't help but reach out and pinch the other party's small face, 
arrived at the destination, Bai Yuyue's eyes gradually gathered a bright light. She first looked at the scenery outside the car window before she finally turned her head to Yi Shuang and said, Drink the soup. This delay of yours is a bit serious, but I asked you what you wanted to eat ten minutes ago. Yi Shuang said a little helplessly, but also got out of the car first. After locking the car door, Yi Shuang asked, What are you thinking about so intently? Could it be that some boy confessed to you? Bai Yan Yu shook her head. Could it be a girl's secret? Yi Shuang smiled. Then I won't ask. It's not. Bai Yan Yu whispered. Then told the matter of coming over to the school doctor's office and then encountering the members of the Light Tone Society. Although she said it rather vaguely or even didn't know exactly what she wanted to express. But Yi Shuang clearly grasped a few key points and asked. Is it an interest in the Light Voice Club? Yi Shuang asked. I don't know. Bai Yan Yu lowered her head and hung her eyes. But her slender fingers were playing with the corner of Yi Shuang's coat, which looked a bit cute. Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile. It just so happens that you don't have a club. How good is it to join a club to make more friends? Although Yi Shuang has always felt that friends lie in the quality, in the degree of friendship and not in the number, but with Bai Yu Yu's current situation, more acquaintance with some students with different personalities is not a bad thing. Friend. Well, friends oh. More good friends like Coco. Isn't it bad? Yi Shuang smiled gently. Since befriending Tang Koku, in fact Bai Yu Yu's character has become more and more cheerful. This is also the place where he is pleased. It was that Tang Ku might be better off teaching less strange knowledge. Yi Shuanglian thought of knocking a bag on that guy Tang Kuku's head today, so I guess he'd be better behaved too, right? Bai Yu Yu thought about it, but her eyes carried a struggle. Guitar is not good. Yi Shuang then understood what this child in front of him was worried about, but he said, the club itself is formed together because of interest. It is not necessary to have great strength to join, even though you've only just started learning the guitar. I think the club will definitely have students who are willing to help you. Bai Yu Yu recalled the petite girl who greeted her with a smile and subconsciously nodded. Let's go ask tomorrow after school. I heard that there are several clubs about music in Silver Mountain Academy, and the Light Music Club is the least popular and least crowded. People will definitely welcome you. Good. In the end, Bai Yu Yu agreed. What? You want to join the club? The next day, after Tang Kuka heard Bai Yen Yu say that she wanted to check out the Light Music Club, she blinked her eyes. Really? Well, Yi Shuang said, to go and have a look. Bai Yu Yu finished and paused. Make other friends. Make other friends. Tang Koko immediately a face dry. Like being drawn soul slightly open small mouth. I, is not hated by the brother? It must be. Yesterday being targeted for training. And today letting Bai Yu Yu make other friends. I should have known not to say that brother is bent. Tang Koko covered her chest with a look of pain here. In fact, it was just a simple expression that was problematic. Yi Shuang was just letting Bai Yu Lu make more friends with different personalities, not saying that she wouldn't socialize with Tang Koko anymore, but if she really wanted to get tangled up in it, there actually wasn't anything wrong with Bai Yu Liu's sentence. Seeing Tang Koko's pained look, Bai Yen Yu cocked her head for a moment, then pulled out a band-aid from her pocket. Here. Thanks. It's not the pain outside. In the blink of an eye, the afternoon dismissal time quickly arrived. Bai Yu Yu also returned to the place where she heard the guitar yesterday, the classroom wasn't closed like yesterday, but was slightly open by half a crack. Bai Yu Yu walked over and exposed half of her small face in the doorway to look inside. Observe in secret. JPG. There were the two people from yesterday in the classroom, and both were sitting together seemingly talking about something. Jishia. The long-haired girl asked to the girl with the thin ponytail, how much of our club budget is left? There's none left. Rin Rin you're not unaware. Of the small number of people in our club, plus the fact that the teacher in charge of our club, Mr. Chen, has gone home with a broken bone, so where would the school be willing to allocate funds for us to use? No way. Wouldn't that mean there's no money for setting up the anniversary show? It's not like we have to set up a stage to perform. Zisha tapped her chin with her finger and said adorably, How about just performing on the curb of the stalls? It's free and there's a lot of foot traffic. This, this, is too awkward isn't it? The corners of Rin Rin's mouth twitched. Jisha spread her hands helplessly. It can't be helped. Look at the rock club next door, the ancient style music club, and what's more, the Ikuan music group are all trying to grab a spot with us, and there's more people than us, so we can't fight it. Besides, all our own people have left to go to the rock club. Rin Rin hugged his guitar, suddenly asked, then our club, is it going to be abolished? I asked the club teacher yesterday. She said that if we don't have enough five people, it seems like we won't be able to carry out activities next semester, and this classroom will have to be given up for other clubs to use. Five people. It's easy to find three more, right? Get the class to pretend or something. Easy is easy, but there's still a need for a teacher in charge of. Ah. 
After Mr. Chen's fracture, even if he's better he'll only be able to teach and not come to the club. Ji Xia said, where to find a teacher in charge? As far as I know 90% of the teachers have clubs in their names, then it seems there's no way out. Rin is sighed. Zixia also lowered her head. Her face, though wearing a smile, was permeated with a sense of sadness. Yeah, obviously it was so lively last year. And after a year of graduation season passed it's just the two of us left. The classroom was quiet for a few seconds. Zixia, hmm, have you felt a line of sight since just now? If you say so. Jixia followed Rin's line of sight and together they looked towards the door. Bai Yuyue was crouching outside the door at the moment. She had just been trying to gather the courage to go in and ask about joining the club, but she couldn't get her own feet to go out, and even squatted like a little penguin as a whole. A few seconds later, the young girl poked out half of her little head to look inside again, but in her eyes was an empty classroom. Bai Yuyue slightly tilted her head in confusion, and then poked out some more to look inside. There is still no one. The two girls just now seemed to have disappeared out of thin air in general, and only the slightly blowing curtains to bring a little sense of reality. At this time, Bai Yuyue noticed two more shadows on the wall in front of her, even directly covering her body. The young girl slowly turned around to find the two girls looking at her with smiles. Hello there, classmate. After Bai Yuyue realized that they were both standing behind her, her entire body seemed to go down for a second, and she didn't even have any expression at all. Classmate? Classmate? Bai Yin Yu stood up as if mechanically after a long while, and then her entire body shook gently. Hello again classmate, are you interested in our club? Jixia smiled and inquired. Compared to Jixia's adorable look of self-consciousness, on the contrary, Rinku was a bit serious and asked. Classmate, are you visiting the light music club? Obviously, both of them were interested in Bai Yu Yue, and Rin Rin also seemed to understand what Jixia meant by the doll yesterday. The perfect appearance of this young girl in front of her was like a work of art exquisite like a doll, with a kind of unrealistic dreamy feeling, Bai Yuyue stretched out her hand and took out a piece of paper from her pocket, handing it to Jixia, the two took it and glanced at it, Omega Dash, do you believe me when I say I'm just passing through, don't believe me oh, come in, Jixia smiled and directly took Bai Yuyue's arm before bringing her into the classroom, in the end, Bai Yuyue sat down on a chair, while Jixia and Rin Rin observed the young girl in front of them, perhaps sensing the other party's nervousness, Jixia introduced herself and said, How are you, classmate? I'm the head of the light music club. Xiao Jixia, you can just call me Jixia. Rin Rin also said seriously, My name is Insho Rin. Just call me Rin Rin. What's your name, classmate? Bai Yu Yu's small mouth moved, but she was not completely speechless. At Yi Shuang's side, the young girl's degree of openness, 90%. By Tang Koko's side, the young girl's openness, 50%. When she was by herself, the girl's openness, 20%. Bai. Yu Yu Ai. Bai Yu Yu Ai still spoke her name. Join the. Light music club. Really? Jixia had an expression of picking up a treasure. And was even a little touched. After all. The light music club hadn't had any fresh blood for half a year. It's okay. We're very happy to welcome new members. What instrument do you usually play? Bai Yu Yu Ai was even more nervous at this time. Perhaps as a rookie guitarist who had just started. She stammered and couldn't say anything. On the contrary, Rin Rin seemed to have thought of something, realizing that Bai Yu Yu's communication skills might not be too good. After she thought about it, she took out a piece of paper from the drawer of the desk on the side, and handed it to Bai Yu Yu. Bai Yu Yu as student, are you not good at talking? Here, she smiled and said, don't be nervous, write what you want to say on the paper. Even in summer, the wind blowing from the rooftop in the afternoon brought a bit of coolness. Yi Shuang stood in front of the fence. He put his hands in the pocket of his white coat to look at the scenery of Inchon College, and couldn't help but sigh a sentence. Today's weather is good. I have to say that this school scenery is really good, which is like when I went to school. The junior high school was even in front of the Guangfu Vegetable Market, and was even called Guangfu Junior High School. It's just that I don't know how Yu Yue is doing, joining the club smoothly or not. Yi Shuang muttered. Obviously it was just a very simple thing. Not even much difficulty. But Yi Shuang still couldn't help but worry, but he couldn't possibly show his worry in front of Bai Yu Yue. When a person relies on you enough, your confidence is her confidence. And what Bai Yan Yu happened to lack was confidence. But Yi Shuang also looked forward to the day when the young girl would shine and shine. Since you are worried, wouldn't it be better to go and take a look? A voice came from the side. Yi Shuang turned around upon hearing this, and found a short-haired young girl with her back against the wall. She had her head on the side, spreading some of her hair to be blown by the breeze from the rooftop. Obviously it's not something unseemly, eh? Yi Shuang froze for a moment after seeing this fish. Why did you follow me here? Ung Shi Fish, however, revealed her P.I.s, 
How rude. Obviously I came here first. You were still playing games when I left the school nurse's office, okay? Yi Xuan was helpless. Are you underestimating the speed of ninjas? And Shifu pulled up her sideburns and lifted them behind her ears, answering in a nonchalant manner. Also, jumping a second floor without blinking. Yi Xuan finished speaking, but also felt that what in Shiyu said was also somewhat reasonable. It was not impossible to go over and take a look now. After thinking clearly, Yi Xuan planned to go over to the light music club to take a look at the situation. After going downstairs, Yi Xuan however noticed that the short-haired girl followed silently. What are you following me for? Bored and nothing to do. And Shifu shook her head. This native little day walks like a that slinky at this time. Although Yi Xuan hasn't seen her look serious a few times either. Yi Xuan said. Wouldn't it be better to go back to playing games? TSK. Uncle you manage a bit too much. I can't say anything if you follow me. We just happen to be traveling the same way. The two of them walked side by side. Chatting without a word. Suddenly. Yi Shuang's footsteps paused as if he thought of something, and he turned his head to ask in Shiyu. Then again, do you know where the light tone club is? And Shiyu's eyes changed as she looked at Yi Shuang. It was a gaze that looked like she was looking at a single-celled organism. And, occasionally found that your brain is not quite enough like that. Do not know where the purpose goes so fast? Yi Shuang also had to smile helplessly. I've never been there of course I can't possibly know. So where is it? And Shiyu, however, raised her chin slightly. You're asking me? Where would I know? The corners of Yi Xuan's mouth twitched. It seemed that this super amnesia wasn't working very well either. In the end, he inquired about a few students passing by, and someone did point out the location of the Light Voice Club. After crossing the corridor to the club's floor, Yi Xuan and the others suddenly heard a burst of guitar sounds. Looks like this is the place. Yi Xuan and Shiyu slowed down their steps, then walked towards the half open classroom door. The two of them looked towards the door at the same time, in front of the window sill. There were three young girls standing there. The long-haired girl in the center with a delicate appearance was holding a guitar and playing the strings under the guidance of another girl. After a round of playing, the hairs on her head swayed gently with the wind blowing from the windowsill, and although she still had no expression, Yi Xuan was able to feel the girl's inner happiness from afar, seeing the scene, he said from the bottom of his heart. It seems like everything is going well. Uncle, this tone of yours, isn't it a bit greasy? Why should I be lectured by you? Yi Shuang made a hand slash and knocked on Anshu Yu's head. Well, next time you hit me on the head, be careful I'll flip you over on the ground. And Shi Yu covered her head and said. Yi Shuang couldn't help but grin. How do you flip over? And Shi Yu half squinted her eyes and suddenly revealed a bad smile. Yi Shuang just turned his head back. The next moment he felt the sight in front of his eyes shaking. The whole person's sky spinning in general with the sound of impact directly fell to the ground. Ah, looking at the ceiling. Yi Xuan froze and did not come back to his senses. At this time, and Shi Yu sat sideways on Yi Xuan's stomach, propped up her small face with one hand, her gaze with some playfulness, flip like this. How did you do that? I'm a ninja. It's normal for me to know some physical arts, right? Perhaps it was because the commotion of the fall just now attracted people in the classroom. Bai Yan Yu and Ji Xiao walked out, and they also saw Yi Xuan as well as in Shi Yu lying on the ground, and Shi Yu stood up and reached out her hand to pat her pleated skirt. While Bai Yuyuai immediately squatted down to help him up after seeing that it was actually Yi Shuang lying on the ground. Yi Shuang. Sorry, is it disturbing you guys? Yi Shuang had just finished speaking, only to see Bai Yuyuai directly bury her face in his arms, hugging tightly like a wombat. Zixia and Rin Rin blinked, a little surprised. What kind of relationship are these two people? Lovers? Doesn't look like it. They're father and daughter. And Shifu said from the sidelines. Zixia and Rin Rin froze for a moment. Ha, huh? so young? Still, Yi Shuang spoke up to explain that it wasn't the so-called father and daughter, and then identified himself. I'm the school doctor of the third school medical office of this academy. My surname is Yi. I think I've heard the news that the third school doctor's office has opened. Ji Xia's eyes suddenly lit up and asked curiously, Teacher Yi, do you have a club under your name? Teacher Yi? Yi Shuang did feel some interest in this novel appellation. Looking at the young girl in front of him with vivaciousness, he smiled and shook his head. What does it mean to have a club under your name? It means that the society will usually have a teacher in charge. Whom? The original teacher in charge of the light music club. Mr. Chen. Fractured his bones, so we're looking for a new person in charge, and I don't know if the school nurse would be able to do it. Ji Xia said. Right. Otherwise the light voice club is going to face the problem of being abolished. Rin said as well. Mr. Chen. Yi Shuang asked. Could it be that the person in charge of you guys is Mr. Chen from class 3B? Uh, right. Ji Xia immediately said. Yi Shuang didn't understand what kind of things the teacher in charge was going to do. And in the end, he wasn't a teacher. 
Was he thinking of this? Yi Shuang's eyes looked at Shi Yu. This fellow was at least the granddaughter of the school manager, so she must know more about this kind of thing in the school. What are you looking at me for? And Shi Yu asked lazily. I'm afraid I can't, because I'm just the school nurse and not a teacher. Yi Shuang told Ji Xia and the girls. After hearing Yi Shuang say that, Ji Xia and Rin Rin clearly looked disappointed. If they couldn't find a teacher in charge again this semester, then this light voice club wouldn't be able to sustain itself. Ah, and that was the last thing they wanted to face. I can help you guys ask about this matter. Seeing the two people's lost looks, Yi Shuang said after thinking about it. Really? The two young girls' eyes lit up. Well, but I'm just helping to ask. Don't expect too much, Yi Shuang said, for things that he was not sure if he had never talked things up, because Yi Shuang himself was clear about the so-called the greater the expectation, the greater the disappointment would be. That's okay, for Ji Xia, having some hope was better than nothing. Afterwards, both Ji Xia and Rin Rin added Yi Shuang's contact information, presumably that if Yi Shuang contacted the teacher, he could just tell Ji Xia directly. Finally, his eyes went to buy Yu Yue. Yi Shuang also told Ji Xia and the girls, Yu Yue's character is rather slow to warm up, and she is also rather slow in some aspects, so I hope that you guys can take care of her a little bit more. Saying that, he gently patted by Yu Yue's head, by Yu Yue also whispered to the two, Thank you, there's no need to thank us, our light voice club still welcomes by, Ji Xia said, pulling up by Yu Yue's palm, let's go Yu Yue's an, let's continue to practice guitar, by Yu Yue turned back to look at Yi Shuang, who just smiled and nodded, then it's hard work for you on the teacher thing. Rin Rin also said to Yi Shuang, Aha, after seeing the three return to the classroom, Yi Shuang stood in the doorway for a few seconds before pouring out and leaving as well. If Yui is going to participate in club activities in the future, will that mean she'll be coming home a little later? Yi Shuang walked down the stairs and said, but his expression was a little emotional. This niece's life was getting more and more exciting. Perhaps there will also be that day when Yu Yue becomes no longer in need of herself? Why the tone of a complaining woman? And Shi Yu on the side asked, Yi Shuang. Why haven't you left yet? Do you plan to follow me all the way? Yi Shuang asked. Well, and Shi Yu said, took out a lollipop from her pocket, tore open the package and stuffed it into her mouth. Her teeth made a crunching friction sound with the candy. Uncle, accompany me to go out and buy milk tea to drink. Yi Shuang refused dryly. No go. If you accompany me, I will help you solve the matter of the teacher in charge. And Shi Yu lazily said, with a few smiles in the corner of her eyes, Uncle. You also don't want by Yu Yu's club to abolish the department, right? Yi Xuan was expressionless, so you can help? Then why didn't you say anything when I looked at you just now? It's not like you asked me, but this is just a very simple thing. And sure you revealed a small tiger tooth and said, but everything has a price. Yi Xuan sniffed and thought about it, but it was just a matter of going to buy a cup of milk tea. Okay, let's go then. After the two came together to the underground garage, Yi Xuan originally wanted to drive and take and sure you out. But the other party walked to the side and directly threw over a helmet. Here, put it on. Ha! Huh? Yi Shuang looked at the helmet in his hand, but realized that in Shiyu was standing in front of a locomotive, and it was actually the same style as Chen Hai's locomotive. Your bike? Yi Shuang was a little surprised to see in Shiyu actually straddling the locomotive. This guy couldn't have bought it along with Chen Hai's locomotive the last time he saw it, right? The young girl put on a black helmet at this time, the eyes in the goggle part looked over. Right oh! but I regretted buying it. Why? The legs are not long enough. Yi Shuang's gaze went to her pantyhose stocking leg that was still some distance from the ground. What a plain and simple reason. Yi Shuang also put on his helmet. He wanted to drive it himself, but he saw that in Shi Yu didn't have the intention of loosening the handle at all, which obviously meant that she was going to drive the locomotive herself. After seeing this scene, Yi Shuang didn't say much. He sat behind in Shi Yu. Where to buy milk tea? The station gate. So far, Yi Shuang obviously froze for a moment. Wouldn't it be more than 10 kilometers? Then it would be better to order takeout. And Shi Yu didn't answer Yi Shuang. And with a twist of the throttle, she set off straight away. Then again. What? Do you know how to drive a locomotive? Yi Shuang asked. He always felt that this and Shi Yu guy was not reliable in a sense. It's not just a toy. I can drive both helicopters and yachts. And Shi Yu wore a helmet and made a muffled sound. Yi Shuang said. I know the helicopter in the game too. I can do the realistic ones too, the young girl replied, and Shi Yu didn't continue to say too much. After driving out of the school section, Yi Shuang pointed to the corner on one side. That side is the city's motorcycle band section. You'll have to turn around and go around from here. Yeah, don't look like you're completely unaware ah hey? It's okay, uncle can't catch me. You'd better turn yourself in. I don't dare to sit down. 
and Xi Yu honestly followed the direction Yi Shuang pointed out and turned around. It just so happened that the cars in that section of the road were very few, so when Xi Yu directly screwed up to 70 or 80, and at this time Yi Shuang's sitting posture was very peculiar. He held the metal side next to him with one hand, and didn't bother to touch in Shi Yu's waist. It was such a slightly hard posture. Uncle. At this time, and Shi Yu's voice came along with the sound of the wind. What? If you don't want a piece of the east and a piece of the west, it's better to hold my waist. And of course, it's fine if you want to rub the slime. And Shi Yu's voice carried a flirtatious tone. But after Yi Shuang thought about it, he still held in Shi Yu's waist just to be on the safe side. And Shi Yu's waist was very thin which was out of Yi Shuang's expectation. Silver Mountain Academy school uniform was really a magical thing, able to cover in Shi Yu's waist and by Yan Yu's book bag, displaying not the original size. Of course, that Coco guy was excluded. Just then, and Shi Fu drove faster. Slow down. Yi Shuang listened to the sound of the whistling wind and only felt a blackness in front of his eyes. This feeling was completely different from driving ah, driving even up to a hundred would not feel much. The speed limit here is one hundred. The speed limit of 100 doesn't let you directly drive 100 ah, Yi Shuang said. Although this section of the road is a straight line and there is no traffic light, but it is not compared to the highway section. In case there is a cross fence passerby or something, the meat covered iron locomotive is not like ordinary vehicles can save your life. Slow down. Yi Shuang directly stretched out his hand and pinched in Shi Yu's waist. The latter trembled for a moment and immediately and honestly slowed down her speed. Sure enough, it's a perverted colorful uncle. A ghostly voice came out. Who let you drive so fast? Very slow oh. You're so young. Don't take life lightly. Yi Shuang said seriously. The other party was silent for a split second. Then said. It's useless to take it seriously. Here we are. After getting off the locomotive. Yi Shuang looked around and realized that this was a very ordinary urban area although the station gate was also divided in Haizhou. It was not actually developed. After all. The city's focus was on the east. The west was often neglected and there were many rural areas so it was often flirted with as a suburb. But the residents of this side of the station door did not have any feeling, not to mention that life basically did not change. And Guangfu province has always emphasized the same voice, the same breath. The eastern and western part of the city language faction has a slight difference. So although the station door is divided in the city of Haizhou, but to go to the city side is to go to the city of Haizhou, not to go to the city. This side really doesn't have any tall buildings. When I was a child, I seem to have come over here to Crocodile Island. Yi Xuan looked around. Just at this time, a voice came from beside him. Help me a little. Yi Xuan looked sideways and found that in Shi Yu had a little difficulty in getting off the locomotive. Her height was not too high, about 1 meter 6 or so, but it was still slightly difficult to maneuver the locomotive. Her ankles were twisting from side to side, and those small leather shoes were a bit of fun to look at. Wouldn't it be better to buy a smaller locomotive? Yi Xuan walked over to ensure Yu's side, then helped her park the car. I like the big ones. After getting off the bike, and Shi Yu stretched, then her body exaggeratedly bent backward with amazing flexibility. All right, let's go. And Shi Fu said, buy milk tea here? Yi Shuang pointed to the residential building in front of him. Most of the people here were local villagers. Apart from the supermarket selling daily necessities and some restaurants there was nothing else, right? Just walk. And Shi Yu walked outside. So Yi Shuang followed. The young girl led Yi Shuang around in seven directions and finally walked into an alleyway before wearing it to the very end. A dilapidated hut appeared in front of her. There was a signboard on top of the entrance of the room, but it was no longer possible to see what words were written on it. The sign was completely whitened, eroded beyond recognition by the years, and Shi Yu staggered and just walked straight in. Yi Xuan was puzzled, but he also followed in. Inside was a bit dim, and the nose also came with a smell of old mixed with concrete floor. After Yi Xuan saw the arrangement inside the house, he realized that this was a kiosk although it was said to be a kiosk, but in reality it didn't sell anything. It was just a simple cardboard box, which was loaded with scattered chili fries, and even dust was accumulated on top of it. And on one side of the counter, there were a few glass jars filled with cow ears, peanuts, melon seeds and the like. Behind the counter sat an old man, obviously summer, but wearing a cotton cap, the wrinkles on his face as deep as a knife. Granny, give me two cups of milk tea and some melon seeds and peanuts. And sure you stood in front of the counter, but spoke to that old man. A few seconds later, the old man opened her cloudy eyes and slowly got up. Her hands were a bit shaky, but she still took the plastic bag, then got some peanuts and melon seeds for Inshiyu, who at this time also walked to the side of the freezer and took out two cups of soggy milk tea. It was an old-fashioned refrigerator, and the drinks inside were soaked in ice water. How much? Two cups of milk tea. Peanuts. The old man mumbled, stretching out his dry, 
Thin five fingers, two dollars, and she you, however, took out a one hundred dollar bill, then stuffed it into a drawer. Okay, I put it here. Good, good. The old man hunched over and went back to sitting in that chair, and in Shiyu didn't say anything more, carrying the things and left the store. Seeing this, Yi Xuang on the side had no choice but to follow. Coming all the way here just to buy these things? Yi Xuang walked up to in Shiyu's side, then asked, Is it particularly delicious? And Shiyu then peeled two peanuts and handed them to Yi Xuang. Yi Xuang threw them into her mouth, but frowned the next moment. Old. Well, old, just like that old granny. And Shiyu led Yi Xuang to the corner of the village and sat down by a stone step. That old man lost his father at a young age, lost his husband and son in middle age, and even lost his grandchildren in his later years. And Shiyu opened the bottle of milk tea and drank it. Everyone in the village said that she was a broomstick, like an old object that is not treated everywhere. She is in the way everywhere. Yi Xuang also picked up the bottle of milk tea and found it expired. It's expired. Whom? And Shiyu, however, did not look very concerned as she sipped the milk tea and looked at the farmland not far away. Yi Shuang saw the scene, so he also took a sip. The flavor of inferior creamer. Snooze sweet talk about not much good. So all this way you came all the way here just to help her? Can't say. And sure you said. I just once promised her that I would collect her body for her when she died. But she should have forgotten about it too. After all, at that age, it's normal to have dementia. The air was silent for a moment. Yi Shuang suddenly felt that the milk tea in his hand seemed to get harder and harder to drink. He peeled a few more peanuts and ate them. Chewing them in his mouth in turn had no flavor. It was like gnawing on hardened pieces of mud. Uncle, do you believe in fate? And Shi Yu suddenly looked over. The pair of eyes under the bangs flashed with emotions that Yi Shuang could not read. Don't believe in it. I don't believe it either. And Shi Yu said. Her voice suddenly paused and she continued. But I realized that some people's destiny seems to be predestined and cannot be changed no matter how hard they try. But there are also people who need to struggle a bit before they realize that also it's really useless to try hard, and can't change the end that was predetermined a long time ago. At your age, what's the point of thinking so much? Yi Xuan laughed, then finished the milk tea in one gulp. Well, it's really hard to drink. Screwing on the lid, Yi Xuan put the empty bottle into a plastic bag. Sometimes, people don't have to live for the sake of a beautiful ending. Isn't it also nice to have a beautiful process? If the painful ending is really destined. Let the process be more wonderful. And Shi Yu looked at Yi Shuang and seemed to be thinking about something. Until a few minutes later, she stood up, going back. So soon? Do you want to spend the night over here? And Shi Yu lowered her head and looked at Yi Shuang. It's not impossible. Let's find a hotel to sleep in. That won't be necessary. And Shi Yu loaded up the milk tea and such again. Not drinking it? Well, it's a bit hard to drink. Yi Shuang, after returning to the locomotive's position, Yi Shuang looked at the young girl standing beside him wearing a helmet. So he asked, why don't you sit on it? Tired, don't want to drive. Might as well drive out in the first place. Yi Shuang sighed, and after receiving the key in the young girl's hand, he directly set the locomotive on fire. All right, sit up. Yi Shuang put on his helmet and just finished speaking, but he realized that there was no movement behind him. He turned around in confusion, only to find in Shiyu collapsed on the ground curled up, still with one hand covering her chest. Ensure you? Yi Shuang hurriedly bent down and picked up Ensure Fu as he gazed at the other party's appearance. Character, and Yu. Congenital heart disease. Fainting caused by rapid drop in blood pressure. About to wake up. Fainting caused by low blood pressure? Yi Shuang supported the young girl with one hand. And with the other hand, he took out his cell phone with the intention of dialing 120. But just at this time, and Yu opened her eyes. She reached out her hand and directly pressed on Yi Shuang's cell phone. Well. And Shi Yu looked around and then just stood up. She patted the dust on her skirt as if nothing had happened. After seeing Yi Shuang still half kneeling there, she moved her chin. Uncle, let's go. You. Yi Shuang stood up and said with a gentle frown, just fainted. Oh, oh what does that mean? It's serious all right? Yi Shuang said seriously. In case you hit something when you fainted, it could be fatal. And Shi Yu tucked her hands into the pockets of her school uniform. She raised her chin slightly but acted unperturbed. Um, got it. Yi Shuang, this guy, is he not clear about what his situation is? Or is she clear about it? You don't have to worry too much, I'm already used to it. The young girl's sentence of being used to it, but inexplicably made Yi Shuang have a feeling of being unable to speak. He stared at the girl in front of him, and after thinking about it, he asked, You know that you have a problem with your heart? And Shi Yu, however, did not answer Yi Shuang, but only said, So what if I know? As I said, a set fate. No matter how much one tries to struggle, one cannot change the ending. That old woman is like that. And I. 
Am like that too, she shrugged. Maybe I won't be able to open my eyes if I fall down one day. And Shi Yu's tone was relaxed but Yi Shuang's mood was heavy. But after observing the young girl for a while and seeing that she was still back to her original form for the time being, he had no choice but to repoint the car. 2. Let's go. I'll take you to the hospital. It's useless. I've been there many times when I was very young. Uncle. Let's go back first. Yi Shuang but silent. The locomotive was traveling very slowly. And the young girl behind him also hugged his waist. Obviously the wind was very strong. But Yi Shuang could clearly hear the young girl's heartbeat. The sound was not regular. As if it was like a bad octave box that had been wound up. And he didn't know when it would stop. But Yi Shuang did not have any way. He is not a repairman. Even to this situation can only watch. Uncle. Ha. Drive faster. You drive a 20 is not as good as driving a duck D. Yi Shuang. Back to the school. After parking the car Ang Shi Fish then staggered away. She is still the same hanging thing. But Yi Shuang looked at the back of the other party left. For a time but did not know what to say. Thinking of Ang Shi Ichiro's reaction at that time. It was obvious that he also knew that Ang Shi Fish had a problem with her heart. And it wasn't a small problem either. Forget it. Let's go pick up Yo-Yo first. Yi Shuang also once again appeared in the activity room of the Light Music Club. The sunlight outside the window was orange through gray, as if it was torn apart and spilled onto the ground. While Yi Shuang was at the doorway towards the classroom to look in, that long-haired young girl was still practicing her guitar. Her beautiful face was incomparably focused. The smooth piano sound seems to be able to sweep away the haze inside Yi Shuang. Also let the mood of this moment he slightly relaxed a lot. To be that the sound stops at the moment, he voiced out, Yu Yu Wei. When by Yu Yu Wei saw Yi Shuang, she put down her guitar and gave it back to Rin Rin who was beside her. And then she jogged over and jumped into Yi Shuang's arms. And at the moment when she was warm and soft in her arms, Yi Shuang felt that her cold hands and feet seemed to be warmed up quite a lot, as if she had hugged a soft steamed bun that had just come out of the oven. Teacher Yi, Jixia and the girls also walked over. Just in time. Today's club activity time is also over. Ah, uh, thanks. While Yi Shuang wrapped one hand around the young girl's waist, he did not forget to continue. The teacher in charge. My side is also done. You guys don't have to worry. Really? Jixia and the girls were a bit surprised. The most difficult thing actually succeeded? Well, let's talk about the details later. Yi Shuang said. After all, that ensure you guy promised. Good. Let's go home first. When Yi Shuang saw that Bai Yen Yu had been rubbing her neck with her face, she was a little helpless and knocked her on the head. This fellow really didn't care about other people's sight at all. On the way home, Bai Yu Yu E, who had just finished practicing her guitar, looked very happy as if she couldn't wait to return to her apartment to continue practicing. But soon, the young girl sensed a hint of something wrong. In the past, at this time, Yi Shuang would have asked her a lot about school or if anything had happened today, but today he was surprisingly silent. Bai Yu Yue turned her head to look. At this time Yi Shuang had his hands on the steering wheel, he was looking ahead, and those dark and deep eyes looked as if there was no difference from usual. Yi Shuang, Bai Yu Yue voiced out. Eh? Mood? Bad? Yi Xuan was a bit surprised by Bai Yu Yue's intuition, but he just smiled. No, just thinking about something, what do you want to eat tonight? Want to drink soup? Good, a large flat in a neighborhood. The short-haired girl reached out her hand and her fingerprint landed on the doorknob. Please enter. Accompanied by a mechanical female voice, the smart door in front of her sounded unlocked, and Shi Yu entered the door, noting that it was dim inside, just the bright light of a projection screen not far away, but the young girl took off her shoes as she saw it. Turning on the lights, the 300 square foot interior lit up, the young girl's eyes fell on a corner, where a person was holding a gamepad and looking at the monitor, seemingly intently. I'm back. Welcome back. What responded to Ensure Fu was just an unsalted voice. Ensure you walked to the side of the open kitchen, then opened the freezer and took a bottle of juice out of it and drank it. She drank it so fast that the orange juice even dropped down at a speed visible to the naked eye. Where have you been all night? The man who was playing a game asked. Went to play with uncle and did horny stuff. Unchi Fish replied lazily as she sipped her drink. The voice pressing the handle stopped. And after a few seconds the other person returned. Tell me about it. Not telling you. I don't want to hear it either. And sure you finished the juice in one gulp before saying. Well, it's still a good juice. I got dizzy again today. So I don't know how many more times I can drink it. Second time this month. Right? Well, it's getting more and more frequent. The other party continued. You might want to consider my suggestion. After all. I'm supposed to be just a non-existent person, and Shurfu sniffed, and simply tossed the bottle with a casual hand, and it landed in a parabolic line of precision into a trash can not far away from her. Shut up. Unstable blood supply to the heart. Insufficient blood supply to the brain triggers fainting. 
serious cardiac arrhythmia and even the risk of sudden death. After dinner, Yi Shuang sat on the sofa, holding a flat plate in his hand reading the knowledge of the relevant knowledge. What happened to Shi Yu this afternoon made Yi Shuang at this moment still a bit distracted. Indeed, even the other person's grandfather couldn't do anything, what can I do to help? Yi Shuang rubbed his brow and finally put the tablet to the side. With the ability of Shi Yu's family, finding a top expert was definitely not a problem. If even the top experts were unable to do anything, Yi Shuang naturally could not intervene at all. Yi Shuang sometimes fantasized that he was Superman, but reality reminded him of its cruelty every moment. Maybe the girl has also tried. Tried. Just time and again disappointment eventually put out the little flame in the other side of the heart to press out. Perhaps without expectation there would be no disappointment. So it was Ensure Yu who looked away. He, as a bystander, was instead emotionally affected. Well, gathering up his mood. Yi Shuang looked towards the floor-to-ceiling window position on his side, in front of the window with a soft carpet. Bai Yu Yue was sitting on her knees holding a guitar, her slender fingers plucking the strings, and on her side was lying a long-haired orange. A cat is an animal that is very sensitive to sound, and Bai Yu Yue's gentle strumming didn't scare away Ten. Zero zero zero. But on the contrary, it made the other party comfortably snore with a gurgling purr. Whenever he saw that young girl, Yi Shuang felt a lot calmer inside and his heart was filled with softness. He just watched quietly until Bai Yen Yu noticed the sight and looked up. Yi Shuang. She spoke. Hmm, I want to hear Yi Shuang play an instrument. Bai Yen Yu said. Yi Shuang froze for a moment, but then smiled and inquired. Why are you suddenly saying this? Why? Why? Bai Yu Yu thought after sniffing, then asked. Is liking a reason? Liking doesn't need a reason. Yi Shuang finished, got up and walked over to sit beside Bai Yu Yu After receiving the guitar in the young girl's arms, Yi Shuang tuned it slightly then played a song called Sunny Day, the little yellow flower of the story, floats from the year it was born. Yi Shuang hummed softly, so the young girl sat obediently and listened. And soon, she was immersed in Yi Shuang's song. After the end of the song, Yi Shuang met the pair of clear bottom-like eyes, and couldn't help but let out a laugh, slightly forgot the words, obviously used to be able to play and sing with his eyes closed. Well, after all, he is still older. Older. Aha. Yi Shuang looked at the side of the bayou he said. You are now in the third grade. There are four years even if it is a university graduation. And so on that time, I am also more than 30 years old middle-aged people. That is, the real meaning of the uncle. A few years later, how would his own life be? What would be the relationship with this young girl? By Yu Yue at this moment but shook her head. Even if it is a middle-aged uncle. But Yi Shuang. Is Yi Shuang oh. Is it? Yi Shuang reached out and gently pinched the young girl's face. He smiled. Thank you. Yi Shuang likes to pinch the face? Bai Yu Yue was pinched on her little face, and asked with a cute tilt of her head, because of the softness, but here is also soft, she pointed, Yi Shuang, not there, why, knock, the sound of a knock on the head rang out, Ding looking at the expressionless young girl who covered her head, Yi Shuang suddenly noticed his cell phone ringing, he picked it up and looked at it, and found that it was actually a message from Tang Koko, Tang Koko, good evening brother, Tang Koko still very rarely sent messages to Yi Shuang, after seeing this message, Yi Shuang pressed reply. Yi Shuang, good evening. The other party is in the middle of typing. Tang Kuku, brother are you still angry? Tang Kuku, peeking. JPG, angry? Yi Shuang, why do you ask? Tang Koko, limbs crouching. JPG, Tang Kuku, I was wrong. Yi Shuang didn't quite understand what Tang Koko meant, and then only after spending some time did he realize that she had misunderstood him, and after seeing that big string of messages, Yi Shuang, who was holding his cell phone at the moment, laughed slightly helplessly. I'm such a stingy man? Tang Koko heard that it was just a misunderstanding. At the moment, she was also very happy. She quickly knocked on the cell phone. Tang Kuku, brother, are you taking Yu Yue to the amusement park tomorrow? The tickets haven't been lost, right? Yi Shuang, well, it's not lost. Keep it well. Tang Kuku, that's good. That's good. He he, I'm going to take a bath. Subsequently, Tang Koko stopped replying to messages. Yi Shuang put down his cell phone and noticed the young girl beside him who was sizing herself up with a curious gaze. So he said out loud, Tomorrow we'll go to the amusement park to play. Amusement park. Right. Yi Shuang said, Want to go? Bai Yu Yu eh? However, didn't have much of a clear concept of an amusement park and just nodded. Wherever Yi Shuang goes, I'll go. You should like it. Yi Shuang smiled. A girl of this age should not be able to refuse. The next day, early in the morning, Yi Shuang woke up early. After pushing away the octopus like by Yu Yue, he washed up and went to the kitchen and put on his apron. When the young girl had not yet gotten up, 
Yi Shuang put a piece of butter into the heated pan, and after it melted, he put slices of bread on it, he planned to make some sandwiches for breakfast, and then take the rest to the amusement park to eat. Although the amusement park also has a restaurant, but both the taste and the price are first-class lousy, belonging to the rip-off of disposable tourists. Compared to this, it is better to bring their own food over there. I heard that some international famous amusement parks even in order to take care of the park's catering industry will also be in the tourists to enter the park bag search, so as to avoid bringing their own food, can only say that the customer is not a person. Nonetheless, there are still a lot of tourists inside, so it can only be said that such things as self-adaptation are really very powerful. Well, it's almost time, put away the clothes again. Yi Xuan was almost like a two-line operation in general. After getting the sandwiches done, he immediately walked to the dryer to remove and fold the clothes inside one by one. Meow and ei. 10,000. If you dare to scratch the clothes, I'll cut your beard oh. Yi Xuang noticed 10,000 who wanted to stretch out his claws to use the clothes as a cat scratching board. He immediately said, 10,000 meowed and obediently didn't move. Hmm, just at this time, Yi Xuang noticed that the young girl's school uniform tie was rotten. The original silk-like material of the tie was full of lint and even wrinkled beyond recognition. Where can I buy it? Yi Shuang originally wanted to mend it, but it was obvious that it could no longer be saved. Thinking back to those tattered underwear the young girl once had, although Tang Koko brought her to buy some later, Yi Shuang couldn't help but wonder if he should take her to buy some more clothes. Well, the time is still early, and it's still the weekend there's no rush. Yi Shuang took the tie and took another look at the second floor side. There was not the slightest sign of a certain young girl getting up. In that case, as if thinking of something, Yi Shuang put down the tie in his hand and walked over to a side cabinet, he rummaged around for a bit, then took out a three-fifths long electric sewing machine and a block of beige fabric, didn't think I could really use it one day. The electric sewing machine was bought after the move. Online shopping was only two or three hundred dollars. At first it was Yi Shuang's intention to use it to make that kind of small cat clothes for ten, zero zero zero, although it was just a small toy bought on a whim, but didn't think that it could be put to use now. Following the original pattern should be fine. Yi Shuang used scissors to cut down the fabric, using material that was probably only about 30 centimeters. The tie for the Silver Mountain Academy uniform was that very standard JK uniform tie, shaped like an upside-down token, and it was easy to make, only requiring two pieces of the same fabric to be sewn together again. Da -da -da -da, the rhythmic sound of the electric sewing machine rang out, and Yi Shuang sewed the cut two pieces of beige fabric together. Then came the long strip of elastic. At the moment the morning light from the floor-to-ceiling window was spreading on Yi Shuang's serious side face, and the only sounds in the quiet apartment were the crisp tinkling of wind chimes swaying slightly and the clicking of the sewing machine. Hmm, not bad. Soon, Yi Shuang had finished the finished product, a beige school uniform tie. Item, hand-sewn tie. Homemade tie due to too much leisure. Maybe you can sew an extra pair of panties for the young girl? Yi Shuang. Well, he inquired of 10,000, who was lying on the table. The cat stretched out his paw and touched the tie before yawning with his mouth wide open before his body lay down asleep. How do you sleep at your age? Get up and re-sleep. However, after Yi Xuan looked at it for a while, he also felt that this solid color tie was slightly monotonous. After he thought about it, he flipped out the needle and thread on the side. Sip it with his saliva, and after threading the eye of the needle, Yi Xuan sat on the sofa and sewed a picacha pattern to the tie. Well, not bad. Yi Xuan put the tie together with Bai Yuyi's uniform and compared them finally nodding with satisfaction. After folding the clothes, Yi Shuang carried them back to the second floor and then put them in the closet. It so happened that there was a commotion coming from behind her, and Yi Shuang turned her head to look, Bai Yuyue was wearing a dumbfounded expression, as she ducks sat on the bed, clearly in a state of not having woken up, until she saw Yi Shuang who was standing in front of the closet not far away. Only then did she stretch out her hands. Hug, gotta get up, we're leaving for the amusement park later. Yi Shuang just sat on the edge of the bed. And as a result, Bai Yuyue buried her face in his lap and didn't move a muscle. Even her hand reached out and covered herself with the quilt. Yi Shuang. There was no other way. Yi Shuang also had no choice but to pinch the other party's face with one hand and play with it, so that she could capriciously squint a little more. Time passed and 20 minutes passed before Bai Yenyu slowly got up and went to wash up. Yi Shuang. What clothes to wear? When Yi Shuang saw Bai Yuyi again, he only saw the young girl walking over in her underwear holding her clothes and inquired what he was going to wear. That black t-shirt and jean shorts are convenient for going to play. And also, don't run out naked like this. Yi Shuang moved his eyes away and said, wearing clothes, underwear doesn't count as clothes. Soon, Bai Yu Yue also changed clothes. I have to say that Yi Shuang's choice is still excellent. Black t-shirt loose and suitable for action. Denim shorts under the snow white long legs straight eye-catching. 
Such a body to buy Yuyue added a unique belonging to the age of her youth and vitality. It always feels like something is missing. Yi Shuang stroked his chin, suddenly as if he thought of something, took out a baseball cap from a side cabinet, and then put it on the young girl's head. Perfect. Street style. Question mark. The young girl held the cap on her head and blinked her beautiful eyes. Yi Shuang also changed into his own clothes, the same black t-shirt with jeans. After all, they were bought together, and wearing them like this had a, well, father-daughter outfit? Yi Shuang opened the floor mirror, looking at the two people style convergence dress, but there is a different feeling. Couple's clothes, Bai Yu Yuyue said. Yi Shuang looked at her and opened her mouth to ask, where did you learn that word? Bai Yu Yuyue looked up, the aunt who sells clothes. Okay, bringing sandwiches and water. Yi Shuang led the young girl out. Today's weather is good. After Yi Shuang drove the car out of the garage, through the car window to the sky is a wolf blue. Obviously there is no wind blowing, but it gives people a feeling of comfort. A day off paired with a sunny day can only be described as a killer. Just looking at it puts you in a good mood. People are always easily influenced, whether by others or by the environment. The amusement park that Coco gave the tickets to has a short distance from the apartment. The location is on the island, so you need to take the highway first and then go on the bridge to go there of course. If it's any other island, you may need to take a boat. Yi Shuang drove on the highway. His foot on the gas pedal couldn't help but use a few more points of force, unintentionally sweeping a glance at his side. Yi Shuang found Bai Yenyu sitting on the passenger side brushing a short video. What are watching? Amusement park. Raiders. The young girl said, her small face a little serious. Learn to take Yi Shuang to play. Yi Shuang sniffed and couldn't help but smile. Really? Then at that time we'll rely on you to take me to play. Good. Perhaps not understanding the flirtation in Yi Shuang's tone, Bai Yen Yu really studied the knowledge of the amusement park tips inside very seriously. Yi Shuang retracted his sight and smiled as he continued to drive. About an hour later, the vehicle just got off the highway. Bai Yu Yu saw the sea outside the car window. She put one hand on the car glass. Yi Shuang, the sea. Today's weather is good, and the sea looks good. Yi Shuang also said. He couldn't help but think back to the time when he took Bai Yu to pick up seashells some time ago, in fact. If you really want to see that kind of turquoise blue ocean, just take a boat to a slightly farther away island. In the future, maybe they could take this child on a boat ride. Finally, Yi Shuang and their destination arrived. Not bad for a weekend. It's really crowded. When they were ready to enter the park, they realized that there were actually quite a few vehicles lined up in front of them, obviously just coming over to play. But fortunately, the queue was not long, and after finding a parking spot, Yi Shuang took the ticket and brought by Yu Yue to the ticket gate. The ticket checking staff was actually a guy wearing a Pikachu doll outfit. Her body was fat and chubby, and her plastic eyes were flashing with a weird light. Speaking of which, that Coco guy did say that this amusement park is linked with Pokemon. Yi Xuan looked at the staff wearing doll outfits in front of him, but could not help but say. After checking the tickets, Yi Xuan brought by Yu Yue to pass by the Pikachu, but that Pikachu suddenly turned around and slapped Yi Xuan's foot directly. Yi Xuan, question mark, what kind of service is this? Why did you slap my butt? Yi Shuang looked at the large yellow-haired rat in front of him and couldn't help but ask. Skin. And this Pikachu doll suit in front of him just tilted his body and didn't explain too much. Could it be some special play? Just when Yi Shuang thought so in his heart, the other party had already staggered away. That unsteady look of gravity as if he might fall on the ground at any time. Yi Shuang. Forget it. It's probably some kind of special welcome. Although it's weird. Yi Shuang was also talking to the long-haired girl beside her at the moment and Bai Yu Yue nodded her head after hearing that. Oh, the amusement park had a lot of items. The first thing that caught her eye was the roller coaster, the whistling car accompanied by the screams of the passengers as they tore their hearts out, which at the moment completely attracted Bai Yu Yue, who lifted her chin to look at it and seemed to be very interested in the appearance. Want to play? Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile slightly. The young girl nodded. Want to try? Let's go. Line up over here. Yi Shuang brought the young girl, and the two of them walked to the back of the roller coaster line. There were quite a few people in line right now, but as batch after batch went in, it was only about 10 minutes of waiting time. Because the amusement park was co-branded with the Pokemon series, even the roller coaster was in the shape of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, blue in color, and it was made with great care. When it was Yi Shuang's turn for them to go in, they just happened to be at the very front of the faucet, and Yi Shuang sat in the very center, with Bai Yu Yue on his left, and a passerby girl on his right. Tyrannosaurus Rex is about to depart. Please hold the handrail tightly. The loudspeaker female voice rang out. In addition to the safety devices fastened on each person, it was also necessary to hold onto the handrail for added safety. 
Yi Shuang did hear that recently there was a similar facility in an amusement park because of a machine malfunction that resulted in hanging the passengers upside down in midair for several hours. But in the end, the good thing was that there was no danger. If the safety devices were unreliable, I am afraid that the upside down passengers would be like dumplings falling from the sky in a steady stream. Just as Yi Shuang was thinking like this, he suddenly cast his gaze to the young girl beside him. At this moment Bai Yan Yu was stroking the safety device with her hand, seemingly feeling a hint of curiosity. Yu Yu eh, if you are scared later, just grab my hand, Yi Shuang said, spreading his palm. Seeing this, the young girl put her own palm which was one inch smaller in size in the palm of Yi Shuang's hand, and after gently holding it, Yi Shuang was able to feel a coldness and softness. Just at this time, the roller coaster also started. It started slowly, advancing forward section by section. Eh? Yi Xuan looked at it and even wondered if he was sitting on the wrong one. Afterwards, the body began to climb upwards, still at a very slow speed. And it was only after Yi Xuan saw the near vertical general drop in front of him that he realized the seriousness of the matter. In the next second, the Tyrannosaurus Rex body that reached the apex made a direct vertical dive. Grippy? It was immediately followed by three large pirouettes, accompanied by a scream from the passengers. At this moment even Yi Xuang felt that he couldn't breathe fast enough. He had to pinch by Yu Yu's small hand with the intention of comforting it, but he didn't expect that the young girl was sitting there with no reaction, and an expressionless small face was quietly looking ahead. So fierce? After a few minutes, Yi Xuang finally came down. He was holding onto a big tree on the side, his other hand holding his waist. Old old old. Yi Xuang sighed in his heart. Then he turned back and noticed that Bai Yu Yu was still looking at that roller coaster. What's wrong? Compared to Yi Shuang's constipated general appearance, she pointed instead. Yi Shuang, still wants to play. Still want to play? Well, Bai Yu Yu tapped her chin, perhaps seeing that Yi Shuang didn't immediately agree with herself. She tilted her head adorably. Can. Yi Shuang only felt like his eyes were flashed by something cute. He patted the young girl's head. Go. Another round came down. Yi Shuang propped his hands on the tree his forehead filled with false sweat, it's bad, kind of want to vomit, why is this roller coaster so fierce, even if there is a Tyrannosaurus Rex in reality, riding a climbing waterfall is not that scary, right, at this moment, beside Bai Yan Yu was still looking like nothing, but when she saw this appearance of Yi Shuang, she reached out and pulled the corner of her coat, Yi Shuang, can't do it anymore, when Yi Shuang heard this, his whole person suddenly branched out, he stood up, let's go, let it see the power of an adult, Last round. Ding. Yi Shuang's head drooped and leaned against the bench. His whole body seemed to have lost its color as if it was a black and white cartoon. And he mumbled something about men not being able to not be able to do it. Crickets a roller coaster or something. Burned out. Yi double. All right. Probably. Yi Shuang looked at the appearance of the young girl in front of him who was concerned about himself. He also felt slightly ashamed of his appearance. I'm sorry for letting you see the bad appearance. Why are you sorry? Bai Yu Yu asked for not being able to play well with you. After hearing Yi Shuang say that, Bai Yu Yu A however shook her head. Then she stretched out her hands and hugged Yi Shuang. It was fun to play. Yi Shuang, don't apologize. It was really fun. Feeling the warmth and refreshing aroma in front of him, Yi Shuang's body gradually relaxed, and he could not help but smile and shake his head. If this child is happy, then it would be worth it. After relieving themselves from the first program, the two noticed the ice cream cart not far away. There were quite a few children with their parents gathered over there. And the signboard read, Fire Breathing Dragon Ice Cream. The Tyrannosaurus Rex roller coaster was understandable. But how did a fire breathing dragon and ice cream come together? You might as well have a good year bungee jump. It doesn't fly anyway. Want to eat? Seeing by Yu Yu's fluttering dorky hair, Yi Shuang smiled and said, Let's go. Squeezed into the ice cream truck was a staff member wearing a Pikachu doll suit. And upon seeing Yi Shuang, he waved his little hand probably asking what he wanted. Pie. The flavors are quite a lot. It's this price. Three flavors actually sell me 50. Yi Shuang looked at the flavors on the top. Strawberry, pineapple, durian, chocolate, matcha. You you eh? Uh, what flavor do you want to eat? You can choose three. He asked the young girl beside him. By you you uh, seemed to be caught in a tangle as well. And from her expression it was easy to tell that she seemed to want all of them. Hello, can I have all of them? Yi Shuang asked. Stacking ice cream balls was a skilled job. Yi Shuang had thought that the other party would refuse. Who knew that the staff member in the doll's clothes nodded or rather the whole body moved forward. And then she picked up the ice cream hollow rolls on the side, as well as a small spatula. One, two, three. Eventually six ice cream balls were piled up. Something. Bai Yu Yue couldn't help but look it up and down even after she took it. If it melts, 
it will definitely fall off, right? Yi Shuang said. At this time, the young girl also handed over the ice cream, only to see that the topmost ball had been nibbled a little, and there was a teeth mark on it. Yi Shuang, delicious. Yi Shuang took a bite, cold and sweet, but after the next second he realized if this was indirectly kissing, but at this moment Bai Yen Yu continued to eat the ice cream, like a small hamster without any special reaction. Yi Shuang, give. The young girl once again handed over the ice cream. You eat, Yi Shuang said. As if he had discovered something, he took out a pack of paper towels from his own small backpack, and after pulling out one, he slightly bent down. Yi Shuang cupped the young girl's small face with one hand, and with the other hand, he tenderly helped her wipe the ice cream that was stained on the corners of her mouth clean. And, eat carefully, your mouth is full of ice cream, it will be sticky later. Oh, eating to almost up and down. Yi Shuang opened the free paper map in his hand. What do you want to play next? I'll take Yi Shuang to play. Bai Yu Yue nibbled the ice cream clean. Even the egg roll cone underneath did not let go. After eating, she took out her own cell phone. Seems to have some kind of strategy. Yi Shuang smiled. Okay, you take me to play. Bai Yen Yu held Yi Shuang's hand. Then she led Yi Shuang to turn left and right, and finally arrived in front of a strange looking building. This was one of the more remote corners of the amusement park. The building in front of her was ragged and cool like a hospital. It probably had about three or four floors. The bleak white walls seeped with blood red color. And there was also moss on it. Gung Ghost Hospital. A haunted house. Yi Shuang looked at Bai Yen Yu beside him. Are you sure you want to play this? Bai Yu Lu nodded seriously. Because the guide was written in such a way. It said that going to a haunted house would have a drawbridge effect. Thus prompting the two to become closer. Although the young girl didn't quite understand what the drawbridge effect was. She did understand the word intimacy. Let's go then. Yi Shuang wasn't afraid of this, since Bai Yu Yue said she wanted to play, then he definitely wouldn't refuse. How was it better than a roller coaster? The staff member was a guy in a Genji doll costume. He opened his mouth and said, Genji Eye Hospital is a horror program with a limited time challenge. After visitors go in there will be a series of decryption tasks. If visitors can decrypt and obtain treasures to bring out within the time limit, there will be extra prizes given out. During the period, if it feels too scary, it is possible to come out early. Yi Shuang saw this and it created some interest. How long is the time limit? Half an hour. Good. Then play. The staff brought Yi Shuang and Bai Yu Yue to the entrance, and it so happened that at this time, a couple walked out with pale faces. Holy shit. This is too scary. Right? It's simply not human. They muttered. And when they saw Yi Shuang and the others about to go in, they immediately revealed a look of pity, as if they knew what they were going to experience later. The two players are going to enter separately from the two entrances. At this time, the staff member walking in front said, Separate? Yes, you will converge on your way to solving the puzzle, but you are separated at the beginning. Hearing the staff say this, Yi Xuan looked at Bai Yu Yu beside him. Is that okay? Bai Yan Yu gently nodded. Good. Afterward, the two separated. Just go in from here. Here's the flashlight. Enjoy your game. The staff also handed over the prop, an ordinary flashlight. At this time, the interior of the hospital was dim, and the floor was also covered with dark red blood stains. Yi Shuang turned on the flashlight and realized that everywhere was broken and tattered, and there were some strange human figures in white coats collapsed on the ground. The depressing atmosphere, dim environment, and only being able to explore with a flashlight gave Yi Shuang the illusion that he was playing Resident Evil. When Yi Shuang passed by this side of the nurse's service point, he found a brand new piece of paper on the desktop, which looked a bit out of place with the tattered surroundings. He picked it up. Please find the key to the second floor. Watch out for them. Emergency. Internal medicine. Surgery. Yi Shuang shined his flashlight on those sections. According to the paper's reminder, it meant that he needed to go to those classrooms to find the key, and to be careful of the staff pretending to be ghosts. In fact, it is not difficult. It is this environment is indeed creepy. It is estimated that it can be ranked in the province. But, what does any of this have to do with Genji? You're really not listing this as a link? However, if you think about it, if the haunted house is a hard fusion of Pokemon, it's not that scary on the contrary, and it's also thankless. Yi Xuan looked around, but in his heart, he was thinking about how things were going on by Yu Yu's side. That niece, would she be scared? At this time, on the other side, Bai Yen Yu had similarly found the piece of paper, and just like Yi Xuan, she was trying to find a key to head to the second floor. Key, to rendezvous with Yi Xuan. Bai Yu Yue took a flashlight and began to look for it in various sections in which there was no lack of some particularly horrible props and small organs, especially since only flashlights could be used, and the horror index climbed straight up in the dimly lit environment. However, 
the young girl did not have any horror emotions, or rather she was used to dark environments, because the attic whereby Yu Yue had lived before was also a ragged and lifeless appearance. After seeing by Yu Yue bamming and rummaging for something over in the section, not even a single scream, the staff hiding behind the monitor looked at each other in dismay. What's going on? We feel horrible even playing with ourselves. This woman didn't react at all? Gutsy. Right. Some tourists' guts are naturally bigger. Last time, there wasn't a what anchor, but also scared us in turn. Then she's a little girl. It shouldn't be so bad, right? What are you afraid of? The first floor is simpler, but to the key there can be scary. The other staff member said with a smile, as if she couldn't wait to see Bai Yuyue's screaming appearance. And at this moment, Bai Yenyu also walked into the last section, the same place with the key. Here, apart from the damaged instruments, there was still a hospital bed left, and under that dim light, there seemed to be something covered with a white cloth on the hospital bed. Just through the raised shape of the white cloth, there seemed to be a corpse lying on it, and the corpse had a greenish-purple hand sticking out of the white cloth, clutching a key inside. Key, Bai Yenyu saw that it was a key and then walked up quickly. She stretched out her hand, just about to touch the key at the moment. The zombie played by the staff under the white cloth violently arise to issue a low roar. Ha! To replace others, not to mention whether they have the courage to get the key, to really get the key, to see the corpse covered under the white cloth violently rose, it is estimated that they can also be scared half dead, but the staff soon froze, because he no matter how to yell, the young girl in front of him still has no reaction, just that pair of eyes looked at the key in his hand, and said softly, can, you give me the key, ah, the staff froze for a moment and subconsciously handed it over, oh, here, thanks, after Bai Yu Yue received the key, she turned around and left. Before leaving, she also thoughtfully helped him close the door. Staff, whom, you're so disrespectful to ghosts? Yi Shuang stretched out his hand and also pushed open the door of a section. It was nearly identical to the arrangement on Bai Yin Yu's side, both with a hospital bed covered with a white cloth, and a key cupped in his outstretched hand. The key. Yi Shuang shone his flashlight at the moment, and naturally found the key that was pinched by the corpse. He did not extend his hand to touch it but only circled around the hospital bed and touched his chin. Well, if we follow the traditional routine, the zombie under the white cloth will get up and scare me, and then there should be a chase as well, right? At this time the staff under the white cloth. You talk about it. Are you still playing? Yi Shuang stretched out his hand to touch the key, and the moment it reached his hand, that staff member still sat up violently according to the script, and then let out a roar. Shrimp, shrimp, it's a bit smelly. Brother have you brushed your teeth today? Yi Xuan was not startled, and asked with a look of surprise and a smile. Eh? I brushed ah. The staff subconsciously sniffed towards their palms with a little haze, but did not smell a foul odor. When he looked up, the Yi Xuang in front of him had already disappeared. Staff. Ah. At this time, Yi Xuang also came to the door heading to the second floor, and after unlocking the door with the key in his hand, the staff member also lunged over with a low growl as an afterthought. Okay. Yi Shuang said and counter buttoned the door. After arriving on the second floor, the environment here was still dilapidated, except that there was still a faint light flickering in the distance, and the words, morgue, were vaguely written. Which hospital's morgue is on the second floor? After Yi Shuang spat out the setting of this haunted house, he searched slightly at the doorway of the second floor, and also quickly found a brand new piece of paper exactly the same as the first floor, looking for the door card to head to the third floor to meet up with his partner. Attention! The morgue is forbidden to enter. So, the door card is in the morgue? Yi Shuang almost guessed the setup. Just the entrance to the morgue that was shrouded in darkness in the distance. Just looking at it indeed did not have any desire to go in. But, the third floor will be able to meet with the language of the ghost. Let's go. Yi Shuang went all the way to the morgue with a flashlight. But the door of the room on the side would come from time to time with slapping sounds and roars. Which had a different kind of oppressive feeling. As if something would rush out at any time. It's no wonder that the couple's faces went white. Just a flashlight groping like that. Not many people can bear it, right? Just as Yi Xuan was thinking like this, he also walked to the entrance of the morgue at this moment. There was an electronic lock at the entrance. Please enter the two-digit password. Hint, the password might be written in one of the rooms. Of course, you can also blindly guess one from zero one. Two digits. Blind? It would be better to just blindly guess one. Just when Yi Xuan was thinking like this, he only saw that the row of rooms behind him suddenly had a few doors violently pushed open. Several zombies shrouded in shadows stepped out and were leaning over with their hands outstretched in an encircling stance. Roar. Thud. Don't say. It's really quite scary. Yi Shuang's mouth twitched. This electronic lock in front of him to be masked a password. But those zombies behind him are slowly approaching. You this haunted house funding is really much. 
please so many zombies over. Afterwards, Yi Xuan gazed at the electronic lock in front of him. Item, electronic lock. According to the traces on the button, the password might be, 03? After seeing it, Yi Xuan pressed it and realized that the password was wrong. Then Yi Xuan, as if he understood something, reached out and pressed 30 again, and the lock of the morgue opened. And after those zombies behind them saw the door lock being opened, they all hissed and ran over, seemingly to pounce on Yi Xuan. After Yi Xuan opened the door, he immediately walked in and unlocked it. Phew, a bit exciting. The zombies behind them were still flapping through the door. Although they knew that it was the staff pretending to be them, they would still feel thrilled, just like playing a horror game or watching a horror movie. Knowing that those things wouldn't rush out of the screen, they would be scared just the same when they were playing or watching the movie. Door card. Yi Xuan looked around. The morgue was not big. There were five beds placed inside, all covered with white cloth. Only a pair of miserable white and bruised paws were exposed. That is to say, one by one needs to be lifted? A little something. I hope that Yu Yue won't be scared. Yi Xuan thought to himself, Hey, why did you just give the key to that little girl? It's also too unprofessional, right? And you too. You went to smell your palm when people lied about your bad breath. What kind of zombie would worry about their bad breath? On the backstage side of the haunted house, after seeing that both Yi Xuan and Bai Yu Yue entered the second floor with unrivaled smoothness, the person in charge looked at the monitor while letting the staff continue to go to the setup. The boys are already in the morgue. What about the girl's side? The girl's side just went up. Came the reply from the intercom. Good. That guy should have quite a lot of guts. The least you can do is scare the girl into tears first. Understood. At this time, Bai Yu Yue also arrived on the second floor. She first looked around and quickly found the piece of paper as well. Don't go to the morgue. After reading the paper, Bai Yen Yu gently nodded her head in an understanding manner and then began to search the other rooms. There were some staff members pretending to be corpses in the rooms, only they wouldn't move yet, and needed to wait for the tourists to start entering the electronic lock codes before going all out. There were quite a few rooms here, but Bai Yen Yu couldn't find any valuable clues after searching around. She did get a strange number. Though, 06, where to go? Morgue, can't go. Bai Yu Yu still remembered the hint on the paper, which said the morgue is forbidden to enter. Then as if she thought of something, she walked into a side room. On the chair in this room sat a staff member who was pretending to be a zombie. Of course at this moment there would be no reaction. He was just sitting there, not moving at all. But this staff member soon realized that something was wrong, because he found that Bai Yenyu was actually squatting in front of himself, just hugging his knees and looking up at his little face. Staff member, Bai Yu Yue didn't say anything either, just looked at him so quietly. Do you know where I'm going? Finally, when the staff member could barely maintain his posture, Bai Yu Yue opened her mouth to inquire. The staff naturally wouldn't give any response, and after seeing the other party ignoring him, Bai Yen Yu had no choice but to walk to another room. In the other room, there was a zombie sitting on the ground with its back against the corner. Bai Yu Yue also squatted in front of her and looked with a pair of beautiful eyes. Staff, hello, do you know how to get to? Bai Yu Yue asked. Under the torture of Bai Yu Yue's eye gaze, there was finally a zombie who couldn't bear the reminder and pointed to the morgue not far away. That. But, the morgue can't go, can go, but, go, the staff was almost speechless, why was this girl so shafted, oh, Bai Yu Yue stood up and finally made her way to the entrance of the morgue, looking at the numbers to be entered into the password, the young girl took out another slip of paper that she had just turned over, 06, and seemed to understand what was going on, just at this time, those staff can finally come out, just now there are several of them by Bai Yen Yu like this has been staring at, long ago cannot wait to ruthlessly scared to cry her, Roar roar roar, 06, Bai Yu Yu e pressed the electronic lock, but it prompted the wrong password, wrong, she tried several more times, and it still didn't work quite right, and by this time the zombies behind her had already wrapped over, and three or four of them stood behind Bai Yu Yu e, all of them wearing horrifying makeup and looking like they wanted to watch her nervously decrypt the code, but they were all disappointed, Bai Yu Yu e didn't look nervous at all, still still entering the password without slowing down, it doesn't work. Bai Yu Yi entered the password once more, and after realizing the error, she had to turn her head to a closer walker and ask, the lock, it's broken, broken, that zombie froze for a moment and walked up, then took the note in Bai Yu Yue's hand, but he did just see that Bai Yu Yue clearly had the answer note but still entered it half a day, so maybe it really was broken, he pressed, 06, the password was wrong, the zombie entered it again, and the result was still wrong, it seems really broken, he looked to his colleagues beside him, and at this time, a few others also came forward, but a female walker immediately said, is it taken the other way around? It should be 90, right? 
the lock shouldn't be broken. The first few guests can use it. It's possible. This zombie entered 90, and the next second, the door opened. Sure enough it's not broken. I told you. While several zombies were talking, Bai Yuyua had already peacefully walked into the morgue, and incidentally unlocked the door. Seeing the tightly closed door, several staff members looked at each other. That said, why are we helping her unlock it? Mother Hana, Bai Yuyua quickly got the room card as well, as she lifted all of a white cloth, so much so that the zombie staff lying inside was a bit confused, and even felt cool. Whose ministry is this? Surprisingly, they were so brave. Time passed. When the young girl came to the third floor, she finally met Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang. Bai Yenyu jumped into Yi Shuang's arms. Wasn't it scared? Yi Shuang had actually just come up and saw a familiar figure crashing into his arms. He cried and laughed a little. This child must have been scared to death. After all, those setups, as well as those three zombies in the morgue surrounded together, the sense of fear was too strong. Yi Shuang himself, an adult, felt frightened. Still playing? Yi Shuang asked. If it feels scary, we can give up. Bai Yenyu, however, said, it's fine, growing up. Yi Shuang lamented in his heart, and then the two of them faced the third level of decryption together. Finally, within half an hour, Yi Shuang brought Bai Yu Yue and managed to get the so-called treasure, a purple elf ball. Congratulations on successfully passing the challenge and still clearing the level within half an hour. The staff member wearing a Genji doll suit walked over and took the elf ball from Yi Shuang's hand. With that, he handed over the gift. This is the reward for clearing the level. Yi Shuang glanced at it and realized that it was a pair of tickets as well as a Genji doll. Tickets? Yi Shuang froze for a moment after receiving it. Moreover, this ticket Yi Shuang was familiar with. It was a round-trip boat ticket to Bobo Island. Bobo Island was the small island near Haiju City that needed to be taken by boat to get there. Yi Shuang had just driven to the amusement park and was still thinking about whether to take Yu Yue to see the Bluer Sea again. But as a result, he had now gotten such a boat ticket. Make time to go. That's right. Because the guest is the first three visitors to pass the level in the specified time since this linked haunted house was launched, so this is an extra bonus, the staff said with a smile. Otherwise, it's usually just a hand-me-down. After Yi Shuang saw this, she couldn't help but say, you guys are conscientious. This ticket plus a hand puppet of this quality. It was estimated that it was already back to the principal of the amusement park ticket. All right, may I ask how you guys feel about this experience? The staff also did an amusement survey. It's very real. Very good, Yi Shuang said. Indeed, this is one of the few most exciting haunted houses he has played. I can recommend it to others next time. Okay, thanks. The staff member wrote it down and then also asked this pretty girl beside him. Sister, do you think it's fun? Bai Yu Yue gently nodded. Fun, it's full of good people. Just playful. Ha, huh? the staff wrote, suddenly feeling where there is a strange smell. All good people? Forget it, no matter. Soon, Yi Shuang also left with Bai Yu Yue. The haunted house tour experience was quite good, but the time now was almost noon. Today's sun was not small, so finding a lawn to eat lunch was definitely not too good. Yi Shuang thought about it and finally took the young girl to the rest area. Rest area at this time there are already quite a lot of people. From the appearance of a bit like the school dining hall, of course, here also provide food around there are also a lot of high class look a lot of restaurants, but Yi Shuang did not bring by Yu Yue to go. It wasn't about the price either. It was just purely unpalatable. Yi Shuang had come to the amusement park quite a few times, but he had not once eaten at a restaurant that tasted okay, almost always stepping on pits. After taking the sandwiches out, Yi Shuang opened a plastic box with vegetables and fruits, and after tearing open and pouring in the prepared salsa, he placed the lunch in front of the young girl's eyes one by one. Eat it. Little tomato. Bai Yu Yue looked at the reddish saint fruit in the preservation box. Her beautiful eyes looked over. Although she did not say anything, Yi Shuang also understood what she meant didn't want to eat it, can't be picky, Yi Shuang said slowly, sour, although Bai Yen Yu had a large meal, she didn't seem to like sour things too much, especially melons and fruits, nutritious, Yi Shuang said, inserted that saint fruit with a fork and sent it to the front of the young girl's lips, eat it, Bai Yu Yu's head shook like a rattle, if you don't eat, then I won't take you to continue playing, after Yi Shuang finished speaking, Bai Yu Yu's eyes were full of struggle, but in the end, she opened her mouth and ate it, why isn't your mouth moving? Um um, Bai Yuelu chewed. Yi Shuang expressionlessly looked at the young girl's bulging cheeks, and knocked up a hand knife. Hamster? You, don't hide the sage fruit in your mouth and chew the air. Hmm, not bad. After seeing Bai Yuelu eat the whole box of salad, Yi Shuang then revealed a satisfied expression. How does the virgin fruit taste? Bai Yin Yu's eyes fluttered a little, her eyes slowly looked away, but she still whispered, delicious. 
Yi Shuang smiled. Lunchtime was over, and it was almost time to play other programs. There were a lot of rides over here, and since it was by Yen Yu who led Yi Shuang to play, a round was considered enjoyable. Let's go to the souvenir store for a while, Yi Shuang asked. Dolphins, there are no dolphins here, Yi Shuang said. After all, at least it is also linked with Pokemon. This side of the souvenir store should sell all about Pokemon peripheral is right. After leading the young girl inside, Bai Yu Yu instantly fell in love with a pillow. Seal ball 99 yen. This one. Want. Bai Yu Alu said as she reached out and pulled Yi Shuang's sleeve. This? Yi Shuang asked as he picked up that pillow. Aha. Yi Shuang said. Good. Then as if he thought of something, he continued. I'll deposit that money together into the card your mother gave you. Previously. He was worried that Bai Yu might be cheated out of her money because she was ignorant. Plus she didn't have a bank card. So Yi Shuang deposited that money into her own card. And now that she had the card that Aunt Xian had given her, even if she suddenly had a large amount of money in, she wouldn't have been investigated. And Bai Yu Yue wouldn't be cheated so easily now. Deposit into the card? Bai Yu Yue, however, looked up at Yi Shuang. Uh, yeah. Yi Shuang, are you leaving? Bai Yen Yu asked. Why do you ask? Yi Shuang froze for a moment. I don't know. The young girl lowered her eyes. I don't want this money. Yi Shuang, gave me enough to spend. Yi Shuang, don't leave okay? The money is all for you. Yi Shuang also did not think that these words of his would touch the sensitive part of the young girl. He stretched out his hand. Gently pinched the other party's soft face. Good. I will not leave. Did not I say it? I will wait for you to grow up. Bai Yu Yu stretched out her hand and just hugged Yi Shuang burying her face without moving. Yi Shuang gently patted the back of the young girl's head. At this time, there are already many tourists looked over, but also just take them as intimate couples. Places like the amusement park. There are even a lot of couples taking selfies while playing cigar wheels, so it's almost not strange. However, when Yi Shuang was hugging the young girl, he suddenly noticed a strange figure in his unintentionally sweeping gaze. It was a man in his mid-twenties, but dressed thickly and wearing a hat that deliberately pressed the brim very low. Perhaps after looking at it for a while longer, the system's interface popped up. Character, Su Huan. From a young age, he has a violent and petty personality and loves to fight. Because he is being green is plotting his revenge. He seems to be carrying some kind of dangerous items. Please stay away. Dangerous items. Yi Shuang's sight swept over and found that the man was staring at a couple not far in front of him. His hand still reaching into his jacket as if he was fumbling for something. He frowned slightly as if he understood something. But the next second. Only to see the girl and the couple in front turn around as if unintentionally, and meet the eyes of that Su Huan. Su Huan, why are you here? The girl uttered in surprise. Damn bitch, what do you think? After Su Huan saw that the girl had already discovered herself, he directly pulled out a shiny watermelon knife from the jacket's compartment before lunging over and stabbing the boy next to the girl in the abdomen. Yeah, the girl's scream instantly caused the souvenir store to go into chaos, and many people were so frightened that they hurriedly squeezed out towards the door after seeing this scene. Su Huan pulled out the watermelon knife and slashed towards the girl again. Let you green me. Damn I only greened you once, and you dare to green me back? You deserve it too. Continuously a few knives down. That girl also did not have the strength to scream. At this time the people in the store in fear, also crowded in the store entrance did not completely can go out. Su Huan got up and looked back, and aggressively lunged over with a knife, as if killing red eyes. You couples, you deserve to die as well. You guys must have greened someone else as well. Yi Shuang saw that man straightening up and rushing towards him with a watermelon knife, and his person went numb. Where did the madman come from? However, Yi Shuang naturally would not let Bai Yu Yue get hurt. He immediately copied the Pokemon ceramic jars on the shelves aside and kept throwing them towards the man. One of them accurately smashed on the other's forehead. The man screamed in pain and covered his head. What are you standing there for? Come over and help? A knife scares you guys like this? Yi Shuang told those tourists who were piling up at the door to escape. The position he and Bai Yu Yue were standing it was the corner. They couldn't go at all. Not to mention the only exit was still blocked with people. But those tourists see Su Huan's hand with the blood of the watermelon knife. But not the slightest dare to approach. Especially Su Huan tall and big. This thing a knife down. Cut to the fatal part of the deadly but life-threatening. But there are some tourists although not close. But took out his cell phone to shoot all this sent a circle of friends. At this time, Su Huan also slowed down. Yi Shuang's action of just throwing something at him had undoubtedly provoked Su Huan's anger. And, I'm going to kill you. Yi Shuang saw that the other party was in a hurry, and hurriedly pushed by Yu Yue in his arms to the side, and then picked up the umbrella on the shelf to frame Su Huan's wrist, while the two people were at a standstill. Bai Yu Alu, however, followed Yi Shuang's example of what he had just done at this moment, 
as she picked up something on the shelf and threw it haphazardly towards Su Huan's head, Yi Shuang. Ah! At the moment Su Huan was distracted, Yi Shuang also lifted her foot and kicked between the other party's legs without any hesitation. Accompanied by a wail, Su Huan staggered back a few steps and fell to the ground. Yi Shuang quickly rushed up and kicked his loose watermelon knife away from him, the blood from the knife drawing a red line on the ground. Everyone, help! At this moment, those tourists saw the knife in the other's hand flying out. They swarmed up and directly held him down dead on the ground. Yi Shuang breathed a sigh of relief, and shortly after returning to Bai Yuyue's side, he didn't know who exclaimed, he still has a knife. Su Huan also hid a dagger in his sleeve, his hand gripped desperately swinging, some tourists worried that the dagger cut themselves, scared even let go. This also gave Su Huan a chance to get up, he was like a mad wild dog, stood up and madly holding the dagger and chopping randomly, at once hurt several tourists who could not dodge in time. In a panic, he once again locked his eyes on Yi Shuang's side. Die for me. At this time, Yi Shuang was still slightly bending over to care if Bai Yuyue had been frightened, and happened to have exposed her back to him as well. There was no shelf in this location, and there was nothing to protect himself. Yi Shuang didn't even have the time to turn around and react, and in Bai Yuyue's miserably white face, he chose to use his own body to protect the young girl in front of him. Yi Shuang, but the expected stabbing pain did not happen. Yi Shuang turned around only to see a furry yellow-skinned rat clasp Su Huan's arm. Pai, Pikachu? Seeing that it was a person in a Pikachu doll suit grabbing his wrist, just as Su Huan was still distracted, he only felt his vision in front of him waver, and he was actually thrown out by the other party with a heart over the shoulder throw. Bam! His body smashed into the shelves with a crash, and those souvenirs fell clear over Su Huan. This was a bad fall, and Su Huan wailed, not even having the strength to stand up. At this time, the shelves were also shaking, and the next second it even directly fell down, then heavily pressed on Su Huan, and another miserable scream came out. In the face of that scream, no one was going to help him out. Who knows if this guy will still rise up and hurt people. Along with the shelves on the ground, there was also a yellow furry headgear. Pikachu Dolman had just thrown his own headgear out with his over-the-shoulder fall. Upon seeing the familiar short hair inside of the face, Yi Shuang froze for a moment, then said, Ensure you? The young girl in the doll suit turned back and smoothly took off her own doll suit, and she faintly said, That said, Uncle, are you a Shinigami elementary school student? Always encountering strange and weird things. Well, are you okay? It's fine. Yi Shuang also did not expect and sure you to appear here. As he finished, his sight swept the other party's body. TSK, Uncle your gaze gives me the feeling of being licked all over by your tongue. And she Yu said expressionlessly, reaching out her hand to hug her chest slightly disgusting ah. The corners of Yi Shuang's mouth twitched a bit, so he had to say, I was just looking to see if you were hurt. He indeed did not mean that, and was purely worried about whether the young girl had gotten hurt by that dagger. The only one who can injure me in actual combat is probably my grandfather. And Shurfu had a disdainful look on her face. That strong? Only grandpa practiced with me though. Yi Shuang. Nice guy. Soon, the police and ambulance also came and after the two couples who fell in a pool of blood and some tourists who were slightly injured got into the ambulance, Su Huan was also controlled by the police. In the back of Su Huan's body was also found a pointed screwdriver. If not this guy was in Shiyu fell dumbfounded plus by the shelf pressure, probably can get up and continue to commit murder, simply a master of weapons, but the rest of his ability, it is estimated that he will have to go into the prison first before implementation. After the police gave Yi Shuang their statements and blocked the scene, soon Yi Shuang they can also leave. After all, there wasn't any doubt or anything like that about the passage of this matter. And the store's CCTV and some of the gourd eaters had also filmed the process of Su Huan's murder, but there were sure to be journalists and such to come after them in the aftermath. Then again, how did you end up working part-time at an amusement park? Standing in front of the store, Yi Shuang, who had settled down in his heart, asked the short-haired girl beside him. At this time, and Shifu said, it's not that I have a part-time job. Then why are you wearing a doll costume? Yi Shuang froze for a moment after hearing her say that. Why would you wear that kind of clothes if you don't have a part-time job? Oh, I'm just looking at how long it took them to realize that I'm just a tourist who brought my own doll clothes. And Shifu said lazily, as if this was her way of having fun. Yi Shuang, and Shifu. What? The Pikachu that spanked me at the ticket gate? That was you, wasn't it? Yi Shuang was expressionless and skeptical. At first he wondered why that Pikachu was spanking his butt. If it was in Shiyu hidden inside, then everything made sense. And Shifu sniffed and looked away with her eyes. I can't understand what you're saying. Sure enough, it's you. TSK, call you back. Saying that, the young girl also turned around. She was dressed in a rather alternative halter long-sleeved jacket, 
revealing her smooth shoulders, but the lower half of her body was an ultra-short skirt, almost in line with the hem of the jacket. Yi Xuang doubted that a slap across the face could actually hit the real but cheeks. Weak eh. Give you a beating or not afraid. Miscellaneous fish uncle see him not to do anything. And sure fish instead. Eyes curved. A pleasant look. Yi Xuang. Forget it. He fought last time. Not to be angry with this fish. Thank you. At this time, Bai Yu Yue also said to Enxi Yu. Just now when Yi Xuang used her body to protect her with the intention of blocking the knife. Bai Yu Yue only felt that her whole body was cold. She was very afraid that she would lose Yi Shuang, and Shi Yu, however, put her hands in her pockets with a casual look. You're welcome, but you are indeed a little weak. Why don't you simply learn some means of self-preservation? Don't let others protect you every time. Self-preservation means, by Yu Yu sniffed, but her eyes looked over to Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang, how do I learn? No need to learn. It's useless for a girl to learn. Yi Shuang, however, reached out and rubbed the young girl's head. The physical differences between men and women were too great. It was difficult for a girl to beat a boy no matter how much she practiced close combat. Once the adrenaline spiked, under the crush of pure strength, any struggle of a girl was meaningless, unless one became a King Kong Barbie, or a special existence like in Shiryu, a ninja who practiced all the physical skills from a young age. I don't want Yi Xuan to get hurt. After Bai Yu Yue knew that she couldn't practice, she seemed to be a little disappointed, her dull hairs drooping down. Seeing the young girl's disappointed look, Yi Xuan thought for a moment, well, it's not like you have to learn physical arts, and Shi Yu, however, spread her hands, it's not good to keep some props on your body, Yi Xuang asked, what props, bitterless, tailed beasts, Naruto, you, however, and Shi Yu's words did mention Yi Xuang, Bai Yu Yue did need some means of self-protection right now, such as anti-wolf spray or something like that, Yi Xuang could go and buy some online at that time and then teach Yu Yue to use it. It's better to have it than not to have it. After all, this child's face value is here. Preventing an eventuality is better than anything else. And Yu Yue this child is kind enough. There is no need to worry about her using props to hurt others on purpose. Yi Shuang remembered that there was a devil's pepper spray. Spraying it against the eyes could almost blind the other person for a short period of time. Anti-wolf spray is good. I'll look online. Yi Shuang said. Can't buy it. And Shi Yu, however, said. Why? And she you a kind of look at a fool. Would online shopping let you buy something that hurts others? You can't go to any online shopping platform and search for wolf spray. Can't I buy it for self-protection? How do you know? Yi Shuang felt a bit unbelievable. There are no small props to buy for self-protection for sale? Because I searched. Yi Shuang, are you different from me? Then I'll make one myself. Yi Shuang said. Anyway, it's just a spray bottle plus a little chili water inside. The principle is very simple. For the spray. I have it. And she you, however, felt around in her pocket for a bit and finally took out a lipstick-looking object, a finger-sized aluminum bottle. After ensure you pulled off the cap, inside was a spout. Enough to use once, enough for self-preservation. You really have everything. What kind of liquid is inside? Yi Shuang asked. Water plus concentrated chili essence. And she you said casually, revealing a bad smile. Uncle do you want to try? Try it and pass away. Here, it's for you and Shi Yu tossed the spray in her hand to Bai Yu Yue, you try it, Bai Yu Yue hastily stretched out her hand to catch it, resulting in the thumb-thick spray bouncing back and forth in her palm before she finally managed to grab it, looking at the exquisite and small spray in her hand, Bai Yen Yu realized that there was also a rather special pattern on the bottle, from the looks of it it didn't look like something that could be bought, what is that, Yi Shuang also noticed that pattern and asked, it's just the family crest, and Shi Yu glanced at it and replied casually, at this time, Bai Yu Yue was also studying the spray can in her hand, and the moment she aimed the bottle at herself, Yi Shuang instantly struck the young girl's head with a hand blow. And, what's the difference between this one of yours and pointing a gun at yourself? After the young girl understood how to use it, she put on the lid of the spray, and then said to ensure you, thanks, small problem, and Shi Yu just waved her hand, and then didn't care about Yi Shuang and the others, disappearing among the group of tourists on her own. What a strange fellow. Yi Xuan looked at and she used disappearing back in the distance, and recalling her unconscious appearance, he could not help but murmur, could it be that she knew that she didn't have much time left, so she was experiencing all kinds of new things as much as possible? Thinking of this, Yi Xuan's heart had a somewhat indescribable feeling of depression with a slight suffocation. Yi Xuan, she's gone, aha. Yi Xuan unconsciously rubbed the palms of his hands until he felt some temperature, then he took the small hand of the young girl beside him, have you just been scared? Bai Yu Yue nodded, scared, of Yi Shuang getting hurt. Yi Shuang smiled faintly, 
then still playing, or choose to go home? Yi Shuang actually just wanted to take Bai Yu Yue out of the scene in the first place, but he was blocked at the entrance by those tourists, and if they didn't all crowd in there, all of them could actually go out. Want to play? Bai Yu Yue said, but her eyes looked towards the messy souvenir store. Seal ball. Yi Shuang saw the blocked souvenir store and also had to take out his cell phone and searched for a seal ball doll. When he found out that there was an identical one he took it to the young girl and showed it to her. There are also online. Look. Seal ball 39 yen. Much cheaper. Bai Yu Yue murmured. Yi Shuang, however, smiled. It does seem like it. Want to buy it? Bai Yu Yue nodded seriously, but after thinking about it, she asked. Can Yi Shuang, buy two? Of course you can. Just buy directly if you have something you like. Don't worry too much about money. Yi Shuang said, placing an order for two pieces at the online shopping merchant. Bai Yu Yue seemed very happy. Two pieces. Why buy two? Yi Shuang also asked. One for Yi Shuang, and one for me. The young girl said, what I like, will Yi Shuang like it too? Yi Shuang froze for a moment, then came back to his senses. He gently stroked the young girl's head. Will oh, Su Huan's episode didn't affect Yi Shuang and Bai Yu Yue's mood too much. They also went to play the rotating coffee cup as well as the bumper cars, just like the jumper and so on Yi Shuang didn't take part in it, just for fear that Bai Yu Yue would want to play it a few more times. Time flickered. It was already evening. Many tourists also left the amusement park one after another. There were also many who chose to stay and watch the evening program. It's getting dark. Yi Shuang glanced at the time on her cell phone and realized that Bai Yu Yue had no intention of leaving yet. She had gotten a guide on the internet. So the whole afternoon was basically Bai Yu Yue taking Yi Shuang to play. Are you hungry? Yi Shuang asked. Bai Yan Yu touched her stomach. Hungry. But there's still an arrangement. What arrangement? Yi Shuang looked at the small cell phone in the young girl's hand and couldn't help but aim her eyes over to look at it. As a result, Bai Yu Yue hid the cell phone, and then also put her hands behind her back. Can't. Look at it. Yi Shuang cried and laughed a little, but still chose to respect Bai Yu Yi's idea. But right now it was already dark, so he still had to go and eat something before he could do so. The sandwiches are finished. Do we really have to eat at the amusement park's restaurant? Yi Shuang took out his cell phone and searched for the various restaurants in this amusement park, and finally chose a restaurant with an OK rating. It was still a linked restaurant. What king carp meat burger? Big onion duck roasted duck roll or whatever. Although the name was hard to say, but the good thing was that the flavor was good. Compared to those fancy ones, the most important thing in a restaurant should be the flavor. After finishing dinner, the sky was already deeper. Only those irradiated lights were still flashing in the sky, as if they were going to plan some kind of event. Yi Shuang. Hmm, we have another place to go. Bai Yan Yu pulled the corner of Yi Shuang's coat and said. Yi Shuang of course knew that. After all, this niece was also looking at the time from time to time during the meal. There must be in preparation for something. What turned out to be a surprise to Yi Shuang was that Bai Yan Yu eventually led him to a place under a Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel ah. Yi Shuang looked up at the Ferris wheel, which at the moment was shrouded in the night, but appeared to be particularly eye-catching due to its own neon light, and it rotated as if time could slow down for a few minutes under its effect. Sitting on this? Yi Shuang asked. Aha. Let's go then. Yi Shuang said but found that Bai Yu Yue was still standing still. She whispered, wait for five minutes. Yi Shuang didn't ask much, just smiled. Good. Five minutes later, Yi Shuang and Bai Yu Yue queued into the Ferris wheel, and as a special project in the amusement park, so to charge a person a hundred, the price is not cheap. After all, just on the Ferris wheel to turn around just. After sitting on it, along with the slow rotation of the cabin, Yi Shuang originally also wanted to see Bai Yu Yue what reaction but only to see the side of the young girl has been put the eyes on the window, as if waiting for something. After Yi Shuang saw the scene, he did not say anything and also followed the other party's line of sight and waited. From here, one could see the sea at night as well as the city lights, although it was not as good as during the day. It had an additional mysterious beauty. The moment the Ferris wheel reached its apex, Yi Shuang noticed an extremely conspicuous flash of fire going straight into the night sky. It was as if it was a colorful pen that could cut through the deep blue and instantly blossomed into seven-colored ink at the end of the line. Splendid fireworks began to spread all over the night sky, almost lighting up this deep blue. Yi Shuang looked at those fireworks and realized what exactly the young girl was waiting for. Watching fireworks on a Ferris wheel, so that's what it is. Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile slightly. This is what you're watching raiders? But perhaps this child didn't understand that what was even more splendid and beautiful than the fireworks was actually the people who accompanied them and watched them together. Well, under a piece of fireworks, at this time, the young girl but came a little closer. And, this, she closed her beautiful eyes, raised her chin and kissed Yi Shuang's lips. 
In an instant, Yi Shuang's pupils dilated. So what? What happened after the kiss? On Monday, on the way to school Tang Koko inquired about the young girl beside her. And by Yu Yu I told Koko all about the amusement park. Come on, I want to hear. Tang Koko grabbed by Yu Yi's arm. By Yu Yi just cocked her head. And then? Yeah, what happened after the kiss? Did brother do anything? Tang Ku Ko Ah seemed to be more excited. Even the bottom of her eyes were filled with the fire of gossip. Did he wallop you in the Ferris wheel with passion? No, Bai Yu Yu S said. Yi Shuang asked me, know what it means to do so? Aha, uh -huh. and then how do you answer? Bai Yu Yi said. I said, Coco Raiders taught me. Then, Yi Shuang laughed and didn't say anything. Tang Coco. Yeah, Tang Coco let out a screaming popping sound and reached out to whack the young girl's shoulders. Why so honest? Give you the chance you don't hit the mark ah. Bai Yu Yu S saw that Tang Coco was close to rolling in place, seemingly unaware of what she had done wrong and simply asked, what did I do wrong? You didn't do wrong. You were just that close. Tang Koko covered her chest with a pained look. You you eh? Uh, next time you must not answer that I taught you. Got it? Alas, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. Why are you so honest? Not talking is better than this. What's the difference between this and winning the lottery by one number? Tang Koko seems to have turned into a humanoid slime. Hands and feet are shaky and soft to let out a wail. By you you eh? Uh, forget it. This isn't your fault. After all, Brother Cricket has already evolved, and we're kind of getting something out of it. Tang Coco directly waved her hand. Don't worry, there's Arms Master Coco. Casually formulate a plan B and take it down directly. Oh by Yu Yu stood beside Tang Coco, clapping with her small hands. Quack 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 quack. Tang Coco gathered herself together, looking at the guitar by Yu Alu was carrying behind her, and opened her mouth to ask. Are you going to participate in the light music club during all of your future after school hours? Uh, participate. Then what am I going to do? Fertilize my home alone in the future? Tang Kuku didn't participate in the club. After all, was already a shady character. And was even more of a little transparent in class who couldn't talk to anyone. At first she had participated in similar club activities, but ended up being even more unable to fit in, and had been teased about cows and whatnot because of her overly prominent appearance. Light Voice Club. Join together. By Yu Yu eh? however, pulled Tang Koko's arm and said, Ah, Tang Koko sniffed, but said, But I don't know how to play an instrument, ah, and, Tang Koko's eyes were a bit despondent, and she pulled up a smile, I just can't do anything la, I don't have the talent, and no one wants to like me, in the next second, by Yu Yu eh but held Tang Koko's palm, passing her own warmth over, it won't be, I, like Koko, Tang Koko froze for a moment, only to see by Yu Yi continue to say seriously, Coco, it's awesome. You can do it. Although the young girl's words were clumsy, they carried an indescribable warmth. Tang Coco stood in place, suddenly a little touched and hugged the other party's neck. Ooh hoo, thank you 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 a. Eh? Then why don't I go to the light music club this afternoon as well? Although I'm not sure what instrument I'd like to play. Don Coco continued, but it's okay. It's not bad to find something you like. Good. The two teenage girls were talking and laughing as they walked along, which made the school road a bit more playful. Apartment. Da day day. The crisp sound of the keyboard rang out. Yi Shuang's slender fingers landed on the keys. He updated today's novel and then glanced at the reader's comments. His line of sight landed on a few of them, and he spoke out with a huff. The readers want illustrations of the persona? Where can I draw? Do novel authors these days still have to draw? The corner of Yi Shuang's mouth tugged, but he didn't know why he was reminded of Bai Yuyue and those sketches she drew. He subconsciously touched the corner of his lips with his hand. Then as if he thought of something, he clicked on the search engine. Isn't AI painting quite hot in recent years? Yi Shuang glanced at the tutorial and then downloaded a few more software and started messing around with it. Soon, a persona drawing was made by Yi Shuang, and the appearance is more in line with the language and the ghost girls. Although Yi Shuang feels that the white language and the ghost real person that kind of dreamy feeling cannot be drawn, but these persona drawings can be used as long as, after all, he is also just a novel author. It's just that there are some problems such as the proportion of the fingers is not quite right. Well, the fingers are weird. Yi Shuang stroked his chin. Then after recalling those PS courses he learned in college, he threw all these persona drawings into the PS software. After erasing the not-so-reasonable positions with the eraser and stamp tool, Yi Shuang took the PS brush and started outlining the lines of his hands, adhering to the principle of if it works. Yi Shuang even really started to draw it. Luckily I didn't forget how to use PS. Yi Shuang revised and was about to finish the last stroke when the cell phone on the side rang. The mouse on his wrist flicked, and an arc ran directly through the persona drawing. Yi Shuang, 
After silently taking a step back, Yi Shuang picked up his cell phone and answered the call. Hello? Hey. Morning. Chen Qin's voice came from the phone, so Yi Shuang put the phone on speakerphone and placed it on the table before he continued to manipulate the mouse. What's up? Guess where I'm going in a few days, Chen Qin said with a smile. Going abroad again? Yi Shuang said casually, and it just so happened that at that moment, he was sketching the bus line on Chen Qin's persona chart, and immediately felt a very strange sensation. I'm going to Silver Mountain College to give a speech in a few days. Yi Shuang froze for a moment. Why do you suddenly want to go to Silver Mountain College to give a speech? Because a company under our group's name has a small project cooperation with Silver Mountain College, and there have been some donation matters in the past. The school manager of your school specially invited me to go over to give a speech oh. Yi Shuang did not think that the Chun family's company and Silver Mountain College can still be associated, but think carefully is not a strange thing. Before he read high school when there are some successful entrepreneurs to speak and so on, and Chen Qin is undoubtedly that the so-called successful entrepreneurs, and even belong to the industry and the type of quite famous. There's one more thing. What? I'm downstairs. Come over and have dinner with me. Chen Qin said. I'm starving after an all-nighter. Overnight? Yi Shuang glanced at the time, then closed the monitor and got up to go downstairs. Then wait for me. This way. After going downstairs, Chen Qin's voice came. Is the company encountering something? Still have to stay up late. Yi Shuang looked at Chen Qin who was eating intestinal noodles in front of him and opened his mouth to inquire. Although the other party was dressed very delicately, but also could not hide that between the eyebrows and eyes of the tired. Obviously is not very good rest, especially that pair of eyes and light dark circles. Recently the project did have some problems. I suspect that the group has a mole. Chen Qin's expression is quite a bit helpless, but to thoroughly investigate the words. In fact, it is not so easy thing. To eat a mouthful of intestinal noodles? Don't eat. Just had a full breakfast in the apartment. Later you still have to go back to the company? I can take a break this morning. Then go to my place to sleep for a while later. Yi Shuang said. After all, going back to Chen's house from here still slightly takes quite a bit of time. It would be better to just take a nap. Chen Xin sniffed and smiled like a little fox. Good. The mole. The next management work meeting. You can take me there. Yi Shuang said after thinking. Chen Xin chewed the food in his mouth and swallowed it before asking, If you want to meddle in the company's affairs, I'll give you a vice president position to do? That's not necessary. The name is not right. And you can't control people if you really go up. Yi Shuang said casually, Hey, I believe you, and need to know what on the good. But for Yi Shuang to participate in the meeting, Chen Xin is not on the mind. She knows Yi Shuang's ability is very strong. But the group encountered the problem is not just attend a meeting can be solved. Unless Yi Shuang can quit the work of the Silver Mountain College, accompanied by her together to take care of the whole group, or leave it all to Yi Shuang, she is at ease as a small woman behind a successful person. Chen Qin is also very happy. After breakfast, Yi Shuang brought Chen Qin back to the apartment. Seeing the woman who had changed her shoes, he inquired, You came back from the company, do you want to take a bath? Yi Shuang knew that Chen Qin, this guy, was very good at being clean, so he might even want to take a shower before going to bed. I washed in the nearby hotel when I came. Yi Shuang sniffed. So why don't you just rest directly at the hotel? That's different. Which is not as comfortable as you are here. Chen Qin said. Directly jumped onto the sofa. With an appearance of intending to sleep on the sofa. Yi Shuang hugged his arms on the side. Looking at the other party's long open-legged dress. And asked. Don't you change your clothes before sleeping? Chen Qin's slender thighs moved a bit. Pursing her smile after opening one beautiful eye. Ah Yi. You help me change. No way. Cheapskate. Chen Qin plopped down on the sofa, hugging the cushion and said, It's not like you haven't seen it before anyway, if you mean bathing together as children. Poof. If you don't change it, you're only strawberry. Chen Qin rolled over, but patted the sofa, voice with a hint of wine, then sit next to me for a while. Yi Shuang did not refuse. After sitting down on the sofa, Chen Qin obediently moved her body like a water snake, and finally rested her head on Yi Shuang's thigh, and then smiled with satisfaction. For Chen Qin's small mind, Yi Shuang quietly looked at it for a while and said, This skirt of yours will surely be wrinkled after a sleep. Then you help me change. Yi Shuang looked to the side of the small table, on top of which were clothes that had just been folded and dried. He picked up one. Here. Only then did Chen Qin sit up somewhat reluctantly and take the clothes in Yi Shuang's hands. The chain at the back. You open it for me. Chen Qin said. Turning her back to Yi Shuang, the dress she wore had to be unzipped at the back before she could take it off. And when Yi Shuang saw that, she reached out her hand to pull the zipper down. The bare, snow-white back and round shoulders carried some redness. Yi Shuang withdrew his gaze. All right, go to the restroom and change. But the next second, 
Chen Qing turned around and pushed Yi Shuang on the sofa, with one hand propped up on her pretty face, her body pressed against the other party recklessly. Don't you have any idea about me, being a monk? After the back zipper was unzipped, the fabric that slid down could only cover a very small amount of globes. Yi Shuang only felt a white blur in front of her eyes, and unconsciously rolled her throat. Come down, Blei. Chen Qin's slender fingers pinched the slightly curled hair and tickled Yi Shuang's cheeks while smiling. But just at this time, the cell phone rang, which also brought the atmosphere of climbing high to an abrupt end. Yi Shuang glanced at it. It happened to be the alarm clock that reminded him to go to work. And Chen Qin also slowly sat up straight at this time. She also realized that her actions just now were a bit bold, so much so that her pretty face was full of blush. After all, this guy also had no experience in love. It all relied on brainstorming. Chen Qin also changed into the clothes given by Yi Shuang at this time, and directly opened her hands, carry me up to sleep. Yi Shuang also calmed down. He looked at Chen Qin beside him and just said, Next time, don't allow this. Don't listen. Yi Shuang, you carry me upstairs. I'll think about it. Chen Qin's onion white fingers were placed in front of her lips, and her eyes carried a wry look. Yi Shuang didn't agree. Just looked at the girl with a kind of I don't know what's in your mind yet look, do you think I believe it? Well well well, ah uh, Yi, I like you the most, well, back also line Chen Qin Si cannot deceive Yi Shuang, decisively began to whine pampering up, she knows too much about Yi Shuang's temperament, and also know that he is not good at coping with what, for example, the girl's pampering, almost a kill one accurate, but also a kill one, it was almost a kill, as expected, Yi Shuang loosened up, carry you up, okay, in fact, Chen Qin didn't hold much hope in the beginning. People liked to compromise, she just wanted to let Yi Shuang carry herself up, but she knew that the other party most likely wouldn't agree. So she said that she wanted him to carry her up, so compared to carrying her on her back, there was no doubt that Yi Shuang would choose this. After Yi Shuang carried Chen Qin on his back, the two of them walked up the stairs, feeling the sturdy and broad back. Chen Qin only felt an unspeakable sense of security and warmth. She whispered, Before you also carried me like this, when, Yi Shuang only felt that Chen Qin's speech next to his ear was a little itchy. When I was in elementary school, I fell in a fight with others and couldn't walk. It was also you who carried me home like this. Chen Qin rubbed his face against Yi Shuang's neck. Yi Shuang heard, the mind does seem to have had such an experience. Chen Qin as a child to keep short hair, coupled with the character is relatively big so in elementary school there is the name of the man-woman. She was angry with a few nicknames of the students wrestled. Speaking of which, if Yi Shuang didn't happen to pass by. This guy's injuries could have been a bit more serious, and at that time, because he was afraid that the wounds on his body would be blamed by Chen's father and mother when they found out, this guy even hid in his house for a few days, under the pretext of looking for Ai Yi to study, and then later, she started to grow her hair long, sleeping so soundly, I'm sure I'm tired. Seeing the sleeping Chen Qin on the bed, Yi Shuang helped the other party to lift the quilt up a bit, just now, she was obviously quite rowdy, but as soon as she touched the pillow, she fell asleep in seconds. Yi Shuang picked up Chen Qin's cell phone, intending to set an alarm clock for the other party. After all, I don't know if this guy still has a work schedule in the afternoon. In case he oversleeps it will be bad. Whom? Unlock code? Yi Shuang was in a trance for a moment, and for some reason subconsciously entered his birthday. With a click, it directly entered the main desktop. Yi Shuang quietly looked at that two people together wallpaper, then held the phone silent for a long time. This guy. Yi Shuang muttered and set a one o'clock alarm for Chen Qin. After doing all this, Yi Shuang booked another golden arches for Chen Qin on the takeout platform to avoid waking up hungry before putting down his phone and packing up his things to go downstairs. Someone is sleeping. Be good and don't make a fuss. Got it? Yi Shuang instructed 10,000 who was lying on the floor. Meow. After leaving the house, Yi Shuang was planning to drive to the school, but then his cell phone rang. Hello? Hello? Is this Mr. Yi Shuang? Sorry, I don't lend money. Yi Shuang was just about to hang up the phone when the other party immediately said, I, I'm a local news reporter. I would like to do an interview with you regarding the amusement park murder case. Do you have the time? Interview. Yi Shuang was not surprised. After all, the heat of this matter would not be much lower. There would definitely be a reporter over to do an interview. Sorry, I still have work. It's not very convenient. Yi Shuang hung up the phone, as if thinking of what to click on the short video software search but accidentally found that the related video playback actually has tens of millions. Yi Shuang thought that the heat will not be very low, but did not think it would be so high, especially the highest number of likes of a video has broken 200 W, one dead and one injured in a murder at Haiju Amusement Park. Pikachu Man steps forward, only to see the video play as the surveillance video, 
fell in a pool of blood the two people were hit with a thick mosaic, the video of Su Huan was stopped after getting up to his own murder, and then suddenly there is a yellow figure pounced out, and over the shoulder wrestling through the other party flying out, and the moment Pikachu appeared, it was also accompanied by the BGM of the rising wind, I had a hard time extricating myself from the world's greatness, and indulged in the dreaming therein, Yi Shuang, why is there a feeling of awkward combustion? He scanned the comments section, listen to me, thank you Yagyu Beastman, that's Pikachu okay? The more you fish, the more your own mom nests, that's right, our southern rats are that big, and they do jujitsu, awesome you pie, dog head, jpg, bull, how did that little short leg run so fast, feet have residual shadow, headgear are flying out, seems to be a beautiful young lady, 30 minutes later I want to get her contact information, that man seems to be quite handsome, actually used his body to protect his girlfriend in the end, love love love, I heard it's the wife, bullshit, I know that guy, the girl in his arms seems to be his daughter. It's normal that I at Pikachu would earthcast, right? Dog head. JPG. At the scene, that over the shoulder fall scared me. Pokemon cast 10. 000 shakes plus overnight. Yishuang finally realized why there would be such a high level of heat. It's entirely because of the appearance of that guy in Shurfu. If it was a normal riot control hero it would be fine. The key in Shurfu was wearing a cute doll suit. So it would be a kind of contrasting adorableness and it's obvious that the video heat will go up. It is estimated that there will be quite a few reporters going over to interview in Shurfu. With that guy's personality of being too much trouble, he will probably hide, right? Yi Shuang thought to himself, but those reporters wouldn't necessarily be able to find out that it was in Shiyu. Knowing that in Shiyu was pretending to work part-time, and when the reporters went to look for the ones wearing the Pikachu doll uniforms, they would definitely have a big headache. No one would have thought that someone would bring their own doll clothes to pretend to be a staff member. Yi Shuang put away his cell phone at this time and came to the underground garage to drive to the college. Silver Mountain College 70 years of school celebrations will be close. When Yi Shuang from the parking lot up, has found that the surroundings have begun to set up originally full of flowers on the road were all cleared. Put a stall carts, just like a snack street scene. There are a lot of stall owners as well as some senior students busy setting up the stage and other things. To the day of the school festival, the flow of people will be unprecedentedly large. Not to mention the school's students are many plus open to outsiders to come in, although only a week's time, but can make the stalls to get a lot of money. The big cost of being a brick and mortar is basically the rent, especially the higher the foot traffic. The rent is also quite scary. A part-time job is to make money for the boss, and opening a store is to make money for the landlord, to put it that way. However, Silver Mountain Academy only charges a small amount of booth fees, so every year the number of merchants bidding for booths is also very large. Of course, the school will prioritize the provision of students before renting out the excess. The good thing is that the school covers an area that is really too large, so every year's school celebrations are extraordinarily lively. I also don't know what theme Yu Yue and her class have prepared, Yi Shuang thought to himself, but considering that there were too many births in their class, he preferred that Yu Yue would stay out of it. Once he thought of the fact that Yu Yue was coaxed to become a ghost last year, and no one cared even after she was beaten up in the end. Yi Shuang gave up the idea of letting Yu Yue go and integrate into the activities of Class A. Anyway, there were still three to four years after the promotion to a different major, so there was no need to worry about not being able to participate in the activities at all. At this time, Yi Shuang also returned to the school doctor's office. After pushing open the door, he heard a crackling sound, and Yi Shuang looked over to find a young girl playing a game wearing cat headphones, really early. To treat my place as an internet cafe? Yi Shuang put down his things and took the white coat off the hanger on the side. Maybe. And Shurfu continued playing the game without looking back. Webmaster, give me a pack of beetle nut. You're still wheezing. Yi Shuang's face was expressionless. Beetle nut is carcinogenic. It's much fiercer than cigarettes. And Shi Yu swept over with a pair of eyes that seemed to carry a few points of dislike. Just kidding. Uncle you're so boring. Yi Shuang. Say it again and I'll pull the electric switch. Yi Shuang said. Every time he talked to an Shiyu he wanted to spank her. It's okay, my laptop. With batteries. After Yi Shuang sat down, and sure you handed over a handle. Together. It's not good to touch fish at work. Although Yi Shuang said so, she still took the handle over. And Shiyu, do you know that you are on fire online? Oh, see. And Shiyu controlled the keypad and continued. It seems like that parent called Su Huan is still going to sue us. Yi Shuang froze for a moment, revealing a black question mark face. What in the name of? Excessive defense. And Shi Yu said faintly. They said that the knife hadn't cut into you guys yet. And that striking early wasn't considered self-defense. Defendant? Yi Shuang couldn't help but tug at the corner of his mouth when he heard what happened. 
and he didn't know what that parent called Su Huan was thinking. Your son has cut down two people with a knife, but still put here to sue the victim, although they can indeed sue, but Yi Shuang estimated that they do not even need to appear in court. Unless the other side of the hustle and bustle of the power is very good, Yi Shuang has always believed that if a person is born enough, then the degree of birth of its parents will not be away from the degree of eight or nine, and Su Huan can make such a radical thing, unless he is a psychopath, then more or less with the parents also have a relationship. So when knowing that Su Huan's parents want to sue themselves, Yi Shuang spread his two hands together. It's really worthy of being a nest out of the family. Do you need to find a lawyer? It just so happens that I have a lawyer I know over here. Yi Shuang asked. He used to run a business, or know some more powerful lawyers. No need. Just sue. How can they sue can't win? After all, that guy has already killed someone. And Shi Yu, however, looked very calm. It's just that she didn't really like this feeling of being pestered by troublesome things. Moreover, she had already talked to her own master about this matter, and believed that there would be a result soon. After knowing that she didn't need to worry too much about this matter, Yi Shuang didn't put this matter on her mind. There were no students coming over to see the doctor this morning, and the burnt goods that used to appear regularly seemed to have started to get busy because of the arrival of the school celebration. Yi Shuang was also happy to be free, and even spent the morning groping for fish with an Shi Yu. Near the time of lunch, the cell phone rang instead. Chen Qin, get up. Chen Qin, stretching. JPG. Chen Qin, hungry. Chen Qin, pitiful. JPG. A series of four messages were sent directly over. Yi Shuang glanced at them, he hadn't said anything yet. Instead, and Shi Yu, who was playing the game beside him, asked, What? Is it by Yu Yui who came over to look for you? Not her. Yi Shuang picked up his cell phone. He actually knew that Chen Qin this guy could not sleep deeply. After all, there are many things to worry about every day. Basically will only sleep in fragments. After saying to Chen Qin that there should be a takeaway outside the door arriving, soon after Chen Qin sent the photo over. Chen Qin, the little woman has nothing to offer in return so she can only offer her body in return. It was a selfie, intentionally revealing the half circle of Snow White with the takeaway. Yi Shuang subconsciously coughed, and then continued to reply, eat and rest for a while and then go to the company. And what I said to you in the morning, you can call me next time the management council. Chen Qin, good ah. After that, there was no more chatting about anything. Yi Shuang put down his cell phone and planned to go to the cafeteria to eat. Pack one, please. And Shi Yu said when she saw the way Yi Shuang got up to go to the cafeteria, when I come back, the food will be cold. Yi Shuang said, reaching out her hand to remove her headphones, it's been playing all morning isn't it enough? Let's go to the dining hall together. This and Shi Yu fellow had completely treated her place as a game room, and Yi Shuang didn't know if she had made a wrong decision in agreeing to the other party in the first place or not. Your treat. And Shi Yu said, it's not like you lack money. Yi Shuang was helpless. This guy saw that Chen Hai guy's locomotive looked good and followed to buy one. How could he not even afford to eat? And Shi Yu, however, wiggled a finger and lazily said, White whoring is what smells the best. Understand? Then go. Yi Shuang was also too lazy to argue on. Otherwise he would always be choked by a certain sentence of this guy. After taking this fish with him, Yi Shuang closed the door of the school nurse's office and then came to the dining hall together to meet up with Bai Yu Yu A and the girls. Just as they arrived at the door, the familiar aroma of food floated over. There are so many people. Yi Shuang took a look and realized that the number of people in the dining hall was higher than ever before. And he didn't know why. And Shi Yu stuck her hands in her pockets. She chewed her gum with an expression of not being surprised. During the preparation for the school festival, eating in the dining hall will also give away some drinks and small snacks or something. After all, who doesn't like to whore themselves out? Are going to eat still eating gum? Yi Shuang asked. There's always something in my mouth when I'm not doing anything. And Shi Yu said and asked Yi Shuang to stretch his hand. Uncle, stretch your hand. Yi Shuang was puzzled and stretched out his hand. Do what? And Shi Yu's head dropped and spit her gum in the palm of his hand. What are you doing? Couldn't find the trash can. And Shi Fu said with a serious face. I'm not your trash can. Yi Shuang spat. And after he wrapped the gum in tissue paper, his fist thumped in Shi Fu's head as if he was knocking on a wooden fish. But the other party didn't care at all, revealing his PIs and tucking into his pocket. At this time, not far away, Bai Yu Yue and the girls also found Yi Shuang. Brother, Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang just wanted to wave a little, but as a result, Bai Yen Yu jumped into his arms as always, completely unconcerned about other people's sight. Yo, big breasted girl, and sure you greeted Tang Coco, call me Coco. After the four of them entered the dining hall, they directly packed their bags and went up to the rooftop to eat because there were no seats available, but what Yi Shuang and the others didn't expect was that the rooftop actually had quite a lot of people on it today as well. 
and most of them were couples. Teacher Yi, Yu Yu Wei, came a voice from the side, and Yi Xuan looked over and found that it was actually Zisha Rinrin and the girls from the Light Sound Club, as well as, a dining table? Why is there even a folding dining table here? Yi Xuan asked after seeing it, but it was a bit strange. We brought it up here, Ji Xia said, greeting Yi Xuan as they sat down. Mr. Yi, are you coming to the club activity room this afternoon? Today? Yes, the teacher in charge has to come over to the activity room from time to time. Ji Xia also explained, but she also considered that Yi Xuang might not have the time, and said thoughtfully, if Mr. Yi doesn't have the time today, it's okay to come another day. Yi Xuang didn't mind this, I don't have any problems, and you can call me school Dr. Yi, there's no need to call me teacher, after all, I haven't taught you anything, calling teacher is a bit more affectionate, the teacher in charge is also a teacher ah. Ji Xia laughed, and said picking up a lunchbox from the side, opening it up it was filled with cookies, padded with white greaseproof paper. Teacher Yi, these are the cookies I made, do you want to try them? Although Yi Xuan wanted to eat first now, but the other party had said that, he still took a piece and ate it himself, the flavor was good. Yi Xuan looked at the half piece in his hand, and then looked at Bai Yin Yu's straight eyes beside him and asked, want to eat? Aha, uh -huh. the young girl gently nodded. Yi Xuan wanted to open his mouth and let Ji Xia give him one more piece, but Bai Yu Yu saw Yi Xuan's nod and ate the remaining half of the piece in his hand with one small mouth. Yi Xuan, after lunch, School was dismissed after two simple classes, it was time for club activities again. Yi Xuan came to the activity room of the Light Voice Club early in the morning, there was no one else yet, the interior was clean and simple, it was obvious that it was just cleaned properly every day, it seems that those kids do like this club. Yi Xuan lightly scratched the desk with his finger, but found it spotless, he couldn't help but let out a light laugh. I believe that Yu Yue will stay here happily, unintentionally, Yi Xuan's line of sight landed on a piano. It stood there quietly, its body was pitch black and did not attract dust, he just looked at it. ka -ching. the sound of chewing gum colliding with the wall of the metal box rang out. Yi Xuang threw a piece of candy into his mouth and chewed it. After the freshness of mint appeared in his mouth, he walked to the piano and sat down in front of it. After opening the lid of the piano, Yi Xuang sat on the chair, his fingers placed on the keys, a slight coldness penetrated through his fingertips, the temperature seemed to be similar to the freshness in his mouth and it also made Yi Xuang's heart gradually calm down. How long had it been since he had played the piano properly? Yi Xuang didn't have an answer for this, or rather, did he really like the piano? But the moment his fingers pressed down, the moment the wonderful notes surfaced in front of his eyes, Yi Xuang suddenly felt that none of this seemed to matter, and he played flexibly on the keys with both hands, skillfully and steadily. The melodious and healing music floated in the classroom, but it seemed like a gust of wind that blew out the door. The two teenage girls carrying guitars at the moment froze in place, seemingly looking at each other with a bit of incredulity before walking to the door to look in. Jishya, that's Mr. Yi? Seems like it, so he also plays the piano? Amazing, this has to be at a professional level. Jisha and Rin Rin both didn't dare to go in and disturb Yi Shuang, they just stood in the doorway and poked their heads out, with Rin Rin's chin resting on the top of Jishya's head, and the two of them just peeked in with their heads stacked on top of each other. The sound of the zither was very good and even soon had them mesmerized. Soon, Yi Shuang's hand stopped. He looked at his palm and seemed not too satisfied. Well, it's still rusty. Perhaps feeling the line of sight, Yi Shuang subconsciously turned back and noticed Ji Xia and the girls were standing right outside the door. The moment the lines of sight met, those two young girls blinked and seemed to be a little embarrassed as they stood up. I'm sorry teacher Yi, I didn't dare to disturb your piano playing just now. The one who should say sorry is me. After all, I used the piano here without authorization. Yi Shuang stood up and closed the piano cover. Ji Xia immediately asked, Teacher Yi, you play the piano very well. Are you a professional? If I were a professional, would I still be a school nurse here? Yi Shuang smiled, just an ordinary amateur. So that's how it is. Ji Xia, however, felt that it was so. Have the five people gotten together? Yi Shuang changed the subject. Rin said from the side, Got them all. Bai Yen Yu, Tang Koko, and, and me. Three more young girls appeared in the doorway, and one of them, a short-haired girl, raised her hand expressionlessly and said, That's right, I'm the mysterious fifth, the card faced to fight Shinobi Rider. Why are you interested in joining the club? The ones who appeared in the doorway were naturally by Yu Yue and the girls. Coco was fine. What surprised Yi Shuang instead was that Ensure Yu was also mixed in, and acted as the so-called fifth person. By Yu Yue explained, just ran into it on the road. Tang Ku Ku, on the other hand, looked a bit disgusted with Shi Yu. She also robbed our ice cream, and Shi Yu still looked indifferent. 
Where did she rob? I gave money. It's not like I run a kiosk. At this time, Yi Shuang also walked over to Jixia's side and lowered his voice. And Shi Yu can't be trusted. Maybe she'll even mess things up for you guys. It's okay. The Light Music Club welcomes all students who love music, compared to Yi Shuang's worry. On the contrary, Jixia smiled and said, Yi Shuang. In fact, slightly setting up some thresholds is not a bad thing. What instruments do you know? Yi Shuang asked in Shi Yu. Oh, all of them. And Shi Yu said, What do you mean all can? Yi Shuang pointed to the drum set not far away. Try that one? Okay. And Shi Yu staggered over to the drum set, sat down and picked up the drumsticks. Yi Shuang realized that the other party's end of the rack was really like that. Dum 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 dum. In the next moment, and Shi Yu struck with her drumsticks, accompanied by the continuous dull and accelerated drumming. She also shouted with great vigor, Wei Wu. Yi Shuang, want to ascend to the court for a case you? And Shi Yu scared. Uncle, you're interrupting my performance. Yi Shuang said to Jixia beside him with a helpless face. Jixia student, do you think this is really okay? Jixia's eyes curved instead. I think classmate Shi Yu is very interesting. Yi Shuang sniffed and did not say anything more. It was good to have fun. After all, club activities were here to release youth with abandon. He was just worried that Shifu would run away halfway through the game and cause trouble for Yu Yue and the girls. For the rest of the day, everyone practiced their instruments, and Jixia seemed to be interested in forming a tune for everyone. Whether it was composing or writing lyrics it would take some time, but Rin took this on. Rin was one of those girls who talked little but was serious, and if she really took it on, she might indeed have some skills. Brother, what instrument do you think is suitable for me? Tang Koko came over today to try out the musical instruments, but after one round, she felt that it was all a bit difficult. Yi Shuang did know that Coco had come over entirely to play with Yu Yu. She had no other friends. Perhaps she was unwilling to change back to the old way of going home alone. Alone with no topic of conversation, but if a person really had no interest in music, no matter how much they learned it would be very difficult to get started. The premise of joining a club is supposed to be a hobby. But when it comes to getting started, Zhixia, Yi Shuang called out. What's wrong mister? Yi, is there a ukulele in the activity room? Yi Shuang also just asked. Jixia sniffed and after thinking about it, she said, yes, in the storage room, she trotted to the back location, then pushed open a small door and soon walked out holding a ukulele, this one, Coco looked at the tiny ukulele and couldn't help but ask, brother, is this a guitar, it seems like it's a little different, ukulele, you can simply call it a small guitar, the difference with a guitar is that it will have two fewer strings than a guitar, that is, only four, Yi Shuang smiled and said, although the range is not wide enough, but compared to the guitar, it's very good to get started. And even self-taught for a month can be skillfully played and sung. As expected, Tang Koko soon felt the charm of the ukulele. For this idea of just wanting to accompany a friend to play music together, a light and simple instrument was undoubtedly a good choice. Yi Shuang was sitting on a chair at this moment, looking at the girls who were giggling not too far away. But he smelled a peculiar flavor. That flavor was not something very rare. After all, it was called youth. Who had all had it? Looking at the energetic young girls, Yi Shuang's eyes suddenly appeared in front of his own. Chen Qin Chen Hai, Fu Gui home from school together to play around with the figure of a few people walking on the street, under the dusk to say goodbye respectively embarked on the road home. It is difficult to recognize youth at the time of youth, only through the stage of youth to recognize youth. Yi Shuang suddenly a little nostalgic. If he went back to high school, it seems to be good look. At this moment, Yi Shuang's line of sight fell on the long-haired girl holding the guitar. Bai Yu Yi was talking to other people, looking at her gradually adapting and having her own life and friends, Yi Shuang's heart was naturally full of gratification. He suddenly wondered what would have happened if he had run into Bai Yu Yi at the age of youth. But there are no ifs in this world, and as the saying goes, regrets, in fact, are also part of youth. It's long past the age of recklessness. Yi Shuang withdrew his sight and shook his head with a smile. He stood up and said, I'll go out to buy something. Good. Yi Shuang walked out of the activity room. In fact, he was not going to buy anything, he was just staying quietly over the parapet that was not too far away from the activity room. In the past, at this time, alone he would still smoke a cigarette, but at this time he was chewing gum and looking at the scenery outside the window. Just dazed for a while, Yi Shuang suddenly felt his ass being slapped, he froze for a moment, turned his head to look, and realized that this guy in Shiyu was standing behind him without a sound. You guy, aren't you in the activity room? Yi Shuang froze for a moment. Oh, I came out to take a look and Shi Yu averted her eyes and said casually. When Yi Shuang heard this, she turned back to continue looking at the scenery, but her mouth continued to say, what's the point of joining the light music club for a good reason? 
you guy can't stay at all. Right, what if you run away when you're about to perform? I'm not her. Anshifu tilted her head and said, what do you mean? I mean, and Shi Yu had a lazy look. Am I this kind of person? The corner of Yi Shuang's mouth tugged. Aren't you this kind of good and fresh nature? TSK. You just smacked your lips, right? Yi Shuang said. No oh. And Shi Yu's pair of beautiful eyes fell on Yi Shuang's body. After seeing the other party put his arm on the guardrail, his knife-sharpened face seemed to carry a trace of unerasable sadness. She instead rolled over and sat directly at the guardrail. Hey uncle, you lost your love? Dangerous. Yi Shuang saw the other party sitting on the guardrail just like that and immediately reached out her hand to pull her down. It's okay. Yi Shuang saw that the other party refused to come down and was a bit helpless. Character, in Shiyu. Congenital heart disease, you might be able to carry her down. The window that surfaced in front of her eyes reminded the young girl that she wasn't quite the same. If you have a heart attack at this time of the day, you'll be a godsend if you fall. Yi Shuang said, that's actually just a little early. And Shiyu countered with a relaxed look. But seeing Yi Shuang's serious expression, she stretched out her own stocking leg. Nah, for you to grab? Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang still stretched out his hand and grabbed the other's ankle, so as not to let anything really happen to her to fall down. The fabric in his hand was slippery, but Yi Shuang didn't think much about it at the moment. Uncle you are so perverted, actually touching my leg. Wasn't it you who told me to grab it? Want to see the panties? Just buy me a cup of milk tea. Unshi Fish held her skirt with her other hand. No thanks. And Shi Yu propped her hands on the guardrail, facing her back hanging in the air in contrast, she didn't have any fear at all. She looked at Yi Shuang. Uncle, you still haven't told the thing that you just lost your love. Who told you I lost love? Really, the way you just looked. It seems like you wrote the expression, so sad about falling out of love. I emoed, on your face. I'm just lamenting the fact that I'm getting older. And there's a sense of loneliness when I stay with younger people. Yi Shuang said. This feeling, it's more obvious in the club. When in Shi Yu heard this, it was like standby loading for a few seconds. Then she suddenly poofed with an expression of stifled laughter. Yi Shuang, what are you laughing at? Yi Shuang was also a bit embarrassed, but still said, it's not okay to miss your youth after years of graduation? And Shi Yu's small face immediately converged on her smile. Didn't laugh. You just clearly look like you were about to laugh. I'm a well-educated professional ninja. Poker face is the standard. Definitely won't laugh. After finishing her sentence, and Shifu added in a small voice, unless one can't help it. After Yi Shuang resisted the idea of pushing this fish down to play a trapeze, he said, going back, oh, and sure fish also jumped down, but before leaving, she still said to Yi Shuang, what's there to be sentimental about? At the very least, you still have a lot of time to do what you like. The young girl's words seemed to contain some kind of emotion, just that Yi Shuang did not notice it. Yi Shuang said, I'm just lamenting a sentence, oh oh oh. And Shi Yu made a perfunctory remark and staggered with her pockets in her pocket and disappeared around the corner. Vaguely, Yi Shuang seemed to be able to hear her snickering, and he did not know if it was a psychological effect. This guy, Yi Shuang sighed, but for some reason, some of the complex emotions within him at the moment disappeared. Yi Shuang was thinking, fortunately he didn't send any friend circle or something like that either. With this guy and Shi Yu around, he would probably read your emo text like a repeater the next day. For example, a sentence I have been walking on thin ice all my life. When do you think I will get to the other side? When this guy meets up the next day, I guess it's not strange that the moment he opens his mouth, it's Uncle Thin Ice. After gathering his mood, Yi Shuang also returned to the activity room. Brother, you went for a long time eh? Mister. Yi, I heard that you know guitar too? A few young girls surrounded them and kept on chirping. Yi Shuang's inner heart had a wonderful feeling. He looked at the teenage girls and subconsciously moved his line of sight to ensure Yu's side. At this moment, and Shuri Yu was sitting in front of the drum set, and after noticing his line of sight, he asked expressionlessly, What's up? Nothing. Yi Shuang took the guitar and said with a smile, Come on, I'll play a part. Yeah. When the club activity time ended, it was already 5.40. A few people cleaned up the activity room, and it was almost time to leave. So happy. Tang Kuka looked at Jisha and the girl's contact information in her cell phone, in a happy feeling that she had made new friends. She then hugged by Yu Yu's arm and said with a smile, Yu Yu eh, from now on, I'll come to the club every day to play together. Well, good. By Yu Yu's seemed to feel happy as well after hearing Tang Koko say that, and the dull hairs on her head arched. At this moment, however, Yi Shuang seemed to have discovered something and touched his pocket. I left my room card in the school nurse's office, so I'll go back and get it. Yi Shuang said, and originally he didn't go back with Yu Yu and the girls during school hours. He drove to buy food while the two young girls walked back. Brother, 
At night I want to come and dine. Coco wasn't as shy now as she was back then. After all, she let loose after the relationship became familiar. Good. After Yi Shuang left, Tang Koku also went downstairs with Bai Yuyue towards the school entrance. Yan Yu, isn't our school school festival coming up soon? As they went downstairs, Tang Koku said, Aha, I heard from other students that on the last day of our college's annual school festival, the success rate of confessing in person is 100%. Tang Koku began to utilize her ability as a dog-headed military advisor. I'll teach you how to do it then and tackle your brother. Bai Yuyue cocked her head, seeming not to understand. What can? You do after a successful confession? What do you do after a successful confession? This sentence in turn made it difficult for Tang Koko. She stammered for a moment, then said, You can kiss and hug. Bai Yu Yue thought for a moment, then said, Already kissed. Eh? Tang Koko fired up her brain from years of teenage manga experience, and finally said, You can sleep together. Bai Yu Yue was even more puzzled. Sleep together every night. No, Tang Koko stretched out her palm then shook it left and right as her palm changed into fingers. This sleep is not the other kind of sleep. It's a kind of sleep where you can have babies. Bai Yen Yu, however, said, Yi Shuang is not willing to. Right. So after the confession is successful, it's a sleep that can make babies. Brother will then be willing. Tang Koka said excitedly, patting Bai Yu Yue's back with her hand, a child you finally understand look. Bai Yu Yue seemed to understand, but still nodded. Leave it to me. Our plan B will be taken. Tang Koku was confident. The Bai Yuyue on the side crooned and clapped. Although the young girl didn't quite understand, she still wanted to give the other party some encouragement. Just when the two people were chatting and walking to the entrance of the school, a middle-aged older woman with a fierce face suddenly rushed out from the side and grabbed Bai Yuyue's arm with one hand. And, yes, this is the one. I've finally waited for you. You're the one who beat up my son and called the police, right? The big mom said angrily clutching by Yu Yue's arm a few points stronger. Beside her, there was another girl who looked to be less than 20 years old, also with an angry face. Bai Yu Yue was at the moment with a bit of bewilderment, as she didn't recognize these two people in front of her. She only felt that the spot where her arm was being gripped was very painful. She pumped it with force but found that the other party was gripping it to death. It's all your fault. Now my son is in jail. The only source of income for the family is gone. You must pay for it. Pay for it. Big Mom chortled. Compensate for our family's losses. Tang Koko wanted to protect Bai Yu Yue at this time, but she was fiercely glared at by that big mom, and that cannibalistic expression made Ku Koku, who was originally timid in nature, beat her heart straight. But for the sake of her good friend, she still shivered and spoke out. This, this aunt, is there any misunderstanding in it? Does it have anything to do with you? But, but if you don't make it clear, we don't know how to solve it. She hit my son with something and my son was injured, big mom said. Tang Koko froze for a moment, then looked at Bai Yuyi at the side. Yuyi, is there such a thing? Bai Yen Yu also thought about it, but remembered Su Huan's matter. Auntie, your son wanted to cut Yi Shuang. So, that's why I smashed it. Bai Yu Yue explained to the big mom, your son, who is a bad person, should go to jail. At this time, Tang Koko reacted to the fact that this big mom turned out to be the mother of that murderer. How dare you come over to ask for compensation? Tang Koko in the heart straight cursed but then remembered a news. That is, there is a thief into the house to steal things. The results do not know because of what died. The result of the court also sentenced the owner of the house to pay compensation to the thief's family. There is also a theft of electric batteries. A thief stole the battery. Because of spontaneous combustion died, the original owner of the battery car still have to somehow pay compensation to the thief. Tang Kuka suddenly felt that this world was a bit ridiculous. These two people in front of her didn't come with such ideas, right? Say that again? Big Mom at this time. After hearing Bai Yu Yue's nonchalant remark about her son being a bad person, she suddenly stormed out. He's cheated for a bitch. Saying this, she stretched out her hand and was about to slap Bai Yu Yue's mouth. Tang Kuka's eyes were quick, and she stretched out her hand to stop it, resulting in the slap landing solidly on her arm, which instantly reddened a large portion of it. Tang Koko cried out in pain. Koko. Bai Yen Yu saw Tang Koko's face in pain, also a little angry. You are also bad people. Instead, the big mom sneered, if you have the ability, you can slap me, and if you do, I'll lie down immediately. Snap, Bai Yen Yu threw a slap on the big mom's face. Yi Shuang had taught that it was better to deal with scoundrels by just going straight for it, and that fists were better used. Even the young girl tried to pull out the bottle of pepper spray. That big mom froze for a moment. She covered her face and immediately lay on the ground wailing and crying. God damn it, hit someone, come on people. This bitch caused my son to go to jail, and even hit someone, 
dying. After the big mom made such a mess, the girl who followed her along also simply took out her cell phone and started to record the video, and while recording the video, she also said, everyone come here to see, this woman caused my brother to go to jail, and now she's also beating my mother. What's wrong with this world? Why is it like this? Is there any justice? The big mom made such a mess. Plus there were quite a few students at the school entrance, who gathered around to eat melon. No one knew what had happened, but it seemed like the big mom had been beaten up. What happened? Mother Han oh, it seems like a student from our school hit someone? That big mom looks like a shrew at first glance. I feel as if the real situation is not like that. Who knows? Tang Koko also sent a message to Yi Shuang at this time. At this time in the garage entrance and exit not far from the school entrance, a white sports car drove out. After Yi Shuang received Coco's message in the parking lot, he also drove the car out at the first time when he saw the big woman rolling on the ground. He also frowned slightly. Brother, Tang Coco and the girls were relieved when they saw Yi Shuang appear, as if they had found their backbone. And at this moment, the girl beside the big mom even aimed the camera at him when she saw Yi Shuang appear. He even called someone, everyone take a look. After beating someone, he even called someone over to threaten us mother and daughter. Yi Shuang just faintly swept a glance at them, not even bothering to bullshit a word. Then he walked over to Tang Koko and Bai Yuyue, Bai Yuyue's arm had a red mark on it, while Tang Koko's arm had a slap mark on it. Does it hurt? Yi Shuang asked. Bai Yenyu shook her head and pointed at Tang Koko. Koko was beaten. Tang Koko didn't want to cause trouble for Yi Shuang, even though she felt her arm was hot and painful. She scratched her head and said, Brother I'm fine. Good boy. Yi Shuang patted the shoulders of the two young girls. Yi Shuang calmed himself, although he knew that there were all kinds of people in this world. He would not have thought how a murderer's mother had the face to show up here to look for compensation from the victim. There were also quite a few students who recognized Yi Shuang at this time. Especially there were quite a few girls. When they saw that their beloved school doctor Yi was in trouble, they came over to ask about the situation. Brother school doctor. What happened? What happened? Yi Shuang did not care about those two shrewish and rogue mother and daughter. Instead, he first explained the situation to the crowd of spectators, because he knew very well that it was useless to reason with the birth. Instead, he wanted to avoid strange rumors that would harm Yu Yue and the girls. Fellow students, these two people are the family members of the murderer from the amusement park a few days ago. They feel that we passersby can't fight back when we're being hacked with knives and they're also going to dump the pot of the murderer going to jail on our heads. Do you guys think it's outrageous? The onlooker's students sniffed and then ah, a sound. So strange? I shit. Bullish ah this pair of mother and daughter. Their family killed someone, but also can rely on the head of the passerby. This three views how crooked. Scoundrels chant, can rely on who will rely on who. Anyway, eyes only interests. My family also have relatives are like this. Not with you reasoning, must have benefits. TSK, TSK, really strange. Rolling on the ground to whom to see ah. Look at that woman. I guess I'm going to start a rumor. Many people also directly took out their cell phones and then began to video that big mom on the ground, and that has been splashing and rolling big mom was everyone so with cell phones, as if they were watching a large minion, don't shoot, ah, that big mom's daughter saw that everyone was filming, and then she stomped her feet continuously and started to let out a piercing continuous scream that, don't shoot ah, as a result, the students were filming even more vigorously, and there was even someone who cheerfully said, you're right, but the left turn stoplight is the hardest to wait for, after a few words were spoken, everyone laughed, and the air was filled with merriment, being watched by so many people as a clown. Even Big Mom's thick skin felt her cheeks burning for a moment. She did not expect so many people to help Yi Shuang and the others. She stood up and glared viciously at Yi Shuang. You wait for me, there will be good fruit for you. Big Mom's daughter also said fiercely, we have ways to screw you all. From today onwards that girl won't want to go to school properly. I know a lot of big brothers who wait for her at the school gate every day. After saying that, the Big Mom was about to leave with that girl but unbeknownst to her, these words had completely touched Yi Shuang's bottom line, so much so that he narrowed his eyes slightly, birth is birth, big birth gives birth to small birth, a litter of waste, Yi Shuang deliberately opened his mouth and said faintly, the remnants of society, things without upbringing, even if the family is not extinct it has to be a prison thing, Yi Shuang's mouth was very poisonous, immediately making that big mom and the girls anxious, they turned over, their faces full of resentment, I will beat you to death. The two of them pounced over in a frenzy, then started to tear Yi Shuang's collar, and also punched over. After Yi Shuang touched his collar that had been roughly ripped open, as well as the blood marks above his collarbone that had been scraped by his fingernails, he looked down at the mother and daughter, and a smile appeared on his face, but that smile was cold, even chilling. In the next second, 
Yi Shuang kicked the girl over on the ground, then ruthlessly threw three or four mouths at the big mom. Each slap was given with all the strength, and a few slaps made the woman dizzy, and she even started to tinnitus up and fell on the ground. Then Yi Shuang gave the woman a few more kicks. Yi Shuang's hand is very heavy, but also skillfully avoided the key position. That pair of mother and daughter fell on the ground wailing, but also did not get anyone's sympathy. There were even a few more close ups captured. Boy, brother is so scary when he's angry. Tang Kuk looked dumbfounded at the side. She didn't think that Yi Shuang, who had always treated people gently, would still have such a side. By Yu Yu eh? However, said, Yi Shuang said that, seeing people speaks of people, seeing ghosts speaks of ghosts. But the young girl saw that Yi Shuang was injured, but there is an indescribable hard feeling in her heart. Even if she is bullied by others like this will not have such a feeling, more than her own injury, she does not hope that Yi Shuang will be injured. To grow up quickly, Yi Shuang will not be hurt. She, too, wanted to protect Yi Shuang. He is taking it out on you guys. And Shi Yu didn't know when she appeared on the side, holding a bag of potato chips in her hand and clicking and eating. I think, he himself wouldn't even be angry if he was threatened like this. But when it comes to you guys, he'll definitely beat the other party up once and for all until he's afraid. When did you show up here? Tang Kuku froze. And sure you lazily said, I'd been here for a long time. Soon, the police arrived as well. HM, it's you again? A police officer froze when he saw Yi Shuang, a familiar face. Yi Shuang just smiled faintly. And when that mother and daughter saw the police, they immediately started to shout. Beating people, there is no king's law. Quickly arrest him. Death penalty, death penalty. Comrade police officer, you must do right by us. Afterwards, the police also talked to the crowd to find out what happened and how it started. After learning about what happened, the pair of police officers obviously froze for a moment, but didn't say much. After all, in this line of work, they encountered too many oddballs and births. And for this kind of rascal, the uncles were also considered to be not surprised at all. The two policemen just looked at Yi Xuan with a very sympathetic look, as if asking, how come you always meet oddballs too? After coming out from the police station, it was already evening. Even coming out of the air-conditioned room was still a bit dry and hot. The matter of Su Huan's family is actually very good. After all, that already belongs to the scope of provocation. Not to mention that in the amusement park murder case, as Yi Shuang, they are the passers-by are involved. Not to mention that the back is Su Huan's mother herself ran over to the school gate to do things, but even to the police station. This pair of mother and daughter are still there to splash and roll. But the back of the police said provocation will be sentenced to a maximum of less than 10 years. That pair of mother and daughter suddenly out of the fire. But they are not good. Directly to the hospital to identify injuries. But because both sides belong to the nature of the mutual assault. Coupled with the Yi Shuang although the heavy hand but avoided the vitals. So this level of injury in turn is not useful at all. On the contrary. They are not willing to be detained together and finally to both sides to reconcile the end of the farce. However. Yi Shuang was also clear that things would not end so easily. He still had some aftermath to do. Rather, I have delayed your time. As the parties involved, Tang Koko and Bai Yu Yue naturally followed over. After leaving the entrance of the police station, Yi Shuang smiled and spoke to the two young girls. No oh, I know that my brother did that for us to take out our anger. Just saw those two guys fall on the ground and scream. Don't mention how comfortable it is. Tang Koko was also feeling very relieved. Yi Shuang, at this time, Bai Yen Yu also pulled the corner of Yi Shuang's coat. Whom? Am I useless? The young girl's mood at this moment was also a bit frustrated. Along with knowing more things, she realized that she seemed to be unable to help with many things. Silly girl. Yi Shuang knocked Bai Yu Yu's head. Then after thinking about it, he asked with a smile that, If you know everything, then wouldn't you not need me anymore? Bai Yu Yu eh froze for a moment, as if that was the case. Yu Yu eh, is it true that you don't need me? Need. I need Yi Shuang, Bai Yu Yue immediately said. Even the small hand that was originally grasping the corner of Yi Shuang's coat turned into a direct embrace of his arm. That's right, rely on me to your heart's content. I will protect you as you grow up. Yi Shuang pinched the young girl's face. Don't blame yourself for everything. I hope to see a gradually cheerful Bai Yu Yue. Good. The young girl was like a cute little pet, rubbing her own face against the palm of Yi Shuang's hand. When Tang Kuku, who was on the side, saw this scene, she immediately smiled, ha ha, he, eat your fill, eat your fill, let's go, I'll take you guys out for a late night snack, Yi Shuang said, the pork belly chicken over at Pearl Plaza is quite tasty, yeah, Tang Koko was already hungry, as long as she didn't go home to eat a pot cooked on the line, whether she ate at home or outside she was quite willing, just at this time, Yi Shuang noticed that there were a lot of newly appeared messages in his cell phone, 
especially Chen Qin who had also sent more than 20 messages to himself. There were also several missed calls. She seemed to be aware of what had happened and indicated that she was coming over to the police station. Yi Xuan, how did Chen Qin know about this? After Yi Xuan thought about it, her eyes fell on Bai Yu Yi beside her. Yu Yi, did you tell Chen Qin about this? Bai Yu Yu nodded. Chen Qin's sister, she said she couldn't find you. It seems that she couldn't find herself to run over and ask Bai Yu Yu what's going on. But is it really good for her to leave the company like this and run over directly? Yi Xuan does not think that this guy is the company's business arrangements before coming over. To their own understanding of Chen Qin's character, nine times out of ten is to know that their side of the problem. Directly a foot gas pedal to drive the car over. Yi Shuang directly gave Chen Qin a phone call and soon got through. Yi Shuang, are you all right? Are you still at the police station? I'm coming over right now. Chen Qin's worried voice came from the other side of the phone. She didn't know exactly what had happened. She only knew that Yi Shuang was in the police station. It will take almost more than an hour for you to come over from the company side. My side of the matter has been solved. Don't worry, Yi Shuang said. Ah, Chen Qin's voice paused for a moment. At this moment, not far from the police station at the traffic light, Chen Qin is sitting in the car. Looking at the distance from the destination is still less than one kilometer away. She also had to say, it's good that it's okay. Then, actually, I've only just set off not long ago, so I'll go back first, right? Since the matter had been resolved, Chen Qin also realized that Yi Shuang didn't need her help. The other party must have known that she had left her job and ran over. In order to let Yi Shuang not have any psychological burden, she chose to say that she had also just set off. But, Chen Qin still kind of wanted to meet Yi Shuang, although she had also met in the morning. She inevitably felt lonely. You said you were on your way 40 minutes ago, how could you have just set off? But on the other end of the phone, Yi Shuang's voice rang out, If you're almost there, come straight over. I'll take you to eat pork belly chicken. Then, I'll drive you back to the office. Chen Qin froze for a moment at this point, and it wasn't until the sound of a car honking behind her that she came back to her senses and muttered, how cunning, knowing my mind and not making a sound, but knowing that she was cared for, the girl couldn't help but shed a smirk as well, this young lady is almost there, come and receive me quickly, on the other side, Su Huan's mother as well as Su Huan's sister, Su Lan, also returned home, they were shivering in pain, but their mouths were unrelenting as they cursed Yi Shuang and the others with vicious words, they lived in the city's urban village location, some neighbors saw Su Huan's mother and two people, have a look of avoiding the plague god, not even willing to look at more than one glance, there were also children who were originally playing outside, and when they saw the mother and daughter, they were immediately pulled inside by their own elders, who also closed the door behind them, such a disliked appearance did not make that mother and daughter feel that something was wrong, especially Su Huan's mother, who spat towards the door of someone else's house and, again, she took the shoe cabinet that the others had placed in the aisle after stealing a pair of slippers in it, she only gave up and generally brought her daughter back to the house, it hurts like hell, what kind of garbage hospital, I've suffered such serious injuries and actually said that I can't even count it as a minor injury, Su Huan's mother's face was swollen like a pig's head, and she couldn't speak well, mom, don't worry, I'll spread this to the internet, they'll definitely regret it, Su Lan said, did it work, yes, I know some bloggers online who have a lot of followers, I'll write a small essay then and ask them to help repost it, I don't know anything about that, since you said it would work why don't you do it now, write it now, Sulan took out her cell phone and crackled a large paragraph of her little essay about how poor families like theirs were innocent and bullied, and then all the way to how vulnerable and bullied she was as a woman in society. She must make Yi Shuang pay the price for her defeat. The car was traveling on the highway. The speed was not too fast. 101 up and down. The driving was quite smooth. Yi Shuang held the steering wheel, while the co-pilot was Chen Qin who was taking a nap. She slightly leaned on the side of the car window. The light of the street lamps along the way flowed on her face leaving behind star points of light. After sending Tang Koko and Yu Yue back, Yi Shuang also personally drove Chen Qin back to the company, he knew very well in his heart how busy Chen Qin's day was as the president of a group, not to mention the fact that the drive over had already taken an hour as well as consumed his mind. If he ran back like this, Yi Shuang was really worried that she wouldn't be able to carry it off. Although Chen Qin had a chauffeur, she never let her chauffeur drive for private matters in general. Well, after about 20 minutes, Chen Qin woke up, she first looked around in a daze. When she saw Yi Shuang, she subconsciously touched the corner of her lips. There is no drooling. Yi Shuang's sentence instantly made Chen Qin's face appear red. Only, not thinking about this, Yi Shuang smiled and didn't say anything. Just as Chen Qin knew him very well, he also knew each other's character very well. After a long time of getting along and getting to know each other, 
there had long been an indescribable tacit understanding between them. How many things are still left to be dealt with? Yi Shuang asked, although Chun Qin always said he was idle, but looking like this didn't look like he was idle at all. There are some documents to read. And then, at three o'clock in the morning to take the airplane to go over to Australia, there is a meeting. Have to come back that afternoon to attend an evening event as a guest. Chen Xin said, skillfully touching out a piece of laptop computer out, put it on his thigh to read the company data. How tiring. Yi Shuang sighed with emotion, but in reality this kind of thing once upon a time he didn't seem to experience less. Chen Xin's beautiful eyes whitened Yi Shuang. What can be done about being tired? Tens of thousands of mouths are waiting for dinner. It's just a pity that a certain person is not even willing to help me. Letting me, a small woman, show my face. She purposely sighed, but was secretly observing Yi Shuang's reaction. If I help you, will you be willing to give me the company to take care of? Yi Shuang said in a joking manner. Chen Qin immediately said, Of course, I'm not that guy Zhao Mengao, who likes to whore out the labor force. She stretched out a finger and smiled sweetly. I'll give you all my shares as dowry. I can't afford the dowry. Just give 8,800. Good intention. Yi Shuang smiled, but did not say anything more. After arriving at the company, Yi Shuang directly drove the car into the parking lot of the building, because it was already very late, so there were not many cars in the parking lot. Eldest Miss Chen, get off the car. After parking the car, Yi Shuang said, Well, sit down for a bit longer. I'm a bit sleepy. Chen Qin coveted more time alone with Yi Shuang. She just looked straight at the other party, seemingly a bit reluctant to give up. Yi Shuang just said, I'll go up with you and help you with some documents. Chen Qin's eyes immediately brightened up, as if with light. Really? Aha. Uh -huh. Then let's go. Didn't you say that you're a bit sleepy and want to sit for a bit longer? Not sleepy. After pressing the button for the 35th floor, Yi Shuang rode the elevator with Chen Qin, and now although it was time to get off work, there were still quite a few employees who stayed behind to work overtime. The company's overtime subsidy was very high, although it was off duty at 6 o'clock. A buffet dinner would be provided from 7 o'clock. A company car transfer would be provided from 9 o'clock. And even at 10 o'clock there would be a midnight snack and desserts or something. It's completely voluntary. Yi Shuang stood shoulder to shoulder with Chun Qin, and some of the employees riding the elevator froze when they saw Chun Qin. Mr. Chun. Aha. Chen Qin treated the employees with a slight nod, but not in front of other people will not put out in front of like treating Yi Shuang that like a little girl smiling and laughing. And those employees noticed Yi Shuang, thought that he was the management of which leader, but also did not dare to think more about what. After arriving at the office, Chen Qin directly flopped on the sofa and yawned. Sleepy. Quit. Work. Yi Shuang glanced at her sprawled posture before moving a chair over to the desk. Well, why do people go to work? Even if you ask me, I don't know how to answer you. Yi Shuang looked at the pile of information beside the desk and casually asked, Where is your assistant? Off-duty chanting, usually not on call 24 hours a day. How many assistants do you have? Three. One is the management that came up from the branch. There should be one who can be on call 24 hours a day. Yi Shuang sat down and looked through the information and added, Make me a cup of coffee. Chen Qin said, Wow, am I the boss or are you the boss? Who let you look like you don't want to work? Not at 3 o'clock to catch the plane. Early finish early rest, just rely on the car to take the plane that time to nap. Sooner or later the body dragged down. Yi Shuang didn't care about Chen Xin's wow look, because he knew that the other party was just moving his lips. But in fact, his heart was already happy. Okay, mister. Yi just as Yi Shuang thought, Chen Qin said daintily, and then went to make coffee. If this look was shown to other people, they would be shocked to drop their jaws. When Yi Shuang was looking at the program, the door of the office was suddenly knocked on Yi Shuang didn't think much about it. Yi Shuang didn't think much about it and thought it was Chun Xin. The next moment, the office door was pushed open, followed by a surprised and doubtful voice. Who are you? Yi Shuang looked up and realized that it was a man wearing gold-rimmed glasses. The other party was suspicious with a hint of anger. Why are you here? Are you stealing company secrets? Person, Yang Wei, one of the group's vice presidents, privately has betrayed the company's plans for Tian Wei Group's benefit. Yi Shuang retracted his sight. He continued to look through the program information in the computer and did not pay attention to the other party. In the quiet office, there was only the clattering sound of Yi Shuang's mouse. Security. Security. Yang Wei saw that Yi Shuang actually ignored himself, immediately with wide eyes. He took out his cell phone and was about to call the security up. A thief slipped into the office to steal something. But what surprised Yang Wei was that Yi Shuang actually didn't move at all. He didn't care at all. And the next second, his voice also came out. It's still not clear who was the thief. Yang Wei froze, 
A strange feeling rose in his heart. Did he know something? All of a sudden, Yang Wei's expression began to be cautious. What exactly are you? Who sent you? Mr. Yang, why are you here? At this time, Chen Qin also walked in with two cups of coffee. She naturally heard the sound of Yang Wei yelling in the office. After seeing that Yang Wei was actually here, she immediately frowned her willow leaf eyebrows. Chen, Mr. Chen, why are you here too? Yang Wei also froze after seeing Chen Qin. This is my office, right? After Chen Qin finished speaking, he walked over to Yi Shuang's side and set the coffee beside his hand. Thanks. After looking at the appearance of Yi Shuang sitting on the main seat and Chen Qin sitting on the side looking at the computer together, for a while, Yang Wei actually froze in place, unable to figure out exactly what had happened. Who the hell was he? Mr. Yang, is there something wrong with you? Chen Qin also asked at this time, coming over to the office so late, why didn't you say something in advance? Yang Wei also came back to his senses at this time. He squeezed out a smile and said, it's not just that I happened to see that the lights are on over here. There's a bit of company business that I want to discuss. By the way, General Manager Chen, this gentleman is Dash. Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang said only at this time. Chen Qin also nodded. Well, his name is Yi Shuang. The air was quiet for an instant. Nothing? Yang Wei froze for a moment. A black question mark on his face. You don't have to introduce yourself properly here? The way both people treated themselves as air made Yang Wei have an indescribable hard time for a moment. But he felt that the name Yi Shuang was a bit familiar. After carefully looking at the other person's face, Yang Wei finally thought of who the other person was, and, so it's General Manager Yi, rude rude, I didn't recognize him just now. Yang Wei had actually seen Yi Shuang, he just didn't recognize him for a moment, he said with a smile on his face, I heard that Mr. Ye's little petite wife escaped from marriage, with Mr. Ye's skill, I think it should have been coaxed by now, right? Mr. Ye's dedication is also considered a beautiful story in the circle. It really makes Yang Mao envious. I just don't know when he will still hold a banquet. Yang Wei's sentence made Ji Shuang and Chen Qin look up at the same time. Mr. Yang, if you don't have anything to do, please leave. I still have something to do. Chen Qin's tone was cold. Yang Wei's attitude in this scene and Yang Yi Shuang's attitude made her extremely unhappy. She naturally knew what kind of little scheme Yang Wei was playing. It was just to provoke Yi Shuang to make him lose his temper. Thinking of this, Chen Qin was still a little worried as she looked at Yi Shuang. There will be a banquet. If Mr. Yang is fine, as Chen Qin said leave, we still have to be busy. Yi Xuan's expression did not change at all. He continued to look at the computer, completely ignoring Yang Wei. When you try to provoke the other party, but the other party doesn't put you in their eyes at all or even doesn't want to say a word more. On the contrary, the one who speaks will have a hard time. This was the case with Yang Wei. After being stifled by Yi Xuan's sentence, he blushed a bit instead. Mr. Chen. It's not too good to let an outsider meddle in the company's affairs, right? Yang Wei said. Chen Xin felt that she had already given Yang Wei a lot of face. After seeing the other party BB endlessly, she also completely lost face up. My father is willing to let Yi Shuang participate in the company's matters. Do you have any opinion, Yang Wei? Or do you think I need to listen to you to do things? Chen Xin didn't even shout at Mr. Yang anymore. His nonchalant words made Yang Wei's face green and white, and he had no choice but to force a smile. Well, it's me who overstepped the mark. Chen's father had moved out to press on his head. Yang Wei where would he dare to BB one more sentence? To know that although Chen's father had retired, he was still able to speak his mind in the company. And Chen Qin was just as a successor. After Yang Wei left in ashes, quietness was restored in the office. Chen Qin exhaled and then looked at Yi Shuang. And, Yi, are you alright? Yi Shuang said, what are you referring to? Yang Wei's matter. Seeing Chen Qin looking worried about himself. Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile. Do you think that if someone provokes me a little, I will blush and swear up a storm with the other party? A guy who can't control his emotions like that is just a guy who can't get on the stage after all. Yi Shuang said, pointing at the monitor. This program, there is still room for improvement. Yi Shuang was not dragging his feet at all. Even speaking about the program in his next sentence. Where? Midway. Yi Shuang thought about it and still said something about Yang Wei. But you still need to keep an eye on that guy called Yang Wei especially with other companies. When Chen Qin heard this, she thought that Yi Shuang minded what Yang Wei had just provoked, so she had to say, Yi, the current Yang Wei is still very useful to the company, but don't be angry, I will help you out when I find the opportunity. I don't mean that, Yi Shuang said. You pay attention to whether Yang Wei has any private contacts with the Tianwei group. Yi Shuang's words were almost provocative, and Chen Qin, who was also a smart person, narrowed his eyes slightly when he heard him say that, 
Where did you get the information? It's not like you don't know. My information channels have always been very good. Yi Shuang said and added, Didn't you say last time that there might be a mole in the company? So I paid a little attention to the relevant things. Chen Xin sniffed and instantly pondered. She had 100% trust in Yi Shuang, and Yi Shuang directly named Yang Wei in Tian Wei Group. It didn't look like there was no evidence at all thinking of this. Chen Qin suddenly stretched out her arm and hooked her arm around Yi Shuang's neck, her red lips raised. He 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 he, love you, you actually investigated this for me. He has me in his heart. Mua, touching the lip mark that appeared on her cheek. Yi Shuang froze for a moment, and when she looked at Chen Qin again, the other party averted her eyes in a vain look. Well, deal with the work first. Oh, the night was gradually getting deeper. Yi Shuang was still looking at the program and some reports, while Chen Qin, who was sitting on the side, had already fallen asleep on the table, she was really too tired. Originally she just intended to squint for a few minutes, but ended up falling asleep just like that. Yi Shuang didn't wake her up, listening to her well-proportioned breathing as he continued to work. For the things he understood, he directly made the decision for Chen Qin, for the ones he was not clear about. Yi Shuang chose to leave a relevant sticky note to write down the key points that he had refined so that Chen Qin could see it clearly at a glance and save time to make a decision. Yi Shuang is very skillful in doing these things. After all, the previous company was full of piggybackers. Although the company is not as big as Chen Qin's side, but the difficulty is much higher. Chen Qin's side still has a lot of talent. It's just that the company is too big, so the management still needs a specially set up department to step in. Time flies, it's already early in the morning. Yi Shuang put down his pen, put the organized documents on the table and after locking the computer again, he stood up and stretched. Looking at the sleeping Chin Qin, Yi Shuang just stretched out his hand, but still stopped in mid-air. After wordlessly saying good night, he turned off a few lights and left the office straight. The temperature at night was a bit cold, so much so that Yi Shuang couldn't help but rub his palms together. Looking at the brightly lit skyscrapers, he suddenly realized that he had forgotten one rather important thing, the, didn't drive here. The Bentley that just carried Chin Qin was their company car. Yi Shuang couldn't just drive it away with him when he left, and it would be a troublesome thing to really return it at that time. Ha! Is there a car to beat at night? Yi Shuang fumbled a bit from his pocket, pulled out a candy and threw it into his mouth. At this point then, Yu Yu the child is estimated to have fallen asleep. He looked at Mei Ijia not far away and muttered, I really want to smoke a cigarette, but in the end, the chewing taste and reason prevailed. After all, Yu Yu didn't like the smell of smoke. The taxi software in her hand still did not respond. And at this time, although the road was not quiet, she did not see the figure of a cab either. From Chun Qin's company to his own apartment, a taxi actually costs more than 300. It's so far away. It doesn't feel that way when I'm driving. Yi Shuang pondered. Or else go back and borrow a car from Chun Qin. However, after thinking that she might have already fallen asleep, Yi Shuang thought about it and cancelled the taxi button. Then ticked off a bunch of options such as express limousine carpooling and then downloaded a few more taxi software to take a taxi at the same time. Dang. Finally picked up the order. Distance to you 3 kilometers. Expected to arrive in 6 minutes. Masterin is at your service. Word of mouth, 2. 1 stars. Beyond the same city 0% drivers. Model, Wuling Hongwang Combat Edition. Yi Shuang squinted his eyes. Unconsciously sucked in a breath with his back teeth. And after once again making sure that he hadn't read it wrong. He clicked on the other person's avatar. A familiar face appeared in front of her eyes, and in Shi Yu's avatar still had her scissor hands up. Yi Shuang. A few minutes later, a pink and purple van stopped in front of Yi Shuang. Z Z Z. Only to see the windows start to roll down, but issued a squeaky squeaky toothsome sound. The driver's seat side of a silhouette looked over, as if a little surprised out loud. Oh, this guest looks familiar. Yi Shuang pulled open the car door expressionlessly, then sat up. Master in. Indeed very familiar. The car was still playing Phoenix Dance 9 Days DJ music at this time, and every now and then there were shouting anchors there saying, Is the cement ready? Uncle why are you here? Looking for a bar to pick up a corpse? And Shi Yu didn't seem to have expected Yi Xuan to be here either, and couldn't help but look at him more. There are so many office buildings here. Where does it look like a bar? The corner of Yi Xuan's mouth tugged. Yi Xuan was even powerless to spit out the other party's aesthetics, and directly chose silence. So late. Don't you have to go to class tomorrow? But Yi Shuang finally asked. It's fine oh. And Shi Yu had an indifferent look on her face. Anyway, I'll just catch up on sleep in the school nurse's office tomorrow. Yi Shuang. He closed his eyes and chose not to talk to and Shi Yu anymore. After seeing that Yi Shuang didn't want to talk, and Shi Yu didn't say anything more, she pressed down on the gas. And the sound of the car's loud airwaves instantly made Yi Shuang open his eyes. 
How can you have an engine sound in this car? Oh, the sound wave simulation is just not the very popular one what? Well, electronic sound wave. Ang Shi Fish said, just add a stereo. Why add this kind of thing? Yi Shuang has not finished. A moment of pushback feeling let him watch the van three seconds to break a hundred. Wait, sound you a ghost? One hour later, under the apartment building, uncle remembered to give a good review. And she used voice along with the sound of roaring airwaves. The pink and purple van quickly disappeared into thin air. Yi Shuang's face was ironic as he held onto a green tree. And after trying to force down the feeling that he was going to vomit several times, he muttered, This guy, appeared out there just to torture humans. After silently giving in Shurfu a one-star review and blacklisting him, he staggered towards his apartment. Getting on the elevator, Yi Shuang swiped the door card and then gently pushed open the door. What surprised Yi Shuang was that the room was brightly lit at this time, while a glance over, a long-haired girl was sitting on the sofa with a pillow in her arms. Yi Shuang, upon seeing Yi Shuang, Bai Yen Yu, who was still dozing off, immediately stood up, her snow-white arms hugging a pillow and walked over, her voice carrying weariness, you're back. Yi Shuang looked at the young girl in front of him, and after subconsciously glancing at the time of nearly 2 a.m., he couldn't help but reach out his hand and gently touch the young girl's head. You you eh, uh, why don't you sleep? Waiting for Yi Shuang, you still have classes tomorrow, why are you waiting for me? Yi Shuang said, noticing that she was still wearing her school uniform, and hadn't even taken a bath. The young girl hung her eyes, the pillow in her arms hugged a few points tighter. I miss you, can't sleep. Yi Shuang looked at her, after all did not have the heart to blame her for anything, just softly said, you you eh, uh, if there is a next time in this situation, just sleep obediently on your own, okay? Bai Yu Yu eh sniffed, but just subconsciously nodded. Oh, Yi Shuang didn't know whether she had listened to him or not. He thought about it and finally had no choice but to rub her head. I'll try to come home earlier in the future. Bai Yu Yu eh's eyes gained a few more moments of vigor. Good, hurry up and take a bath. Don't wash your hair tonight, go to bed early. Yi Shuang said. Yi Shuang together. No way. Together. Okay. Bai Yen Yu stretched out a hand to pull the corner of Yi Shuang's coat. Her voice, although soft, sounded like she was being petulant. Yi Shuang. Together. I'll be a good girl. Wearing a swimsuit. Yi Shuang looked at her and finally softened his heart. Then you go and change your clothes. After simply rinsing their bodies, the two chose to soak in the bath for a little while. The warm bath water shook, driving the little yellow duck above to swim up. Bai Yen Yu coiled her hair and then wore a soaking cap and sat on Yi Shuang's lap. Her pair of beautiful eyes focused on those rubbery little yellow ducks. That pair of lovely appearance even made Yi Shuang feel that she was able to look at it for a day. At this moment, Yi Shuang was just moving his sore shoulders, and after his eyes noticed the wet snow white skin, he closed his eyes slightly and continued to press his shoulders. After about a few minutes, Yi Shuang noticed that Bai Yu Yi suddenly lay down on the side of the bathtub and seemed to have fallen asleep in a daze. Sure enough can't hold up anymore. Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile. The next day. Well, right teacher, Yu Yu Wei isn't feeling well today. She'll go back to school after two classes. The smart school app has been applied. Okay. After hanging up his cell phone, Yi Shuang returned to the second floor on top of the bed. At this time, Bai Yu Yu Wei was still asleep. She let out steady breaths and hugged her pillow without letting go. Because the two classes in the morning happened to be physics and chemistry, Yi Shuang preferred to let Bai Yu Yi rest for a while longer and then bring this niece over when he went to work, as for the learning side of things, he gave Bai Yugi a small cooker to make up for the absent two sessions of knowledge, and it would be fine. On Tang Koko's side, Yi Shuang also gave her an explanation of the situation. Just don't know that the other party seemed to look very happy after knowing that Yu Yue went to bed very late last night. Yi Shuang returned to the bed, perhaps to feel the temperature. Bai Yu Yue suddenly murmured, small hand fumbled a little, and finally rolled over to Yi Shuang's body, close to his thigh to continue to sleep. Seeing the young girl who was like a kitten approaching the sleeping girl, Yi Shuang reached out and lifted her hair, and took over the flat panel from the bedside table. The tablet had a magnetic keyboard, and combined together it was like a mini laptop. Yi Shuang set the tablet on his thighs, then leaned his back against the bed. He flexibly tapped the keys on the keyboard to code words with one hand, while the other hand gently pinched the young girl's face. Bai Yu Yue did not wake up, but instead rubbed against Yi Shuang's palm and slept more soundly. Quiet room only downstairs wind chime subtle sound. Yi Shuang focused on writing a novel. Readers are getting more and more. The results seem to look like the overall seems to be okay. He estimated. This month's fee seems to be good look. Later dinner can give Yu Yui add a roasted duck legs. Just at this time, the cell phone vibrated. Yi Shuang glanced at it and realized that it was a message sent by Tang Koko. Tang Kuku, brother is bad. That woman is rumoring about you on the internet. 
Tang Koko, people wrote little essays for you on the internet. Yi Shuang didn't seem to be surprised at all when he saw this message. After all, Su Huan's family members were supposed to be unreasonable guys, and would definitely try to mess with you a bit. This was also why he had first explained things to the onlookers in the beginning, as more people had brushed up to it before spontaneously revealing the truth to the unknown masses. At this time, Tang Koku also sent the link over. Yi Shuang took a look. Title, My Father Died. My brother was victimized and sent to prison in order to get the loan back. Is there really no king's law in this world? These people borrowed our family's money, but because my father died unexpectedly after they are not willing to pay back the money, but also slander us, and finally this lewd man also beat me and my mom. These people are very background in the local area. Even the official are afraid to control, and even still a gang. We went to the hospital to identify the injuries, but the hospital in order to cover up these births. Hard to say that we are not injured, not counted as injuries. You look at these pictures, a few bruises, JPG. A few with blood at the corners of the mouth. JPG. We just want our money back because since my dad passed away and my mom got very sick, the family is now very poor and it is literally impossible to get by. But these people not only don't pay back the money, they even insult us and beat us, saying that we are just the bottom of the barrel, that we are migrant workers, the trash of society, and that we don't deserve to live. Family, I really have no way to go. Please help me. Likes, 1, 2 W, comments, 7988. Retweets, 3, 7 W. In addition to the small essay, Tang Koku also forwarded a short video over. Su Lan in the video was covered in wounds and crying. She was sniffling and choking on what happened to her. In the comments section, there were those who comforted Su Lan, those who abused Yi Shuang in them, and those who were shouting about life's first lesson and whatnot, as well as a series of replies such as to open a box for Yi Shuang in them. And of course there was also a portion of reasonable netizens who asked why they didn't call the police and the result was quickly overwhelmed by the replies of life's first lesson. There were also some netizens who didn't believe it, but were sprayed with barbs and whatnot. The comments section at this time also appeared a million fans of the Big V, left a message, suffocating. This reply not only received tens of thousands of likes, but was also reprinted. Yi Shuang saw the righteous indignation of the netizens. The expression is light. It seems that this world has the ability to think independently or too few people. A small essay can be the netizens as a gun. Cannot help but let Yi Shuang recall the previous hot poor students were robbed of the relief fund thing. The poor student said with a snotty nose and a tear in his eyes that his aid was snatched away by the AJ wearer, saying how poor he was, and that he didn't want to buy any apples. Netizens immediately donated to him, and it didn't take long to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars, but in the end, it was revealed that this poor student rented a 4 yuan house for a month, bought an 8 yuan computer and charged money to oh god to draw cards, but said he couldn't afford to eat apples or drink coke. What a comical ending. Yi Shuang continued to look through the comment section and found that some self-media had already started to match the BGM to forward and eat the traffic, and there were also righteously angry netizens who rushed into the official comment section of the Haiju. Things were getting bigger and bigger, but Yi Shuang was not in a hurry at all. She even wanted to make it bigger, so that they could be reunited with Su Huan's family in prison. On the other side, Su Huan's house. Mom look, look, a lot of people are forwarding my video, and there are big verses with millions of followers who are forwarding it for me. Su Lan took her cell phone and rushed into her mother's room and said, when big mother saw that her daughter's phone actually had more than 10, 000 comments, even if she didn't understand the internet anymore, she knew what it meant, and her old face instantly burst into smiles, and she said, well well well, that's how it should be written, let him know what happens when he messes with us, kill him really think we mother and daughter are easy to bully. Auntie said, and then asked her daughter, do you think that man will come to us to pay for the damages? That's for sure. There are a lot of netizens who have gone to look for that man now. Maybe they'll be stabbed twice even when they go out. Sulan said proudly, I didn't know that putting it on the internet would be so hot. Originally it was just for some friends who were beauty bloggers to forward it. Who knew that when I added the keywords of migrant laborers and lower class people, the traffic would just rub up. Mom, look. There are still people who pity us and say they want to donate to us. Su Lan pointed to the red marks at the corners of her mouth. You can fool so many people with lipstick. Big Mom instantly glared at her own daughter. And, why don't you pull a group together and tell those who want to donate to call in all their money? I know, Su Lan said, but pointed to the bed on the side. Mom, but you still have to cooperate with me to shoot a few videos. Later on you'll just wail on the bed for a few moments. The more pitiful the better. Got it. Hurry up. After just one day. The heat of this video had once again gone up a notch, and even squeezed right into the hot search headlines. 
Million fan blogger Don't Finish Girl also said a bit about Su Lan and the girls when she opened her live broadcast today. She was sitting in the live broadcast room, and while applying foundation to herself with a powder, she said, I just talked to that poor mother and daughter for a while too. I have to say it's still good to be abroad, respecting the vulnerable, helping women, and safe. After Tang Yo finished speaking, the pop ups have cleared the air and started to follow the rhythm. Wow, Tang Yo is also beautiful today. I definitely want to reincarnate out in my next life. I don't have a chance now. Tang Yo help them. That girl is too pitiful. Being beaten like this. Tang Yo you really look like a little fairy today. Looking at the pop ups that were praising herself. Tang Nui hooked the corners of her mouth at the moment and put on her best European and American makeup before topping it off with her big red lips and saying, I'm definitely going to help that mother and daughter, like that kind of underhead guy, TSK TSK. Saying this, Tang Nui made her signature unequaled smug expression, which instantly caused the pop-ups to snap 6666 once again. At this time, there were also pop-ups that said, I just saw what seems to be a video from another perspective. That mother and daughter don't seem to be any good people either. Yeah oh, I just saw it too. That mother and daughter pair cursed so hard. After Tang Nyo saw the pop-up, she also directly searched for the relevant video. But after she watched it, she just laughed disdainfully. Girls are supposed to be vulnerable. They're protecting themselves. This comment was immediately supported by many people. That's right. If you don't bully others, others will have to bully you. I think that mother and daughter are right. And those wounds can't be from hitting themselves, right? You can't just get hurt and then fight back. Take the initiative right sister, Tang Nui continued to say, lightly said, don't think about it, this matter will not have a reversal, if there is a reversal, I Tang Nyo retired from the net from now on can, what Tang Nyo said live on air pushed the heat of this matter even further upwards, led by her as well as a bunch of beauty bloggers, the defenders of justice started to launch a charge, and began to pickpocket Yi Shuang and their information, but soon, many people realized that something was wrong, until someone pickpocketed something, that mother and daughter were the family members of the amusement park murderer from some time ago. It was important to know that the amusement park case originally died one or two people not so much that the whole country knew about it, simply because ensure use over the shoulder fall in a Pikachu doll suit was too cool, and ended up flaming out of the ring. When it was learned that the crying mother and daughter were actually the murderer's family members, things started to get subtle all of a sudden. No way. Didn't that woman say that her brother was framed and jailed? This chopping with a knife doesn't seem to be like being framed at all and after being held down, she continued to hurt people with a knife. Wait a minute, you guys see if that passerby looks like the man in the mother-daughter video. Hiss, it seems like it's a bit yes oh, it's all very handsome. After the netizens realized that something was wrong, this time there were more shooting angles of the video streamed out, and of course there were Yi Shuang's words of explanation with the students and in the video. It was even all about Su Lan threatening others first, and then taking the initiative to beat them up after being talked back to. Not at all about being unilaterally beaten up as she said. The mother and daughter were not innocent at all. Bullshit. This is a scoundrel. Right? What kind of tripe is this? 66,666. I'm really convinced. Loss I was so angry that I couldn't sleep to help forward. Together with the original you guys are the biggest villains ah. Uh, the son stabbed someone. And then relied on the victim to extort money. I have been enlightened in my life. No. How dare they ah. Uh, why say it is someone else oppressing them? That aggressive look like a hooligan. Damn. I also donated $50 to them. Feed the dog ah. Oh. Let the bullets fly for a while. This year's reversal of things are not few? That poor student who gave money to the game but couldn't afford a coke. Have you forgotten? All of a sudden. The internet exploded. And the winds took a sideways trend almost overnight. And on Su Lan's side. She is still in the group beautifully receiving red envelopes. Although her face is smiling flowers. But her mouth is sending voice messages choking saying thank you to the good people and will definitely repay later and so on. Mom, this is also too much money. One day we earned 100,000. Sulan at first just wanted to get the netizens to attack Yi Shuang online, but she didn't expect it to be so lucrative. Don't hurry up and open a new group. It's all full. Sulan's mother was lying on her bed counting the money from those red envelopes. Her eyes were almost gone from smiling. And, it's not like we'll be able to live in a villa in a month? Sulan sniffed, and then proudly invited credit. Mom, I'm great. Right. I've long said that online is good for making money. At first you were reluctant to go as an anchor. You had to ask me to screw. Well well well. Now I believe it. You quickly transfer the money to me. I'll send it to my sisters in the group. Sulan was just about to transfer the money to her own mother when she realized that there were hundreds more messages in the group. And they were all at her. Looks like someone sent me a red packet again. Sulan clicked in. 
only to see messages that were clear of abusive comments about herself. She first froze, then frowned and kicked the person. But soon, Sulan realized that there were more and more people spraying themselves, and there were even people who had just transferred money to themselves, and after just a little while, it was as if they had changed into a different person. Su Lan was a little panicked. She immediately took out her cell phone and sent out a voice, aggrieved and asked why everyone was scolding themselves and so on. As a result, the group immediately sent her hundreds of voices greeting her mother in almost every dialect. How come all at once? Su Lan stared blankly at the messages, while the big mom on the side got a little impatient. She directly copied her slippers and threw them at her head, cursing and saying, letting you transfer money to me. What are you doing standing there stupidly? Wanting to embezzle it? Not mom. Those netizens seem to have discovered. Discovered on found. Kick the person is not on the line? Kicking can't be finished. Sulan saw the messages soar all the way up to thousands, all of which were abusive to herself. The number of people looking dazzled. She had to take out her cell phone and call her best friend who was a beauty blogger. Hey baby, why did people suddenly start calling me names? You let me say what you good. Write a small essay don't write so easy to be demolished ah. This is now for people to strip to the bottom pants or not left. You really suffer me. Seek your own happiness. But, but, Sulan hadn't finished that sentence when the phone was hung up. When she called back again, Sulan realized that she had also been blacklisted. Just at this time, the sound of a knocking on the door also rang out. Hello, police, please open the door. Reversal of mother and daughter beatings in Haiju City. Haiju City official notice. Reversal. Another perspective. The incident of the mother and daughter in Haiju City turns out to be the family of a murderer. The mother and daughter of Haiju City have been detained. Announcement of resolute resistance to cyber violence. The next day, in the school nurse's office, at this time, Yi Shuang sat on a chair and looked at these messages in his cell phone. Even he couldn't help but freeze for a moment. The reversal was so fast? Strange. I was thinking of fermenting for a few days. Why did it reverse in a day? Yi Shuang stroked his chin and thought. He originally wanted to operate for a while. But in the end, when he went to read the news again the next day, he found that the mother and daughter had been detained. You made it? He turned his head to the side. At this time a short-haired girl was resting her legs on the table. She was grasping the handle and those eyes were looking at the game and the projection screen. After hearing Yi Shuang inquire about herself, she still looked at the screen without moving. It's none of my business. Like that kind of loophole riddled text, it was originally not scrutinized. Just at this time, Yi Shuang's cell phone rang. He glanced at it and realized that it was sent by Chen Qin. Chen Qin, I'll help you out with the matter. I'll see who dares to slander my Yi Shuang. Chen Qin, husky pointing at people. JPG. Yi Shuang realized at this time. The reason why this matter will be reversed one day. In addition to that mother and daughter's small composition cannot be prohibited from digging deeper. It seems to be that Chen Qin saw it and also made a move. It was estimated that there was no less buying push streams. I should have known to say it in advance. In that case. I guess I can't sit in jail, right? Yi Shuang couldn't help but think about it. The cost of defaming others was too small, and it was difficult to file a lawsuit. So after many people were defamed, even if they went to court, they ended up not getting support even after expending energy and money. For example, the Sunduck court the other day, the main focus is to never let any good person off the hook, and even blame you for being catty. It was precisely because rumor mongering was easy and profiting was simple that such things were banned on the internet. Chen Qin. On the other hand, seemed to have read Yi Shuang's mind, and before he could reply to the message, Chen Xin sent out a few sentences. Chen Xin, I've sued all the rumor-mongering bloggers as well as that mother and daughter. Don't worry, I'll appoint a lawyer to specialize in lawsuits over there. He he he. Chen Xin, Wurligig said, the gentleman is not heavy is not powerful. Yi Shuang, it means that no heavy hand cannot establish prestige. Chen Xin, Agi you know very well yo. JPG. Chen Xin, please qua qua qua. JPG. Chen Xin didn't seem to want Yi Shuang to waste her energy on this kind of place, coupled with her own very protective personality. She believed that she could let those people have a relatively handcuffable life. Originally, I also wanted to let them go to the cesspool bidding tournament, since Chen Xin has already made a move. Then forget it. Yi Shuang sat on the chair and after chatting with Chen Xin for a few more words, he put his cell phone down. The school doctor's room was a lot quieter, except for the sound of an Shiyu playing games and a few unintelligible Osaka foul language from time to time. Yi Shuang continued to look at the medical books, only lately the categorization he read was more in favor of cardiovascular knowledge. He pushed the flat gold glasses on the bridge of his nose, and the look of those deep, dark eyes drawing in knowledge made even in Shiyu beside him couldn't help but look back. Just at this time, a sparrow flew in from the window and just landed on his shoulder twisting its head. Beep. 
Perhaps because the animals in this academy had no sense of crisis, or it could also be because Yi Xuan usually fed them often by the window. These sparrows and pigeons and such weren't afraid of people at all, and sometimes they would fly in to ask for food. Eh? Yi Shuang also noticed the sparrow on his shoulder at this moment. He took out a jar with rice grains from the drawer and then sprinkled some on the table. After seeing the other party pecking at the grains of rice, Yi Shuang also said, Eat it and leave. Don't poop in the school nurse's office or you won't have it in the future. He didn't care if the other party heard him or not, and after feeding him, he continued to read. At this time, the sound of the character's death came from the game screen, and in Shiyu realized that she was a bit engrossed in what she was reading. Teenage girl. She turned back and read the file to continue playing the game. Time flashed by, and it was already almost noon. Yi Shuang realized at this time that his cell phone rang again, and this time, it was Chen Hai who sent him a message instead, which made him slightly surprised. Chen Hai, pouncer boy, come out and get high together. Yi Shuang? Yi Shuang, you're not working? It's almost noon. What's the point of coming out to get high? Chen Hai, how about having lunch with me? It's just for a little while. It's my treat at the fancy restaurant. Chen Hai, I'll pay for it at the fancy restaurant. Yi Shuang was a bit puzzled as to why Chen Hai suddenly called himself out. But after considering that the other party might have something he wanted to say to him face to face, he had no choice but to say dash. Yi Shuang, did you run into something? Chen Hai, hey, what could be wrong? Nothing. Yi Shuang, then send over the address. Soon. Chen Hai's address was sent over, and Yi Shuang took a look at it and realized that it was a family of all 3,000 menu less dishes. This guy, what is he thinking? Yi Shuang did not dwell on it. If there was really something, he would know it at the destination. During the lunch break, after Yi Shuang sent a message to Bai Yuyue and the girls, he drove himself out of the academy. The address that Chen Hai sent over was not far away, probably less than 10 minutes away. After Yi Shuang parked his car in the garage, he soon met Chen Hai in the restaurant. This way, Chen Hai said, but Yi Shuang noticed that there was a girl sitting beside him. The girl was not very old. She looked like she was in her early twenties, and although she did not have any makeup on, she was overflowing with vigor. After noticing Yi Shuang's gaze, the other party smiled and nodded. Out of politeness, Yi Shuang also just nodded towards her before following and sitting down. The flavor of this restaurant is very good. My treat today, Chen Hai said with a smile, but Yi Shuang felt that he was a little different from usual. Yi Shuang just pulled the corner of her mouth, calling me out to eat at noon. Why do I feel that it is not that simple? Say it, what other things do you need to hide from me? Gripe you, what other things do I have to hide from you? Chen Hai said, but his voice paused for a moment. Let's eat first. Yi Shuang saw his look of wanting to speak, and in the end, she didn't ask any further. This restaurant did not have a menu. It was the chef who used the ingredients of the day to mix and match them into various dishes by himself. Of course Yi Shuang was not used to eating. But he noticed that the girl beside Chen Hai was eating happily. Through conversation, he learned that the girl was Chen Hai's subordinate, also working at the bank there. Yi Shuang, noticing a hint of a strange odor. Yi Shuang looked at the girl a few more times and checked out the other party's information. Person, Zhou Min, bank employee, in the middle of pregnancy, at this time, the chef also brought up the dishes. Yi Shuang picked up his chopsticks and dipped them in wasabi before bringing them to his mouth, he chewed slightly, not paying attention to the flavor coming from his taste buds. Yi Xuan's mind was completely elsewhere. The girl called Zhou Min was chucking the sashimi she didn't like into Chen Hai's bowl, and the latter didn't say much, just ate it. If this was Chen Hai and his wife that wouldn't be strange at all, but, I'm going to the restroom first, Zhou Min said. Then after giving a slight smile towards Yi Shuang as well, she got up and left for the time being. After seeing that girl disappearing around the corner, Yi Shuang also finally opened his mouth at this time. Say, what's going on with that girl? Don't tell me you cheated on her. Ugh. Chen Hai didn't answer Yi Shuang. He just sighed deeply. The chopsticks he held in his hand stirred the soy sauce dish haphazardly. The wrinkled eyebrows on his obese face seemed to be able to pinch a fly. Yi Shuang did not speak. Just looked at him like this. Time is running out. She is coming back. Or do you want to talk to me alone at night? I don't know what to do with myself. Chen Hai finally spoke. Zhou Min said that she is pregnant. And it's still my child. I have a messy head right now. I don't know what to do. Yi Shuang asked. Does your wife know? Of course it's impossible to know. Chen Hai was full of bitter smiles. Where do I dare to say ah? I don't even dare to say this matter to Chen Xin. I am afraid that she will kill me. Yi Shuang sighed. Why? With Yi Shuang's understanding of Chen Hai, he shouldn't do this kind of derailment. Although Chen Hai's wife has a big temper and Chen Hai is a rake ear, but only men who love their wives are rake ears. If you don't love the woman, it's useless for her to have a big temper. It's as if the trick of hunger strike is also only useful for mothers. Both need someone to care about it. That day, 
The colleague party was very drunk, and when I got up, I was in a bed with Zhou Min, there was still falling red on the bed, Chen Hai continued, in the blur I seem to remember that there is such a thing, and it seems that there is no such thing, a little while later, Zhou Min said she had it, and only did it with me, Yi Shuang, I don't know what to do now, Chen Hai stuffed a few pieces of meat from the plate into his mouth, chewing it in big gulps like he was trying to calm his inner turmoil and irritation, if the old man knew, I don't think I'd know how to die, and Xiao Xiao is still so young, she has always felt that dad is the most reliable man in the world, I really don't want to let her down, Yi Shuang sniffed, he asked, since it was just an accident, wouldn't it be better to let that woman abort the child and you give her a compensation? Chen Hai scratched his head, that's what I planned to do at first, but Zhou Min said that she's actually been secretly in love with me all along, so she's not willing to abort this child, Yi Shuang, so what are you calling me out for, for me to give you advice? Yi Shuang said, you got married so much earlier than me, then got married to your wife because of an accidental pregnancy in one shot, and now you're like this. I feel that this talent of yours is even better than a breeder. Maybe it's a breeder reincarnated. I'll gripe you. So, what are you going to do? Give birth and secretly raise it? Yi Shuang asked. I don't know. She's not willing to abort it, and said it's okay to give birth and raise it herself. Seeing Chen Hai's tangled appearance now, Yi Shuang didn't know what he should say for a while. He suddenly asked, Are you sure that what Zhou Min is carrying is your seed? She said that she can do a paternity test when the child comes out. It's definitely my seed and the timing is right. Chen Hai had also thought about this, but Zhou Min's determined look was very believable. It so happened that Zhou Min also came out from the restroom at this time. She smiled and asked, what are you chatting about so happily? Just a topic between men. After Zhou Min appeared, Yi Shuang and Chen Hai didn't continue to talk deeply. Obviously today's lunch was Chen Hai's intention to let Yi Shuang meet Zhou Min to see what can be done. After the meal was over, it was almost time for Yi Shuang to go back to school. He sat in the car. Looking at Zhou Min's intimate appearance close to Chen Hai, finally rolled up the window. Just before driving, Yi Xuan opened his cell phone as if he remembered something. In the interface of the circle of friends, Chen Hai also sent a circle of friends last night. Happy birthday to my little baby. Below was a nine-panel photo of Chen Xiaoqiao, and in the photo in the center, there was a family of three very happy in front of a cake. What is this? Yi Xuan looked at Chen Hai in the photo and seemed to ponder for a while before putting his cell phone aside and starting the vehicle. It was better to find some time to talk to Chen Hai alone again. After returning to the school, it so happened that the lunch break was almost over. Just outside is still very lively. After all, there are not many days left before the school festival. The outside is also decorated. There are still many student councils are busy hanging lanterns. Mr. Bai, what are you looking at? A voice came from beside him. Yi Shuang glanced at it and realized that it was a physical education teacher that he had a conversation with. It's not the school festival coming up. Just taking a casual look, Yi Shuang said, then asked, which class are you taking later? Class A's P, E, class, but these days are free. I still have to go and help set up the scene for the school festival. Yi Shuang sniffed and suddenly smiled. In that case, why don't I help you lead a PE class? That good? But you have to report the transfer of classes, right? It's fine. I don't have a class, purely to help you lead a class. Yi Shuang said, it just so happened that he wanted to move his body. After all, he had wanted to play badminton with Yu Yue before, so this was a good opportunity. Ooh, the gym teacher sniffed and slapped Yi Shuang's butt. You kid, I like it. The corner of Yi Shuang's mouth tugged. He always felt that the gym teacher's eyes looking at him were a little bit not quite right, but he still waved his hand. All right, you go and set up the scene. I'll take the A class. Ow, oh, you take them to do a warm-up exercise. Run two laps and then they can move freely. Good. Yi Shuang glanced at the time and realized that it was a few minutes before. He arrived at the playground and then waited at the place where class A usually assembled. The boys would come a bit earlier because they were changing in the classroom. And with Yi Shuang's own identity as the school doctor plus having invigilated class A, there were still a few boys who recognized Yi Shuang and said hello. After realizing that Yi Shuang had come to take the physical education class of class A, several boys looked at each other, but did not say anything. Did the college run out of money to hire a teacher? How come this teacher is wearing several hats? Soon after. Some students came over to gather when they saw that the boys were all piling up here. Soon, Yi Shuang found that at the stairway, the young girl with a ponytail walked over with a small potato. Ten minutes ago, women's locker room. Well, it's annoying. It's stuck. Well, Tang Koko was having trouble changing as usual, and because she was going to be in gym class, she changed into sports underwear, but even the last large size sports underwear was a bit too small for her, to the point where her face was suffocated in red. After she managed to put it on, 
She noticed that Bai Yuyue on the side looked like she was in a daze. She was topless, her slender fingers pinching the underwear not knowing what she was looking at. Even the dull hairs on her head were dangling like ripe rice ears. Yu Yuyue your skin is so nice. It's so tender. Tang Kuka came over and pinched the flesh on her body. What are you gawking at? Bai Yuyue came back to her senses at this time. Putting her underwear on. Lunch break. Didn't see Yi Shuang. You're still really sticky brother. But there's no way la. After all. Brother has something to go out at noon. Tang Koko said. Bai Yuyue was even more lost. As if the body was plunged into low air pressure all around. No spirit at all. Wow. As soon as you finish talking. You're even more lost. Tang Kuka thought about it and had no choice but to say. Since that's the case. After gym class I'll go with you to the school nurse's office to hang out. Bai Yuyue seemed to be instantly energized. But as if she thought of something she said. Yi Shuang said that you can't just go. It's fine. It's fine. Well, let's just say that my stomach isn't feeling well. And you're coming over to keep me company what? Tang Kuko blinked her eyes and seemed to be a bit sly as she said. Bai Yu Yu small chicken pecking rice general nod. Also not like just like that lost. Coco, please eat delicious. Good yo. Unbeknownst to the two teenage girls. When they went to the gym class with such thoughts, they realized that the person in class A who was assembling the teen was actually Yi Shuang. This was something that both Tang Koko and Bai Yu Yue did not expect. After they looked at each other, they first returned to the team. Bai Yu Yue was even looking straight at Yi Shuang. And if it wasn't for the fact that she was being pulled by Tang Koko, she seemed to be itching to pounce over and absorb Yi Shuang's energy in front of the whole class. Your PE teacher is not feeling well, so I'm helping to lead a class. Yi Shuang said. Well, I believe you all know me. After all, because of that mother and daughter thing, as the school where the incident happened, as long as they pay attention to the internet in fact, they are all no strangers to Yi Shuang now, and there are even a few of them who helped forward the truth to the students. Uncomfortable? Isn't the gym teacher right there? At this time, a student opened his mouth to say. The whole class followed the direction he pointed to look over there, but found that not far away from the physical education teacher is talking and laughing with those few students' union students. That wearing an undershirt to reveal the appearance of two muscular arms does not look like physical discomfort at all. Well, it's all the same. Yi Shuang was not going to say that he wanted to play badminton with Bai Yu Yue before he came over to lead this class. He looked at the students in front of him and directly opened his mouth and asked, Who is your sports committee member? Teacher, it's me. At this time, Luo Che walked out and said. Yi Shuang glanced at Luo Che, then smiled and said. Student Luo Che, you command everyone to do warm-up exercises. Oh, okay teacher. Luo Che was originally still wondering what Yi Xuan was calling himself out for, but after realizing that it was just to come out and do warm-up exercises, he didn't refuse, or he didn't have any reason to refuse, because there was no whistle. Luo Che instead used his palms to beat the beat. Stretching exercise, one, two, three, four. The students weren't lazy and honestly followed, and to ask what the reason was it was because Yi Shuang, who was standing behind Luo Che with a smile on her face, wasn't someone to be bullied. In the video that someone recorded of that mother and daughter, Yi Shuang's fighting power of one kick and one birth was too scary, directly knocking the two down to the ground wailing and not being able to get up. I heard that this even kicking and beating to the hospital did not check out the disease, completely belongs to as a white pain. That group of students at the moment also felt the oppressive force from the school nurse. While doing warm-up exercises, Bai Yen Yu kept looking at Yi Shuang. Even when she was bending over to stretch, she still raised her little head. But because Yi Shuang was standing behind Luo Che, at this moment, Luo Che only felt his heart skip a beat after meeting those clear eyes. He thought Bai Yu Yue was looking at herself, and immediately straightened her back. Even her voice had a bit more momentum. Open and close jump. One, two. After the warm-up, Yi Shuang let Luo Che return to the team, then said, does everyone want to run or free movement? Free activity dash, in fact, most of the students didn't love sports, especially running, so when Yi Shuang said that, almost all of them said that they wanted free activity. Yi Shuang looked at them, so many people want to move freely? Of course, Yi Shuang wanted to, he didn't want to waste his time watching the students run, a little warm up would be good, free activity it is. As Yi Shuang's words fell, the students cheered. Luo Che looked over and was just about to open his mouth to ask Bai Yu Yue if she wanted to play badminton together, since he knew that almost every gym class the young girl would play badminton with Tang Koko. As a result, in the next second, he saw Bai Yu Lu and Tang Koko directly come together in front of Yi Shuang. Ah Che, let's go play ball. Ah Che, where are you going? Brother, why are you suddenly a gym teacher? Tang Koko inquired curiously. It's not that I didn't see you guys during lunch break, so I came over for gym class to see if I could play some soccer. 
Yi Shuang said with a smile, then he suddenly noticed that Tang Kuku's chest had flattened out, and couldn't help but ask, isn't it hard? Tang Kuku blinked, hmm, it's fine. Yi Shuang realized that he had perhaps slipped up, so he changed the topic and generally looked at Bai Yan Yu who was looking straight at him, let's go, let's go borrow a badminton ball to play with, good, Bai Yu Yuas seemed to be very happy, Coco, doesn't need to have a stomach ache in the next class, what do you mean, just, just a very happy look, Tang Coco, who was at the side, immediately added when she saw Bai Yu Yuas so foolishly spilling her plans, really, Yi Shuang didn't think much about it, while Yi Shuang brought by Yu Yi and Tang Koko to the equipment room to borrow badminton rackets. On the other side, Luo Che was watching their backs from the corner. He suddenly took out his cell phone. Then after hesitating for a moment, he clicked on the official website of Silver Mountain Academy, Principal's Mailbox. After seeing one of the columns, Luo Che tightly gripped his phone, then tapped in and started typing away. Che, why are you playing with your cell phone here? Streetball is missing one. At this time, a student walked over scaring Luo Che into putting his phone away in a hurry. Ah, uh, what about Anima? Go, got it. Brother, do you know how to play badminton? On the way to the equipment room with the two young girls, Tang Koko curiously followed behind and asked. Bai Yu Yue also looked over. A little bit. Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile. In fact, he was a bit better at tennis than badminton. Both were sports that required swinging and running. There were still some comparisons. Just to say that badminton would be a bit more skillful. But if you just play badminton with these two girls in front of you, there is not so much to talk about. After all, it is not a competition. After arriving at the equipment room, after Yi Xuan casually talked to the teacher in charge, the other party immediately smiled and said, Go to the rack on the left. The badminton rackets over there are all new arrivals, so you guys should be a little bit more comfortable with them. Thanks. No. Where where? After Yi Xuan took down three rackets as well as two or three badminton balls from the equipment rack, he led the two young girls out of the equipment room. Wow. These rackets and badminton balls are so new. They don't look like they've been used. Tang Kuku couldn't help but sigh as she realized that the quills on the badminton balls were all snow white and flawless. Bai Yu Yue also seemed to have discovered something. Teacher. Has a different attitude. Maybe that's what handsome men are for. Tang Kuku patted Bai Yu Yue's shoulder inside a bit. The reasonable use of a brother. Bai Yu Yue didn't quite understand what it meant. Instead Yi Xuan knocked Coco's head. All right. Don't instill messy knowledge into Yu Yue. Let's go to the badminton court and play. He he he. The badminton court was inside the gymnasium, roughly divided into 10 fields as a place for students who took physical education classes to use at the same time. After school, it was also an activity room for the badminton department, where students like some of the upperclassmen who didn't have classes anymore played badminton. There are quite a lot of people. Let's go there. Yi Shuang stretched out his finger and pointed. The location he was referring to was in a more corner place where there would be less interference. The gymnasium was a bit stuffy. After all, the school couldn't possibly turn on an air conditioner for you, and the smell coming from his nose at the moment was also rubbery. You two are in a group. I'll be by myself. Yi Shuang asked, is that okay? No problem. But what surprised Yi Shuang was that both Bai Yan Yu and Tang Koko were very good at badminton, and at first Yi Shuang picked the badminton ball high to make Bai Yan Yu better at catching it. As a result, the next second the young girl slightly jumped up to give herself a straight line kill shot. Snap. The slender ponytail fluttered. And the crisp sound accompanied the speeding badminton ball that landed at Yi Shuang's feet. Yi Shuang looked at the badminton ball at her feet. Eh? He he he. Although Yu Yi Yu is silly foo-foo. But she's still okay in terms of sports. Tang Koko bloated with a small expression. While Bai Yu Yu A held the racket with one hand. That cool look was like a female swordsman holding a sharp sword. Alright. Underestimated you guys. Yi Shuang smiled faintly and moved his muscles. Then next, let you guys feel the power of an adult male. Ten minutes later. Yay! Tang Kuku and Bai Yu Yue clapped with one hand. While not far away, Yi Shuang lost miserably, completely unable to beat the two of them. Brother you're still really untalented at sports. Tang Kuku said. Yi Shuang. Why did he himself have to be spat on by Koko? It was clear that just now it had been Yan Yue who had been putting in the effort. She was just a paddler. Old old old. Really lost to you guys. Although Yi Shuang said this, she didn't appear to be sad at all. Instead she was having quite a good time. After resting for a little while, the few people sat on the chairs. Brother, do you drink water? Tang Ku Ku asked. Rather, I'm not thirsty. If you guys want to drink water, there are water fountains and vending machines right outside the gymnasium. Then I'll go out and buy a few bottles of water. Aha. Uh -huh. After Tang Koko left with quick steps, Yi Shuang suddenly felt a sinking in his shoulder. The young girl actually came next to him and even rested her head on his shoulder. 
Not only that, her eyes that were generally crystal clear looked straight at Yi Shuang, her eyes were covered with his figure, as if Yi Shuang was his whole world, peaceful and quiet. What's wrong? Arms were held and also completely wrapped by the sportswear slime. Thinking about Yi Shuang during my lunch break, wasn't it only a couple hours ago? Yi Shuang said, and because last night, Yu Yue waited for herself too late, he even deliberately gave the young girl two periods of leave, really counting, it was only a few hours apart. Yi Shuang, will miss me? She asked. Will, by Yu Yue seemed happy. Yi Shuang pulled out her cell phone, then took out a handkerchief from her pocket. Come on, sit up straight I'll wipe your sweat. By Yu Yue sat up straight, her two snow white arms were placed on her thighs in a regular manner, obviously a well behaved look. After Yi Xuan wiped off the fine sweat on the young girl's face, Bai Yen Yu said, There is also sweat inside. Help me wipe. No, it's outside. Yi Xuan said, At home, is fine? After Yi Xuan realized that Bai Yu Yue was drilling holes in her own words, she stretched out her hand and pinched the other party's soft little face. It's not okay either. It so happened that Tang Coco also came back with a few bottles of water at this time. I'm here with the fertilizer. Coco, use your handkerchief to help Yu Yi wipe the sweat on her back. Yi Shuang handed the handkerchief to Tang Koko. Okay yo. Tang Koko was not polite at all, taking the handkerchief and putting her hand into the neckline at the back of Bai Yuyue's neck. It's a bit itchy, is it? Tang Koko eased her strength a bit, like this? When Yi Shuang touched it, itched too, Bai Yuyue said. Yi Shuang, who was drinking water at this time, almost choked, but still said, Well, keep playing. On the other side, Principal's Office. Silver Mountain Academy's Principal Huang was sitting on the desk in his office. At this moment, he was just holding a cup of tea in his hand intending to sit for a while, but he realized that his computer was ringing. Principal's Mailbox, you have a new mail. Every school's official website basically has a principal's mailbox, but most of them are not read by the principal himself, but have a special person to write a reply on his behalf, and the message in reply is basically just a scene or polite words. But the principal's mailbox of Silver Mountain College was a real one that the principal had to read and reply within 24 hours, which was one of the rules set by the school manager. It's really been a long time since anyone wrote to the principal's mailbox, hasn't it? Principal Huang said, clicking on the letter with his mouse. Let's see, it's from a student from Class 3A, reporting an inappropriate romance, by Yu Fu. Hmm, the school isn't against relationships either? Principal Huang continued to look at it, but his brows locked up slightly. And, an illicit romance between a school nurse and a student? Principal Huang always felt that Bai Yu Yue and Yi Shuang's names were a bit familiar. After he thought about it, he then picked up the cell phone on his desktop and dialed directly to the personnel, and not long after the opposite side connected. The Principal Huang, may I ask what's up? Little flower ah, help me see. When did that school nurse called Yi Shuang join the school? Yi Shuang, wait a moment. The sound of tapping the keyboard came from the other end of the cell phone and soon the personnel side said, he was inducted this year, and, it should be something arranged by Miss Unshi, and sure, Principal Huang donned, as the principal of Silver Mountain College, naturally he knew so a Miss Insure, after all, the entire school did not have a few surnamed Insure anymore, do you have his contact information, contact him for me and ask if he has time to come to the third principal's office, okay Principal Huang, I'll get back to you later, aha, uh -huh. after hanging up the phone, after about 10 minutes or so, the personnel side sent a message. Personnel Little Flower, Hello Schoolmaster Huang. School Doctor Yes side has been contacted and said to come over now. Principal Huang, okay. After Principal Huang waited in his office for a while, not long after a knock sounded on his office door not far away, he quickly stood up. Hello, please come in. At this time, the one who pushed open the door and walked in was naturally Yi Shuang, who had just been playing soccer, and even though the class was almost over, he didn't know why the personnel suddenly looked for himself and also said that Principal Huang was looking for himself for something. Silver Mountain Academy had several principals as well as vice principals. Yi Shuang had also been in contact with the principal back when he helped Yu Yue out to teach Wu Yao a lesson, but it wasn't Principal Huang. Hello Principal Huang, I am Yi Shuang. Yi Shuang introduced himself and said, Yi Shuang right, come come come, sit down and talk. School Principal Huang asked Yi Shuang to sit down, and even personally poured him a cup of tea. Yi Shuang took the tea and seemed to be a little bit not quite understanding the other party's intention. Could it be because of what happened to the rumor-mongering mother and daughter that they needed to talk to themselves for a while? After Colonel Huang also sat down, he suddenly asked, How is Miss Insure recently? Miss Insure? Yi Shuang did not move and took a sip of tea. Could it be that Colonel Huang wanted to ask about Insure fish? No wonder he was so polite with himself. 
With Principal Huang's identity as well as Ensure Yu's identity, it seemed that he had something to ask Ensure Yu for help, and then looked for himself to pull the strings. Unbeknownst to Yi Shuang, he was thinking in the wrong direction. After all, he would never know even if he killed himself that he had been reported over the principal's mailbox, and Shi Yu should also be okay recently. Yi Shuang smiled and did not say anything further. Seeing Yi Shuang shouting in Shi Yu's name so directly, school head Huang had a look of understanding, so he said the main thing. Oops it's like this, I received a report letter on my side of the mailbox, reporting letter, take a look at the contents inside, saying that, school head Huang even transferred the letter to his cell phone to show Yi Shuang, Yi Shuang glanced at it, then half squinted his eyes, oh, good guy, Luo Che, thinking back to the physical education committee member who had just attended class, Yi Shuang took another look at the time of the report and realized that this guy had written that letter to report himself for being in an improper relationship with a classmate right after the warm-ups? Why? Because Bai Yu Yue's behavior was too intimate? Or is there some kind of story between Bai Yu Yue and Luo Che? But Luo Che should not be clear. The school nurse is actually not a teacher. The establishment of the school nurse is the establishment of the school staff. Cannot enjoy the treatment of teachers. The reason why many people shouted at Yi Shuang as a teacher was more just because in school, calling many adults as teachers was actually a polite way of addressing them. More importantly, is that Yi Shuang is actually considered a guardian? This kind of report was as outrageous as if you thought there were a pair of siblings in the school who were very close and then you reported them for early love. Look, isn't there some misunderstanding in it? Seeing Yi Shuang's slightly furrowed brow, school head Huang couldn't help but ask with a smile. If it's a misunderstanding, I can actually help mediate. Indeed there is a misunderstanding. Bai Yu Yue is my family's child and I am her half-guardian. It might be that our usual relationship is a bit closer. So it was seen by someone with a heart of gold. So that's how it is. It really is a misunderstanding, schoolmaster Huang said, but in fact he didn't care if Yi Xuan's answer was true or not, because his own action like this was undoubtedly selling a small favor to Yi Xuang. It was important to know that the informant information in the principal's mailbox would not be leaked out. Don't bother principal Huang to worry about it. I'll take care of this matter myself. Oh good, then I'll go back first. Okay, after Yi Xuang left the office, he also returned to the playground. At this time, it was close to the end of class. So the team needed to be assembled one more time to take a head count before disbanding to take a shower. And this process wouldn't take very long. All right, gather first. Yi Shuang said, and the students assembled. Yi Shuang's sight swept and landed on Luo Che's body. At this moment, Luo Che also happened to meet Yi Shuang's eyes. At this moment his heart trembled. After all, he had done something wrong. He immediately shifted his gaze not daring to meet his eyes. But after thinking that the information of the informant in the principal's mailbox would not be leaked out. His heart settled down a little bit. After all, the principal probably hadn't even looked at the mailbox yet. So why should he panic? Luo Che. Yi Shuang opened his mouth. Although Luo Che was telling himself this, when Yi Shuang called out his name, his heart instantly panicked. Is there? Is there something wrong? What are you so nervous about? Yi Shuang asked with a smirk. It's not like I like guys. The students in the class laughed out loud, and Luo Che's face went all weird. Gather the team for me and prepare to be dismissed. Okay? Okay, Luo Che was also relieved at this moment. It was obvious that Yi Shuang did not know about this matter. After gathering the team and counting the number of people, it was almost time for class to end. All right, everyone take an early shower then go to class. After Yi Shuang glanced at the time on her cell phone, she dismissed the students. Luo Che was no different to Yi Shuang than a childish student who snitched on him. With Yi Shuang's character it wasn't so much that he immediately had to do any retaliatory behavior. It was a very degrading thing for him. Instead he was interested in what had happened between Luo Che and Bai Yu Yi. After class, Bai Yu Yue immediately came over. Yi Shuang, let's go. Follow me to the school nurse's office. Yi Shuang said. Good. Bai Yu Yue's eyes brightened a few points. She originally just wanted to stay with Yi Shuang for a little longer between classes. Who knew that Yi Shuang was actually willing to take her back to the school medical room? Coco do you want to come along? Yi Shuang asked. Me? Tang Koka thought for a moment. And said with a smile. I'm sweating. I want to take a shower first. After bringing Yu Yue back to the school doctor's room, Yi Shuang made her sit on a chair and then inquired about the matter regarding Luo Che. There shouldn't be anyone who was idle enough to report himself on purpose. And Yi Shuang couldn't think of what had happened between himself and Luo Che for a while. So it seemed like it should be Ye Ye who had a problem with him. After hearing Luo Che's name, Bai Yu Yue tilted her head to think about it. But she wasn't particularly clear about what Luo Che looked like. In short, the person Yi Shuang had mentioned belonged to the existence of basically, nothing impressive, in her heart. 
The only thing she remembered was that he seemed to have said that the dining hall rice was brought from his own home. Thinking of this, the young girl fell back into thought. Why would he bring rice over from his home? Doesn't the dining hall have it? After retrieving her thoughts, Bai Yenyu said to Yi Shuang, I don't really know him. Yi Shuang sniffed and touched his chin. So he's one of Wu Ya's people? However, a move like this to secretly lay a braid is really not on the table. So Yi Shuang took out the screenshot that Principal Huang forwarded to himself, then showed it to Bai Yu Yue. He reported us for having an inappropriate relationship. Bai Yu Yue finished chewing the words on it as if she was thinking, and she asked, what does it mean to have an improper relationship? What doesn't conform to morality or the law is called an improper relationship. Yi Shuang explained the meaning of the word. And then she saw that Bai Yu Yue was still a bit confused. After all, this kind of thing was still a bit difficult with Yu Yue's ability to understand. We are an illicit relationship? We are not. Yi Shuang pinched the young girl's small face. In the future, no matter who says it, you don't care. Good. Bai Yu Yue nodded and said, I'll listen to Yi Shuang's. Good boy. The last class of the afternoon was self-study. And when Bai Yu Yue returned to the classroom after showering, class had already been in session for a while, and Tang Koko looked at the young girl sitting beside her with a smile and asked in a small voice, Did brother do anything? Do? What? Some kind of post-exercise therapy or something. Tang Koko gestured, and the smile on her face became even more intense. Bai Yu Yue didn't quite understand, but she still said, Reporting. Yi Shuang said that someone reported it. Tang Koko didn't understand what reporting meant, so she asked the young girl to write it down on a piece of paper. Nah, here's a pen for you, write it for me. After Bai Yu Yue received the pen, she rustled on the paper, and after Tang Koko saw what Bai Yu Yue had written, the smile on her face immediately tightened. Then she stole a glance in a certain direction of the classroom. At this moment, Luo Che was talking and laughing with his deskmate, the guy who was usually considered a sunny guy in the class, didn't expect to do something like this. Yu Yu eh? He's trying to harm his brother's departure. He's a bad person. Tang Koko whispered. Bad guy. Well, like this kind of guy we must stay away. Tang Koko said. Good. The young girl also looked over to Luo Che's side, and in her originally calm eyes, there were a few more points of lifelike coldness. At this time, Luo Che also seemed to notice by Yu Yue looking over. Thinking back to the time when he was just in gym class, the young girl was also looking at herself. His heart couldn't help but skip a beat but he still pretended to be calm and generally continued to talk and laugh with the classmates beside him. Only inadvertently, it was as if his waist straightened up a few points. The end of the school day came quietly. The next time is to go to the light music club. Let's go UUA. I learned a song at home last night on my ukulele because you're too beautiful. I'll play it for you later. Tang Koko said with a smile. Koko. Duty. Duty? Tang Koko reacted, then walked to the side of the duty roster book and took a look. Right oh. Today is your duty day but it's okay, I'll be with you, okay, I'll, help you out later too, hey, hey, say yes, there were only a few duty students, and Bai Yu Yue held a rag in her hand as she stood on a chair and wiped the windows in the corridor, the young girl was very meticulous in her work, even though most of the duty students were perfunctory, Bai Yu Yue still carefully cleaned the dust as well as the stains from those corners, Luo Che was cleaning another window at the moment, he was also today's duty student, but at this moment, Luo Che's corner of his eye was looking at Bai Yu Yue's slightly swaying waist length hair, as well as that impeccable side face. It just so happens that I'm also going to wash the rags. Why don't I help you? Seeing the way Bai Yu Yi got down from her chair to go wash the rags, Luo Che mustered up his courage and immediately said with a smile. Bai Yu Yue didn't pay any attention to him and walked straight past Luo Che as if she couldn't hear him at all. What's going on? Luo Che froze for a moment. Could it be that he hates himself? But on second thought, the gym class as well as the study session just now seemed to be looking at himself. Shy, Luo Che seemed like he understood something. Not long after, Bai Yu Yue also came back. After she finished cleaning the windows she started cleaning the railings, these were all very familiar to her. When she was once bullied, there were many times when she did all the hygiene of the duty students. Luo Che also came over at this time. He pressed back his frantically beating heart, and just as he was about to open his mouth, Tang Koko, who had stayed in the classroom, came out carrying a bucket, and, you you eh, I'm done mopping on my side, go pour some water, good, Bai Yu Yu eh continued to quietly scrub the railings, Luo Che's words were stifled, but he still said, the railings need a bit of strength, why don't you let me do it, no need, Bai Yu Yu eh balked, her voice even had some coldness in it, well, right Bai Yu Lu student, Luo Che said, isn't this going to be the fourth grade, by then it will also be divided into classes, I want to add the whole class to keep as a souvenir, 
How many micro signals do you have? Let's add a friend? Bai Yuyue glanced at him. Don't, eh? Luo Che also didn't expect Bai Yuyue to be so shy, so he had to smile. That's fine. Add it later. Not adding it later. Bai Yuyue choked on the other side with a bite. Ah, why? Luo Che scratched his head. Did I do something to make you hate me? Well, I hate you. Bai Yuyue didn't stutter when she spoke. The decisiveness in her tone and the coldness under her eyes looked like she was a different person. Because I don't like you. Luo Che froze, and the words immediately came out of his mouth. Then why do you keep looking at me in class? Bai Yuyue sniffed and just said. I'm looking at Yi Shuang. You, making a fool of yourself. Luo Che only felt that the blood in his entire body rushed to his head. Even his face turned red, as if he was in a hurry. He said, what are you pretending? I didn't say I like you, just adding a friend. When this sentence was said, Luo Che instantly regretted it. But Bai Yuyue still had no expression. She just lightly glanced at him, then turned around and left. After Luo Che saw Bai Yuyue directly turn around and leave, his fist suddenly smashed the fence. She grinned, he rubbed his face with a rag. And only after realizing that his cheeks stank, did he realize that the rag he had used? That. Shit. At this time, Bai Yuyue also saw Tang Koko. At this time, the young girl was carrying a bucket. She had just noticed from afar that Bai Yuyue was talking to Luo Che as if they were saying something. And. Yu Yu eh? What's wrong? The young girl gently shook her head. Irrelevant. Oh. Then let's go. Let's go to the club. The school nurse's room. Well, it's almost time to go to the club. Right? After Yi Xuan packed up his things, he realized that Shi Yu was still playing the game with her legs crossed. So he said, You look like this. I've told you not to join the club long ago, right? And Shifu's eyes still stayed in the game screen. Some reflections of the game swayed in her eyes. The young girl said, Full of concern. You just go. I'll be there before you. What? Do you have any more secret passages to get to the activity room earlier than me? Yi Shuang asked with a smile. Yes yo. The arbitrary door. And Shi Yu lazily continued, isn't it awesome? I'm actually from the future and have a lot of high technology. Ah yes yes yes. But since and Shi Yu didn't look like she wanted to go out. Yi Shuang had no choice but to get up and leave the school doctor's room, there was nothing much he could do. He could only explain and Shi Yu's situation roughly to Zhixia and the girls. After all, this fish was even harder to control than a New Year's pig. Wanting her to participate in the clubs in a disciplined manner was almost impossible. Maybe the moment she thought of something new. She would turn her eyes around and disappear into thin air. Walking on the school's aisles, Yi Shuang noticed that her cell phone vibrated. Glancing at it, it was a familiar police officer's number. Hello, officer. Hello, mister. Yi, I'm from the Meihua police station. Currently Su Lan's mother and daughter have been detained. They want you to issue a letter of understanding. That can give you a certain amount of compensation to compensate for the loss. Losses should definitely be compensated. But issuing a letter of understanding is impossible. The rest please comrade follow the process. Ah, uh, okay. The police did not say anything more after realizing that Yi Xuan was not willing to issue a letter of understanding, and quickly hung up the phone. And the rest of the things have Chen Xin's lawyers to deal with. Anyway, sure to prosecute this pair of mother and daughter, Chen Xin's company already has a very strong team of lawyers. So that Su Lan and those two people with Su Huan in prison together in the out and out damned family reunion should still be no problem. You have to pay the price for doing something wrong. And this world doesn't allow you to do whatever you want just because you're a scoundrel. Maybe other people just don't want to get shit on them. Shit isn't scary. What's scary is being stuck with shit. Yi Xuan walked, suddenly as if he thought of something, took out his cell phone and searched for the account of the million fans, and found that the other party was in the middle of a live broadcast. He still clicked in. Can those downtrodden men who rushed into my live room die a death? As soon as he entered the live broadcast room, he saw Tang Nui applying thick European and American makeup on herself. Even though her facial proportions weren't quite human, she still winked beautifully. That mother and daughter aren't really lying at all, okay? It's just a slight exaggeration of the facts in order to get someone else's help. Even if they're a little bit wrong, isn't that man right? What's wrong with a man letting a woman go? Sometimes it's good to look for your own reasons, okay? Tang Nui flashed a blank stare at the camera. 666,666. Kow wow. Like this? Sister is so pretty today. I won't say one more word until H.U. comes. This punch, landslide. The first punch that shocked Shangan. Didn't you say you're retiring from the net? Who are you topping a big faceplate for? Yen. Percent yen percent. Hashtag. Percent. Percent percent and. At this time, Tang Niao also realized that the heat in her live room was getting higher and higher. And more of them were still coming over to scold her. She didn't care. She just smiled condescendingly. Don't look at it. 
Retiring from the net is not equal to not live okay? The number of pop-ups was still still soaring wildly. The gold content of the mother style continues to increase. Convinced? What kind of creature is this? Old Tang I love you, CNM. It's over. Another little candy man. Just as Tang Nui was gloating. Suddenly she realized that her live room had been blocked. And she froze for a moment. The eyebrow pencil in her hand falling to the ground. Hmm, why was my live room blocked? Just as Tang Nyo was at a loss for words. The people who came over to eat melon in the live room also noticed that Tang Nyo had suddenly gone off the air, as if she had been suspended from her live room. What's going on? Blocked? Who knows? Suspended off the air to play happy beans, right? I heard that the rumor being spread was to sue those beauty bloggers, and Tang Nyo was one of them. Ah ha 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 cool cool cool. Rumor mongers will pay in the end. The most refreshing episode. As Tang Nui's live broadcast went black. Instead, the number of pop-ups ushered in another burst of new highs and quite a few people immediately started making MacArthur's whole live thing. Yi Shuang happened to see what had just been broadcast in the live room. In fact, an anchor like Tang Nui who liked to bring opposing rhythms to be able to mix to millions of fans was also considered a bit of a skill, but in the end, it would just draw fire. At this time, he also walked to the activity room of the Light Music Club, pushing open the door. Ji Xia several people had already arrived, and after seeing Yi Shuang come, they smiled and greeted. Teacher Yi, Ji Xia, that unchi fish guy, before Yi Xuan could finish, his voice paused as he spoke, because he noticed that in the corner of the classroom, an unchi fish was wearing a yellow Pikachu on its head headphones and playing with a spinning drumstick in its hand. What happened to the unchi fish? Ji Xia asked curiously. At this time, the unchi fish looked over as well, and those familiar eyes seemed to have a hint of a playful smile in them. You, Yi Xuan counted the time he came over to the activity room, although it was said that he might not be walking too fast when he looked at his cell phone but it wasn't definitely not slow either. When did this Yi Xiu guy get to the activity room? How long has Yi Xiu been here? Yi Shuang asked Ji Xia. Ji Xia blinked, then looked at the watch on her wrist. Well, and Shi Fu just came for a few minutes too. I think, less than 10 minutes. Yi Shuang, you really have an arbitrary door? Yi Shuang looked at Yi Xiu. Always felt that he was a bit convinced that this young girl in front of him was from the future. There is oh, where? Under the skirt. And Yi Xiu lifted a corner of her pleated skirt and incidentally picked up her cell phone to record the video. Uncle, come in. Come in a ghost ah? Filming evidence of a crime you? Brother, can you play that what? What? Yi Xuan was sitting properly in his seat when he suddenly realized that this guy Tang Coco came over and mysteriously took out his cell phone. It's the interlude from the second season of Attack on Titan. Call of Silence. Tang Kuku said. Yi Xuan still didn't quite understand it, but at this moment, music also came out from the young girl's cell phone. You will know you're reborn tonight. You will know you're reborn tonight. Yi Shuang slightly froze, then quietly listened to it. This clip is not long, but let a person have a kind of inexplicable inner feelings. Seems to be sad, but with a kind of power. It's very nice. Whose song is it? Yi Shuang asked. Hiroyuki Sawano. Oh, no wonder. Yi Shuang still knew this character. In foreign countries is a quite famous singer and composer. Very good at using music to accentuate the climax. Brother can you play it? Tang Kuk seemed to be looking forward to it. If you have the sheet music, you can still try, Yi Shuang said. Nah, Tang Kuka handed over the electronic version of the piano sheet music, Yi Shuang. At this time, the few teenage girls in the activity room all cast their gazes over, seemingly in anticipation. I'll try, Yi Shuang sighed. He sat in front of the piano and slightly adjusted his posture. Brother, just play the part about the climax. Before Tang Koko could finish speaking, she heard Yi Shuang begin to play, the young girl was slightly stunned that, it's starting now? The notes Yi Shuang played were smooth and complete, with no sense of rawness audible at all. Teacher Ye's sight reading ability is so strong. Ji Xia also couldn't help but say, sight playing? Well, it's an ability to play a new score without rehearsal, directly on the hand. Ji Xia explained, being able to play a tune smoothly and perfectly once you get started is very much dependent on talent and effort. Generally speaking, being able to have 80% completion in sight reading is already impressive. But, Mr. Yi played down from just starting without making any mistakes at all. At this time, Yi Shuang had also finished playing the piece. He seemed to quite like the look of this one. Even after playing it, he couldn't help but look at the sheet music for a while longer. It feels okay, slightly raw. Yi Shuang turned his head and smiled with a few young girls behind him. Slightly slightly hand raw. And Shi Yu made a nuzzling expression on the side. That look almost carried the yin and yang to the end. Even the clip tone could reach the level of just turned 18. Dang. Unsurprisingly. He received a hand slash from Yi Shuang. By Yu Yu Eh. On the other hand, gently nodded her head. 
Yi Shuang. Sounds good. Like it. Still, his own angel Yan Yu was cute. At this time, Zixia and Rin Rin then looked at each other. Zixia with her hands behind her back also came over, blinking her eyes. Mr. Yi, can you perform with us? What do you mean? That is, for the school festival performance, I hope you can perform with us, okay? Zixia made it very clear that there was also a stage electric piano on that side of the stage at that time. Zixia's petite figure, coupled with Yi Xuan's own height, the way she tilted her head up like this to request was a bit like she was pampering her elders. Perform together. Yi Xuan thought of his identity as the teacher of the club, but his line of sight unconsciously looked towards by Yin Yu beside him. Such a band performance that was rich in youthful memories, it didn't seem too good for an uncle to join in, did it? Otherwise it's better to forget about it. Yi Xuan smiled faintly and told the girls in front of him, brother plays the piano so beautifully, how unfortunate this would be. Tang Koko looked like she was sorry, not only her, Jixia and the girls were also a bit sorry, but at this time, there was a tugging from the corner of the clothes, Bai Yu Yu's stood beside her, her small hand pulled on Yi Shuang's clothes and whispered, Yi Shuang, performed together, you want me together? Yi Shuang together, we'll be happy, when Bai Yu Yu requested herself, the way she tilted her little face was like a choo-choo cute little animal, making Yi Shuang unable to help but dryly cough, okay, still couldn't refuse this child, wow, brother is biased eh? Yu Yuai agreed as soon as she said it. Tang Koku instantly smiled thievishly. Zixia and the girls also smiled when they heard Yi Shuang agree. On the contrary, it was in Shi Yu who said on the side, being played with, Tom Kuwen. After Yi Shuang's participation in the performance was finalized, then the number of things to do every day increased a bit. But it was only changed from staying in the activity room every day and drinking tea to just practicing music together. Zixia was very good at baking treats, so when she came to the activity room every day, Apart from practicing music, she spent the rest of the time drinking tea and eating treats. As time passed, it was already time to go home. After separating from the two teenage girls, Yi Shuang drove alone to buy groceries, to ask why. It was mainly because the sports car couldn't seat three people, and Bai Yen Yu wasn't willing to let Tang Koko go home alone anymore. So they basically went home together in pairs after school, or else buy a family car. Yi Shuang thought in his heart, if it was just for transportation, buying a 200. 000 or so would be fine. At this moment, Yi Shuang thought while walking to the underground parking lot, but he found a boy standing next to his car, still wearing the uniform of Silver Mountain Academy, Luo Che. After Yi Shuang saw that it was actually Luo Che, his expression was slightly strange. Why was this guy here? However, he didn't think much about it, and when he pulled open the car door and was about to go in, Luo Che suddenly opened his mouth. And, you won. I can't fight you. Luo Che continued. But, my achievements in the future may not be worse than yours. Yi Xuan, question mark. This guy, what is he trying to express? Bai Yu Yue chose you, but I still love her very much. I hope you won't fail Bai Yu Yue, or I won't let you off. Luo Che said seriously. Yi Xuan, this guy, did he brainstorm some plot in his head? The corner of Yi Xuan's mouth tugged. I think you seem to have misunderstood something. What? Could it be that you're just playing around with Bai Yu Yue? I feel like you can go write a novel. Yi Xuan sighed. This great schoolboy ah, he threw a piece of gum into his mouth, then asked, so, what exactly are you trying to express, self-orgasmic loser speech, maybe you don't even have a clear picture of the situation yet, I, I was just a little bit worse, Luo Che clenched his fists and said, if I had been a bit earlier, I wouldn't have lost to you, ha, Yi Shuang laughed coldly, so what, what exactly have you done for Yu Yu ah, saying how much you love, but actually watching her being bullied, is this love? Luo Che's voice lagged for a moment. No, that kind of situation is complicated and different. When you chose to remain neutral when the evil deed happened, then you have actually chosen the side of the abuser. Yi Shuang said, that's not love. And you're just thinking that Yui Yui is good looking now. Only, only not. Then what if Bai Yu Yue is ugly? Luo Che was dumbfounded. Don't cloak yourself in a grandiose reason for liking someone else's appearance. Yi Shuang said indifferently. It's not wrong to like other people's appearance but not admitting it is hypocrisy, and you, even more unworthy, since Luo Che's incident, several more days had passed, the matter of Su Huan's family had also come to a slight end, and naturally, Tang Niu was also detained as what awaited her was a lawsuit from Chun Qin's company, a person has the traffic, then they need to be careful with what they say and don't instill the wrong ideas and three views into the fans who love them, and the man who once stood in the chicken square and shouted Gaia has given the answer to that as well, and after all this, the day of the school festival was finally upon us. Apartment. Early morning. Brother, look at 10. 
000 now has a stomach. Tang Koko was holding 10,000's two front paws, while its body was golden like stretched bread dough. Cats grow faster, Yi Shuang said. Now 10,000 was already 5 or 6 pounds, the opposite of its original palm-sized and skinny appearance, and 10,000 was originally a long-haired cat, appearing to be even more fat and fluffy in size. Meow. Yi Shuang looked towards the orange cat. At the moment it was being held by Bai Yenyu after being coiled by Tang Koko, seeing the picture of one person and one cat, Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile. The appearance of 10. 000 growing up is actually quite similar to Bai Yui. A little bit of growth. Day by day. Yi Shuang was wearing an apron and cooking breakfast. Today he had a rare interest in making dumplings, which were filled with pork and shrimp. Brother, why are you frying dumplings? Tang Koko probed at the side and found that Yi Shuang was holding a pan to fry the dumplings, and couldn't help but inquire curiously. At the moment, the kitchen was full of the tantalizing aroma of flour fried in oil. Yi Shuang just smiled. Koko, how do you eat dumplings at home? My mom likes to put all the dumplings in when she stews them in one pot, but they're all rotten by the time they're cooked out. Tang Kuka compared the image of eating dumplings in her own house. A heap of them, like pigs eat them. Yi Shuang said, if you say that, your mom will be sad. Bai Yu Yue also smelled the fragrance and stood on the other side. Even 10,000 stretched their necks. Yi Shuang, it smells so good. Carbohydrates plus grease, can it not smell good? Yi Shuang said, mixing a portion of flour water. These are water fried dumplings. When the bottom side of the pan fried dumplings were golden brown. It was time to pour the flour water in. And after slightly over two thirds of the way, Yi Shuang put a lid on the pan. Brother, if you add water to cook it, won't it be the same as my mom? Tang Koko's small face was full of pity. If she ate it directly at this time, it would definitely be delicious. A heap of it, Tang Koko had a psychological shadow. It won't. Yi Shuang smiled. Soon, the flour water in the pan had all evaporated. And at this moment, there was only a nuisance movement in the pan after Yi Shuang opened the lid. The eyes of the two young girls lit up. And, it smells so good. It actually didn't rot? Seeing their curious looks, Yi Shuang smiled and continued. Right, it won't turn into a heap, and it won't rot. Saying that, he took out a small jar and sprinkled some black sesame seeds on the dumplings. After presenting it on the plate, the bottom of the dumpling formed a layer of golden colored crispy shell from the flower water. And after adding the black sesame seeds, it directly made Tang Koko look dumbfounded. And, brother, you be my mom, right? Yi Xuan, question mark. Male mom? However, this pan fried dumplings received unanimous praise from Tang Kuku and by Yu Yue, because considering a certain young girl's large meal, Yi Xuan fried three or four plates, finally feeding by Yu Yue. Looking at the two people eating happily, Yi Xuan, who was wearing an apron and sitting on the sidelines, did feel satisfied. Yi Xuan, eat? By Yu Yue even chucked a piece to feed him from time to time. You eat it yourself. I can clip it myself. Oh, after breakfast was over, Tang Kuku and Bai Yuyue washed all the dishes and chopsticks, and before they left, the young girl buried her face in Yi Shuang's arms for a short while before reluctantly leaving the door. Brother, today is the school festival oh, remember to come to school early, there are a lot of fun. Well, pay attention to safety on the road, there is something contact me, he he he, good. After the two teenage girls went out in pairs, Yi Shuang also updated today's novel because the apartment was relatively quiet, so today's Yi Shuang inspiration was also very good, and when a wobble finished writing the novel, he realized that there was still a cat sleeping on his lap. Well, it's almost time to go. Yi Shuang reached out his hand and scratched 10,000's chin. After a while, it's almost time to be sterilized, right, 10,000? Meow. the fat orange cat that was originally being scratched on the chin with a face of enjoyment. Once it heard these words, it rushed to the second floor with a prancing motion, and the moment it landed, its feet also slipped for a few seconds in place as if it was on a treadmill because it slipped. After Yi Shuang saw this scene, he felt a bit funny. This is hearing? Driving to the school, when he was about to enter the entrance, Yi Shuang saw a scene that surprised him enough. There were many people, very many. Yi Shuang looked out from the car window and realized that it was densely packed with all the people, and even when he looked at the angle from the roadside, he couldn't even see the entrance of the school. Silver Mountain College's school festival can actually attract so many people? As Yi Shuang drove his car and slowly moved forward, he realized that the garage of Silver Mountain College had a steady stream of vehicles going inside. At the entrance, there were students with armbands directing the traffic. At this moment, a student gently knocked on the car window, and after Yi Shuang rolled it down, he heard her say, Teacher, the faculty and staff vehicles turn left. That side is already full. You know I'm a teacher? Yi Shuang was a bit surprised. 
how was this discerned? Yes, because the door card over here shows that you are a faculty member. The student pointed to the censor for a moment. Ha ha ha, okay. Yi Shuang felt so dumbfounded by himself that he couldn't help but laugh. After all, the temporary card was different from the registered faculty and staff card, and the door bar could tell the difference. With the help of the other party, Yi Shuang made a left turn into the faculty and staff internal parking lot, while the outside was left for the tourists. It was good that there weren't many cars in the internal parking lot. What an exaggeration. After Yi Shuang got out of the car, he had just locked the door when he noticed a pink chopped fish had slowly parked in the spot beside him. The car door opened and a short haired girl walked out. Yo, uncle, changed cars again? Seeing the mini tram behind in Shiryu, Yi Shuang asked. Yeah, oh, it feels pretty fun. And the four, zero displacement is enough. Yi Shuang, what have you done to it? Thinking back to some taxi apps masterin, Yi Shuang suddenly felt a bad memory attacking him, slipped. At this time, and sure you also walked away with her hands in her pockets. Yi Shuang did not care and followed the elevator right up to the first floor of the academy. Come and take a look. Walk by and don't miss it. Fresh only because of the leg wrapped rice cackle. Volcanic stone grilled sausage, $2 a piece. Octopus small meatballs. Students quickly come over to see. Sister's original stockings, tasty and pretty. Bowls of chicken. Bowls of chicken. Bowls of chicken for a dollar. Various stalls were set up in the school, as if the entire aisle had been turned into a snack street. Coupled with the tourists coming and going, it looked like a tourist attraction. There's a lot of people at this time of year. Yu Yu Ai. Yu Yu Ai. Tang Koko turned her head and realized that Bai Wai had already appeared in front of the barbecue stall. And in a short while, the young girl was holding a squid skewer bigger than the palm of her hand. Tang Koko looked at Bai Yu Yi nibbling on the squid in small bites, and couldn't help but ask. Yu Yi, it seems like it hasn't been long since we finished breakfast, right? By Yu Yu's cheeks puffed out, chewing with an expressionless face, and a slurred sound came out of her mouth. Oh, I oh. Finish eating and say it again la. Tummy. Hungry. All right, let's buy something to eat. Tang Koko for Bai Yu Yi this amount of food is also not strange, but the other party's good figure and really let Tang Koko envy very much. Unlike her figure, always by the boys in the class flirting with what in yield type. At this time, Bai Yu Yu suddenly noticed an old lady selling sugar gourds in the corner. She was sitting on a bench in her flowery cloth clothes, her half-open muddy eyes looking at the students coming and going. What's wrong? Tang Kuka noticed that Bai Yu Yu had been looking at a certain corner. Old man. There are no stalls. Oh, that kind of ah. Actually our school doesn't give vendors who haven't bought stalls to come in and set up stalls. Tang Kuku explained. But these old people don't understand this. Wherever there are more people they go. But the school looks at their great age so they turn a blind eye. Bai Yu Yu gently nodded her head, then walked over to the old man. After the old man saw that there was finally a guest, his eyebrows smiled and pointed to the sugar gourds beside him. Doll, what a sugar gourd, three you on a string. All of them are. Very tasty that I made today. Try one. Aha. Bai Yu Yu nodded her head and took out her cell phone to scan the code. The old man was a little embarrassed at once. She rubbed her calloused hands. Is there cash? Old lady I don't know how to use a cell phone. Said. She also took out her own cell phone. Is more than 10 years ago the keypad style. Seems because a little bat also used transparent glue and the surrounding wrapped around a circle. Just has yellowed. Bai Yu Yu quietly watched without saying anything. Yi Xuan once told her. Because many old people do not understand this. No one to help can only rely on their own way to survive. And finally slowly eliminated by the social trend. Bai Yen Yu touched her pocket and finally took out a Pikachu wallet. After opening it, she took out a red bill and handed it over. That. All of it. All of it? The old man was a bit surprised and thought he had heard wrong. Aha. Uh -huh. The old man, however, didn't immediately agree, but only hesitated for a moment. Doll. Can you finish it? Bai Yu Yu nodded. I can. Good. Just give me fifty. No need for a hundred. The old man had more than twenty sugar gourds, counting up to a sixty plus dollars, but still found fifty for Bai Yu Yu After earning the money, the old man loaded the young girl with sugar gourds. She hunched her back and left happily, waiting for the afternoon to do a little more over to sell, so she could buy her grandson at home his favorite toy. Yu Yu Ai, you're really kind. You didn't even know why people shed bully you before. Tang Koko stood at the side inside. Yi Shuang said that it's good to help others, even if it's just in passing. Bai Yu Yu Ai didn't say much, carrying the bag of sugar gourds as if she intended to eat them all. Tang Koko froze. You're not planning to eat them all by yourself, are you? The young girl sniffed, opened the bag towards Tang Coco after some thought. Coco, are you eating? A few? I still want to keep some in my stomach. And which one discusses a few sticks to eat? 
Tang Koko was no longer hungry after eating the fried dumplings made by Yi Shuang. She thought about it and suddenly seemed to think of something. You you eh, you come with me. Saying that, she pulled the young girl all the way to the more backward location of the stalls. Finally, stopped at a lemon tea. Ji Xia's senior sister, Tang Koko opened her mouth towards the inside, and a voice soon came from the stall. You guys are here. Both Ji Xia and Rin Rin were wearing aprons, and they had also rented a stall where they sold hand-beaten lemon tea, it was a good opportunity to replenish the club's funds, after all, and it was a very good way to make money while the show was still going on. Wow, lots of sugar plums. Are you guys setting up a stall? Zixia also noticed the dozens of sugar gourds by Yen Yu was carrying in her hands and couldn't help but ask. Tang Koko did explain what had just happened. And Rin said, In that case, why don't you set up a stall and sell them here for us? We definitely can't eat them all if there are so many. Right oh, that's what I'm planning to do. Tang Koko smiled and said, Why don't we just buy a cup of lemon tea and get a candy cane free? Come on, Yu Yu Ai. Bai Yu Yu Ai seemed a bit reluctant to let go of the sugar gourd in her hand her eyes looking straight at it being taken away. Until Tang Kuka looked like she had noticed this and took out three from inside and handed them over to Bai Yu Yue. The young girl was happy. Still really a foodie. Tang Kuka said, If I hadn't brought you here, Yuan Yue you wouldn't really be planning to dazzle away alone, right? Bai Yu Yue nodded her head. Eh? Jixia also set up the sugar gourds at this time. Then after writing down the words gift of sugar gourds on the small blackboard to the side, she smiled and asked, Right, where's Mr. Yi? Brother at home writing novels part time. It's really hard. Is it short of money? Jisha didn't think that Yi Xuan was actually working part time. Tang Koko thought about it, but she didn't think that Yi Xuan was very short of money. She said, Han oh, brother shouldn't be very poor. Otherwise, he wouldn't be driving a sports car. Bai Yu, on the other hand, said, Yi Xuan, car. Chen Qin's sister sent, right oh, the car was sent by that big sister. Tang Koko remembered at this time. Otherwise, Let's let Mr. Yi come over to help. The income from the stall can give him a share. That's not good. I heard that men have pride and stuff. Then how do we get it? How can we help Mr. Yi? Then the three teenage girls got together to think. Only by Yu Yu's stayed aside and cocked her head, seemingly not quite understanding what was happening. Kaching. She bit into the sugar coating of the sugar gourd and took a small bite. It's still really crowded. Looking at the traffic throughout the aisle, Yi Shuang couldn't help but sigh in general but suddenly realized that his clothes were being pulled a bit. Turning his head, he found that it was this fellow in Shiryu. The two had just come out of the parking lot together. What's up? Ask me to play this. And Shiyu pointed to the shooting minigame on the side. That is, a toy gun hitting balloons and exchanging gifts based on the number of balloons, which is also considered a classic game. At the very least, this is more fun than lassoing. The lasso's ring is usually unevenly weighted, and it's too difficult to hit the gift. Yi Shuang heard and Shiyu say this, but smiled, why should I invite you? I saw Bai Yu Yue pull you a bit and agreed. And Shi Yu said lazily. The corner of Yi Shuang's mouth tugged. Yu Yue is different. Oh. And Shi Yu thought about it and suddenly changed her tone. Reached out her hand and pulled the corner of Yi Shuang's coat. Yi Shuang. Play. This. Yi Shuang stared and spat. What are you doing learning how to speak like Yu Yue? Don't you like this set? And Shi Yu changed back to her original appearance. Even with some contempt. Coaxing schoolgirls to play role playing. Uncle you're really perverted. Yi Shuang. No. Who let you role play? But Yi Shuang still walked to the shooting booth and talked to the students there. Student. How do you charge for playing this? Five dollars for ten shots oh. The student holding the toy gun said with a smile. Come on. Give me twenty shots. After Yi Shuang scanned the code and gave ten dollars. He took the toy gun from the student's hand and handed it to An Shiyu. Nu ah. An Shiyu looked at the toy gun in Yi Shuang's hands and suddenly moved her eyes away. Suddenly I don't want to play again. Yi Shuang. I'm just kidding. Uncle. It's against the law to use violent behavior on a beautiful girl. After seeing Yi Shuang's look like he wanted to press himself onto his knees and spank him, and sure you kindly reminded. I'm so cute. Do you bear to do it? Very bearable. TSK. And Shi Yu hugged the toy gun, then started to aim at that one balloon. Her posture was a bit strange, giving Yi Shuang a sense of incongruity that although it was very standard but couldn't tell where it was strange. Snap. Pulling the trigger. The crisp sound of balloons shattering rang out. It was followed by one, two, three, and Shiyu seemed to be very good at playing this. After 20 shots down, there were no bullets, which also made Yi Shuang feel slightly surprised. Congratulations to this student. Hitting 20 shots in a row, the stall owner student immediately took out a few gifts out. Take, this is a gift. A furry Doryman's doll, which looked to be just the size of a palm. 
20 shots for a gift like this. Aren't you guys a bit too stingy? How can you also give me 10 or 8? And Shi Yu revealed her bean eyes. She was covered by Yi Shuang before she finished speaking. At this moment Yi Shuang smiled awkwardly towards the stall owner before pulling in Shi Yu to take the gift and leave. $10? Are you trying to rob? After walking to a place? Yi Shuang asked in Shi Yu breathlessly. Why is this guy like a robber? I'm a consumer. Of course I don't need to care about how other people think about opening a store. And Shi Yu said. But her eyes fell on the ice cream on the side. Uncle. Treat me to this. No please. Yi Shuang. I want. This. Said in Shi Yu and kept pulling the corner of Yi Shuang's coat. Don't you learn how to speak like Yu Yu again? Yi Shuang felt a raw pain in his temples. He was already regretting leaving the parking lot with this fish. This guy just came over to torture himself. The ice cream sold at the stall was the kind of cone ice cream. And when the student stall owner saw Yi Shuang and Anxi fish, he immediately and enthusiastically said, Hello, what flavor of ice cream do you want? And Shi Yu stuck her hands in her pockets. Have a flavor I haven't eaten before. Eh? This one. One strawberry and one chocolate. Yi Xuan gave and Shi Yu a handful of knives, then smiled and told the stall owner, Okay. After Yi Xuan received the ice cream, she asked in Shi Yu, Nu Ah, which one do you want? Want both. No, pick one. And Shi Yu reached out and took the strawberry one, but quickly stood on her tiptoes to take a bite of the tip of the chocolate ice cream. Yi Xuan, he expressionlessly looks at the ice cream that has a teeth mark. How else am I going to eat it if you're like this? And Shi Fu said lazily, So give it all to me. Yi Xuan didn't like the feeling of being held by this kind of brat. He nonchalantly took a bite on the ice cream and then looked down at Shiyu. No need. I don't mind. And Shiyu obviously froze for a moment. Her beautiful eyes under her bangs twinkled for a moment and turned away to continue eating the ice cream. It didn't seem to say anything either. Only a vague hometown voice was vaguely heard. Yi Xuan also did not notice that at this moment, the other party's ears seemed to percolate a layer of pink. Just at this time, the cell phone also rang. Yi Shuang glanced at it and realized that it was sent by Tang Kuku. Tang Kuku, brother. Come and drink the lemon tea prescribed by Zhixia. Selfie. JPG. After looking at the four teenage girls in the selfie, Yi Shuang returned a good sentence before looking up and realizing that in Shiyu had already disappeared. This guy. Yi Shuang didn't care about the young girl who came and went like the wind, and directly walked towards the lemon tea store that Zhixia and the girls owned. The business of the lemon tea store seemed to be okay, and when Yi Shuang got there, he found several students standing in front of the stall, all buying lemon tea, and there was also a string of sugar gourds in their hands. Brother, here, teacher Yi, Zixia was pounding lemons, and when she saw Yi Shuang arrive, she immediately greeted him. Yi Shuang smiled. Why would selling hand-pounded lemon tea also have sugar gourds? Such a pairing is really a bit rare. Yu Yu bought it. Tang Kuku told what had just happened. So that's how it is. Yi Shuang saw by Yenyue who came over to stick her head in the sand. So she smiled and asked, didn't you get enough to eat? Bai Yu Yi nodded. Well, hungry again. Need help? Yi Xuan looked over to Zixia's side. Zixia, who was currently wearing an apron, just smiled adorably. Teacher Yi, you take Yu Yu for a stroll. I don't need any manpower on my side for now. Right. Brother you take Yu Yu for a stroll. She's always wanted to stay with you. Tang Kuku also said. Rin Rin also nodded her head repeatedly. Really? You want to go shopping? Yi Shuang asked Bai Yu Yu beside her. Aha! Bai Yu Yu nodded, tilting her small face and hugging one of Yi Shuang's arms. Tang Ku Ku pushed the two. All right, all right, let's go. There's still themed activities over there in the teaching building. It's no problem to stroll around for a few days. All right then, I'll take Yu Yu out for a stroll first and come back later. It's fine if you don't come back. This, bye, Yi Shuang, and this, bye. Not a moment's time. Yi Shuang had already bought a whole bunch of snacks for Bai Yu Yue, the young girl ate in small bites and didn't forget to stuff some into Yi Shuang's mouth. Alright, eat by yourself. I'm not hungry. After Yi Shuang saw Bai Yen Yu's appearance of raising her arm to feed herself, he smiled instead and let her eat by herself after taking a small symbolic bite. Perhaps sensing something? Yi Shuang took out a paper towel and gently wiped away the oil stains on the corner of the young girl's mouth. Eat slowly. Good. The two of them walked side by side. But it was because Bai Yu Yue's outstanding appearance attracted a lot of people's eyes, and at this time, Bai Yu Yue was attracted by a small pool of water. The small pool was surrounded by a few people, and there were quite a few goldfish swimming in it. Fishing for goldfish game, want to try? Yi Shuang asked. The so-called goldfish fishing game is to take a paper net to fish for the swimming goldfish, and if you get a few, you can take a few away if you don't take them away. You can also exchange them for the corresponding gifts. Play. Bai Yu Yue seemed to be captivated by the goldfish that were swirling in the water, and she squatted down, 
her eyes moving along with the small swimming fish. What's the charge? Seeing by you US so mesmerized, Yi Shuang inquired with the stall owner instead. That, that, five dollars a time oh. The stall owner was a lower grade girl, and after seeing Yi Shuang's face, she was a bit shy and didn't dare to look at each other. After Yi Shuang swept the coat and gave the money, the other party handed over the paper mesh. The appearance was a bit like a shower. The center part of the circle is the paper mesh. If it is broken, it can't be used anymore. Here, try it. Yi Shuang handed the count to Bai Yenyu. Bai Yu Yue took the paper net. Her beautiful eyes first looked at it. Then she reached into the water. She had just gotten close to the goldfish and was about to fish upwards when she realized that the goldfish flung its tail and the paper net broke. Broken. Bai Yenyu looked at the paper net with holes pierced in her hand and seemed to be a bit innocent as she twisted her head to look at Yi Shuang. Can it still be used? Can't. Yi Shuang asked the stall owner for a new one. Bai Yu Yue tried again, and this time the paper net picked up the fish, but broke in midair while lifting it up, allowing the goldfish to burrow back into the pool. Broken. Bai Yu Yue looked a little lost. Even her dull hairs were hanging down. Yi Shuang brought over two more paper nets, then comforted. Let me try. Compared to Bai Yu Yue's careful movements, Yi Shuang was more wide open, finding the right time to quickly strike out and fish up the goldfish in the pool that was closer to the water surface while the other hand was stuffing it into the water tank. This process took only a second, and a goldfish was caught. Bai Yu Yue was clapping her small palms at the side, seemingly mesmerized by what she was watching. Yi Shuang then used the same method and quickly fished out two more fish before this paper net was pierced under the water's immersion. Come on, try again. The movement can be a bit faster, Yi Shuang said. After seeing Yi Shuang's method, Bai Yu Yue intended to try again. I don't know if it was just bad luck. The young girl had only just put the net in when the paper net broke. Yi Shuang, I can't do it. Fool, you can do it. Yi Shuang gently patted her head encouragingly and asked the boss for another paper net. This time, Bai Yu Yue just took the paper net. Then she realized that Yi Shuang leaned over. He stretched out his arm around the young girl's back. That broad palm gently held her small hand and grabbed the paper net together. And Bai Yu Yue also looked like she was staying in his arms. Yi Shuang, Bai Yu Yue felt a powerful heartbeat coming from her back. She turned her head slightly, and Yi Shuang's side face was close at hand. Come, I'll do it with you once. Yi Shuang gently pinched the young girl's hand, and with a clattering sound, he led her to use the paper net to fish out that goldfish in one go. Success. After putting the goldfish into the fish tank, Yi Shuang said with a smile. Bai Yu Yue also looked at the bubbling goldfish in the fish tank and couldn't help but turn back again. Yi Shuang, give me a hug. Wait, wait. After tossing and turning for a while, Yi Shuang carried a small plastic water bag and led the young girl away from the stall. Just now Bai Yu Yue didn't know why she suddenly jumped into his arms, and even lifted several fish tanks next to her. There was no way. Yi Shuang had to lose some money, and incidentally took away a goldfish as a prize. Screwed up. Bai Yen Yu whispered from the side. Obviously she knew she did something wrong. It's okay, at the very least I got a little goldfish. Yi Shuang pointed to the oxygenated goldfish in the bag. Bai Yen Yu asked. Raise it at home? Probably not, Yi Shuang said. Why? Uh, if you want to give 10, 000 extra meals. Yi Shuang always felt that goldfish and cats couldn't be kept together, but after he thought about it, it seemed that he could also buy an enclosed fish tank. Although it didn't seem worth it to buy a fish tank specifically for a small goldfish that cost a few dollars, but when he thought about it, it was also by Yen Yu who fished it out, so it had a commemorative meaning. Next, Yi Shuang brought Bai Yu to play a few more programs. One round down was already close to lunchtime. They also found a chair under a big tree to sit. Happy? Aha. That's good. Yi Shuang smiled. Yi Shuang. Hmm. What was Yi Shuang? Like when he went to school? Bai Yu Yue's rare inquiry. But it made Yi Shuang freeze for a moment. He reached out his hand. Gently pinched the other party's small face. And. Why ask this? Bai Yu Yue thought about it and said very seriously. I also. Want to know about Yi Shuang. So ah. Uh, Yi Shuang seemed to be recalling some past. Then said. Going to school ah. Uh, in fact, my school activities at that time were not as rich as yours. Basically opening my eyes was to study, but I had to be slightly rebellious at that time. Rebellious? Bai Yu Yue didn't seem to understand. It means not obeying the discipline of teachers and family members, and preferring to be a bit more free. Yi Shuang coughed dryly. It's all in the past. Behind. And because of some things that happened, began to sink his heart into studying hard. About half a year's time. Accidentally the first in the whole year. Although Bai Yu Yue was curious about what had happened, it seemed that she realized that Yi Shuang didn't want to talk about it, so she didn't ask any further. Just at this time, the cell phone rang. Yi Shuang touched his pocket and found that it was not his own cell phone. 
He looked to his side and found Bai Yen Yu picking up her own cell phone. A message from Coco? It's not, Bai Yen Yu said and paused. It's her. Yi Shuang then realized that it was a call from Aunt Xian. Answer it. Good. Soft sister ah. What are you doing? On the other end of the video, it was Mother Zhou's gentle and concerned voice of greeting. Bai Yu Yue looked at the woman in the cell phone screen. She hesitated for a moment and finally let out a tiny voice. At school. Is it time for lunch break? Mother Zhou continued. I just went to the police station to get some of your things. Let's eat dinner together in the evening? How about it? It's rare to have the opportunity. Bai Yu Yue heard the voice coming from the phone, but her eyes were downcast but she looked a little uneasy. She also knew that Mother Zhou was playing nice with herself, but perhaps because she had been separated for too long. At the moment Bai Yu Yue didn't have too much of a sense of closeness. She looked at Yi Shuang beside her, seemingly to ask for his opinion. And Yi Shuang just nodded his head towards Bai Yu Yue. If it was just a meal, there was absolutely no problem. Sooner or later, Bai Yu Yue was going to return to the Zhou family, and this slow contact and familiarity, and finally integrated into the life of the original Yi Shuang's intention at the beginning. Zhou father and mother is still Bai Yu Yue's biological parents. Blood is thicker than water. Plus Zhou father and mother is lost by Yu Yue, not lost by Yu Yue. Just when Bai Yu Yue was about to agree to it, Mother Zhou immediately added another sentence at the video end. You can bring Shuang Zai together, and we'll all eat together. Good. Bai Yu Yue immediately agreed. Mother Zhou had originally seen that Bai Yu Yue hadn't agreed to herself. And when she said Yi Shuang and immediately agreed to the look, even she froze for a moment, sighing silently in her heart. Mother Zhou continued. Well then, I'll send you the address at night, so you can have Shuang drive you over. Um, after hanging up the phone, Bai Yu Yue looked at her cell phone. Her bangs hanging down, that quiet look didn't know what she was thinking about something. Thinking about what? Yi Shuang, I, don't want to leave you. Why suddenly say this? Yi Shuang asked. Bai Yen Yu's voice became smaller. I don't know, don't think nonsense. Yi Shuang touched the young girl's head. After slightly sitting under the big tree for a while, Yi Shuang brought Bai Yu Yue back to Zhixia and the girls. Perhaps it was the time of the lunch break. So Zhixia and the girls were resting, with small tables behind the not so big stalls dash. Jisha and the girls had placed all the snacks they had bought on it as lunch. The prices of the snacks sold by Silver Mountain Academy were all a bit cheaper. If they were to be replaced in a scenic area, the prices could be completely tripled or quadrupled. Teacher Yi, coming over to eat some? After seeing Yi Shuang and the others return, Jisha also greeted the two and sat down. I've eaten with Yen Yu, Yi Shuang said, while Bai Yu Yue was also fed by him. Tang Kuko only noticed the goldfish in Yi Shuang's hands at this time, and couldn't help but let her eyes light up. Wow, goldfish eh, did you buy it at the stall? Fishing for goldfish got it. Yi Shuang smiled. Is there a fish tank or something like that here? I want to fit this fish. Teacher Yi, I happen to have plastic boxes here that were originally used to hold lemons. Rin stood up and in no time brought a plastic box over to Yi Shuang. And after pouring the fish in, it was the right size, because there is no oxygen pump. So the water change should be slightly more frequent to ensure the oxygen content in the water. Actually, there are skills to keep good fish. Change the water and the fish frequently. I bought the fish tank and oxygen pump on Jingxi. It will probably arrive tomorrow. After putting the goldfish aside, Yi Shuang sat down with Bai Yu Yue as well. When is the show? Yi Shuang asked about the time. As he wasn't very clear about any of this yet, Ji Xia said, The performance is going to be tomorrow night, because it's a stage prepared by the school. So if we can get a good ranking, we can get a very rich reward. Oh, a ranking? Yi Shuang thought for a moment. In that case, it's about ranking right? Yes, our music club is to PK with similar clubs. The first in the same category or the overall top five will be rewarded. Jixia smiled and continued. But our light music club is just going up there to perform because our opponents are too strong this time. Not to mention the ancient wind music club. The opponents placed against us, it's the Ikuan music club as well as the rock club that are the toughest to deal with. And a lot of the club members have been snatched away from them as well. Especially the Ikuan music club. Every student who joins the club becomes weird and their signature move is to shake their shoulders in place every now and then and hum a club song or two. Our club is full of newcomers except for Rin and I. So what about? Jisha didn't get her hopes up too much. Let's just say just do your best. After all, Jisha began with the idea that the club will not be disbanded, or even find a booth corner singing or something, and now have enough people actually has been very satisfied. As for the ranking, it was just a thought. How do you know if you don't try? Yi Shuang smiled. Right. Punch punch punch. No matter what, we can't be at the bottom. Tang Koko raised her fist while eating. It also sort of livened up the atmosphere. Afterwards, a few people chatted for a while about the performance. 
Rin Rin's voice condition was excellent, so she was the guitarist and lead singer, Ji Xiao was the bassist, Bai Yin Yu was the rhythm guitarist, and Shi Yu was the drummer, Tang Koko was the electronic guitarist, and Yi Xuan was the keyboardist and backing vocalist. Counting like this, it was actually a relatively standard performance lineup. Tang Kiki had switched to a stringless electronic guitar, also known as one button sound, even more difficult than the ukulele, because she wasn't quite familiar with the ukulele. It was known as the shame of the guitar, an instrument without the soul of the guitar. But despite this, this type of instrument still sold very well. After all, not everyone could spend a lot of time practicing their instrument, like kids like Tang Kuku, who didn't hold much passion for music, but wanted to be able to accompany by Yu Yue to play music together and perform together. For something like a school performance, naturally having fun was most important. That and Shi Yugai has been discussing about the performance, and as a result, people can't even be found yet. Yi Shuang said, just now an Shi Yu student was here oh, when teacher Yi went out with Yu Yu to play, Ji Xia instead said with a smile, she even helped us sell out all the lemon tea, sold out how, Yi Shuang froze for a moment, Tang Koko gestured, brother, can you imagine, and Shi Yu just flung the drink cup back and forth like a bartender, and performed acrobatics, instantly attracting tourists and students, Yi Shuang, he couldn't combine the image of a bartender with making lemon tea, but since it was already sold out, it was no wonder that Zisha and the girls were taking an early break now. After the lunch break, Yi Shuang stayed at the store to help make lemon tea. Wearing an apron, he skillfully mashed the perfumed lemons with a stick, and after the flavor came out, he added the tea as well as the syrup so that a standard cup of duck shit scented lemon tea was made. Because it was summer now, drinks like lemon tea were actually still selling well. There are a lot of people coming. Tang Koko realized that there were quite a few customers, and most of them were rushing towards Yi Shuang, shouting sweetly with a mouthful of school doctor brother. These were the regulars of the school doctor's office, that is, guests in the literal sense of the word. After all, most of them were not sick, and were completely over to find Yi Shuang to seek psychological counseling. It was said to be psychological counseling, but it was basically just a chat. Even Yi Shuang himself didn't know that he already had a group of relatively loyal little fangirls in Silver Mountain College. People want the lemon tea that school Dr. Yi personally made. Two cups yo brother one cup and me one cup. Have all these lemons been beaten out of their juice by school doctor brother? How come it's the same as me? Nasty. Brother, don't pound the lemons. Pound me. Jisha and the girls couldn't help but look at each other after hearing these school nurses whiny clip sounds. Why are these customers weird? However, when there was business coming their way, they naturally had to do it. Jisha and the girls packed all the lemon tea that Yi Shuang had gotten done and handed it over to the guests. Welcome to our next visit. Soon enough, the afternoon's ingredients were used up and it was even the earliest batch to sell out in this side of the stall. That was fast. I can't believe I sold so much. After Jixia counted the amount of today's revenue, she realized that she had made about a thousand or so in one day. After deducting the material fees as well as the stall fees, there was probably about six or seven hundred in revenue as well. Setting up a stall is so profitable? Tang Kuku also did not expect to earn a six or seven hundred. Could not help but say, that loss ah, we prepare less material today. If we prepare more not turn over 2000 hit on it, wealthy, Yi Shuang at this time finished playing lemon tea, is smiling with water rinse hands, these can be the funds of the association, play on the line, do not really hold the idea of making money, many times the more you want to make money but the more difficult to earn, after saying that, Yi Shuang glanced at his cell phone, it was almost near the end of the school day, we haven't gone over to the class side yet. I heard that a few classes have open haunted houses that are super scary. Tang Koko suddenly hugged by Yu Yue's arm. Yu Yue Yu Yue, how about we go play haunted house? Haunted house. Bai Yu Yue didn't refuse after seeing Tang Koko say that. Go on, have some fun. Yi Shuang said with a smile after noticing the young girl's gaze cast over at this moment. Bai Yu Yue, however, pulled on Yi Shuang's sleeve. Yi Shuang, together. Me too together? Yi Shuang looked at the stall in front of her and actually had a little something to pack. Jixia immediately came over and smiled. Teacher Yi, just leave it to us to clean up. Since Jixia had said so, Yi Shuang agreed. Leading the two young girls, Yi Shuang followed them to the school building even in the afternoon. There were still a lot of people here. After all, the class had a variety of themed activities, whether it was playing, eating or watching everything. In addition to the visitors and students, there were also a group of security guards specializing in maintaining the scene as well as the discipline inspection department patrolling the area. These aspects were enough to see the intention of the school administration. At least it was also the school's anniversary, almost as good as a birthday. On the corridor, 
There were quite a few students greeting, classmate, bunny girl restaurant, want to come over and take a look? It's all one meter eight fierce men wearing rabbit girls oh, maid cafe, maid cafe, don't miss it, our homeroom teacher's bald maid outfit, land swimmer, so you can feel the fun of swimming even on the ground, drama, drama, Romeo battles Juliet, knife to the flesh absolutely hot blood, there were quite a few students standing in front of their classes greeting students and passers-by to go in, Yi Shuang soon met class 3A as well, by Yu Yui and their class seemed to be preparing for an event that was a movie viewing, that is, that kind of nature similar to a private movie theater, completely free of charge, the classroom was dark, with a few people sitting sporadically over the neatly arranged desks and chairs, after all, everyone's time was precious, and they came here to experience all kinds of fun, so naturally they wouldn't spend their time watching movies, hello, watching a movie, a voice came from beside him, Yi Shuang turned his head and realized that it was actually Luo Che, who was still holding the flyer in his hand. It was only at this time that Luo Che noticed that what he had stopped was actually Yi Shuang as well as by Yu Yue and the girls, Luo Che. Luo Che didn't say anything and seemed to be a bit embarrassed as he immediately walked away. That guy, what's doing? Tang Kuku muttered. Because of the last snitching incident, the current Tang Kuku had a very bad impression of Luo Che. Yi Shuang also just laughed, but didn't say much. Luo Che, this guy, after being lectured by him last time, it seems that he doesn't dare to touch by Yu Yue now. Haunted house. Over here, Tang Kuku also quickly found the haunted house class to play in. Placed at the entrance of the class there was a wooden board with, super scary, in red font, as if it had been splashed with paint. Good, good scary look, Tang Koko was a wimp, but wanted to play, so she clung to Bai Yu Yi's arm beside her. Tu Yuan ahead, after Yi Shuang paid, the three of them walked in together. Inside the darkness, from time to time there are ghost students playing face killing, after all, limited by the environment of the classroom so the inside is not big. One could only say that it was not at all on the same level as the horror of that horror hospital in the last Pokemon Link amusement park. Woohoo! A student pretending to be a ghost jerked up. Tang Koko's goosebumps stood up all over her body, screaming as she wrapped her arms around Bai Yu Yue with all her might. And at this moment, Bai Yen Yu looked at the student playing ghost in front of her, still with a small expressionless look, contrasting with Tang Koko's screaming appearance. It didn't take long to walk in a circle, but Tang Kuka's voice could almost be heard even in the corridor. Holy shit, so scary? The tourists outside couldn't help but be surprised. About a minute later, the three people came out. Yi Shuang wasn't scared. Bai Yu Yue didn't quite understand what it was like to be scared. On the contrary, Tang Koko's body was like mud, and she seemed to be on the verge of being deflated. So scary. What a hearty horror feast. Yi Shuang. Long two wipes sweat. JPG. Yi Shuang twisted his head to look behind him. The student pretending to be a ghost was still wearing a drag child. How could he look at it? It didn't quite match with horror. Boom. Pop. Fireworks bloomed in the sky above the academy. A full 70 rings, also representing the school's 70th birthday. During this week, the fireworks were set off every day at the moment of dusk. Is it nice? Yi Shuang sat in the car. And when he noticed the young girl lying by the car window, he could not help but inquire with a slight smile. Bai Yu Yue gently nodded. It looks good. But disappears fast. Yi Shuang simply said, after all, the prettier something is, the harder it is to keep. Really? Bai Yen Yu seemed to understand, and then obediently sat up straight. They were now going to the place where they had dinner with Zhou's mother, a nearby restaurant with an okay reputation, where Zhou's mother seemed to have opened a private room. As Yi Shuang drove on, the fireworks behind her faded out of sight, and Bai Yu Yu stopped looking out the window, her slender white jade-like fingers playing with her cell phone. On the screen of the cell phone, is Yi Shuang in Bai Yudi's photo, the girl is so quietly watching, until the sound of the horn outside the car window, Bai Yu Yu's slowly raised her head, Yi Shuang, whom, will we separate one day? No, Bai Yu Yu whispered, lying, Yi Shuang froze for a moment, he seemed to be a little surprised that Bai Yu Yi would say that, as the two people got along, the young girl gradually understood a lot of the truth, Yi Shuang could not help but smile in relief, it will be, but that must be short-lived, ephemeral? When you grow up, wanting to see me is also anytime and anywhere. All separation is actually for a better reunion. Bai Yu Yue stopped talking and just lowered her head like she was thinking. Yi Shuang did not disturb her, but drove quietly. In about half an hour or less, the two finally arrived at the agreed upon place to eat. The waiter came over and, Hello, may I ask how many people? There are private rooms. Ah, uh, where is the hibiscus room? This way. The waiter brought Yi Shuang in them, and soon stopped at the door of a private room. Yi Shuang pushed open the door, coming, soft girl, 
reflecting the round table restaurant. Mother Jo was sitting with a few people. Apart from her, there were one or two adults, as well as an 11 or 12 year old girl. Aunt Xian, Yi Xuan smiled and greeted. Bai Yen Yu, however, hesitated and followed with a small shout. Auntie, it wasn't until Yi Xuan gently patted her head melon that the young girl changed her words. Mom, Zo daughter, these are your two uncles. Mother Jo seemed to be very happy when she heard Bai Yu Yue call her mom and introduced the two men to Bai Yu Yue. Ooh, pretty girl, completely inheriting your mom's genes from the same old bean as you. Uncle also looked at Bai Yu Yue happily. After Mother Jo introduced the two uncles, she introduced the little girl. This is your cousin, Alice. The little girl at a glance is a mixed blood, snow white skin nose high, leaving a golden double ponytail hair. The whole person with a doll is delicate and small. Just when Mother Jo introduced her like this, there was a trace of unnaturalness on her face, and then she let out a tiny undetectable hum. After Yi Shuang noticed the girl's different reaction, he couldn't help but look at her more and summoned the system window instead. Only when he casually swept the window, the person froze slightly. Character, Alice. Nominally the adopted daughter of the Zhou family, but actually the illegitimate daughter of Zhou Feng. Uncle Zhou's illegitimate daughter? This girl? Is Bai Yu Yu's half-sister? But why did Mother Zhou say it was a cousin? Can it be that it's for fear that Bai Yu Feng would mind being an adopted daughter and then say it's a cousin? Yi Shuang pondered slightly. But does Aunt Xian know that Alice is Uncle Zhou's illegitimate daughter? Yi Shuang chose not to ask more about this matter. And Bai Yen Yu did not care if those two people were her uncles or not. Nor did she care if that little girl staring at her was her cousin or not. As she sat down beside Yi Shuang in a well-behaved manner. Obviously there were all sorts of exquisite meals on the tabletop. But at this moment Bai Yen Yu looked like she didn't have much of an appetite and didn't want to eat like she usually did. Come baby, have some white chopped chicken. Aunt Xian gave Bai Yu Yue the chicken, while the young girl gently said thank you before taking small bites. After seeing her daughter's nonchalant attitude towards herself, Aunt Xian thought about it and had no choice but to turn her target to Yi Shuang. Shuang Chan, you guys came quite early. The school happens to have a school celebration event. It's actually no different from having a seven-day vacation. Yi Shuang also explained today's activities. A few people chatted. Perhaps because Yi Shuang was better at dealing with such occasions, and in a few words, he became acquainted with those two uncles. On the contrary, the ones who were bored and dry were Bai Yen Yu and the little girl called Alice. The two of them didn't say a word. Bai Yu Yue was fine, occasionally following Yi Shuang's conversation, while Alice just didn't speak at all, looking like she was sulking. Mother Zhou seemed to have noticed this, and instead gave Alice some vegetables in her bowl. Alice why have you been eating rice? Have some vegetables. No flavor. Alice said coldly, grow your body, Mother Jo said, forget it, no need, you don't want me anyway, Alice's voice was much higher, and she actually put down her chopsticks and ran out of the private room, where are you going, this scene was not expected by everyone present, Yi Shuang also stood up, seemingly intending to leave some space for Yu Yue and the girls, Aunt Xian, I'll go and take a look, Yu Yue, you have a good chat with Aunt Xian and uncle, Bai Yu Yue nodded, hurry, back, good, after Yi Shuang left the private room, he looked around and then asked a passing waiter, Hello, have you seen a little girl who looks like a foreigner? Over there, going down the stairs. Okay. Yi Shuang asked all the way to the entrance of the restaurant and finally found the girl in the parking lot outside. She was leaning her back against a car and was playing with her blonde hair with her head down. When she noticed the footsteps, the girl looked up as if she was on guard. But when she saw that it was Yi Shuang, she said with some dissatisfaction that, What are you doing here? Why did you suddenly run out? Aunt Xian and the others will be worried. Yi Shuang extended his hand and said, Go back with me. Don't need you to mind. Alice didn't look away. Anyway, she muttered a long string of words behind her, which seemed to be in Maoist. Yi Shuang seemed to have guessed something through the other party's mere words, and he followed the girl's example and leaned against the car as well. Alice seemed to be a bit surprised why Yi Shuang suddenly quieted down. She turned her head, only to realize that Yi Shuang just stood aside and smiled at herself. You, what are you doing? Nothing, blowing off some steam. Well, Alice's little face seemed to have turned into a bun in anger. Row away. Why don't you go? It just so happens that I also came out to be quiet, to give them some space. Yi Shuang touched his pocket and finally took out a candy and threw it into his mouth. Mother Zhou definitely had some family words that she wanted to say to Bai Yin Yu alone, and Yi Shuang came out to look for this little girl, which was also considered to give them a little space. Well, Alice stared at Yi Shuang her slightly puffed up cheeks not knowing what she was thinking. Yi Shuang suddenly spoke. Do you recognize a creature like a puffer fish? What's wrong with recognizing it? You look a bit like a blowfish in this way. Alice reacted a few seconds later, revealing her own small tiger teeth. 
Who are you calling a blowfish? Here, Yi Shuang pointed, and the other party immediately covered her little face and squatted down. When she looked up, she found Yi Shuang handing over a candy. Here, Alice used an expression of looking at a fool. Do you treat me like a child? Eating candy can secrete dopamine and make the mood a little better. Yi Shuang laughed, afraid I'll poison it? Alice, she reached out her small hand and took the candy. Just poison it, it's best to die. Alice looked like she was ready to die, as if Yi Shuang had added poison to the sugar. Ka 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 ka. The sound of teeth biting hard on the candy rang out. The girl was still staring at Yi Shuang while biting the candy. That little look as if she wanted to bite him right into pieces. The silky sweet flavor spread in her mouth, and Alice seemed to feel less uncomfortable. But she was still very lost as she leaned against the side of the car with her hands behind her back. That look in Yi Shuang's eyes was actually very familiar. Just like by Yu Yu's look under the streetlight, like a homeless little animal, as if waiting for the gods to descend. What's so sad? Yi Shuang opened his mouth and asked. Alice had the breathlessness to generally look at Yi Shuang, then re-lowered her head and muttered, You'll know when you reach my age. Yi Shuang. Just at this time, the cell phone rang. After Alice saw the caller ID, she directly hung up the phone, then walked straight out. She also turned back. You, don't follow me. Yi Shuang also just laughed and didn't follow. Isn't there quite a lot of human traffickers lately, specializing in abducting some small children and then sending them to the big mountains, where they give birth to those 50 or 60 old men at the age of a teenager, and there's not even a cell phone there, if you resist you have to be beaten, and then handcuffed with chains and locked up in a pigsty, sleeping with the pigs until you admit your fault. Alice stopped in her footsteps and silently walked back to Yi Shuang's side again, continuing to lean against the car. After noticing Yi Shuang's smirking look, she averted her eyes and muttered, it's not that I'm afraid, I just don't want to cause trouble for the police uncle. You are thinking that Yu Yu snatched Aunt Sien? Yi Shuang asked. Alice didn't say anything. Children, worrying about their favorite things being snatched away. It's not strange. I'm not a child. Did you go to middle school? Alice didn't say anything again. Just said with dissatisfaction. The standard of maturity is not judged from age. You're right. It's like your sister. There are also a lot of things she doesn't understand yet. Yi Shuang said. She is not my sister. I also hope not. Yi Shuang thought about the content of Alice's introduction on the page and couldn't help but sigh and say, if Alice was really Uncle Zhou's illegitimate daughter, and if Aunt Xian did not know about this, when the day came when things were revealed, would Yen Yu be hurt because of the implication of this matter? This was also the reason why Yi Shuang came out and wanted to talk to this little girl alone. Alice looked at Yi Shuang a little strangely, perhaps because of the night, she felt some coldness at the moment. And, who are you to her? The girl suddenly asked. Yi Shuang just said, not really a guardian's guardian, I guess. Alice, the air seemed to be quiet for a split second. Alice muttered a Maozi phrase. If it was Unchi Fish's native language, Yi Shuang might have been able to understand it, but Maozi was all he was limited to a single umlaut. You don't need to worry that the appearance of Yum Yum will take away the love that is rightfully yours. Yi Shuang said. Alice said, then why say I'm her cousin? Even if I'm an adopted daughter, doesn't my identity speak for itself? And she doesn't even care about me now. Even running out, she doesn't care about me, because I wasn't a member of the Zhou family in the first place. She doesn't want me, Alice accused. Even the corners of her eyes carried a little tear. Then make a bet? Yi Shuang's sentence made the red-eyed Alice freeze. She sucked in her snot-free nose and rubbed her eyes haphazardly. Blay? Yi Shuang laughed. Just bet on whether they will come out to look for you. Bet on what? You say. If I win. You. You. You call me a sister. Alice thought for half a day and finally stifled a bet out. She felt that having an adult call herself a child's sister should be considered very humiliating. Okay, then what if I win? Yi Shuang asked. Do anything. Before Alice could finish her sentence, a voice came from not far away. And, Alice dash. The moment the voice came, Alice's body trembled, incredulously looking towards a place. At this moment, Mother Zhou was bringing her two uncles as well as Bai Yu Yue to come together. And even Mother Zhou was still wearing high-heeled shoes to trot over. Just when Alice thought that Mother Zhou was going to scold herself, the other party instead half squatted down and gently wrapped her arms around Alice. It's mom's fault. I shouldn't have neglected you during this time, but mom must love you. I'm sorry Alice. Mom just said the wrong thing. Mother Zhou's apology made Alice all confused for a moment. She dumbfoundedly looked up to Yi Shuang's side, and at this moment Yi Shuang had already walked over to Bai Yuyue's side. Yi Shuang. I said these words. Bai Yuyue held her cell phone. The content inside was secretly sent by Yi Shuang when she was chatting with Alice. All right, let's go back to eat first. Alice was brought back to the private room. She didn't seem as hostile as she was just now, and she even returned to her position still a bit overwhelmed. 
It wasn't until the moment she met Yi Shuang's line of sight that she didn't look away and hummed. So introduce her again. Her name is Alice. She is a Chinese Mauritian mixed race child adopted by our Zhou family. Mother Zhou also said at this time, ever since Zhou Mei was lost, my health has also been very bad. And the doctor also said that it would be very difficult for me to get pregnant again. It just so happens that this child was brought back by old Zhou because of some things. So, Rose's sister, she is your sister, by Yu Yu's sniffed. But she looked at Alice and said softly, Hello. Alice was silent for a few seconds before she let out a mosquito-like voice. Hello. Tomorrow night, Whispering Yui will have a stage performance. It's the club she just joined, called the Light Voice Club. After coming back from Alice, the atmosphere at the dinner table was still kind of relaxed. Bai Yu Yue stayed beside Yi Shuang also taking small bites of food. At this time, Yi Shuang also opened his mouth to mention about the music performance, which was also considered an invitation. Tomorrow night? Aha. Yi Shuang nodded. If tomorrow night is, Mother Zhou said, I should be free. Since it was Yi Shuang who had invited her over to watch the show, then Mother Zhou definitely had to go. Even if she didn't have the time, it just so happened that Mother Zhou had an attendance arrangement for tomorrow. But she was still planning to find an excuse to put it off first. Is Alice going? Yi Shuang looked to the little girl. Um, Alice looked away and did not know what thing she was thinking about, seemingly not quite willing to meet Yi Shuang's eyes. At this moment, the girl was still thinking about what Yi Shuang was going to do to her in her mind. After all, she had said that she would do anything. He won't want to make this young lady do something strange, right? Alice thought of this and looked at Yi Shuang with a strange look. Yi Shuang didn't know what this little girl was thinking, and after seeing that Alice didn't say anything, he didn't force it. Who knew that Alice suddenly opened her mouth? Okay, then as a bet, I'll go. Bat? Yi Shuang quickly understood Alice's small mind. He just smiled and did not choose to poke the other party. After all, this was not worth mentioning to Yi Shuang in the first place. An elementary school student was just a student. What could it do for itself? At the dinner table, they chatted some more about Bai Yu Yu's recent situation, as well as inquiring about whether or not she would return to the Hong Kong area with Mother Zhou and the others, and without a doubt, all of them were rejected by Bai Yu Yue. However, she was no longer like last time, tearfully shaking her head, only knowing to bury her face in Yi Shuang's arms. Instead, she was much calmer, shaking her head expressionlessly to reject Mother Zhou. When Mother Zhou saw this, although she sighed inwardly, she also realized that Bai Yue was much less resistant to herself. In that case, the rest could only be left to time. The two uncles, on the other hand, were fond of Bai Yue. After all, they had all enjoyed hugging this child around when Yue was a child, showing off this gold-carved, adorable doll to their friends. Although it wasn't exactly the first time they met, they also gave Yue a $1 million bank card red packet from one person as a meet and greet gift. I don't need this. Bai Yu Yue still refused at first, but seeing the eagerness in her uncle's eyes, she eventually accepted it. The young girl didn't have much to spend, and it made no difference to her whether it was a million or ten million dollars. Going home to Yi Shuang, the time flashed and it was already almost nine o'clock, and it was time to go back and rest again. Mother Zhou intended to leave Bai Yu Yue to stay together in the hotel outside for the night, but finally gave up her intention. Then you guys be safe on the road. I'll go to the show tomorrow. Mother Zhou stood by the car with a few people and said to Yi Shuang as well as Bai Yu. Aha! After Yi Shuang nodded her head, she gently patted the back of Bai Yu's head, and the young girl also said softly, Bye, good night. Mother Zhou revealed a smile. Rest early, Zhou's sister. Yi Shuang also raised her palm with the Alice who was only staring at her. Bye. Alice averted her head, but still poked her tongue out. And, Pak Ida, means goodbye. And uncle chuckled. Yi Shuang followed suit with a smile then left with Bai Yu Yue. Mother Zhou watched the silhouettes of the two until they both got into the car, before returning to her car in general with reluctance. And at this time the cell phone also rang. Mother Zhou glanced at it and found that it was her husband calling. Hello? Ah, Xian. You brought Alice all the way over there? Father Zhou's voice rang out on the other end, seemingly like he was suppressing some emotion. Ah, uh, what's up? The person on the other end of the phone was silent for a split second. For some reason, he suddenly hung up while Mother Zhou glanced at the cell phone, but did not take it to heart. What did Aunt Xian talk to you about? On the other side, Yi Xuan was driving the car and asked the young girl in the passenger side, Bai Yu Yu said, asked, the recent situation, and, asked me to go back. Yi Xuan gazed at the road in front of him, and after hearing Bai Yu Eli say that, he stopped asking anything more, but at that moment, there was a weight coming from his arm, and Bai Yu Eli pressed her face against Yi Xuan's arm, I'm not leaving Yi Xuan, I only need Yi Xuan. This sentence, however, seemed to be said to herself, 
Yi Shuang stretched out a hand and gently patted the young girl's head. The following day, Silver Mountain College was as lively as ever. After selling some lemon tea in the morning, the rest of the day was for the light music club to rehearse and prepare for their performance. Everyone was preparing in the gymnasium's lounge, so naturally they wouldn't run into members of other clubs. After a piece of music, Jixia also called out to stop everyone. Okay, take a break. During the break, there were guests on this side. Two students with center parted hair came over, and when they saw Jixia, they naturally smiled and said, Yo, you're really working hard. What, you too? Jixia seemed to be unfavorable to the two students who came over to say hello, and although she was a bit unhappy, she still said, You Ikuan music group are so idle that you specifically came over to say hello to me? One of the students spread his hands. It's alright, I just heard that the light music club is disbanding, and now it's going to perform, so naturally I came over to take a look. Huang Zhao, if you don't have anything else, please leave, don't disturb our performance, Rin said at this time as well. The boy known as Huang Zhao shrugged. Rin Rin, don't look like that, at least we used to be in the same club. Since you left the light voice club, you don't have anything to do with us anymore. You're so cold, I didn't do anything wrong. Of course the more people there are, the more fun music is, if every year we're at the bottom of the list like the canola club and can't recruit anyone, how can that be fun? I'm sorry to bother you. Zixia pulled Rin Rin, don't talk to him. Rin Rin chimed in, just go away, you're affecting us, cheap bastard. Before Huang Zhao could finish, he only felt his shoulders sink. In the middle of Huang Zhao and the other boy, Yi Shuang appeared there, he smiled and wrapped his arms around the two boys' necks, what are you chatting about? So happy. Huang Zhao froze for a moment and hastily took a few steps back. The other boy with a center-parted head was also startled. You? Who are you? Me? Just the teacher in charge of the light music club. Are the two of you coming over to help move the equipment? Yi Shuang pointed to the electronic piano on the side. That thing is heavy enough and just short of people. After Huang Zhao's two left, Yi Shuang took a look at their panicked fleeing appearance at this time. But she retracted her line of sight to ask Jisha who was at the side. The two of them? Are they your acquaintances? Zisha nodded, but she seems a little lost look. Well, the previous members of the society, detached from us to join other clubs, when Rin Rin left also had a fight with him. Yi Shuang was a little surprised that Rin Rin's character with so few words would still quarrel, but he didn't ask further. Well, is their club performing singing and dancing? Yi Shuang turned his head to look at Huang Zhao's side of the Aikuan music troupe, compared to the light music club's side that prepared musical instruments for their performance. Their program seemed to be singing and dancing everyone was still holding a basketball in their hands. Why don't we sing and dance too? Tang Koko came over and said, still holding a cell phone in her hand. Look, this dance is quite popular these days. Koko's cell phone was playing a short video of a petite girl dancing, and although it was only a short 10 seconds or so, it had up to 5 million likes. Eh? Only after Yi Shuang got a good look at the girl's face as well as the blonde double ponytail that carried a familiar look, did his expression slowly come back to him? This fellow, wasn't that Alice from last night? This girl, the dancer? Yi Shuang asked. She seems to be more famous as a child star A. Eh? Look, there are 20 million fans. Coco clicked on the other party's avatar, which clearly wrote the number of fans. More than 23 million. Although the concern contains moisture, but from the number of likes, this must also be considered a famous guy. Yi Shuang took another look at the other party's name and realized that there was another national name called Zhou Ailey on this guy's profile brother? Tang Kuka seemed to feel a little strange after seeing Yi Shuang in a daze. It's fine. Our performance format isn't quite suitable for dancing. After Yi Shuang came back to his senses, he pointed to the musical instruments on the side. He couldn't put down the instruments halfway through the performance to dance. Could he? However, the lead singer could have some extra body movements. Thinking so, Yi Shuang looked at Rin Rin, who instantly understood what he meant and immediately shook his head like a rattle. It's better to give up. Seeing Rin Rin so resistant, Yi Shuang did not say anything, although the time they spent together was not too long, but Rin Rin's reticence plus her somewhat sociopathic nature, it was still too much to ask her to dance. After a short break, everyone continued practicing the songs they were going to perform. There were two songs prepared for the show, one Slippery Eggs and one Out of Control, both of which were well known and Rin was good at. There was also a song called Call of Silence scheduled, but Rin wasn't confident that she could sing it well, so she gave it up for the time being. At this point, after training for a while longer, Yi Shuang, who was playing the piano, suddenly sensed that something was a little off. He pondered for a while, then looked towards Rin who was not far away, holding her guitar. Rin, yes, what's wrong? Rin Rin looked back. Are you, uncomfortable somewhere? Yi Shuang asked, as he had just heard Rin Rin seemingly play several wrong notes in a row. 
and even his singing voice sounded strange. Rin Rin blushed a bit, but still lowered her head and whispered, I am fine. Yi Xuang didn't pursue this, but looked at the others again. Then let's continue. Rin Rin. Zixia looked at Rin Rin with a bit of worry. After another while, it was time for a break. Rin Rin's condition still hadn't returned, so much so that Zixia walked over to her side to inquire about the situation. Are you okay? Rin Rin. Is it because of what happened with Huang Zhao? Hmm. Rin Rin seems to be a bit lost, but still smiles apologetically. Sorry Zixia, I'm going to the restroom. After saying that, she puts down her guitar and quickly walks towards the distant restroom. Rin Rin. Zixia. Yi Xuan walked over to Zixia and asked about Rin Rin. What happened to that kid? Most likely it's because of Huang Zhao's matter. We used to be quite close. But ever since Huang Zhao chose to withdraw from the club, Rin Rin has been very standoffish with him. Ji Xia said, Rin Rin has actually been wanting to prove the strength of the Light Voice Club. I think she was just provoked by Huang Zhao, so she must have wanted to play well to show him. The pressure was high, so the play got worse instead? Yi Shuang said, Well, Rin Rin makes mistakes when she's stressed, and when she makes a mistake the pressure gets even higher. Although Ji Xia knew what Rin Rin was because of, she didn't have a very good method. After all, Rin Rin had always been such an internalized personality. Soon, Rin Rin also came back. She seemed to have found some of her form again, and finally continued practicing, compared to Rin Rin's side of the situation. Bai Yu Yu and Tang Koko were relatively much better. Both teenage girls were holding their guitars and playing hard. As a beginner, Bai Yu Yu practiced very late almost every night for this performance. Sometimes you could still see 10,000 sleeping in their nests with both paws covering their ears. I'm going to put on a good show, was what the young girl told Ji Shuang during the break. Well, after all, Aunt Xian is coming over to watch the performance and I heard that Chen Qin Chen Hai and the others will also come. Yi Shuang smiled slightly. So many people are watching, but if you have to perform well, Bai Yu Yu eh, however, shook her head. It's not them, because you're performing with Yi Shuang, you have to perform well. Yi Shuang froze for a moment, then smiled and pinched the young girl's soft little face. Good. Time flickered and it was already evening. Dusk had arrived. The sky was like percolating some blood red. Behind the thick clouds could not hide the remnants of dusk. The college was still bustling, although it sounded noisy but filled with fireworks. This was the students' favorite festival. Even some of the homecoming department students would not be so active to go home by this time. Yi Shuang returned to the gymnasium after they ate something in the snack street for dinner. The stage was right outside the gymnasium, along with the 70 fireworks once again today. The outside of the stage at this time were all chairs, these were all moved by the students. And in the front of the student seats, there were the so-called guest seats which in fact were the seats for the principals and directors, the school board members as well as some celebrities who had been invited over and so on. On one side of the stage, the students in charge of hosting were talking about the scripts for the performances to be held later, and in the performance list, music-related aspects were at the top of the list. Yi Shuang glanced at the posted performance table. The Light Music Club's performance was at the 16th position, which was actually right behind the Ikuan Music Ensemble. As the students took their seats and as the night fell, the the stage performance, too, was finally starting. Outside the stage of the evening party, there were nearly 10, 000 spectators, so a huge screen similar to a concert in general was built outside the stage, and there were quite a few people who were standing on the periphery to watch the performance. The number of students at Silver Mountain College was already well over 10,000, and with the tourists coming in from outside as well as the faculty and teachers, this number could only be said to be not a lot, and there were quite a few people who came here for the invited stars because this stage would also have popular stars appearing on the stage to perform, about five stars, which could only be said that Silver Mountain College was rich and powerful. The students had already bought glow sticks, five dollars a piece wasn't very expensive, and as everyone took their seats, the sound of hawking rang out. Front row selling peanut squash seeds, peanut squash seeds, garbage bags, cheap sell cheap sell, bully cup lemon tea, summer summer must only eat you one, the same stockings, the same stockings, Schoolgirls' cat's paw white stockings, chicken olive, chicken olive, tasty and inexpensive, eat the pat coup become a hyung. After all, with so many people, it's also a good time to make money. Those vendors naturally won't miss such a good opportunity. And with so many people, maintaining order also required quite a lot of manpower. So almost the entire school's security personnel as well as members of the school's discipline and inspection department were out in force. It even pulled in the publicity department as well as all the students from the student council which was barely enough. Whoa, death, so many people. Tang Kuka had also seen the stage performance last year. Only she was acting as a spectator at that time, so she didn't feel anything after taking her seat in her seat. 
But on the stage, the young girl's face turned white with fear when she saw the black-packed audience outside, as well as the fluorescent sticks that were as numerous as the stars. If she didn't perform well, she would lose a lot of face. After all, for the 70th school anniversary, there are still some celebrity fans who came here to see their own celebrities perform for free. And Shiyu stood on the side holding her arms and said, White whoring is cool. This is more people than many stars' concerts. This academy is really exaggerated. Yi Shuang also couldn't help but speak. This student mustn't chant about how good it is all day long after graduation. Before the popular Tiger Poker rating colleges, this college's score is scary high. Yi Shuang now understand what is the reason, because it gives the students everything they want, especially from the first year of the students. There is no so-called evening self-study. The class time is shorter than the other high schools. Pay more attention to other aspects of the cultivation. The activities are also run non-stop. In addition to the school festival, there are some small activities, similar to the winter solstice party kind of thing. The activities are also organized non-stop, almost once every two months, and often last a week. It is no wonder that so many students after the college entrance examination from the field to come in. Just Silver Mountain College is a local school. For local students and foreign students' scoreline is not the same. Compared to the local students, foreign students is really too difficult to come in. So every year there will also be many students no matter what major. First obey the transfer squeeze in before. This is nothing new. Yu Yu A, uh, scared? Yi Shuang also gave by Yu Yu A a glance at the number of people outside. Compared to Tang Koko's look, by Yu Yu A was a lot calmer. She pulled on Yi Shuang's coat corner. And, not afraid, Yi Shuang is here. Good. While everyone was adjusting their mindset, Rin Rin was the one who behaved the most erratically. She seemed a bit soulful and wouldn't respond until Jisha had called out to her several times. Buzz. Just at this moment, the sound of a blown up mic came from the stereo, but it quickly adjusted. Good evening, teachers, students, and guests who have come to attend Silver Mountain Academy's 70th anniversary, accompanied by the energetic voices of the two hosts, a man and a woman. It was considered to be the prelude to the evening party. Incidentally, in addition to the student clubs and invited stars who would come to perform, in fact, the teachers and even the aunties in the dining hall they could all sign up to perform. In the performance table, you can also see the skits prepared by the cafeteria ants and cooks, because they won't be forced to sublimate or force the dumplings, so these skits are rather more interesting than the ones watched on the TV set. It's better than a dumpling photo booth anyhow, right? With the host scene words finished, it was also left to school manager Unshi to make the opening speech. Ahem, Unshi Ichiro, who was seated in the guest seat, tapped the microphone in his hand before speaking. Punch, do it and be done with it. Punch, 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 it's over. Oh 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 oh. Accompanied by the Unshi school managers this rushing after. The students are also laughing a lot in unison shouted out rushing rushing rushing. This is also considered a reserved program in the college. Okay, so the first program is the song Love to Fight brought by our Principal Huang. Everyone applaud and welcome. Principal Huang was from Hujian. So he brought a song in southern Fujian language. Three points for a pig. Seven points for a cake. Three parts are destined seven parts depend on fighting. Love cake and gray yang. Only those who love to fight will win. Although many people didn't understand, they still shook the glow sticks in their hands to give their enthusiastic support. Oh 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 oh. School Huang. We love your big cake. Good to hear. Didn't you say you wanted to sing in women's clothes last year? School Huang? Six 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 oh on the talent pull the other principals on to eat big cakes ah the students under the stage also had a happy look after all principal huang has no stance as a person in fact they still quite like it soon it was the turn of the other performers the front is basically a teacher class first performance, with the appearance of a program, only to see there are two school nurses came over to speak and said, Teacher Yi, it's the turn of our school nurse group. Ah, uh, coming. Yi Shuang answered and followed along. After seeing Yi Shuang follow the others out, Tang Koko and the others looked at each other in dismay, and then a question mark appeared on their faces. What happened? Why did Yi Shuang follow the others and leave before it was time for us to perform, right? So Mr. Yi has other performances now. Nah. A few teenage girls stacked their heads on top of each other and peeked at the stage. Only now did they realize that Yi Shuang had more than one performance. The performance of the school doctor's group was actually just singing a song. And because there weren't enough people, Yi Shuang was one of the ones who was invited halfway through. The song that was sung wasn't difficult. After all, Yi Shuang was the one who made up the numbers. 
so it was only necessary to sing along with the school doctor who was the lead singer. I'm going to send you the love that never sets in the sun dash. It was the song, Sun Never Sets, and it was also the tenor version. Accompanied by the man's thick voice, the originally sweet song instantly turned into a hot-blooded tune, like praising the sun. The following is the program performance brought to us by the Society Icoan Music Troupe. Dusk witnesses the true believers. Everyone applaud. Accompanied by the enthusiastic cheers. At this time backstage, Huang Zhao and several other boys with center-parted hair and wearing backpack pants passed by the side of the light music club. When passing by Rin Rin's side, Huang Zhao also intentionally stopped his footsteps for a moment, grinning, revealing a smile. Rin Rin, witness it properly. Our club's final kunai. Hum. Rin stared at Huang Zhao and finally could only say, we won't lose, really, then we'll see. Huang Zhao waved his hand and led the others towards the stage. After the host retired, a few people from Ikuan Music Group also set up, accompanied by the Dusk video projected on the screen behind them. Accompanied by Curry Curry Sings the Magic Battle Song BGM of the Buckle Feeds Ringing, Huang Zhao a few people in the shadows of that running basketball, their pace neat, dribbling is also unified, eyes firm as if to enter the file general seriousness. The audience was first in an uproar, and then cheered, but soon the audience was attracted by their serious performance, and they began to shake the fluorescent sticks in their hands. Backstage, it's a very strong opponent then, such a neat pace, as if it's like a shadow split. Ji Xiao looked at Huang Zhao and their performance and couldn't help but say, I heard that the members in the Ikuan music troupe are divided into five stage grades, and with Huang Zhao's strength, he's already reached the third stage of the power of Cohen. However, Ji Xia still gently patted Rin Rin's shoulder revealing a cute smile, don't stress so much, we may not be bad either, aha, although Rin Rin lightly nodded her chin, it was clear that Huang Zhao's and their outstanding play was giving her even more invisible pressure, after Huang Zhao and the others finished their one dance, they chose to sing a sensational song, and he held the microphone and, chicken you, just too beautiful, oh baby, just too beautiful, one more glance will explode, a little closer to be melted quickly Huang Zhao's voice contains deep feelings, the corners of the eyes are full of hot tears, a few words down, suddenly sang and cried countless believers, it'll explode out accompanied by Huang Zhao's trembling voice saying the last line of the lyrics, the stage immediately rang a warm applause, oh 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 Ikuan Music Club, Love Gone Music Club, the cheering voices of the audience under the stage gradually unified, and finally shouted out the name of that club, which obviously already possessed a very high popularity in Silver Mountain Academy, or else there wouldn't be so many people choosing to join, even the guests couldn't help but applaud, after all, they wouldn't be stingy in praising outstanding performances, one of the figures in the guest seats looked particularly familiar, that was the woman dressed in a long black dress who was dressed up for the occasion, she was wearing light makeup and her pair of beautiful eyes were glancing towards the backstage side. Chen Qin had also come over to watch the performance as an invited guest of Silver Mountain Academy, and she had heard that Yi Shuang also had a performance, so she had come over this afternoon to see how things were going. It's almost time, isn't it? Chen Qin muttered. Thank you for the wonderful performance of the Ikuan Music Group, so please welcome the next one. A performance from the Light Music Club, the host said with a smile, after Yi Shuang and the others heard the host call out the name of the club. Along with the falling red cloth, they also moved all the equipment up. Have you debugged the equipment? Shouldn't be a problem, right? After the preparations were almost done, Yi Shuang glanced at Bai Yan Yu and Tang Koko standing beside him, and then looked at Rin Rin and the others who were slightly farther away. He smiled and said, Do it with vigor, just don't regret it. Oh, Tang Koku and the others raised their fists, and Shi Yu also lazily raised her hand. Only Bai Yu Yue was slow to raise her arm in general blinking innocently with an innocent face, oh, oh, Yi Shuang placed his fingers on the cold keys of the piano, then slowly said, Rin Rin, what, what's wrong, Mr. Yi, Rin Rin hugged her guitar and turned back, don't put too much pressure on yourself, rely on us more, Yi Shuang smiled slightly, after all, we're in the same club, Rin Rin froze for a moment, then looked at the others, Ji Xia and the others also smiled faintly at her, even Bai Yu Yu nodded and whispered, go for it, Rin Rin's hand holding the guitar got a little bit harder, her shoulders seemed to relax, and she nodded her head with a light smile, and, good, the light music club is ready, pull back the curtain, the staff side received Ji Shuang's gesture and then controlled the instrument to pull back the huge curtain, in an instant, all sorts of blinding light was projected over, the fluorescent sticks were all different colors, 
and the black-packed crowd couldn't help but make one's heart thump just by looking at them. Who? Rin Rin took a deep breath and made an okay gesture towards and sure you behind her. Rinku strummed the guitar in her hand and began to sing. Every time I see your face, my heart always thumps. My slightly trembling miss, it's as light as cotton. Looking at your sideways face is always so hard. I can't look at you long enough for you to notice. I wish I was in a dream, so that we could be closer to each other. God, I beg you, give me a time when I can be alone with you for once. I'm gonna hold my favorite bunny. I'm gonna go to bed early tonight. Smoothie, smoothie, the more Rin Rin sang, the more relaxed she became, completely bringing out the love of a young, beautiful girl that filled the song. And behind her, the other girls stood under the stage lights and played, each of them so focused that they couldn't stop smiling on their faces. At this moment, the stage also spontaneously changed the color of the glow sticks to pink and shook them. Sounds good. Love it. Just at this time, the stage's lights but suddenly flashed, accompanied by an electric current sound. The music came to an abrupt end. Buzz dash. Rinku froze in place, a bit overwhelmed as she looked at the audience on stage. What's going on? Her own voice. It's gone? Why did the music stop? It's hard for us to be like this all of a sudden ah hey. Holy shit. Playing the inch stop challenge? We're just getting into the swing of things. Okay? What happened? The audience side was also in an uproar. Wondering what was going on. What's going on? At this moment, Yi Shuang also looked at the staff on the side. It seems like there are a few equipment problems. Wait for us for a little while. A response also came from over there. Yi Shuang frowned gently after hearing this, then looked over to Rin Rin's side, realizing that at this moment, the young girl was lowering her head, and her body was trembling slightly. Even her fists were clenched. It's not good. The morale has been hit. In that case, it would be hard for both the audience and the performers to find their form. After all, no one could stand a sudden cold spell. Uncle, our instruments still have sound. Play this together. Just at this time, and sure you however suddenly threw her cell phone over. Eh? Yi Shuang subconsciously took it, but realized that in the screen was electronic piano sheet music, with the words Qian Ben Sakura written on it. Sure enough, again, Rin held her guitar, her eyes falling on the dimly lit stage. In fact, last year's school festival performance, there were also some problems, which was the last straw that overwhelmed the light music club's final near disintegration. Rin Rin originally thought that she could pull back a little bit of the light music club's popularity through this performance, but didn't think that it would still be the same result. Rin Rin, Zixia also looked at her, her face full of worry. Although Zixia was the head of the light music club, she was actually a lot more optimistic because she felt that being able to play music with her friends was fine. Of course, Zixia didn't want the club to be disbanded either, but she was even more reluctant to see her friend show such a lost expression. At this time, this side of the audience, Dad, why is there suddenly no sound? A girl was asking her father beside her. She was none other than Chen Hai's daughter Chao Chao. It seems like we've encountered some problems, but it should be fine. We'll be fine after a while, right? Chen Hai was also looking towards the stage. Yi Shuang's position was slightly further back, and he didn't know if Yi Shuang had any preparatory countermeasures. Silver Mountain Academy was also really something. Obviously it was such a big performance, but they didn't actually pay attention to the equipment in advance. The audience gradually began to feel bored. After all, just as Yi Shuang thought, once the enthusiasm of the audience began to cool down, it would be very difficult to rekindle it again. Not only did it affect the performer's play, it also affected the viewer's feelings. Manager Ungshi, is it a problem with the equipment? There were also guests sitting beside Unshi Ichiro who asked what happened. After all, this performance was broadcast live on the internet. How could this be considered a live streaming accident? It's not an equipment problem. I think it's just time to switch tracks. Unshi Ichiro smiled instead. Look at that one with the drum kit. It's my granddaughter Little Fish. Isn't she handsome and cute? The few guests on the side squinted hard. Because the giant screen on the side didn't turn the camera to Unshi Fish's body. So the few old men couldn't even see Unshi Fish's appearance with the wrinkles on their faces tightly wrinkled. As for Chen Qin, who was also sitting in the guest seat, with one hand propping up her face, compared to the other people's consternation, the girl's face remained calm, and her pair of eyes stayed on Yi Xuan's body all the time. She believed that Yi Xuan was definitely able to solve the problem. So unwilling, Bean Sai's teardrops dripped down on the guitar, and Rin Rin barred her tears. Obviously it was a great opportunity. Obviously just got into the mood. Why is it like this? At this moment, Rin stood on the stage, only feeling coldness all over her body. It seemed that she couldn't even feel her own fingers. Thump. Suddenly a clear sound of the piano keys sounded, instantly interrupting the young girl's thoughts. The sharp, rapid sound of the piano accompanied the drums as they continued to sound. Smooth, 
sharp, and beautiful. This familiar rhythm. Isn't that Senban Zakura? After hearing this piano sound, someone in the audience had already heard it at this moment. It was one of Hatsune Miku's songs, and coincidentally, the spotlight also hit the two figures in the corner. Yi Shuang's body was upright as he played the song, while on the side of the spotlight was the figure of Anshuryu chewing gum and banging on the drums. The figures of the two people appeared on the huge screen at the same time, accompanied by music that seemed to be able to tug at the heartstrings, quickly pulling up the cold atmosphere. Holy shit, your highness, Senban Zakura ah, I love this song, it's an anti-war song that satirizes the little days themselves, see, my little fish, isn't that cute, at this time in the background, there was a club that had question mark faces, ha, huh? isn't Senban Zakura the song our anime club is going to play later, the glow sticks waved once again with a little bit of light, and there were also people who started to let out a hey ha sound of solidarity, there was suddenly a microphone in front of Unshi Fish, and along with the music that was playing, she sang directly in her hometown language in a lazy voice that said, bold and unbeatable. Yi Shuang was currently playing a tune in front of the piano. His fingers pressed on the keys incomparably fast, but the corners of his mouth pulled up a bitter smile. Really, it's too much to suddenly let someone play a tune that they haven't practiced, or this kind of fast-paced and difficult tune. Although he was spitting, his eyes were reading the score quickly, and his hands didn't stop in the slightest, even blending perfectly with Ensure Yu's drumming, but to pull back the atmosphere. This song does look pretty good, doing this kind of youthful and hot-blooded thing at a very old age. Strike Liao, just play and be done with it. Under the exquisite cooperation between the two people, the atmosphere of the scene was quickly pushed up. Even in Shiyu's lazy voice line in turn was very suitable for this kind of song with ironic meaning. On the contrary, it was bitter for Yi Shuang, because both of his hands had already transformed into stumps and it was also the first time he had ever played such a tune. Too powerful right? This one song is very difficult ah or a complicated version. Zixia also froze and turned her head. She obviously saw that Yi Xuan was looking at the sheet music in her cell phone quickly. This kind of sheet music is not even for humans to play. Actually just like this. Yi Xuan played it hard. Rin Rin was also dumbfounded looking at Yi Xuan and ensure Yu's performance. She suddenly remembered. What Yi Xuan had just said to herself. Rely on us more. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. In an instant, she only felt the tip of her nose sour. Some of the audience under the stage who knew what they were doing also showed different colors. No, this speed of playing the zither. I can't do it even if I play it chaotically. Ah, I shit. That playing the piano is a bit bullish ah. After playing that string can light cigarettes, right? Sliding on my knees. This big man is really cowhide. Playing the effect of four-handed playing. It's not a matter of hand speed. It's really a matter of hand count. Finally along with the last note, the whole audience began to cheer. Bullish. But in the next second, the style of Yi Xuan's playing suddenly turned, and the sound of the zither began to sink lower. Ha! Huh? Holy shit! Offer your heart! Spread it out and give it out! Isn't this call of silence? At this moment, the tune that Yi Xuan was playing suddenly became call of silence, and ensure you also stopped banging on the drums. At this moment, the spotlight only fell on Yi Xuan alone. At this time, the staff also made an okay gesture. Yi Xuan played the keys of the piano, smiled slightly and turned her head to look at Rin Rin who was looking at her. Sing, the sound of the piano fell, and at this moment, the song also finally reached its peak, to the tune she dared not face. Rin Rin trembled and gripped the microphone in her hand tightly, almost like she was chanting with her soul. You will know you're reborn tonight. You will know you're reborn tonight. Accompanied by the suddenly bright stage lights, it was a dead giveaway. Along with Yi Shuang pressing the last note, Rin Rin also finally finished the song. A few people bowed slightly towards the stage and, Thank you. The audience erupted in applause. Good to hear. Oh ha. Damn. That just came out. Goosebumps appeared. 6666 666 6666. Thank you guys. Returning backstage, Rin Rin solemnly thanked Yi Shuang and the others. If it wasn't for Yi Shuang and Shiyu's clinical performance just now, then this performance would definitely be screwed up. Anyway, it's fine to land smoothly. Yi Shuang smiled, although it was a bit messy. He looked at Shiyu. Where did you find the score? Randomly searched, but the one I found seems to be a complicated version. And Shiyu said casually, the speed of over 200 didn't expect you to be able to play it on the first try. Yi Shuang face expressionless, so you started holding the intention that I can't play it? Who knows? And Shiyu looked away with her hands in her pockets and blew a gum bubble. Yi Shuang, forget it, don't bother about this with this fish. At this time by Yen Yu who was staying quietly beside Yi Shuang suddenly took out her cell phone. On it was a message. Mother, sorry Azo daughter. Mom suddenly has something on her side, so I can't go over to see you perform. 
Mother, I will definitely go to see it next time. Mother, transfer 100,000 yen. Bai Yuyuas slightly gripped her cell phone tightly, her slightly dark eyes gazing at the content on the screen of her cell phone, her fingers gently moving, slowly typing down a few words that didn't matter before taking her cell phone back into the pocket of her skirt. She suddenly felt that the fingertips of the cell phone she had just held were a bit numb, so much so that she couldn't help but rub her arms for warmth. Looking at Yi Shuang, who was standing in front of her, she reached out her hand and pulled the corner of the other party's coat. What's wrong? Yi Xuan looked back and found Bai Yen Yu looking at herself with her head tilted up. Bai Yen Yu shook her head. Nothing. As she said that, she took Yi Xuan's arm instead. Yi Xuan looked at the young girl in front of him, although Bai Yen Yu did not change much from the usual. Still with her small expressionless face, Yi Xuan was keenly aware of the other party's fluctuating emotions. He thought about it and suddenly smiled. By the way, did Aunt Sien and the others see your performance? Bai Yu Yu eh? However, did not say anything? But the strength of holding Yi Shuang's arm seemed to be a little stronger. This scene fell in Yi Shuang's eyes, and he seemed to have understood what had happened. After a silent sigh in his heart, Yi Shuang spoke to Jixia and the others. I'll leave with Yen Yu first and come back later. Okay oh, Jixia said with a smile. Coco, why don't you come with us? Yi Shuang said to Tang Coco. Me, Tang Coco froze for a moment, then scratched her head. It's not good for me to be fully charged. Go, oh. Tang Koko didn't know what Yi Xuan was going to do, but still obediently followed along. Yi Xuan took out his cell phone and pressed it, then led the two young girls out of the backstage. Brother, where are we going? The audience. Oh, Bai Yu Yue was not sure what Yi Xuan was going to do, but at this moment, her palm was being held by the other party, and the temperature on it was enough to make people feel at ease. After walking into the auditorium, about a minute or two, Yi Xuan suddenly had a footstep and smiled towards Bai Yu Yue behind her. Here it is. Yu Yu A baby, the performance was outstanding. Outstanding performance. Sister Yu Yu A, so beautiful. The familiar voices made by Yu Yu A couldn't help but slightly peek her head out behind Yi Shuang, and realized that Aunt Li and Chen Hai Chen Qin as well as Chen Xiaoqiao were all in the audience, and everyone was looking at her with a smile on their face. An inexplicable emotion suddenly surged into the young girl's heart. She looked around and suddenly shrunk her head back behind Yi Shuang. By Yu Yu A's eyes seemed to carry some moisture her fingers pinching and fiddling with the clothes behind Yi Shuang, and finally burying her face even lower. She rubbed it again, only revealing her ears tinted pink between her hair. Shy, Yi Shuang smiled faintly, his palm gently patted the young girl's shoulder. Big-breasted sister, I have also taken a video for you on my side. Chen Xiaoqiao also held up the video camera and spoke to Tang Kuku. Tang Kuku revealed a bitter face. You have to call sister Kuku. Oh, this scene had amused quite a few people and also caused Chen Hai's wife to pinch Chao Chao's face to educate her. Everyone is looking at you oh, you you I, Yi Shuang slowly said, it doesn't matter even if Aunt Xian and the others didn't come, you still have everyone, there are still so many people watching you and caring about you, come on, raise your head, Bai Yen Yu slowly raised her head, but realized that everyone around her was looking at her with concerned eyes, her lips moved and finally whispered, I, performed well, good, Aunt Li several joyful replied, come baby, Auntie Auntie has taken several close-ups of you, see if it looks good. Aunt Lee was holding a DSLR, he had just taken a lot of good pictures of Bai Yu Yue, by the time he washed them out, he could totally make a photo album, recording our family Yu Yue baby's debut on stage. Bai Yu Yue also whispered, thank you Aunt Lee, come, take a look at this. Yi Shuang stood to the side with her arms wrapped around her, looking at Bai Yen Yu and Li Fugue's appearance as they got together to look at the photos, but she couldn't help but smile. Well. Having fun was most important. At least it was her first stage performance. Good performance just now. At this time, his shoulder had an extra plain white palm. Yi Shuang turned back, but found that Chun Qin was standing behind himself, and a finger was still poking at his face. She was kind of dressed up today, wearing a high fashion black dress with all kinds of jewel jewelry as well as a perfectly prominent figure. No matter where she went she was the center of attention. It was a handful just now. Yi Shuang then said that the audience under the stage might not be aware of the fact that the morale of a few young girls was very low during the performance just now. Chen Xin looked around. Aunt Xian and the girls are here too? Originally, they were going to come. Yi Shuang finished and paused. However, without hope, there won't be disappointment ah. Because of that, that child has never held much hope for anything, and she's used to being let down. Aunt Xian is also really something. Chen Xin hugged her arms as she suddenly came a little closer. Ah Yi. Why don't you just keep Yu Yue by your side for the rest of your life? Why are you suddenly saying that? Yi Shuang asked. Anyway, well, Chen Qin didn't go on, but changed a topic. 
By the way, the last time Yang Wei's matter, I sent someone to investigate it, and sure enough, it's a bit of a problem. He told the Tianwei group site all about many of our group's confidential projects, such a secretive thing. How did you investigate it? Ah uh, Yi, how did you investigate? Yi Xuan sniffed, but smiled. Well, used a little means, right? Confidentiality. Chen Xin saw Yi Xuan this mysterious tone, but was humming without pursuing the question. Then in addition to Yang Wei, who else do you know about? Well, I have to let me do the math. Yi Xuan's fingers moved. His other hand twirled his non-existent goatee, with the appearance of an old cleric who acted out heavenly chances. Fortune telling? Chen Qin bristled. Water me? Yi Xuan, on the other hand, laughed. If you think the company has a problem, all those PPT warlords who usually love to brag can check it out. After all, the ones who are really doing real work are not talkative. You also don't want our group to have much management. Although Chen Xin said so, Yi Shuang's words might not have failed to give her a suitable thought. Like I said, you can take me over to take a look at the next meeting. Maybe we can count a few more. Although Chen Xin knew that Yi Shuang was watering himself, but since he had opened his mouth, it didn't seem impossible to take him there. The next time, Yi Shuang also sat in the audience to watch the performance, but it seemed that Senban Zakura clashed with the anime club's performance piece, which was the Guzheng version of Senban Zakura and it also achieved a good performance effect. It always feels a bit embarrassing. Yi Shuang always felt that the young girl who was playing the Koto in the screen seemed to have a sulky face. The minister of Silver Mountain Academy's anime club was a small beauty, and after playing Kihan Zakura, she then changed into a performance outfit in place like magic, and then started to sing The Child I Pushed, while the members of the department behind her were doing a dance in support with glow sticks in their hands, which pushed the atmosphere upwards again. It's really frenzied. It's really worthy of being a two-stabbed ape. As Yi Xuan watched, he suddenly wondered if the anime club was considered a music club. After all, their performances were all songs. As time passed, the stage performance was already halfway through. Just as Yi Xuan was planning to go to the restroom first, he suddenly heard the host open his mouth and say, Thank you to the Mighty Man Club for bringing you the chestbreaker performance. Next to perform is in Shiyu from our academy's third year class B, and the piano performance she brought. Yi Xuan who was about to get up, suddenly paused, and he looked towards the screen in surprise to find a familiar young girl walking onto the stage. At this moment, and Shiyu was wearing a white one-shoulder dress, her tranquil appearance was completely unlike the past days when everyone remembered her. Soon, the notes were played, and Shiyu played the piano smoothly. It was a song called Kikujiro's Summer. Along with the bouncing notes, the rich summer flavor came out, bright and clean. That guy can still play the piano? Yi Xuan was a bit surprised that she would still have a solo performance, and it seemed that that guy hadn't bothered practicing at all during the Light Music Club's performance. Yi Xuan, hearing by Yu Yu a call out to herself, Yi Xuan turned back. Hmm, what's wrong? I also want to play. Bai Yu Yu said, then go back and I'll teach you. Yi Xuan smiled. After and Shi Yu finished playing, she quickly got off the stage, like a wisp of breeze without dragging her feet at all sort of bringing a bottle of refreshing Bozi lemon soda to the lively performance show and the hot summer day. Thank you, and Shurfu student for the piano performance. The next program, is the special guest, Phoenix Mountain Legend. When these words came out, the entire audience cheered. After all, there were rumors that Phoenix Hill Legend was coming over for the promotion of this show, and there were also a lot of audience members who had originally come here for the star who was coming over to perform. The Wuming Mountains are connected to the mountains beyond the mountains and the moonlight sprinkles down on the rattlesnake beach. The song Lady Fragrance blew up the stage, and soon the audience in the auditorium began to have their heads bobbing. However, as a special guest, he was only able to play just two songs, and went off the stage after closing with a song called Under the Sea. Though the audience was saddened, the host introduced the next guest with a smile. And, thank you to the Phoenix Hill legends for their performance. So please welcome our next special guest, a foreign friend, M.S. Miyoshi Reha. The curtains were pulled back and another song, Joyful Pure Land, bombed the stage and got the audience high straight away. It's so lucky to be a student of this school. Yi Shuang couldn't help but say as she looked at the circle of glow sticks around her. Yeah, how could we have this condition when we were studying? Chen Xin also couldn't help but smile. When the cultural performances were just students performing on their own, there were no such grand performances. Just as the two people were lamenting their youth, a few more stars came on stage to perform. You say this is a local station New Year's Eve party are believed, but even the most brilliant fireworks have a time to go out, and the show is no exception. About 11 o'clock, this grand college show also finally came to an end, 
The security personnel and members of the discipline and inspection department who maintained order reminded the visitors to take away the garbage and cell phones before the audience and students reluctantly came down from their seats. Yi Shuang also brought by Yu Yi and Tang Coco back to the backstage, in order not to take up the audience's time, so the winning performances were announced in the backstage, both the first in their category and the overall top five were awarded, and special guests were not counted. Just as he returned to the backstage, Yi Shuang realized that a group of people had gathered around a screen and looked in. Teacher Yi, this way this way. When Jixia and Rin Rin saw Yi Shuang, they also greeted and came over to look at. Ranking, not in order Runshi Fish, Kakujiro's Summer. Magic Club, Poop Alive. New Opera Club, Heavenly Immortal Match or Not. Anime Club, Senbun Sakura slash The Child I Pushed. And Second Grade Teachers Groupskit, Shiman Ching vs. Pan Jinlian, Yi Shuang. It didn't seem surprising that this Unshi Fish guy was at the top. After seeing that there was no Light Voice Club in the top 5, Yi Shuang looked down towards the same category. And before he could finish, he saw Jixia hugging Rin Rin like a rabbit in joy. And, Rin Rin, we made it. Yi Shuang also saw the rankings of the music category clubs at this time. 1. Light Music Club. 2. Rock Club. 3. Aikuan Music Troupe. I can't believe it's the first in its category. Rin Rin also cried with red eyes without any argument. How? Why are you crying? Happy. Ha 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 ha. Yi Shuang looked at the happy appearance of those few young girls, but could not help but exhale. Although it did not enter the top five, it is also considered to have a good ending. But what was the prize? Just as the light music club side was chattering, Huang Zhao from the Aikuan music troupe also walked over. Rin Rin. Huang Zhao. What are you doing? Rin Rin wiped her tears with the back of her hand when she saw Huang Zhao walk over, as if she didn't welcome the other party. You won. We Aikuan are willing to gamble. Huang Zhao extended his hand. I have to say you sang that line beautifully, but Rinku didn't hold that hand of Huang Zhao's after all, as if what happened between the two wasn't something that could be ended with a few glib words either. So there's something else between them? Yi Shuang asked Jixia, who was standing to the side, because Huang Zhao is Rin Rin's ex-boyfriend. Jixia stuck one hand in her waist, the two used to be on good terms, but ever since that guy Huang Zhao got hooked on the Aikuan music group, his mouth was all about Aikuan Aikuan all day long, like he was possessed and he even got into a big fight with Rin Rin in the back. Really? Yi Xuan was a bit surprised that there was such a relationship between the two, but it had nothing to do with him as all. After all, it was also something between other people. It was already very late when the performance ended, but fortunately Silver Mountain College had prepared buses to arrange for the students to go home, so there was not much of a problem in terms of safety. After sending off Li Fugue and the others, Yi Xuan also drove by Yu Yue home to rest, only to find that she had just gotten on the bus not a moment before falling asleep. Sure enough, she is tired. Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile. After all, this child had practiced hard every day in order not to drag her feet during the performance now that the performance was over. The strings that were almost taut could be relaxed a little. The young girl was sleeping very well. A few strands of her long hair fell on her chest. Yi Shuang pulled out a light blanket from behind her back that was usually used to cushion her waist, and covered by Yu Yue's body in this way. Recalling her unintentional despondency at the end of the performance, Yi Shuang couldn't help but sigh. Although he believed that Aunt Xian really had something that prevented her from coming, once something like a promise was broken, it would be hard to gain trust again. What's more, Bai Yu Yue herself was sensitive to such things, and after a mirror started to crack, repairing it would not restore its original appearance and it was not an intact mirror itself, and this incident had even made the shards that had managed to stick together start to falter again. I should have known better than to invite it. Yi Shuang also could not help but regret his recklessness. Letting nature take its course might not be the worst choice, and not interfering too much would not cause more things to happen. The sports car shuttled through the dark night, strolling under the neon lights. Yi Shuang drove and thought, but did not realize that Bai Yu Yue had already woken up. Her body was covered by a blanket. She only revealed a head outside. The young girl rubbed her face against the furry blanket before she reached out her hand and pulled at the corner of Yi Shuang's coat. And, has Yi Shuang arrived home yet? Hmm, Yi Shuang looked at Bai Yu Yue out of the corner of her eye, then smiled and said, Well, it's almost there. There's no traffic jam at this point. Good. Back to our home. Bai Yen Yu said, and it seemed that tiredness surged through her mind, and she actually fell asleep again. Yi Shuang just smiled and continued driving. After parking the car in the garage, Yi Shuang realized that Bai Yu Yue still didn't have the intention to get up. There was no other way. He could only pick up the young girl horizontally, and after kicking the car door shut, Yi Shuang brought her back to the apartment. Meow and Ei. Just after opening the door, 10,000 jumped over from the side of the cat's nest, and finally rolled around at Yi Shuang's feet on his belly. 
It's quite boring for you to stay in the apartment for a day like this. Why don't I buy a kitten for you as a companion? Meow? Yi Shuang said, while carrying Bai Yuyi in his arms to the sofa and putting it there. Take a bath before you sleep? Pinching her little face, Yi Shuang asked, Don't want to wash. No way. Oh, in the end, she was still called up by Yi Shuang to take a bath honestly. Hong Kong District Shallow Water Bay, Zhou family, late at night in a certain villa. The floor was full of broken bottles and dishes, as well as the Filipino maids who were cleaning up on the floor. Not only that, the sound of a heated argument was erupting from a room in the inner house, and in another room, a little girl with long blonde hair was covering her ears and shrinking under the quilt. The sound of the glass being smashed was like a splinter that pierced into her heart, and the girl seemed to have cried for a round. Even under the dim light she could not hide her reddened eyes. After hugging the doll in her arms, she bit her lips. No sound came out. The next day, at dawn, Yi Shuang left two breakfasts and went out because he received a call from the police station today. At first, he thought it was about that mother and daughter rumor mongering, but it turned out that what he received was a process audit question about Bai Yu Yue being abducted and then having to change her name, because some documents were needed. After Yi Shuang didn't find them in the apartment, he needed to go over to the old house again. Although Yi Shuang felt that he had taken all the things he was going to take, he was ultimately afraid of missing something. It's better to go over there and look for it, to see if there are any documents, papers or anything that I missed to take. Yi Shuang drove the car and returned to the old neighborhood side. It was still full of life. Because of the big morning, the circle outside the neighborhood was full of breakfast carts as well as some old granny selling vegetables. Pretty boy, grow your own vegetables? There was also a granny who greeted Yi Shuang to buy vegetables, revealing her only remaining tooth and smiling. A not too big and not too small piece of rag with two or three tied small vegetables on it. In fact, even if all of them were sold, this granny would probably only earn a few dollars. Yi Shuang originally had other things to do, but he stood still and looked at it, and finally said, help me wrap it all up? Can you finish it? One person can't finish these dishes. The old woman shook her head. I still have a girl at home who can eat. Yi Shuang smiled. Eh, good. After Yi Shuang paid five dollars, he carried all these dishes in his hand. He walked towards the residential building, and those who didn't know thought that he had just come home from buying vegetables. However, when he was at the entrance, he met a rather familiar face. An old man was sitting on a granite bench, one of his hands grasping the leash, and on the other end of the leash was a fat blue cat and beside the old man was a fleshy, cute girl. Good morning, old man. Yi Shuang recognized the old man who lived upstairs and kept a cat called Hot Pot. The old man sniffed and first looked at Yi Shuang before recognizing him and smiling. Ooh, young man really haven't seen you for a long time. Hasn't this moved? Moving is good. Moving is good. This old man of mine is so used to living here that he doesn't even want to move. The old man smiled and said, This is my granddaughter, who just came back from abroad, quickly called her brother, Brother Good. The girl was sweet-mouthed, and immediately greeted Yi Shuang with a smile. Just call uncle, your grandfather is always thinking about you guys, Yi Shuang said, reaching out his hand to rub the head of the hot pot on the side. Meow, he he he, we also miss grandpa. The granddaughter hugged the old man's arm and pampered him, only to see that old man immediately smile so much that his teeth were invisible. It was really happy. Yi Shuang could not help but smile heartily, but perhaps thinking of something? A trace of envy could not help but appear in the bottom of his eyes. It's really good. After chatting casually with the old man for a while, Yi Shuang also returned to the house where he used to live with Bai Yu Yue. There is a saying that actually makes sense. That is, if a house is not lived in, then it will be old very quickly. The moment Yi Shuang took out the key and opened the door, he found that everything around him had accumulated a layer of dust. Even if Yi Shuang sighed a layer of white plastic bags, cough cough cough, so dusty, Yi Shuang opened the sluice gate. After first washing his hands, he put away the dishes he bought. Although living here for a short period of time, the shadow of Bai Yu Yue could surface in every corner, whether it was learning to cook for the first time, or starving and falling to the ground without moving, or running around naked. Yi Shuang thought that he was not much of a nostalgist, but after seeing those furniture, he still couldn't help but smile. If it wasn't for Bai Yu Yue's safety concerns, living here all the time didn't seem impossible. It didn't have to be much of a house. Enough to accommodate two people seemed to be cozy enough. Granted, but prying the door again and having other people come in, who can stand that? After Yi Shuang spat out a sentence in his heart, he started to look for Bai Yu Yue's documents as well as some information. Most of the important things Yi Shuang basically took away. Just the last time the move was indeed for the sake of time efficiency was not how careful. So when Yi Shuang turned out some boxes in the corner, he found that there were indeed some more important documents inside. Well, 
Yi Shuang flipped through that one book and found that even the marriage certificate of the trafficker who abducted by Yu Yue was in there, but naturally he wouldn't move these. It's just that Yi Shuang wanted to find something about Bai Yu Yue. After rummaging around for a while, Yi Shuang suddenly found that there was actually an old cell phone in the box. It was many years old, a two-fingered Nokia keypad, but from the outside it didn't seem to be broken, it had been so long. It was estimated that the batteries inside were unable to turn on the phone due to the loss of power. Yi Shuang stared for a while, and the window appeared. Item, Nokia 8210. Model released in 99. Can open walnuts and play snake. Maybe you can try to turn it on? Booting something. Yi Shuang smiled. Although he didn't put it in his mind. He found that he also found this phone's matching charging cable in the box, as well as a universal charger. Holding the idea that perhaps there was something about Bai Yui inside. Yi Shuang instead connected the charging cable to this age-rich keypad machine. Yi Shuang then continued to rummage through the box, but there was nothing else of interest. But Yi Shuang still managed to find out a picture of Bai Yui. It was probably a few years old, wearing a pretty princess dress, and was looking innocent and cute, with a smile on her face as she looked into the photo taken by the camera. If the current Yu Yue could smile she should be that cute too. Yi Shuang looked at the yellowed photo in his hand, but it overlapped with the face in his mind. He silently stuffed the photo into his pocket. Just at this time, Yi Shuang noticed that the cell phone placed aside actually vibrated. He unexpectedly looked over, then tentatively long pressed the power on button, and along with the appearance of the pattern of two handshakes, the phone actually did successfully turn on. So awesome, Yi Shuang couldn't even help but speak. After he pressed it and realized that the functions were all working properly, he tapped on the contacts. The only contacts on it were a wife, and a cell phone number without a note of name. Yi Shuang took a look at that number, but did not pay attention to it. Yi Shuang then searched for the information of this cell phone, and finally inadvertently tapped into the inbox. Previously, the key machine basically do not have the function of internet. Until the back of the development of a wave of technology, there is that kind of up and down the left and right control key network key machine, but also can only use 2G only. The network speed is very slow, so back then there can be a cell phone can be hung on the QQ is considered a high-end machine. This cell phone naturally has no network, so basically rely on text messages and phone calls to exchange information. There were several messages in the inbox, one of which instantly drew Yi Xuan's attention. The sender was none other than the number without notes in the contacts. Half of the money has already been paid. Don't let me down. Go to the agreed location and take the child away. Don't contact each other in the future. Remember to delete the message. Remember. Such a sentence made Yi Xuan look at the message for a full 10 minutes. In the quiet room. Only Yi Shuang's own heartbeat could be heard at this moment. What did it mean? Bai Yu Yue's abduction was not a random case, but was deliberately arranged by someone? Who was that person? The Zhou family? Or someone who had a grudge against the Zhou family? Yi Shuang sat on the edge of the bed, his eyes fixed on the cell phone number above. He first used his own cell phone to silently write down the number, and then went to search for the WeChat account through this number. There was no successful search. After thinking about it, Yi Shuang then directly dialed the number. Da. Hello? Who? It was soon picked up. The voice on the other end of the phone was that of a young woman. Yi Shuang was first quiet for a split second. Then he smiled and spoke. Beauty, are you the owner of this cell phone number? Or else? Nerves. The phone quickly hung up, seemingly treating Yi Shuang as a telecommunications scammer. Yi Shuang looked at the cell phone number and pondered for a while, suddenly realizing that a lot of things didn't match up, but after pondering for a while, Yi Shuang quickly understood. That is... The probability is that this cell phone number was given to the operator to recycle it, and then sold it to a new user. After all, it had already been so many years. This kind of cell phone number being recycled by the carrier and then resold was not new at all. Phew. Yi Shuang exhaled. Originally he had only come back to find if there were any documents that Bai Yu Yue had missed, but he did not expect that such a thing would be involved. However, it seemed that it was also difficult for him to find the original owner of this cell phone number or it was hard to say how many owners this number had changed to. And you should know that back then, there was no real name verification for cell phone cards. That is, you didn't need to do a card like today and still have to bring your ID card to open the card. And in the past, you only needed to give money and then pick a number. In other words, it was almost impossible for Yi Xuan to determine who the person sending the message was through this cell phone number. After pinching his brow, Yi Xuan continued to look through the mailbox of this cell phone in an attempt to discover if there were any more valuable messages. As a result, when he just clicked on the next message, the cell phone actually blacked out instantly and shut down automatically. Yi Shuang. No way. Sir, the black screen of the cell phone also made Yi Shuang's eyes go black. There was no way around it. Yi Shuang also had to pick up the phone and plugged and unplugged the charger again in an attempt to turn it back on. 
It's really rare, such an old model. Even the rag collectors don't want it, right? The owner of the cell phone store held a cigarette in his mouth, his face full of crossmeat. He was squinting his eyes to measure this old antique in his hand. Yi Shuang, on the other hand, said, the price is not a problem. Can I change the battery and still turn it on? If it's a battery problem, it's actually okay, although the style is old. But the good thing is that the sales were high back then. Batteries are rare, but you can still buy them. The boss said and returned the cell phone to Yi Shuang. There is important information inside, right? I can order a battery for you. Leave a number. Yi Shuang then left a number. And after giving part of the deposit, he took the phone and walked out of the cell phone store. Standing in the doorway and feeling his pockets, Yi Shuang dropped a candy in his mouth. It's true that at times like this, I still want one. Despite this, he still chewed the sugar in his mouth. And after the sweet flavor fully penetrated out, he also found a step to sit down and started to set right all those cluttered thoughts in his head one by one. Whose number is this in the end? If someone from the Zhou family side, it stands to reason that text messages would be in traditional Chinese characters more often. But again, I can't rule out such an option. In any case, Yu Yu's abduction is not an accidental matter. It's better to not tell that child for now. Yi Shuang didn't want to hurt by Yu Yue anymore. And now that her life was getting better day by day, it would be better to let this short-lived peace be maintained. Retracting his thoughts, Yi Shuang reached out his hand and patted the non-existent dust on his pants. Nowadays, he could only wait for the key press machine to be repaired first, and then see if there is still something valuable like that information inside. After driving to the school, Yi Shuang returned to the Light Voice Club's booth, whereby Yu Yue and the girls were. Good morning, Mr. Yi. Ji Xia instead greeted sweetly. I heard that you had something to attend to in the morning. Well, took care of something slightly. Yi Shuang said, and suddenly noticed a certain young girl standing behind the stall with a tight look on her face. Bai Yu Yue was wearing a light beige short sleeve jacket today, plus a white short sleeved as well as a pleated lace plain skirt, all of which Yi Shuang had matched for her in the morning, after all. There were no restrictions on what to wear for the school festival. Plus the teenage girl liked to mess around with his clothes. So a lot of the time, it was Yi Shuang who matched the clothes. At this moment, the young girl just stood there, her small face tightened with force, so much so that it gave a marvelous feeling of glaring. This is, Yu Yu's said she wanted to try selling lemon tea, so this is it. Tang Koko stood to the side and explained with a grin. This way, Yi Shuang looked again and inquired with a smile, how many cups have been sold? E heave, not yet, eh? Right in between the chats, some customers came towards the lemon tea side. Seemingly two young boys, but when they saw by Yu Yue, they glanced at each other and left again. Eh, why is that? Tang Koko couldn't help but poke her head out. But soon, another customer came. Hello, I'd like a cup of lemon tea. By Yu Yue sniffed and then gently nodded. Eight, how much? The guest didn't seem to have heard. By Yu Yue's mouth moved, and finally made a gesture of eight. Perhaps feeling that the other party didn't quite understand. By Yu Yue took a pen and wrote eight on the small piece of paper again. Forget it, forget it. Seeing by Yu Yue's cool demeanor, the guest turned around and left. Bai Yu Yue stood in place, her beautiful eyes looking at the other person's departure look, and again had to stay quiet. It seems like it just started like this. I don't know why it seems extraordinarily difficult for Yan Yue to sell lemon tea, Tang Ku Ku said. Well, Yi Shuang stroked his chin. After thinking for two seconds, Yi Shuang walked to Bai Yu Yue's side. At this moment the young girl seemed to be a bit lost. Even her dull hair was hanging down. Yi Shuang, can't sell it, don't know how. She had a few fingers pinching each other haphazardly, a look of being at a loss. Yi Shuang, on the other hand, reached out her hand and pinched the other party's cheeks. Too hard, you can't stare at others this hard, too hard. Hmm, Yi Shuang seemed to have thought of something. He fumbled in his pocket and took out the flat glasses he usually used to dress up when he was the school nurse. After putting them on for Bai Yu Yue, the other party blinked as she touched the sides of the mirror legs with both hands seemingly not understanding what Yi Shuang was doing. This should be fine. Yi Shuang stroked his chin and said with a smile, Go on. Oh, Bai Yu Yue continued selling lemon tea again. This time there seemed to be some scattered customers, and Bai Yu Yue finally managed to sell her first cup of her own. Success. Bai Yu Yue turned around and looked over. Brother, why is it okay for Yu Yue to wear a pair of glasses? Tang Koku also felt magical. Just now she thought that Bai Yu Yue hadn't offended the god of wealth in her past life. Jisha instead seemed to see something. Teacher Yi, I seem to understand. Is it because Yu Yue is too pretty? It's probably like this. Some boys with shy personalities are not quite brave enough to talk to Bai Yu Yue. Yi Shuang smiled. He just thought the same thing. After all, Bai Yu Yue was very good looking. Her temperament was too distant. 
and she had a cold expression. How would the customers dare to come up and talk? And even if some of the guests did talk, when they saw Bai Yuyue staring so hard at herself, they would naturally feel uncomfortable and walk away. It's really worthy of being a brother. You can even spot this. Tang Koko felt quite reasonable after hearing Yi Shuang's analysis. Soon enough, Bai Yenyu also completely relaxed and poured out nicely to start acting as a caretaker. Two hours later, after selling all the perfumed lemons in stock, Bai Yuyue turned around. Yi Shuang succeeded. Come over and rest for a while. Yi Shuang, who was wearing an apron and was beating the last cup of lemon tea, smiled faintly. Yi Shuang wants to hang out together. Bai Yuyue said, hungry, then let's go and take you to buy some food. Yi Shuang said, inquiring about Tang Koko and the girls, are you guys coming alone? I won't be going. Me too. You guys go. After hearing a few teenage girls say that, Yi Shuang instead only took Bai Yuyue out, because the entire street was basically selling snacks. After slightly walking through a few stalls, Bai Yuyue already had a lot more food in her hands. Seeing the young girl's small mouthful of kebabs, Yi Shuang suddenly felt that telling her the truth was a very cruel thing to do. Eating all over your mouth again. Yi Shuang took out a paper towel, and Bai Yuyue also closed her eyes and tilted her head obediently to facilitate Yi Shuang to wipe her mouth. Yi Shuang, eating? I'm not hungry. Oh, after a skewer of barbecue meat went down, Bai Yen Yu also asked, Yi Shuang, what did you go do in the morning? Picked up some documents and stuff. Yi Shuang also didn't say that thing out. He paused, changed the topic and said with a smile, the granddaughter of that grandpa upstairs who was abroad came back. Seems to be very happy. Happy. Whom? I'm also happy around Yi Shuang. Bai Yu Yu said after tugging on Yi Shuang's sleeve. Yi Shuang looked at the young girl beside him for a few seconds, then asked with a smile, Do you know what happiness is? Happiness. It's not wrong to say so. Yi Shuang returned. Being happy around Yi Shuang. I like to be touched by Yi Shuang. I like to kiss. Like to be hugged by Yi Shuang. Bai Yu Yu said seriously. Yi Shuang. If you are heard by acquaintances, but it will be very troublesome. Yi Shuang said. Why? There is no why. Yi Shuang knocked the young girl's head. Remember not to talk nonsense. Then you kiss me. I won't talk nonsense. Yi Shuang's footsteps lurched. He thought he heard wrong. He once again looked at Bai Yu Yue, but found that the young girl had already stood on her tiptoes. This guy? When did he learn? No. However, Bai Yen Yu did not move. It was obvious that it was a look of eating Yi Shuang unknowingly getting along. The young girl actually had some small skills of holding Yi Shuang. In fact, Bai Yu Yue is not really stupid. Yi Shuang looked at it for a while, and finally gave a shallow kiss on the other party's forehead. Is it done? Bai Yu Yue opened her eyes, she touched her forehead with her small hand, then tugged on her clothes. Still want? Yi Shuang touch me. Yi Shuang said. No. Was it Coco's idea? No. Bai Yu Yu shook her head, and finally said. Okay. Go home and then touch. Going home won't work either oh. Bai Yu Yue was indeed brought down by Tang Koko that girl. And now when shopping with Yi Shuang out, she has learned to tightly embrace his arm, recklessly displaying the softness and temperature of the slime, all the way to stroll around eating and drinking, like a vacation general school days almost a blink of an eye passed. Near the end of the school day, Yi Shuang went back to the school doctor's office to get some things, but found a short-haired girl was lying on the hospital bed sleeping. And Shurfu, the short-haired girl was lying quietly on the hospital bed, motionless, like a sleeping beauty. Not having seen and she you all day today, Yi Shuang thought that this fellow had run off somewhere to work part-time or play, but he completely did not expect that she would stay in the school doctor's room by herself, and the door was also locked. As if Yi Shuang thought of something, he hurriedly walked over quickly, then reached out his hand to probe the other party's breathing after a few seconds. He withdrew his hand, and watched the other party steadily for a few more seconds. TSK. It always feels like I'm being licked all over by some disgusting sight. Just at this time, a familiar voice rang out, and Shi Yu had opened her eyes and stared at Yi Shuang expressionlessly. What are you doing? No, I, I'm not dead yet. Don't worry. And Shi Yu, however, moved her eyes away, as if she understood what Yi Shuang was just doing. She closed her eyes again, and, I'm going to go back to sleep, while this body is still warm. Be my guest. Yi Shuang, he didn't say anything more just silently pulled the quilt upwards and helped the other party tuck in. After doing all this, Yi Shuang got up and brought the things he was supposed to take with him, then walked to the door of the school doctor's office. Just before leaving, he looked back at Yi Yu's side. You can contact me if there is any emergency. And Yi Yu didn't answer Yi Shuang. She just rolled over only revealing her back. She lazily responded, really nagging. Got it. Accompanied by the crisp sound of the door closing, and Yu, 
who was currently lying on her side, slowly rolled back over again. She looked at the ceiling, then slowly pulled the quilt down a bit. Da! The clothes on her chest were wrinkled and full of folds. Yi Shuang, as usual, let Bai Yuyue and Tang Koko go home in pairs while he himself made a trip to the supermarket to buy ingredients. Just as he came out of the elevator, he saw from afar a petite figure sitting in front of his apartment door with her knees hugged. Yi Shuang froze for a moment and twisted his head again to confirm the number of floors behind him before walking over quickly. At this moment, the girl sitting in front of the door hugging her knees was in her early teens, with long blonde hair, her body slightly shrunken so that it only looked like a tiny little ball, and with some rain stains in her hair, the whole thing still looked a bit of a mess. Alice, after seeing this girl, Yi Shuang immediately recognized that this was the girl who had dinner with himself and Aunt Xian and the others a few days ago, that is, by Yin Yu's half-sister Alice. Well, Alice raised her small face and buried her head into her knees again, only letting out a muffled voice. And, there's nowhere to go. Yi Shuang. What happened? Yi Shuang crouched down and tried to make himself level with the other party. The advantage of doing so was that it could make Alice feel less oppressed, and also allow for better communication. However, Yi Shuang also vaguely knew in his heart that perhaps Alice's matter had something to do with Aunt Xian's failure to come to see the show. Quarreled. Like this ah. Uh. Yi Shuang sniffed and didn't blame her for not knowing or say anything like the others. He stood up again and took out the door card to open the room door first. Alice saw that Yi Shuang did not ask any more questions. She also raised her small face, and in the next second she felt a force coming from her arm, and her whole body stood up straight. Meow and Ei. 10,000 came over and also attracted Alice's attention. Cat. Meow the self-satisfied 10,000 immediately rubbed against Alice's ankle. A tickling sensation came. Squatting down and petting the pampered long-haired orange, Alice had just stood up when she felt something like a cloth covering her body. She looked down and realized it was a towel. Dry your hair first. It's not even raining in Haizhou today. You guy wouldn't have run over from the harbor side, right? Yi Shuang said, walking over to the water dispenser and pouring water. Seeing the way Alice was still standing at the doorway surveying, he asked, Come in. You are squatting in front of my house. Why don't you dare to come in? Alice looked inside again before walking over to the couch and sitting down. Here, have some hot water to warm you up. Well, thanks. Alice cupped her hands around the cup of water, only to feel warm and cozy. It's more honest than last time. S.H. What the hell? Yi Shuang smiled slightly, then also took out his cell phone intending to contact Aunt Xian. Let me let Aunt Xian know, otherwise she will also be worried. Don't, Alice immediately said. Facing Yi Shuang's puzzled gaze, she whispered again, A while will be fine, I don't want them to know that I'm here. All right then, I won't ask questions for a while. Seeing the girl finished, Yi Shuang went upstairs. Alice held a cup of water and took small sips of hot air she couldn't figure out why she was here, and when she came back to her senses, she was already here. Alice was also not a character that loved to cause trouble, so seeing Yi Shuang's appearance of running upstairs without paying much attention to herself, at this moment the girl's heart had already begun to think about whether or not to leave this place first, but where could she go? It seemed like nowhere belonged to her. Da, 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 another sound came from the stairs on the side and Alice looked over sideways to find Yi Xuan walking down again. In his hand, there was an extra piece of clothing. Eh? Alice was a bit surprised. Eh what? Change into this dress. It's your Yu Yu's sisters. Yi Xuan said. You'll catch a cold soon after getting wet. Go take a bath first. Alice looked at the extra clothes in her hand, and finally was brought into the bathroom by Yi Xuan. The shower bubbled with water vapor, and the water droplets that dripped down splashed on the wet floor. Alice soaked in the tub revealing only two reddened knees, mmm, the girl buried her body further into the tub, revealing half of her small face, before she began to gurgle and bubble, her blonde hair scattered and floating in the tub, seeming to glow gold in the light, he, like, doesn't hate me, Alice thought, but then she thought again, looking out the door not far from her, I don't think, he'll suddenly barge in, right, the warm bath water made Alice's little face covered with a faint pink halo, and her head started to get confused, but the next second, the voice outside the door made her jolt. And, Alice, I'm going out for a bit. Ah, ah, oh, got it. Yeah, there was a lot of splashing, and Alice even slipped her whole body into the water because of her overreaction. What's wrong? Is everything alright? Yi Shuang outside the door heard such a commotion and couldn't help but inquire as well. No, no one is allowed to come in. I'm fine, Alice immediately said. Be careful oh, don't soak and faint. A slightly flirtatious voice came from outside the door, also giving Alice a feeling of being treated like a child, instantly making this golden-haired lowly blush. But soon, a sound of locking the door rang out, 
out, Alice couldn't help but think to herself when she heard the sound, should be a good person. Feeling much more relaxed, Alice planned to soak in a little more, but it wasn't more than a few minutes before the sound of a lock being unlocked came from outside. Footsteps sounded and Alice was a bit surprised. Back so soon? But she didn't think much about it. She just thought that Yi Shuang had gone out to throw out the garbage. But soon, the sound of shaking coming from the bathroom doorknob made Alice's heart lift up. Her eyes widened with a look of disbelief. He, what is he doing? Surely he's going to sneak up on me? Or can't resist my damn charm? In the next second, the bathroom door was opened. And Alice also let out a scream. Yeah, don't. On the other side, Yi Shuang, who at this moment was carrying a basket with the intention of buying some more ingredients, paused in his footsteps as he looked towards the apartment building he could see behind him. Hmm, missed something then. Yeah, eh? In the bathroom, Alice finished screaming, only to see a naked, long-haired girl through the haze of water. She blinked, and the other blinked back, and the two just stared at each other for a while. Yi Shuang, turned into a child? Bai Yen Yu tilted her head and looked at Alice who was hugging herself in the bathtub. So small. How come it's you? After Alice realized that it wasn't Yi Shuang who came in but Bai Yu Yue, it was like she was relieved in the middle of her heart. But when she heard Bai Yu Yue say it was so small, she subconsciously looked downwards, revealing a small tiger tooth all of a sudden. I, I haven't grown up yet. What are you talking about? Of course Bai Yu Yue was just saying that Alice was very small. She looked again and came over. Yi Shuang, it's gotten smaller. I'm not Yi Shuang. I'm Alice, Alice immediately said. Bai Yu Yue only realized at this time. No wonder she just felt that Alice looked a bit familiar to her. Don't suddenly barge in like that. It's scary. After Alice finished speaking, she suddenly reacted. You, you don't think I'm him and then you barge in like this too, right? Bai Yu Yue sniffed and asked back. What's the problem with having that? You're not wearing any clothes ah? Taking a bath. Of course I can't wear clothes. Bai Yu Yue replied seriously. You have to remember this. How to become you atone to educate me ah? I do not mean this. Is he bathing when you also like this to barge in? Still not wearing clothes. Alice only felt dizzy from communicating with Bai Yui's head, and wondered if it was the effect of the hot water. Because, bathing without clothes. Alice, forget it. After realizing that she couldn't communicate, Alice chose to be alone and smothered in silence, her face like a cute bun. At this time, Bai Yui also showered on the side. Alice glanced at it, but muttered, the figure is actually so good, wearing clothes didn't see it. Perhaps noticing the sight, Bai Yu Yue also looked over. Question mark. Poof. Alice averted her eyes, but the underwater hand couldn't help but touch herself again. Just at this time, Bai Yu Eli also soaked into the bathtub after showering. Hey, this bathtub is small. It's fine. I'll hold you. No way. When Yi Shuang came back, he found two young girls sitting on the sofa. Yi Shuang. After seeing Bai Yu Yue walking over, Yi Shuang smiled and touched her head. Back. Did you greet people properly? Well, took a bath together. Yi Shuang froze for a moment. He looked around by Yen Yu to Alice's side, only to find that the other party's face was bulging, as if something had happened to her. What was this happening? Alice may be staying with us for a while for the time being because of some things. Yi Shuang said, also putting the newly purchased ingredients aside. You you eh, uh, you're the older sister. So if Alice needs anything, you can help her out. Need? Well, after all. Girls always need something. Bai Yu Yue looked like she understood something, as she rejoined and sat down beside Alice. Do what? Alice asked. Bai Yu Yue's beautiful eyes struggled for a bit, and finally slowly took out a chocolate bean from her pocket, seemingly a bit reluctant. Here, Alice glared, treating me like a child. After dinner, Alice lay down on the couch and fell asleep. The way she curled up her body was like a large golden furred cat, although she looked a bit bad tempered when she was awake. But in the end, she was just a little kid and she looked quite cute when she was honest. I don't even know how this little girl ran over here. Yi Shuang sat at the other end of the sofa, and did not know how Alice knew her residence address, but with the Zhou family's ability, it was not strange to know this. Yi Shuang half squinted his eyes. He also wondered. In fact, with the Zhou family's ability, was it really that difficult to find Bai Yin Yu? Or was there someone who was secretly blocking it? Because of that button cell phone thing, so much so that Yi Shuang is now starting to be suspicious of everything about the Zhou family. Although he feels that the one who sent the message is not necessarily a member of the Zhou family, but for the time being, within the people Yi Shuang recognizes, the Zhou family still can't be completely ruled out. Yi Shuang. Beside her, the young girl opened her mouth. What's wrong? Wanted to practice guitar, but it seems like, no, Bai Yu Yue said. Yi Shuang glanced at Alice who was sleeping and letting out even breaths, so she smiled. Well, 
Let's just take a rare break today. Be quiet and let the child sleep a little longer. Bai Yuyue nodded her head as she took out a pen and paper and wrote rustlingly, Omega Dash, then we won't talk anymore. Yi Shuang smiled and pinched the young girl's little face, then picked up the tablet on the side. Now it was possible to watch a movie, just wear a headset. Nowadays, Bai Yuyue doesn't really need the kind of movie that favors science and learning, but can watch some more entertaining ones. Yi Shuang flipped through it, and finally chose the richest foreign persimmon. Inside the pompous plot can exercise a bit of Bai Yuyue humor cells, and even Yi Shuang hoped that she can laugh when watching these funny movies. After all, in the old home side of the photos turned out, the child by Yu Yue laugh when very cute. After spending more than an hour watching the movie, Yi Shuang found that Bai Yuyi still did not laugh, which is a slight pity. However, the young girl did say in the middle of the movie, Chen, seems to be really good. Well, that's true. The young girl continued to watch the movie quietly in the back, and it had been quite a long time since the last time the two had nestled together like this to watch a movie. Gradually, the night deepened. Outside the window was still neon lights. Although Haizhou was not a city that never sleeps, but this side still wouldn't turn off the lights so quickly. Even the time of 11 or 12 o'clock was still the working time of some night shift workers. It's almost time to rest, Yi Shuang said, seeing Alice sleeping soundly on the sofa. He pulled the blanket upwards on her shoulders, he did not intend to wake up this girl. After all, if he let her go up to sleep, she might still recognize the bed and be unable to sleep. Now that she's sleeping through the night, why not just sleep like this until morning? Anyway, Alice's body size is petite, and the sofa is enough for her to sleep, and she won't tumble onto the floor. Yi Shuang, lights. Bai Yenyu noticed that Yi Shuang did not intend to turn off the lights, so she reached out her finger to point at the light button in the distance. Leave one on, Yi Shuang said, and after snapping a few times, the lights dimmed, but in the kitchen not far from Alice, the lights were still on. This would not irritate her eyes nor would it be too dim for this child to feel insecure. Although Yi Shuang didn't know whether she was afraid of the dark or not, but simply treat her as a small child to take care of. In some unseen corners, Yi Shuang will always subconsciously leave their own careful place. After all this, Yi Shuang led by Yu Yi upstairs to sleep. I don't know how long it took, but Alice woke up. She slowly opened her eyes and lazily stretched before sitting up. The pillow was so hard. Didn't I just change it? After looking around, Alice suddenly froze. Where is this? Unfamiliar ceiling. Have I traveled? Only after the girl came back to her senses did her panicked expression gradually calm down. That's right, she was the one who ran out. Meowm came a voice from her feet, and Alice lowered her head to find 10,000 jumping up next to her and then just plopping down. Catboy, are you here to keep me company? Meow, thanks. Alice stroked 10,000 while looking around, it was dim, but the lights in the distance gave her an indescribable sense of security. They should be sleeping upstairs, right? Alice glanced at the blanket she was wearing again as she lay back down. But her mind was on what had happened earlier. The smashed pieces, the unbearable rage and the heartbreaking cries. Just thinking about it made Alice feel like she couldn't breathe. So tired. Alice murmured. Was it a dream? After a good night's sleep. Mom and dad won't fight. Right? That kind of thing. Isn't real either. Is it? After you wake up from sleep. Opening her eyes again. It was already dawn around her. Alice made a murmuring sound in a daze. And as her eyes gradually came into focus. She realized that there was a face close enough to look at. Wah? Alice shrieked in shock, even bowing out a flicking tongue sound. When she came back to her senses, she realized that there was actually a girl squatting in front of the couch. She was smiling, and a pair of large school bags nearly blocked half of Alice's own vision. Wow. Wake up. Brother I seem to have scared her. Who let you lean so close? Yi Shuang was still frying dumplings in the kitchen at this time, and couldn't help but smile when she saw Alice waking up. Did she scare you? She's your UUS sister's friend, Tang Koko. He he he, you're so cute. Tang Koku also greeted Alice, just like a doll. Alice's body shrank towards the corner of the sofa. Her small face looked at Tang Koku with embarrassment plus some dislike. So she was by UUS friend? Sure enough a strange person's friend is also a strange person. Well, Alice looked at the other party's school bag again. What is this eating to grow up? So cute ah. Brother she is so cute ah. Can I hug? Tang Koku also climbed onto the sofa and stretched out her two hands. She moved her fingers as if she was grasping the air. Can I hug you? Just for a little while. No, don't. Lan open. Alice panicked. Ed dash. Seeing Alice like a little hedgehog that had exploded, Tang Koku fell into a look of pity. At this time Yi Shuang also walked out with a plate. He smiled faintly. All right, Koku you don't toss Alice either. Go to the second floor and help me wake up Yu Yu. Okay yo, sister Alice. How old are you? 11. You're so cute. Are you a hybrid? Yes. Can you give me a hug? 
No, during the breakfast time, this obsessive look of Tang Coco was very rare, it was like encountering a kitten that hadn't been full for a long time, and he couldn't wait to stuff Alice into his mouth, after all, even Coco didn't think that the cute dancing girl that she had just swiped in the short video software some time ago was actually someone Yishuang knew, facing the enthusiastic Tang Coco, Alice was also twitching at the corners of her mouth at this time, and finally moved her but to be next to Yi Shuang's side. Coco, you're scaring Alice with this look. Yi Shuang also mentioned, eat your breakfast first. Oh, Tang Coco scratched her head as well, and collected herself slightly. Bai Yen Yu was still quietly drying her rice, taking small bites and observing it all from the sidelines. Ding. Just at this moment, the sound of the doorbell suddenly rang. Yi Shuang twisted his head and looked. Who was ringing the doorbell at this? Time, express, brother I'll go. Tang Koko stood up, and it just so happened that she had already eaten her fill as well only to be accompanied by the sound of the door lock opening, only to hear a shriek coming from the door. Yeah, Yi Shuang froze for a moment as he looked towards the doorway, only to find a huge black beast in front of Tang Koko. No, to be precise, it was a man, a giant that stood at a height of over 2 meters too. He was wearing a black suit, but his thick muscles held up the entire suit, looking like a giant black tower. Who are you looking for? After Yi Shuang walked to the door, he directly pulled Tang Koko behind him. The man in front of him was like a tyrant in Resident Evil, and his sunglasses wearing face possessed a complete sense of oppression. Which movie set did this come out of? The atmosphere was quiet for a split second, but only Alice's voice could be heard coming from the other side of the table. Bo Bo, don't scare them. At this time, the giant also slowly removed his sunglasses and hat. His skin was dark brown, but his teeth were exceptionally white. One eyebrow had a clear scar, and he was speaking in a fluent voice. Hello, Mr. Yi, I'm Miss Alice's bodyguard, Bo Bo. At this time, Alice also popped off the dining chair and walked straight to the doorway. Comparing to that giant's tall size, Alice stood with it even only up to the position of the other party's stomach. Bodyguard? After Yi Shuang knew that it was Alice's bodyguard, he couldn't help but tilt his head to look at the man again. Isn't it slightly exaggerated? This muscle, Hulk, even in a suit. One could feel how terrifying it was. Bobo has been my bodyguard since I was a year old. Alice finished, glaring at him, and why did you find this place too? It's always been my duty to protect Oniisama, Bobo said. Alice hugged her arms, but still muttered, Humph, whatever then, since we are acquaintances, let's come in first. Yi Shuang smiled faintly. Bobo's size was exaggerated. Just standing there in the doorframe almost filled it up, so he even lowered his head slightly before entering. Well, Mr. Wave, I don't seem to have any slippers here that are suitable for you to wear. Yi Shuang took a look at the other man's big feet, estimating 48 to start with, belonging to a size that couldn't even be bought online, he wanted to let him not have to take off his shoes and just clean up after himself afterwards, but Bobo took out a pair of white shoe covers from the lining pocket of his own suit. Mister, ye needn't worry, I have prepared shoe covers on my side. After saying that, he put on shoe covers for his shoes. Don't mind Bobo, he won't forget these details. Let's continue eating. Alice returned to the table to eat. Yi Shuang also invited the other party. Why don't we have breakfast together? Mister, Yi needn't worry, you can completely ignore me, Bobo said. Eh? Bobo is such a character. Just like a log. Don't mind him, Alice said. Since Alice had said so, Yi Shuang could not say anything more. A few people continued to eat breakfast, while Bobo was sitting on the sofa. At this time, 10, 000, 000, 000 fell over not the least bit afraid of life, rubbing around on the side of Bobo's legs, meow and ei, Bobo stretched out the bushy palm, that appearance can be said that one hand can be put 10, 000, 000 to strangle to death is not strange, but the other party also just gently stroked the other party's head, it was rather like the Hulk bending down to love a flower, cute kitten, I thought you'd need this, Bobo fumbled around in his own suit pocket and finally pulled out a cat strip, meow, 10,000's eyes lit up, does anyone else go out with a cat strip? Coco sat back in her chair, rather curious about the scene that was taking place. Rather a gentle person. Yi Shuang couldn't help but smile. After breakfast time was over, Tang Coco went to school with Bai Yu Yue, while Yi Shuang had to write a novel for a while, but perhaps because Alice and Bobo were not far away. Yi Shuang, who was at the moment tapping on the keyboard, always felt an uncomfortable feeling of being stared at. Mr. Bo, did you come over this morning? Yi Shuang asked with a sideways glance. Mr. Yi, just call me Bobo. I came over yesterday afternoon with Miss Alice De. Bobo said. Then you can just call me Yi Shuang, Bobo. Okay. Alice did freeze for a moment. You came over with me yesterday? Why didn't I spot you? 
because learning to hide is also one of the necessary skills for bodyguards. Well, obviously I sneaked out. Missy, your elegant stance over the wall was completely recorded by the camera. Bobo took out his cell phone, which was playing Alice's appearance as she was going over the wall. At this moment in the video, you could still see Alice's two little short legs under that skirt flopping in midair. Then there was the mold of drilling the fence. It looked like it was quite a struggle. Yi Shuang, delete. Alice screamed. Okay. Bobo directly deleted it in front of Alice, but did not hesitate for a moment. Delete the video from the home surveillance as well. Sorry Missy, I don't have that access. Bobo replied. Then what's the point of deleting the ones from your cell phone? More or less to make Missy comfortable. No it won't. Alice huffed. But on second thought, she sat down again with her butt, then won't they know I came here? Yi Shuang smiled and asked, then why don't you just go back? Don't, Alice said, as she looked at the computer in front of Yi Shuang, or else you'll take me to school to play. Silver Mountain Academy. What's that? A chimpanzee? Holy shit, so tall? It's a shame not to play in the NBA. That little girl is so cute. Are these two people foreigners? He he, why is Mr. Yi standing with them? Walking in the more crowded school stall street side, perhaps because of Bobo and Alice's extraordinarily contrasting collocation, instantly attracted a large number of eyes. Even Yi Shuang can see someone take out a cell phone to shoot a video. Hoomph. Take a good record of this young lady's beauty. Alice was quite used to the camera. She flicked her golden ponytail like she was quite proud of herself. Obviously just a little kid. Yi Shuang laughed. However, the children on the Maoist side might be more precocious. Yi Shuang thought carefully about when he was in his early teens. It seemed that he was still at home every day guarding the adventures of Lolo and some super beast armament show. Even Chen Chin was not as stinky as this guy when he was a kid. I don't know if it was because of a good night's rest, or because of the bodyguard. Bo Bo, Yi Shuang noticed that Alice's attitude had changed back to its original form, and it wasn't as docile as it was last night. Missy, it's here. Bo Bo who was holding a sun umbrella for Alice said. Alice looked to the side and realized that Yi Shuang had stopped in front of a lemon tea stall and the caretaker in charge of entertaining the customers was actually by Yui, who was wearing glasses. Well, you dreary guy, can you actually sell lemon tea? Alice said as she slightly raised her head and looked at Bai Yu Yue who was looking over expressionlessly. Bai Yu Yue looked at this little girl, touched her pocket and pulled out a chocolate, handing it over a bit reluctantly. Here you go. Alice, what illusion makes you think I like to eat this? Mr. Yi, these two, are your friends? Jixia also looked at Bobo who was taller than a lemon tea stand cart, with a surprised look on her face. This was the first time she saw such a giant. He is Alice's bodyguard. And then, Alice is Yui Yu's sister. Yi Shuang slightly introduced the relationship between the two, although it wasn't complicated to tell, but it was hard to really explain why Bai Yu Yu's sister was a blonde furry. Moreover, Bai Yu Yu did not know that Alice did have a blood relationship with her. However, Yi Shuang was not sure if Alice herself knew about this matter. Ji Xia and the girls did not dwell on this. The thoughtful Jixia took a bottle of mineral water for the two people. It's a bit hot today. Drink some water. Lemon tea on my side is also fine. Thank you, lovely lady. Bobo took the mineral water, but it looked like a slightly larger mouthful in his hand. Tang Coco was also quite honest now. After all, Alice was beside the hot and large Bobo mortar and pestle there. Even if Bobo's personality was relatively mild, Tang Coco didn't dare to be so reckless. Is this selling lemon tea? Alice asked. Well, there's less traffic today. After all, the school festival should almost be over. Jixia chimed in, but they had already made a lot of money in the past few days. Combined with the ranking rewards from the performance, that is, a club activity fund, the originally poor light voice club was instantly rich, and was even able to rent a not-so-small performance venue to perform. I'll help then, Yi Shuang said. After all, he had come over to help with the lemon tea these days. Bo Bo, you help him. Alice spoke up at this time. Okay missy. Bobo walked over to Yi Shuang's side, while at this time Yi Shuang just smiled. No need Bobo, I can do these things myself. Mr. Yi Shuang, Missy needs your company more than anything to chat. Bobo said. Who? Who said I asked you to help just to talk to him? Behind her, Alice's voice came. Please give it to me. Bobo held out his hand. This, Yi Shuang looked at it and finally took off the apron. Perhaps it would be bad for Bobo to keep refusing it himself. When Bobo put on the apron, it looked but a bit like a bib, but fortunately the strap at the back was long enough, and Jixia even thoughtfully tied a bow for him at the side. Thank you, lovely lady. Bobo started pounding the lemon tea, and Yi Shuang had been worried that those muscles would accidentally chisel the cup in which he was pounding the lemon tea, but it was clear that Bobo was quite a meticulous person, and he used just the right amount of force, 
even slightly less than Yi Shuang did when he pounded the lemons. Do you always make Bobo like this? Yi Shuang asked as he walked over to Alice. It's all right. Bobo is my personal bodyguard. Who do I call on if not him? Alice had a look of being used to it. After all, since childhood, Bobo who accompanied her was a man who unconditionally agreed to any of her requests. Yi Shuang looked at Bobo's tower-like back. He was invited to you by Uncle Zhou? I don't know. Maybe. For Bobo's origin, Alice seems to have no idea herself. The maid who has years in the house said that he suddenly appeared in the house. But the house was so big that the sudden appearance of a person wasn't something to be concerned about. The only thing Alice did know, though, was that Bobo had a lot of wounds on his body? Of all kinds. That's why Bobo preferred to wear some long sleeves, and even loved to wear a hat when he went out. After staying at the lemon tea stand for a while, Alice seemed to be tedious. She suddenly tugged on Yi Shuang's clothes. Oi, accompany me to go shopping. I'll treat you. Eh, wouldn't it be fine to let Bobo accompany you? Yi Shuang said. Don't. He's such a big one. It's too blocking the line of sight. Alice said. Bobo will be sad if you say that. Yi Shuang smiled helplessly. And people have to keep you safe. Right? It's better to let Bobo take you there. Tang Koko instead smiled and came over. Sister Alice. I'll take you there. I know this school well. Alice tugged at the corner of her mouth, shrinking to the side as if she had seen the plague. Count, forget it, I'll go by myself. She now had a sense of fear at the sight of Tang Koka's large school bag. After saying that, she walked towards the street by herself. Eh? Yi Shuang had no choice but to look at Bobo. Bobo? Alice ran out by herself. At this moment, Bobo was still pounding lemons. After seeing Yi Shuang ask himself this, he just revealed a gentle smile that did not match his appearance. Since Missy has said that, Mr. Yi Shuang you follow, I'm sure you'll protect her well. Really? Yi Shuang looked at this pair of master and servant helplessly, but also had no choice but to follow Alice's far away direction and chased after her. Alice, slow down. So boring outside. Wasn't it you yourself who said you wanted to come to school? Yi Shuang brought Alice back after strolling around. Because the food court came and went only these things. In fact, to talk about the word, interesting, go to the teaching building to play those theme activities will be right. Ice cream is good. Alice ate the ice cream, but noticed that there was an extra girl with short shoulder length hair at the lemon tea stand, who looked at Bobo as if she was observing some rare animal. Yo, upon seeing Yi Shuang's return, the young girl lazily greeted her. After Yi Shuang saw and sure you, he introduced Alice as well. She is Alice, by Yu Yu's younger sister. How rare. It's been a long time since I've seen a foreigner. And sure you slightly bent over, her eyes staring straight at Alice. Well, dry. What for? Feeling that in Shifu was also a weirdo, Alice subconsciously hid behind Yi Shuang, then deliberately showed a fierce expression. And, if you try to do anything to me, Bobo won't let you go. Ha! And Shifu laughed contemptuously, but she also said playfully, Little golden hair, come shout a Basaka. What does Basaka mean? Don't want it. The personality gap between you and your sister is really quite big. And she you looked over to buy Yu Yu's side again. At this moment the young girl was exchanging words with a couple who wanted to buy lemon tea. Stumbling a bit but serious. Seeing that she was being compared. Alice seemed a bit offended. Humph. This lady is not going to bother with you. But she finally grunted. Not with the brat. Ung Shi Fish said. How did you say someone is a brat at 5 feet 2 inches? A mature heart is never about appearances. Alice finished in an old-fashioned manner and looked at Bobo. Who was playing lemon tea? Right Bobo? Yes, our Miss Alice is now able to sleep at night without needing company. Bobo chimed in. Didn't ask you to say that. Put. Unshi Fish covered her mouth in a rare moment, as if she was holding back a laugh. Alice, hey, 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 are you laughing? Not laughing. You're looking at it wrong. You clearly did. Still really rowdy. Yi Shuang stood aside and watched. But he didn't hate this feeling. On the contrary the rowdy look only has a kind of indescribable and indescribable sense of belonging. It may also be because after getting older, more and more don't like to stay alone. Time flies, has come to the lunch break. This side of the food court was more crowded instead. After all, many students and visitors from the teaching building had come out to eat. Some over here. Okay. Yi Shuang and Bobo moved a large table and prepared to start eating. After putting it down, Yi Shuang, however, noticed that the crowd in the distance was a bit noisy, it seemed that something was happening. And when he looked, he realized that a bald head had appeared in the middle of the crowd. To be precise, there were six bald heads. Each bald head had a straight posture, all wearing suits and sunglasses, and soon arrived in front of the lemon tea stand. Um, may I ask if a few of you are in need of lemon tea? Jishia saw these few black-robed men, but opened his mouth to inquire. 
the bald head didn't say anything, just stood silently in front of the stall, and their line of sight was clearly looking over to the dining table. Well, at this time, Alice, however, looked as if she recognized these people. She skimmed her mouth. That was fast. The Zhou family? Yi Shuang asked, but it was unlikely when he thought about it. Even Zhou family's side wouldn't equip Alice with so many bodyguards, right? It's like that exaggerated in a TV series. No, although it's pretty much just the same. Alice looked bored. Annoying. She looked at Yi Shuang again. Go on Yi Shuang. Use the Inferno Fist to help me defeat these six bald guys. I'm not a Pokemon. Yi Shuang was helpless. Missy, we should go back too. Bobo looked at those six bald heads and also reminded. Alice looked at those six silent bald black-robed men. Her shoulders moved. And eventually gave up in general. Okay. Oh you guys. Wait for this young lady to finish her lunch. Now don't get in the way of my sight. A few bald heads sniffed. Nodded. And then quickly left. Left. Yi Xuan looked over. No. They are all hiding nearby. On the side. And she you said as she bit the straw of her lemon tea. She was able to sense the breath of those few people. All still hiding around. Yi Xuan looked at Alice again. So. You're going back? Pretty much. It's obviously hard to come out. Alice muttered for a while before adding. Come over to play next time. On my side. I would welcome you to come over and play again. Yi Xuan smiled slightly. After all. At least it was by Yu Yu's sister. People always love their houses. Especially when it comes to their juniors. Who? Who said I was looking for you? Alice immediately glared and said. Like a kitten that had stepped on its tail. That. I didn't mean I was coming over to look for you. I was just going to run over to this side of the continent to play. All right then. Yi Shuang did not take it to heart. Alice twisted her fingers around her golden hair. She glanced at Yi Shuang, perhaps feeling that what she had just said was a little bit not so good. She added in a small voice, Both, since you want it so much, it's not impossible for me to come over to play once in a while. Yi Shuang smiled. Aha. Well, Alice looked around and lowered her head to start eating her snack. After lunchtime, Alice and the others had to leave as well. See you next time then, Yi Shuang san. Before leaving, Bobo put on his black hat. Well goodbye, Bobo. Escorted by a few bald heads, Alice just left. Yi Shuang had thought that she would be able to stay for a few days, and was thinking about whether or not she should buy some clothes for the other party in the afternoon when school was over. Yi Shuang. She left. Bai Yu Yu's said. Yi Shuang touched her head and smiled. We will meet again next time. Hmm. On the other side, Alice had already walked to the school entrance. At this time there was a nanny car parked outside. After the door opened. A voice also came from inside. Anna, you are also too capricious. Alice looked at the person sitting in the car and eventually hung her head. Missy is just. Bo, I don't need to hear your explanation. The voice continued. Keeping silent is something you need to do from time to time. Yes, mistress. Lemon tea stand. Ding dash yi shuang, who was cleaning up the dishes, suddenly heard his cell phone ringing, so he had to put down the things at hand first. Glancing at the caller ID, he found that it was Chun Qing calling. Hello? Yi Shuang, guess where I am? On the other end of the phone, was the girl's snickering voice? Where? Yi Shuang thought for a second. Silver Mountain Academy? How did you know? You even asked that. It's hard not to be at the company? Yi Shuang laughed. Then guess where I am at school? Chen Qin looked like she was a bit unconvinced. Is there a reward? There is Chen Qin smiled and said. I'll give you whatever you want ba. Yi Shuang didn't ask what kind of reward and directly said. It's near me. Ee, -e, come on. You have the sound of the food court all over your cell phone. After Yi Shuang finished speaking, he looked around and realized that in the street next to him. At this time, Chen Qin walked out a bit unwillingly holding her arms. Chen Qin today's dress is quite simple. A stepmother dress, that is, with smooth curves and longer hemline dark brown halter silk skirt. But the peach is extraordinarily full. And then matched with a beige shawl and eye-catching red lips. Like gorgeous she did not even wear jewelry today. On the plain white wrist of a simple rose gold lady's watch the woman is a simple rose gold colored lady's watch on her plain white wrist. Look fascinated? Chen Qin saw Yi Shuang looking at himself. Couldn't help but ask with a smile. And didn't forget to greet a few teenage girls with Bai Yu Yui Koko. Not like your style only. Yi Shuang said. And it looked like Chen Qin had only put on lipstick. Not even primer or jewelry. Yi Shuang knew that Chen Qin's checkroom at home but there is a special jewelry compartment. All kinds of jewelry can look blind. I heard that there is also a set of pure gold dowry jewelry that Chen's father prepared for his daughter. But what exactly is it Yi Shuang has not seen? The company's trader was pulled out. The past few days to sleep refreshing. Chen Qin said. Indeed flesh eyes visible chi good. Rarely rest. Accompany me to go shopping. Now. You want to be busy? Chen Qin looked at this lemon tea stall. 
and suddenly pulled Jisha. Sister, how much do you pay for this one day stall? One or two thousand. Jisha did not recognize Chen Xin, but was able to tell that the other party seemed to be familiar with Yi Shuang. I'll transfer ten thousand to you, and let Ai Yi accompany me for a day today, so I don't have to work here. Chen Qin winked. Zixia froze for a moment. One, ten thousand? Not enough? Thirty thousand? Zixia and Rin Rin only felt that the entire body of this beautiful woman in front of them was radiating golden light, and that feeling was like being slapped in the face with banknotes, but Zixia still came back to her senses and hurriedly explained. No, no need. Mister, ye just came over to help us out. There's no need to ask me for leave. Really? Chen Qin looked at Yi Shuang. Pretty much. After all, just came over to play. It's not like I'm working here. Yi Shuang's gaze swept a glance at the perfumed lemon. In fact, thanks to Bobo just now, the sale was basically almost done. Bobo's exaggerated size really attracted a lot of boys to come and buy. Let's go. Accompany you for a stroll. Yi Shuang said. He he he. Good. But before Chen Xin left, he thought again. And finally locked his sight on Bai Yuyue. Yuyue. Want to go shopping together? Bai Yuyue. Who was currently standing together with Tang Koko. Sniffed. And she cocked her head a bit. So much so that Coco beside her even touched her elbow, but the young girl still gently shook her head. No need. All right. Chen Qin smiled. Soon, Yi Xuan left with Chen Qin, eyeing the backs of the two people leaving. Tang Coco immediately whispered to Bai Yu Yue, Yu Yu eh, why don't you follow along? Why go together? Because, oh, this way brother will be taken down by sister Chen Qin. Tang Coco had a look of hatred. Bai Yu Yu eh, however, said, sister Chen Qin, would prefer to be alone with Yi Xuan, but she's afraid that I won't like being by myself and let me go together. So for the sake of Sister Chen Qin's good intentions, I'm not going. After Tang Koko rationalized what Bai Yu Yue had said, it was like she was a bit surprised that the other party would say something like this. Coco, dozen lemon teas. All right, leave it to me. Tang Koko didn't bother dwelling on it anymore as she put on her apron. Coco, the apron is propped up. Where are you looking ah hello? Yi Shuang was strolling through the food street with Chen Qin at this time, but since the food street was pretty much the same everywhere, he soon walked into the teaching building next to him, Silver Mountain College. It's big, bigger than some universities. Chen Qin followed Yi Shuang's side and couldn't help but sigh, and it's really exaggerated that this school actually organizes such activities. Indeed, there aren't many schools that love to have fun like this, Yi Shuang said, but noticed that Chen Qin's footsteps stopped. At this moment, on Chen Qin's side was a made cafe themed classroom. What's wrong? Yi Shuang asked. He didn't think Chen Qin was a guy interested in maids, and the clientele of a place like this was basically guys. Go in and take a look? Chen Qin asked with a smile. Maid, are you sure you didn't read it wrong? Before Yi Shuang could finish, she was pulled in by Chen Qin's arm. All right, all right, go in and take a look. Welcome home, master. Inside, as expected, it was in the style of a maid cafe, and as soon as they went in, Quite a few girls who were carrying plates and wearing maid outfits were smiling. Since it was a first-year classroom, the girls who were playing the role of maids were all quite young at this time. There was also a maid who walked over. Hello there, is it the two of you? Uh, two, Chen Qin said, and sat down on a seat not far away under the guidance of this maid in front of her, pieced together from desks and padded with a tablecloth on top. A simple dining table was completed. This is our menu. If there's anything else you need, you can tell me all about it oh. The maid student said with a smile, after all, she had rarely seen such a combination as the guests around her were all boys. A pairing like this of a man and a woman who also looked like a teacher was basically unseen. The menu was very simple, because it was food made by students. Naturally it could not be as rich in variety. Yi Shuang looked at it and realized that on it there was only an omelette, a fried rice, and some instant drinks and other kinds of food. Well, Yi Shuang asked Chun Qin, what do you want to eat? I can do anything. Yi Shuang. Two omelets of rice, plus two glasses of lemon sparkling water, please, Yi Shuang told the maid at the side. Who knew that the maid said with a smile, This guest, in our store, you need to read out the full names of the dishes when ordering the menu. This is a specialty. Full name? Yi Shuang froze for a moment. Then he also noticed that Chen Qin in front of him was also looking at himself with a smile. After pulling the corner of his mouth, he also had to open his mouth and say, Ahem. Please give me two servings of Mo QQ made love Moa secret omelette rice, as well as cute lemon multi sparkling water. Okay, the maid immediately smiled and said to the chef at the back, two omelette rice, two cups of lemon sparkling water. Yi Shuang. Okay, the dishes for the two of you are all served oh. The maid smiled and brought up the omelette rice as well as two cups of lemon tea sparkling water. 
Yi Shuang was feeling thirsty, and after picking up the cups and taking a sip, he froze. Hmm, Sprite? No, guest, this is cute lemon tea multi-sparkling water oh on the side, the maid said with a smile. But, guest, this is lemon sparkling water oh, cute lemon chato sparkling water. Yi Shuang, eh. Just at this time, another voice came from the side. Jin Jin, table two guest wants a cup of Sprite. Oh, coming the maid quickly left. Yi Shuang, black store ah, uh, charging me nine dollars for a cup of Sprite. So why did you come here to eat, after all? He had eaten lunch, so Yi Xuan wasn't actually hungry, and seeing that Chen Xin had been holding his face and looking at him with a smile, he had no choice but to open his mouth and ask, wasn't it you who said you wanted to come? When did I say that? I am not very interested in this. Yi Xuan smiled, said it, definitely said it. The smile on Chen Xin's face was even more intense, and seemed to bring some slyness like asking, then let's make another bet. If you have said it, then you have to promise me a condition. Yi Xuan saw Chen Xin with this certainty. For a moment he also doubted whether he had really said this sentence, but no matter how he recalled, he did not remember that he had said that he wanted to come to the maid cafe to come. What if I win? He asked. Then I promise you a condition. Chen Qin smiled. It's all pretty much the same. Okay, then tell me when I said that, the kind where you have to show substantial evidence. Yi Xuan leaned back in his chair with an old-fashioned look, because he indeed hadn't said anything like that. There is oh. Chen Qin took out his own cell phone and tapped it, then showed it to Yi Xuan. Nah, Yi Xuan took it and couldn't help but be happy after scanning it. It's not like I'm talking about the chat logs. Ah Qin are you remembering the wrong person? Chen Qin handed over the chat record, but the person in it was not Yi Xuan himself. What was the use of this kind of evidence? You take a closer look? Chen Qin picks up the drink and smiles. Yi Xuan. Upon hearing this, Yi Xuan looks at the chat screenshot carefully, but realizes that this screenshot is a bit dated, it's one of those old-fashioned QQ windows. And even the chat interface has QQ show characters. Take another look at the chat. Group chat the ultimate one. Ultimate just saw a maid sister in our 17 small door to send flyers. Ultimate, Chen Xiao, grips, I also saw, is a maid cafe. Wave thief big. Ultimate, Yi Xiao, dare to go to the restaurant to see? The ultimate go ah. Yesterday's birthday received a red packet. Called on Fu Gu A. Princess Chin, if you dare to go, I will tell dad and them. Ultimate. Ultimate, Chen Xiao, just know to complain. Let's kick Chen Qin. Ultimate, Yi Xiao, she is the group master. Ultimate, Chen Xiao, the dog group owner eat poop. JPG, we will find a chance to go back later. I ultimate family Yi Xiao here to make a vow. Yi Xuang, silently glancing at the time of the chat log again. He found that it was already a message from more than 10 years ago. That is, when he was in elementary school. Yi Xuang crossed the fingers of his hands and placed them in front of his face, as if he was in deep thought moving, his toes were moving, perfectly snapped out of the three rooms, the atmosphere was deathly frozen, remember, ultimate Yi Xiao, Chen Qin smiled and inquired, at this moment, her eyes were bending into a crescent moon, Yi Shuang's hand trembled a little, he slowly picked up the sprite and took a sip, pretending to be calm, he asked, why do you have this kind of thing, I have the habit of saving chat records la, and those sayings that Ai Yi once posted in space dash Chen Qin flipped his fingers through his cell phone and began to read, I look forward to the night because that brings loneliness, and I like the feeling of loneliness because I am the blood monarch Yi Xiao. It's snowing. Her, is it okay? Enough. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Auntie, please don't read. Yi Shuang reached out his hand and pressed Chen Qin's cell phone. Obviously, these I deleted when I went to middle school. Why do you still have ah? After the black history of elementary school was laid out, the shame almost made Yi Xuan want to leave here immediately. Aha, uh -huh, wasn't it said? Chen Qin scraped the back of Yi Shuang's hand that was holding down her own phone with her own pink nail. Isn't it a bit foul to take what I said in elementary school? There's no set time, right? Chen Qin said and started reading again. I like blood because blood is red. Okay, stop. I surrender. 